Chapter 91 The Way to Counterattack The Whereabouts of Armor Piercing The effects of Psychic Pulse are extraordinary for ordinary people. Everyone in the room instantly covered their heads and collapsed. Even the two patrol members. Chen Ming immediately drew his gun and climbed out from behind the bunker. Approaching the military man who was lying on the ground. Old Wu knew from the beginning that Chen Ming had been tinkering with something on the workbench. So he quickly followed Chen Ming when he encountered the military man who suddenly fell down without warning. The factory director was stunned for a moment without reacting at all and was reminded by Lao Wu before he followed. Chen Ming took the lead in checking the fallen military men. Make sure they have the willpower to be as strong as the guard at the exhibition hall before and can stand up after resisting the psychic pulse. The factory director and Lao Wu moved the two patrol members who had fainted together into the workshop and briefly treated their injuries. Chen Ming also confirmed that all the military personnel were unconscious and no one was still conscious. It can only be said that he once again experienced the power of the spiritual pulse. Although the scope of application of psychic pulse on the cosmic scale is not large and the types of materials that need to be repaired after each use are complex. In addition, Chin Ming estimated that the range of action was only about 500 meters in diameter, has various shortcomings. But just in the place where he is now, the actual effect of psychic pulse is extremely exaggerated. It can only be said that psychic energy is the best way for Chin Ming, a person without combat ability, to deal with threats from close range, an ability to instantly reverse a dilemma, even if the mind wave generator has shortcomings that Chin Ming has not discovered, as long as it still has such an effect and has no fatal flaws then no matter how much Chen Ming invests in it, it is not too much. After confirming that no one in the military would wake up within a short period of time, Chen Ming went back to the workroom and found some ropes on the shelves that had basically everything in the workroom. Everyone outside is already unconscious and has no ability to resist. There is absolutely no need to kill them directly. Instead, it would be better to disarm these people first, tie them up, and interrogate them later. It's just that Chen Ming just tied up a few people. The sound of metal twisting and tearing suddenly came from the other side of the second underground floor. Chen Ming immediately became alert and rushed to the corner of the corridor outside the workroom. Take the camera function of the terminal and lean out to observe the environment. At this time, the smoke on the second underground floor has not completely dissipated. Chen Ming could only barely see a heavy powered armor tearing open the blocked door on the other side of the safety passage. In an environment where only the emergency lights were on, with a full sense of oppression, like a rampaging tank, he quickly approached the location of the workshop. Heavy power armor? Be careful. Chin Ming reminded the factory director and Lao Wu behind him, and pressed his hand on the psychic wave generator again, expecting to press it at any time. However, after the factory director noticed what Chin Ming saw, he immediately put his hand on Chin Ming's arm. We are one of our own. We are safe. The factory director took the initiative to signal then waved to the other end of the corridor, put away his weapon, took off his helmet and walked out. It's me, Lu Xingxi. Chen Ming tightened his grip on the gun slightly. It wasn't until he saw the man wearing heavy power armor that he stopped and pressed a false button on the guard behind who didn't know the identity of the factory director, making everyone put down their guard. Chen Ming also relaxed and put the pistol back into its holster. The man wearing heavy power armor approached again and asked the factory director. How is the situation? Wen Chen Ming heard this somewhat familiar voice. He recalled it and remembered that he had heard this voice before during the factory director's meeting. This tough man wearing central power armor is the director of the space station administration. Chen Ming was a little surprised. He originally thought that the director would be a greasy and grumpy middle-aged man. But he didn't expect that the actual difference was so big. However, he quickly got rid of the original image in his mind and remembered the image of this heavy power armor in his mind. Although he was not interested in what kind of person the director was, the power armor the director was wearing was completely different. In Chen Ming's mind, psychic energy is his best way to deal with close-range threats. So a set of powerful heavy-duty power armor is definitely the second most useful way. If you can get a set, then Chen Ming. Wait a minute. It seems like it's really possible. The director's power armor must be a product of the company. If Chen Ming wants a set in the future, it shouldn't be a problem. Chin Ming stared at the power armor on the director's body for a few times. Although he couldn't hold it any longer, he still withdrew his gaze. At the same time, he was not in a hurry to go out and left the explanation of the situation to the factory director. While listening, he continued to tie up the unconscious people on the ground. When the factory director faced the director's question, 
he immediately took the director to the deepest part of the corridor. He said to the people lying on the ground here, All the intruders have been dealt with. We were the ones who set the psychic pulse just now. The director casually kicked the military man lying on the ground and said, Yeah, not bad. Then he contacted several of his men outside through the equipment inside the helmet. After a few brief explanations, the director directed the guards behind him to follow and began to capture those who had sneaked into the management office together. Soon, the administration's alarm stopped. All the previously paralyzed internal equipment began to restart, and the smoke that had been unable to be discharged from the interior was gradually fading away. With so many people around to protect him, Jin Ming relaxed a little and stopped being overly vigilant. While the guards were still dealing with the unconscious people and the corpses piled up here, Jin Ming asked the factory director, who was also idle next to him, If the military attacks the management office like this, will there be any consequences? The factory director replied as if he was well prepared. Although we all know that this matter was done by the military, the military will definitely not admit it, and there will be no obvious clues left. Even if there is a direct attack on our pirate space station administration, there is no problem in name for the military. But actually doing so requires considerations beyond just the name. So, the military's credibility will definitely plummet after this incident. The specific consequences will depend on the confrontation between senior officials. But this has nothing to do with us. Our first priority now is to safely send you to the star capital. But one thing is certain. The military will suffer a lot from this matter. The exact amount of losses will depend on the performance of the superiors. And you. It was about the same time that the director of the administration arrived at the second underground floor with the guards. Inside the hotel room where the military team is located, which is relatively close to the administration building, several members of the military team were silently watching the content transmitted back in real time from the monitoring screen on the hacker team's computer. As the surveillance video just returned the scene of everyone falling down in an instant, the atmosphere in the room instantly dropped to freezing point. Only the captain was the first to speak at this time. This is a spiritual pulse. I didn't expect that the administration would even be willing to give such a thing to Chen Ming. Alas, the mission is a complete failure. The administration is on guard. We can't find another chance on the space station. Xia Chao couldn't help but ask. Then what should we do? Are we really going to dig coal? It would be great if you could dig coal for us. Let's go now and see if there are any other opportunities later. The other members of the military team did not express any opinions, and just packed up their belongings silently. However, at this moment, there was a knock on the hotel room door. Hello! Your dinner order has arrived! The captain was stunned for a moment, then raised his gun and shot Tian Jiwen in the head, who had been tied up for a while, and immediately pointed the gun at the door. Before he could fire a second shot, countless bullets were fired directly into the room, from outside the hotel room door. Another fight broke out at the hotel after the chaos at the administration subsided. But this has nothing to do with Chen Ming, who just walked into the director's office. After following the director into his office, the director continued to lead Chen Ming and others into an independent lounge next to the office. At the same time, three new guards were arranged for Chen Ming to protect him personally. The previously injured patrol member was sent to the infirmary inside the administration building. To a certain extent, the management office's infirmary has better technology than hospitals outside. Coupled with the medical technology of the space age, it is not difficult to treat his burns. After settling Chen Ming, the director said to Chen Ming, Please wait here for the time being. The corresponding spacecraft will arrive in 11 hours. When the spacecraft arrives, I will escort you there safely. With that said, the director summoned his secretary and said, If you need anything, you can ask him to arrange it for you. I still have things to do. If such a vicious incident occurs within the administration, a thorough investigation must be carried out from top to bottom. As the director, he naturally needs to be on the front line of work. Therefore, Chin Ming had no objection to the director leaving. It's just that Chin Ming still feels a little uneasy in his heart. Although the director said he would protect him, the heavy power armor could indeed give people a heavy sense of security. But Chin Ming felt that the military would not give up just because of this matter so it still had to make some preparations in advance. And there is something suitable to give out now. Wait a minute. Hearing Chin Ming's voice, the director turned back and asked, What's going on? Chin Ming took out the terminal and called up a file on it. This was previously found in the terminal of the dead soldier whose escape capsule was stuck on the spacecraft. There was evidence of stimulant smuggling at the military outpost. In fact, on the way here, 
Chen Ning already wanted to hand this thing over to the factory director. Let the factory director transfer it to the chairman of the board. However, the factory director said he could not contact the chairman. It is said that the board of directors is about to be held and the chairman must go and chair it. This time the board of directors mainly focused on two matters. One was a Chen Ming matter and the other was a military matter. In a sense, it is all related to Chen Ming. So the chairman couldn't be contacted. So the factory director directly asked Chen Ming to tell the director about the matter. The director above the director and the director are not the same. Although Chen Ming didn't know why. In short, as long as this thing was given out, it would definitely cause some trouble to the military. With this evidence, anyone can legally challenge the military. And those who have the means can even directly use the military's internal reporting channel to make soldiers involved in smuggling have a drink. Although smuggling is actually a tacit understanding among the major forces in private. Once this kind of thing comes to light, someone must be responsible for it. The director took the terminal from Chen Ming's hand and carefully checked the contents of the smuggling list. While the director was reading the documents, Chen Ming asked the director's secretary for something to eat. It was noon when Chen Ming returned from the capital of the Star Territory. On the way back, he just grabbed some compressed food to satisfy his hunger. It was almost evening now, but there were still 11 hours to wait. Waiting until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning the next day. If I don't replenish some energy, I'm afraid there will be problems. After the secretary brought the food, the factory director almost read all the contents on the smuggling list and checked all the relevant information directly in the office. Concluded that this list is all correct. The director returned the terminal to Chen Ning and said, The smuggling list even includes a cargo list accurate to the location and time. How detailed is it? Where did you get it? Chen Ning naturally couldn't say that he got it on Yue's boat. So he casually said, I picked it up. The expression under the director's helmet was slightly complicated. His usual attitude towards doing things made him not very accepting of Chen Ming's ambiguous answer. But he is not Chen Ming's direct boss. And his subsequent relationship with Chen Ming is not necessarily that of superior or subordinate. So he didn't express anything. Nor did he show any opinions on Chen Ming. He just said based on the contents of the smuggling list that Chen Ming showed him. This list is very important. It will give the company a better advantage in handling matters related to the military. If this thing is passed back, the entire military outpost may need to undergo a wave of blood changes. At this point in time, combined with the previous incident, we can at least temporarily suspend the military outpost, which is very helpful for your safety. The director also knew that Chen Ming was definitely not bringing out this list to bargain. So he said to the guards waiting outside the office, Zhang Ji, you will take over my task next. A guard standing at the front of the guard team saluted into the office. He quickly left the office with the other guards. The director took Chen Ming behind his desk and asked Chen Ming to connect the terminal to his computer. I will help you send this list to the company directors. The impact of this list should be reflected soon. Good. Just when Chen Ming gave the director a clear reply, Chen Ming suddenly discovered that there was movement on the armor-breaking side that he had been paying attention to. When Chen Ming drove the spaceship back to the pirate space station, engineers from Sinda Company had already installed a large-scale weapon provided by the government, an automatic pulse laser on the armor-breaking weapon, as well as four other weapons on medium-sized load-bearing points, two energy weapons called heavy impact cannons, and two ion beams that Chen Ming was very familiar with. After installing weapons on the armor-breaking class and debugging them, it has now been sent to a cruiser-class heavy cargo ship named Colossus that Chen Ning had seen in Yue, and the location where the armor-breaking class was placed in the cargo hold on the cargo ship was just at the edge of the cargo hold. It just so happened that Chen Ning was actually relatively lacking in combat effectiveness at this time. Although the military is unlikely to directly attack the fleet. But in case it happens, a spaceship with sufficient combat effectiveness is still necessary for Chen Ming. So now is actually the best time for Chen Ming to steal the boat. It's just that the purpose of this cargo ship and the cargo fleet where the cargo ship is located can be roughly guessed based on Chen Ming's previous hearing that the government wanted to test the armor-breaking class. Their destination should be a colony closest to the military outpost and also closest to the pirate space station. This is a mining colony. The main purpose of the government's cargo caravans in the past should have been regular supply of supplies, and taking away materials from the colony. Sending the A-level ones there was just incidental. But no matter what, it is correct that the cargo ship will take the initiative to approach Chen Ming with an armor-breaking class. Chen Ming could actually wait for the cargo ship to arrive. But the problem is that the armor-breaking level needs to follow the caravan. 
The sailing speed of the caravan must be based on the slowest ship in the caravan. With the cruiser Colossus cargo ship, the speed of the caravan in hyperspace will definitely not reach the maximum speed. In addition, the cargo ship may need to stop at a colony passing by on the way. So the speed of delivery should be slower than when Chin Ming personally drove the spaceship back. It is not certain how long the delay will be. But it will certainly not be shorter. And if the armor-breaking class is really successfully delivered to the colony for the caravan, then Chen Ning may not be able to find an opportunity to attack the spacecraft. But, just when Chen Ning discovered that there was movement in the armor-breaking class, the cargo ship it was on had just set off from the Star Territory Capital Colony. At this time, it has reached the edge of the galaxy and is about to enter the hyperspace channel. This is simply a God-given opportunity. The best opportunity. The spacecraft's weapons have all been installed and the fuel has been filled. Chen Ming did not dare to use the large weapons on the bow of the armor-breaking class ship directly inside the ship. But the remaining four medium-sized weapons were enough to open a door on the Colossus from inside the ship. Chen Ming did not hesitate and decisively activated the armor-breaking heavy impact cannon. As can be seen outside the spacecraft, the Colossus cargo ship was suddenly severely damaged close to the right front of the ship. The news that the spacecraft's weapons accidentally fired was also sent to the captain's office. The captain who drives the Colossus cargo ship is also an old captain who has worked in the government for decades. When there was a sudden unexpected situation, he did not panic and calmly arrange different tasks for the personnel in various parts of the spacecraft. The most important of these is naturally to confirm the damage to the hull and the loss of internal cargo. The external side of the cargo bay was basically completely destroyed and the armor-breaking armor leaked from the cargo bay. The captain immediately clicked twice on the console in front of him and said, Received. Immediately organized towing ships to refix the armor-breaking class. Wait a minute. What's going on? The spaceship is flying by itself? What? The captain was sure that he heard correctly and immediately asked other people on the bridge to put the surveillance camera in his place. Then he saw the armor-breaking class directly activate the hyperspace channel system and enter hyperspace after leaving the fleet. Is there anyone on board? Impossible. The destroyer needs at least a dozen people to be able to barely operate it. It's impossible for a dozen people hiding in the cargo hold to hide from the person responsible for inspection. The captain immediately took out the terminal, preparing to skip the troublesome reporting system and report the strange situation directly to his superiors. At the same time, he was also arranging work for the deputy next to him. Notify the escort fleet immediately and let them find a way to track the armor-breaking class ship, the young-looking deputy immediately said. Yes, but can they catch up? The captain shook his head and said, Chien, if the spacecraft reaches full speed in hyperspace for a few seconds, it will be worth flying in a normal environment for several months. The spacecraft suddenly entered the channel. There is basically no chance that it can be recovered. I just don't know if there is a positioning system installed on the ship. Maybe it can be of some use. Okay, hurry up and notify. The longer you wait, the lower the probability of finding an armor-breaking level. The deputy nodded quickly and left the captain's side. The captain looked at the location where the armor-piercing class disappeared on the monitor, squinting his eyes and seeming to be thinking about something. At this time, the armor-breaking class, which had successfully entered the hyperspace channel, had also successfully accelerated to the ultimate speed in hyperspace. Although the government did install a positioning system on the armor-breaking class, the entire spacecraft was under Chin Ming's control. There was no difference between whether it was installed or not. Coupled with the limit speed limit in hyperspace, even if the positioning system really works, other ships have no chance of catching up to the armor-breaking class. All that's left is for the armor-breaking class to fly along the channel. When passing through the government colony system, it may be arrested by the patrol team in the hyperspace channel. But Chin Ning can also choose to jump directly out of the hyperspace channel when approaching a galaxy and use the normal cosmic environment to bypass dangerous galaxies. In a normal space environment, the armor-breaking speed is not as slow as that of an unmodified iron ore. Jumping out of the hyperlane and re-entering the hyperlane after circling the system doesn't take much time. If it's really too late, Chin Ming can also choose a more risky but faster way. Go directly from outside the hyperspace channel. That is, to the dangerous area filled with hyperspace channel clouds and hyperspace lightning. As for the spaceship, Chin Ning can remotely repair it by consuming mental power. Forcibly breaking into the dangerous area of the hyperspace channel is actually an option for Chen Ming, who can make unlimited repairs as long as he has all the materials. The final destination of the armor-breaking class was determined by Chen Ming 
to be at the space station. Although he is going to the capital of the star region next, it is not easy for this armor-breaking ship to appear in front of the government or companies. Moreover, Chin Ning is in a hurry to break through the A-level just because he lacks a guarantee of combat effectiveness. If everything goes well and the company receives him without any accidents, then there will be no problem for Chin Ming to send the ship directly to the Dark Cemetery. When the time comes, hand the ship over to Gamma B for control. Chin Ming will be able to own two destroyers indirectly controlled through Afterglow AI. Moreover, Gamma AB is about to be promoted and become a beta-level Afterglow individual. The capabilities of the two spaceships completely under Chin Ming's control are definitely much higher than those of the spacecraft that Chin Ming only indirectly controls through AI. Although Chin Ming chose to accept the company's invitation, he should mainly stay with the company in the prosperous star field. But it's not like he signed a contract of betrayal. With the help of hyperspace channels and even stargates, it is not difficult to take a trip to the edge star field. Chin Ming is a psychic and an extremely important person to the company, as long as he shows his due abilities after joining the company for the second time. With the permission to use the stargate, he believes that the company will definitely solve it for him. Certainly, the premise of everything Chin Ming is thinking now is that the next things will go smoothly. Chapter 92 The accident will come faster than tomorrow. It actually took Chin Ming less than a minute to handle the matter of breaking the A-level. It will arrive near the pirate space station after a few hours of sailing. And when Chen Ming shifted his attention from armor piercing back to the present, the director is still contacting the company's upper-level directors through a system built into his power armor. Send him the evidence of military smuggling that Chen Ming gave him and the actual shipment list he just found. After waiting for about two minutes, the director finally stopped communicating with the director and turned to Chen Ming. The efficiency of work within the military is very high. It won't take long for the report documents to be sent to the star domain government and transferred to in the military. Then the upper level military region will begin to investigate the situation at the lower levels. This process does not take too long. Only when someone goes down from the front of the outpost can someone come up from the back. If they don't want to go down, someone will help them go down. This period is the best time for us to send you to the capital of the star territory without interference from the military. At the same time, the company can also take advantage of the change of military personnel to make preparations in other aspects. Once you are in place, you can start to take back control of the galaxy. The last words the director said seemed a bit like what the director he was talking to asked him to tell Chen Ming. Chen Ming naturally had no objection to this and nodded to the director without speaking. The director quickly left the lounge. He probably still had internal work to deal with within the administration. The only people left in the lounge with Chin Ning were three guards and a member of the patrol team previously arranged by the factory director, as well as the factory director and Lao Wu who had been accompanying Chin Ning. Although the two of them didn't look too tired, they still chose to close their eyes and sit on the sofa to rest. After all, there may still be some trouble waiting for them before they can safely send Chin Ming to the spacecraft. As Chin Ming's current direct boss, the factory director can also be regarded as the person who reintroduced Chen Ming back to the company. He must always stay by Chen Ming's side. On the other hand, although Old Wu seems to have run away a long time ago, and he is actually just an ordinary maintenance employee, he is still here. It might be the factory director's fault. It might be Chen Ming's fault. Or it might be both. But no matter what the reason is, Chen Ming is happy to see the two of them stay here. Chen Ming didn't bother them too much. He also leaned on the sofa and closed his eyes. However, he is not resting, but is contacting the two Gamma AIs to make some preparations for the worst-case scenario in advance. At the same time, he was also distractedly paying attention to the situation of the armor-breaking class to ensure that it could safely reach the vicinity of the pirate space station. Eleven hours later, the time came to three o'clock in the morning Earth time. The director, still wearing his heavy power armor, suddenly pushed open the door to the lounge, knocked lightly on the door and said, the spaceship has arrived and is parked at the patrol dock. We have to leave. Although the military personnel have been dealt with almost immediately, the administration's vigilance against military infiltration has not been relaxed yet. So under the guidance of the director, Chin Ming came to the roof of the administration building. As before, used the shuttle boat directly to reach where Chin Ming should go as quickly as possible. The shuttle boat itself is not big. The three people Chin Ming and a director wearing heavy power armor are almost full when they sit inside. Arrived at the patrol dock. This place is already a little different from when Chen Ning came to see off the pirate leader. The broken space arm has been completely connected. 
and the function of the space arm closer to the side of the space station has been restored to perfection. In a few more weeks, the space arm should be completely repaired. In those dock locations that have been repaired, except for some combat ships that Chen Ning had seen before when fighting Yue ships. There is also a small fleet with the Sinar Company logo uniformly engraved on the outside of the spacecraft. There were 28 ships in total, 9 destroyers and 19 escorts. Eight of these nine destroyers are hammerheads, which have an excellent reputation among destroyer-class spacecraft, has moderate firepower and moderate armor strength as well as moderate ship shield performance, and a very good price relative to other destroyers. It is the king of cost performance among the spaceships designed by Sindar. Although it is cost-effective, this does not mean that the capabilities of the spacecraft are poor. Otherwise, a spaceship that is only cost-effective but not capable will not be welcomed by the civilians, government and military. The remaining destroyer is a destroyer-class aircraft carrier, the Cowherd, as the flagship of this fleet. The Cowherd class has an outrageous length of 443 meters among destroyers, a width that is almost as wide as the length of the ship, and a height that comes from a multi-layered flight deck that is enough to carry a large number of fighters. It can almost be used as a mobile war fortress. In addition to those fighters equipped with point defense weapons and small shields, the Cowherd itself also relies on its huge hull to carry a large number of medium and small point defense weapons in exchange for external attack methods. It has extremely strong cover capabilities in actual combat. Chen Ning once read on the internet that some people who had driven a civilian-grade cattle driver said that driving this kind of ship was boring. But the sense of security provided by the cattle driver was difficult to get from other spacecrafts. After seeing the appearance of this spaceship with his own eyes, although Chen Ning had not actually seen its combat capabilities, he had a slight feeling of it in his heart. Generally speaking, the type of destroyer itself determines the captain's length when designing the spacecraft, usually between 100 and 300 meters. But there was obviously something wrong with the design of this cattle driver 400 meters away. But the reason is relatively simple. That is, it was designed earlier. It has existed since the early days of humanity's space age. After generations of updates, the cowherd has still not been eliminated. So the ship, which is larger than the size of an ordinary destroyer, has been retained until now. In fact, Chin Ning felt that the company had a reason to send this cattle driver class over. First of all, he can be sure that Shindok Company must have its own cruisers or even battleships. However, the significance of ships of the cruiser level and above is different from that of ordinary destroyer escorts. And their dispatch definitely requires a lot of approval procedures. Not only within the company, the government also needs to know about the company's mobilization of spacecraft. Therefore, the cruiser cannot be easily mobilized. But the Cowherd class is different. It is a destroyer. And it happens to be the largest type of destroyer. Although it is not as good as a cruiser, its actual escort capabilities and combat capabilities have reached the pinnacle of a destroyer. Therefore, when the company needed to send Chin Ming to the capital of the Star Territory as soon as possible, it chose to use the cattle driver as its flagship. And if Chin Ming remembers correctly, the group deployment of 10 or more destroyers or 20 or more frigates needs to be reported to the government. Therefore, the specifications of the fleet of 9 destroyers and 19 escorts are already the largest number of ships that Sindar Company can mobilize in a short period of time. From here, Chin Ming once again saw how much Sindar Company valued him. However, because this Kauhu class ship could not park in the destroyer class dock designed for ordinary destroyers, it ended up parking in the only cruiser slot on the dock. That's where Chin Ming's shuttle boat will land to facilitate the fleet's reorganization after landing and takeoff. Other ships in the fleet were also parked nearby. All 19 escort ships were parked next to the ship's space, where the destroyer should have docked. 17 of these 19 frigates are unified Sentinel-class frigates. Although Chin Ming disliked the Sentinel in his hand, that was because the civilian Sentinel itself was a bit too emasculated. But military sentries still have a place in combat. The other two remaining frigates. One is a professional cargo ship called the Buffalo-class and the other is a DRAM-class fuel transport ship that Chin Ning has seen before. The Buffalo transports some supplies that are difficult to store on combat ships, while the DRUM-class is used to transport logistics supplies and fuel to the fleet. Although this pickup mission actually only lasts a few hours, the standard configuration of the mission arrangement is still needed. With such a fleet of 28 ships, it is definitely a force that cannot be underestimated in the Edge Star field. Escorting Chin Ming back to the capital of the Star Territory is definitely not a problem. However, even if Chin Ming has seen such a fleet and is protected by such a fleet, 
he still feels that the danger is not over yet. Moreover, the sources of danger seemed to come from all directions, and he had no idea what was still threatening him. So in the last period of time before the spacecraft landed, Chin Ming took the initiative and asked the factory director next to him, How many people do we have in our maintenance factory now? You? Me? Lao Wu? Baldhead? And Tian Jiwen are the three newcomers. And we can also add a deputy director. The factory director said the answer in an instant. And at the same time guessed Chin Ming's thoughts. And said, You want to ask who the mole is? Right. Yes. I can exclude Baldhead first. He mentioned to me before that the military was investigating me. He cannot be a mole. The others? No need to guess. The director next to him, who had been giving instructions to people outside through the communication device installed in his helmet, suddenly interrupted the conversation between Chin Ming and the factory director. My men had found the body of your Tian Jiwen in a hotel before. The military men kidnapped him and killed him. The kidnapping happened just the day before. However, there were no signs of abuse on his body which means he was very cooperative with the military. He was the one who revealed your identity. As for the person who opened the workshop door, he was one of the three newcomers arranged by the company to enter the maintenance shop. His body was also confirmed in the high-rise corridor. In addition, the director looked at the factory director and said, although the deputy director is a bit of a beast, he will not be a traitor. The factory director frowned slightly when he heard the director mention the deputy director's words but he didn't say anything. Chin Ming summarized it briefly and said, In other words, Tian Jiwen leaked my information. And then the military people relied on their connections to infiltrate the space station to prepare to kill me. Right. That's right. Understood. Chin Ming nodded clearly. Since everyone is dead, it means that the sense of danger he still feels does not originate from within. But from somewhere else. This shows that the military has not completely given up the idea of taking action against him and must still be waiting for him somewhere. However, everything Chin Ming can do has been done. What remains is to see whether the company's preparations and his own preventive measures are not enough. The shuttle boat quickly approached the location of the cattle drivers. It docked directly on the flight deck where the cattle herders parked their fighters. The director was the first to disembark, and the huge heavy power armor almost completely covered the hatch of the shuttle boat. After Chin Ming got off the ship, other people immediately gathered around him, and walked towards the interior of the spacecraft. From the flight deck to the internal hatch of the spacecraft next to it, it is only less than 20 meters away. However, at this point on the way, Chin Ming suddenly felt something slightly strange near his temple. It was like the feeling when the barber was gesturing with the blade next to his neck when he was getting a haircut. Chin Ming knew that his perception of danger had reached a very sensitive level, so this feeling made him immediately raise his arms to block his temples. The next moment he raised his arm. A ball of spark suddenly burst out from his arm armor. Chin Ming's arm tilted to the side uncontrollably. And he could clearly see a squash bullet embedded in the armor plate. This is a sniper rifle bullet similar to an electromagnetic javelin. The guards nearby immediately gathered around to protect Chin Ming. But the second shot hit Chin Ming's temple before anyone had time to react. Chin Ming's head also tilted like his arm. However, he did not receive any damage from the shot. This is due to the top-level protective effect brought by the pure dolomite steel armor plate and also because the multi-layer buffer structure installed inside the armor plate when he modified the armor plate absorbed most of the impact of the bullet. Although Chin Ning was a little unable to maintain his balance due to the impact of the bullet. What he was thinking about was not the bullet, but the feeling he just felt. The subtle feeling just now, like someone holding a knife to his neck, was not the danger felt by his danger sense, but the imminent attack he felt. Chin Ning knew very well that his danger perception ability could not detect attacks that did not pose a threat to him before but now he can. Perhaps because he has been sensing danger. His danger perception evolved. Just like he could only control the frigate before. He broke through the limit when controlling the diopter level. His psychic power seemed to have a lot of effects that aren't on the panel. A bunch of thoughts suddenly appeared in Chen Ming's mind. But he did not forget his current situation. He immediately controlled his posture, hid behind the director, and turned his head to look in the direction of the bullet as if nothing was wrong. Chen Ming's eyesight was pretty good and he could see a person being pinned to the ground by a group of patrol members in the corner of the dock. Chen Ming had never seen him before, but the eyes he looked at Chen Ming were full of resentment. Chen Ming didn't pay attention to him and walked into the cattle driver's cabin under the protection of others. As for the military man just now, he might have been able to escape from the space station. But now, 
he has completely lost the possibility of escaping. Chen Ming should never see him again in this life. Although Chen Ming doesn't care much about a dead person, or a person who is about to die. However, the director was very concerned about this. His face in the helmet box was as dark as ink, and he immediately contacted the guard team he had arranged to track the military team. The one you let go has now arrived at the patrol dock. You must explain to me how you let him come? The team leader's voice came from the communication channel. I'm very sorry, director. We just got the wrong intelligence instructions, and we haven't found any trace of him for a long time. The director frowned and said, Go back to the bureau, and you will need to accept punishment later. The captain on the other side didn't expect that the director didn't scold him as usual, and immediately agreed as if he was relieved. Yes. Then the communication was hung up. The captain didn't know the director's changes, but the director knew what was going on. The patrol team's dock has been completely closed for 12 hours since the order from above was ordered to pick up Chen Ming. The only ones who still have the authority to enter and exit are the captain and deputy captain of the patrol team. There are only two situations in which people can be let in. One is that the military personnel squatted here 12 hours ago without being discovered at all. And the other is that there is a traitor in the patrol team. The director knew which one had the higher probability. Moreover, the guard team and patrol team he sent just now work together. And the information is also exchanged. In other words, the source of the erroneous information was the patrol team. Since the captain of the patrol team was standing next to the dock below, the situation of the deputy captain, who was also responsible for the pursuit of military personnel in the space station can be explained. Where's the other deputy captain? Could not be reached. Then he's a traitor. The director directly announced the result to the deputy captain, and at the same time contacted the management office. Cancel all the authority of the deputy captain of the patrol on the space station. The wanted person will be listed first. I will deal with him after I finish the important things here. When the director was explaining the matter of dealing with the traitor, Chin Ning has entered the interior of the cattle driver class. The factory director and Lao Wu did not follow up. However, they were able to escort Chin Ming for so long, which made him feel that it was enough. From now on, he would have to go on his own. The captain of the cowherd class even came to greet him personally. After seeing Chin Ming, he reached out his hand and said, Welcome, Mr. Chin. Please come with me. Chin Ming reached out and shook his hand, then followed him to a lounge inside the spacecraft. On the table in the lounge are some fruits, a terminal, and a card. After taking Chin Ming in, the captain took the initiative to open the terminal, handed it to Chin Ming and said, Mr. Chin, what is above is the general structure of our spacecraft. These areas marked in red are areas within our spacecraft that only professionals can enter and exit. You can enter and exit the other unmarked areas at will. This card is an authorization card that can be used on the ship. This card is needed to ensure passage between different areas. I still need to be responsible for this mission. If you need anything, you can contact me directly through the terminal. Or you can find someone else. Chin Ming put away the terminal and cards and nodded to him. Although it is only four or five hours away, the attitude of doing things is very responsible. The captain quickly left the lounge, and Chin Ming was the only one left in the lounge. So Chin Ming immediately took off his gauntlet and put his hand on the cabin of the spacecraft. Here, Chin Ming also got a hint that he could control the spacecraft. But he was in no hurry to directly control the spacecraft, because he almost fainted last time when he controlled the diopter class a spaceship that was just over 200 meters tall. This time, the spacecraft had doubled in length and several times in size. He had to be prepared before taking control. At least not at this time when he couldn't even guarantee safety. If he couldn't bear it and fell into coma, something unexpected would happen during the flight of the spaceship. That would be a big problem. The coping methods he had prepared before could not be used on his own. It's better to wait until you get to the star capital and try to control it when you get off the ship. Anyway, even if Chin Ming faints by then, someone from the company will definitely send him to the hospital safely. Taking advantage of the fact that the spacecraft still had internet access when it was far away from the space station, Chin Ming thought for a while and simply called his boss. It took a while before the call was answered. After all, it's past three in the morning, and the boss's voice was full of sleepiness. Xiao Mu, what's the matter? Boss, I have to go out again. This time it may take a while before I can come back. So urgent? Yes, it might have been a few days late. But the military moved too quickly against me. And the company's ship to pick me up was ready. So I plan to leave. The boss suddenly became energetic and said, 
Are you planning to follow the company's path in the future? That's not bad. I'll keep in touch when I have time. I'm still very interested in how you will develop in the future. Um, while talking, the cattle driver also started his engine and prepared to set sail with his fleet. Chin Ming had told the director in advance that he wanted to bring his own boat when he was in the lounge. So now, flying behind this fleet, there are also Chin Ming's iron or in Centurion. Although Chin Ming only has two spacecraft control positions, one of them is still on the armor breaking level. But Chen Ning only needed to temporarily switch the control position and give the Iron Mine and Centurion a follow command. With the autopilot system, this isn't a hassle. The fleet left the space station and soon reached the edge of the galaxy and entered hyperspace. When the fleet enters the hyperspace channel, although Chen Ning was on another spaceship, he still subconsciously scanned the surroundings with the Centurion sensors that came with him. Then he discovered that a large number of military fleets appeared on the edge of the area around the space station that was relatively close to the gravity wells of the galaxy stars, and on several major hyperspace lanes leading to other galaxies. Chen Ning couldn't help but whispered, Is the army going to overturn the table? What's wrong? Xiao Mu! The boss's voice came from the terminal that had not completely disconnected the communication signal. Chen Ming immediately said, The army has blocked the hyperspace channel to other galaxies, and we are blocked. What the H, L? As soon as the boss finished speaking, the military spacecraft sent a message to the Shindo Company's fleet for a routine inspection. In the Edge Star field, whether it is the government or the military, their power is relatively greater than that in the prosperous star field. So to be honest, a routine inspection of a passing spacecraft isn't too much. Occasionally when the army is short of performance, it will block people in the waterway. Whoever is blocked will be unlucky. It has always been an unspoken and unspoken rule in the fringe star territory. However, this is the first time that the army has directly blocked the entrance of the pirate space station. As for the reason, Chin Ming knew it very well. The four channels leading to different galaxies around the galaxy are all blocked by military fleets. There seemed to be no escape for him. Chapter 93 at this time. The armor-breaking class is on its way. An unexpected situation occurred in the hyperspace channel. Naturally, Chin Ming could not continue to sit in the lounge and wait for death. He stood up immediately and opened the door to the lounge. There was a crew member waiting at the door of the lounge. When he saw Chin Ming coming out, he immediately said respectfully, Mr. Chin. Chin Ming didn't talk nonsense to him and said directly, The fleet seems to be in some trouble. Please take me to the captain. Unlike Chin Ming, the crew members were not able to receive military messages from a long distance. And some of them did not quite understand what Chin Ming meant. However, he didn't say much and stretched out his hand in a gesture of invitation. Following the captain's previous request, he led Chen Ming towards the interior of the Cowhood class. What surprised Chen Ming was that he was successfully led by the crew to the bridge command room, which should be said to be the most important location of the spacecraft. Chen Ming hadn't noticed it just now, but when he finally arrived, he discovered that the bridge command room was not marked in red on the spacecraft map. I don't know if it was the captain's special arrangement. In short, as soon as Chen Ming entered the bridge command room, he saw a busy scene, next to a large number of control equipment in the command room. A large number of crew members are doing their best to complete their own control or operation tasks. The Calhoun class is different from ordinary destroyers. It is not an ordinary firepower output warship, but a command warship equipped with a large amount of support equipment and a large number of fighters. It serves as the core of the battlefield. These equipment and the manpower needed to support them create what the command room looks like. Chin Ning did not interfere with them. He continued to lead the crew and approached the captain of the Cowherd class next to the central control panel. Just when Chin Ning came over, the captain was contacting the space station through the communication equipment, requesting support. Although the number of ships that the military has blocked the hyperspace channels in four directions may not seem to be many in the past, the total number of ships has exceeded 100. Even a hundred frigates are not something that the company's fleet can handle. Not to mention that the military has prepared a lot of destroyers. Naturally, the space station responded immediately. A support fleet will soon enter the hyperspace lanes. After doing this, the captain noticed Chen Ming coming next to him and nodded and said, Mr. Chen. Chen Ming also nodded and said, I just want to take a look. Just do whatever you want. The captain returned his attention to the situation in front of him. And a few minutes later, a communication channel was connected to him. Chin Ming, who was quite close to the captain, could also hear the conversation on the communication channel. We are not threatening the space station. 
We are just conducting a mission to review passing spacecraft. The voice of the secretary of the director also sounded from the communication channel. The review of the spacecraft needs to be supported by relevant documents. Where are your documents? Hold on. The military directly sent a document to all the spacecraft. It can be seen that the content is indeed a complete mission document. Due to the recent increase in the number of afterglows, the military has increased the frequency of patrols and changed the patrol location to near the Pirate Space Station, where afterglow ships have appeared in large numbers. According to the contents of the document, this document had been finalized in advance before the military arrived, even before the news about Chen Ning leaked. Is it really an accident that the military blocked this place? Chin Ning glanced at the military spacecraft that blocked all four hyperspace channels to other galaxies on the sensor, and immediately threw the idea behind him. If this means that the military is not here to find him, then his name will be written backwards from now on. Moreover, Chin Ning believed that people in the military would definitely be quite skilled at forging documents. Chen Ming conveniently sent this document to his boss, whose communication had not been interrupted. See what your boss thinks. However, the boss seemed to be busy with something because of what Chen Ning said about the military's actions, and did not give him an immediate answer. The military sent the document over and waited for a while before saying, Has it been confirmed? There is no problem with our mission this time. You can ask normally, but don't interfere too much with our mission. However, the secretary suddenly pointed out the problem of military documents. But this document does not seem to be available on the military's public website. There is always a delay in uploading these things on the website. This is very common. You can check the content of this document on the website after about one to two weeks. If you don't believe it, you can contact me directly and ask yourself if this document actually exists. What the military said was reasonable. And it sounded nominally fine. But in fact, the biggest problem is that they set the location of the review in the galaxy where the pirate space station is located. And it is also the most rogue place for the military. The military guards the hyperspace channel and the way in and out of the pirate space station is completely blocked, let alone pirates. Others may choose to take a detour if they have to go through multiple military reviews before they can come. Not to mention that the main flow of people to the pirate space station are all people with unclean identities. By doing this, the military will cut off the roots of the space station. If other local militaries follow suit, the investment from so many companies will be a joke. And during this period of time, several spaceships appeared approaching in both channels. But when they saw the situation in the galaxy's hyperspace, they all did not dare to get close, as if they were ready to run away at any time. It is impossible to say that there is no impact on the space station. The military really conducts reviews according to normal rules and will never go to this point. Just when the atmosphere in the communication channel gradually turned cold, Chen Ming suddenly heard the boss's voice in the headset. Chao Mu, I found a wanted document here. Please take a look. Chen Ming took out his terminal and saw the file sent by his boss. The content of the document is a wanted information. Chen Ming's wanted information. The crimes include using dangerous creatures to cause large-scale public harm, as well as some minor crimes of resisting arrest and assaulting public officials. It seemed that the military directly blamed Chen Ming for the destruction of the mining space station. And the bounty is 90 million. This wanted order was established just yesterday. In other words, the military fleet is definitely heading for him. Chin Ming took a few steps back, avoiding the captain, and whispered to the other end of the communication channel. Is my bounty just this small? Are you focusing on the wrong place? The people involved in the military outpost have completely ignored their own face and position. They will kill you even if they come directly near the space station. And I've been listening to what you said just now. The army's documents are being processed so quickly. I feel that there are too many people and things involved here. The boss paused for a moment and continued. But yes, after all, it involves Sky Steel. I have to go check it out for you. Good. The boss said nothing else for the time being. On Chen Ming's side, the captain was also in a dilemma of choice. There are not many options left. Either forcefully break through, go around, or turn back to the space station. Or, just cooperate honestly. Breaking through the military blockade is not a rational behavior at all. And the method of bypassing it is even more nonsense. If the fleet has discovered the whereabouts of the military before entering hyperspace, the fleet can choose to fly directly from space slowly, fly past the position blocked by the military, and then enter the hyperspace channel. Or you can avoid the location of the channel and go to non-channel areas in hyperspace, places where hyperspace channel clouds are densely covered. 
but doing so requires withstanding the devastation of a large amount of hyperspace lightning in the clouds, without large warships to open the way ahead. It is absolutely impossible to survive with just expulsion and escort. What's more, the military fleet has now seen the Cinda Company's fleet. They are not fools and cannot let go of the Cinda Company's fleet. Even if the fleet wanted to turn around and return to the space station now, I'm afraid it wouldn't be possible. This is because military ships are definitely equipped with pulse-blocking equipment that can restrict ships from entering and exiting hyperspace channels at will. It may even be because of the reinforcements from the space station that the military fleet guarding the hyperspace channel suddenly surrounded them. The total number of military fleets guarding the four directions was over a hundred, with about half of the number assigned to each direction. A total of 50 warships approached. Half expulsion, half escort. Expulsions are basically models called enforcers while guards are mostly centurions and expeditions. It is impossible for the fleet to take the initiative to attack military ships. But fortunately, with the protection of the space station's additional ships, the rear of the fleet will not be blocked. The military no longer gave any face at this time. The second notification message was sent directly. The fleet is required to publish the list of spacecraft members, suspend signal blocking of the spacecraft, and allow the military to conduct deep scans of all spacecraft in the fleet. You cannot take the initiative to attack. And there is no way to escape directly. In this situation, there is only one thing the captain can do. Under review, the captain suddenly turned away from the console and opened a closed door behind the bridge. The room behind that door, if Chin Ming remembered correctly, seemed to be red on the spaceship map. The captain walked in first and said to Chin Ming, Mr. Chin, please come here. Chin Ming did not feel any danger from behind the door and he also wanted to know what the captain was going to do. So he did not resist. Following the captain, he entered this bright small room with walls made of special materials and some cargo boxes stacked in the corner. Mr. Chin, this is the shielded cabin of our spacecraft, which can shield the scanning signal. Chin Ming waved his hand and said, I know this. You want me to stay here temporarily, right? Chin Ming heard from his colleagues when he was working at the mining space station that some cargo ships would have similar modifications. Originally, these materials were used for some operating spacecraft that often need to be close to stars to make materials for the outer star protective layer of the spacecraft. Later, someone discovered that this material could interfere with scanning signals to a certain extent. So this material became the best cover for some caravans to carry out smuggling activities. I just didn't expect that even Shinda Company had such a design. The captain next to him looked apologetic after Chen Ning spoke. Chen Ming didn't embarrass him too much. He walked straight to a few cargo boxes in the corner and sat down on them. After all, rationally speaking, the captain's current approach is the best approach when facing the military. If Chen Ming were placed in the captain's position, he would do the same thing. Better hurry up. The captain left the shielded cabin with a grateful face. Before the cabin door was completely closed, Chen Ming explained the current situation to his boss. After I get out, ask the boss what he thinks. And after ensuring that the door to the shielded cabin is closed, the captain released the signal blocking of the spacecraft and let the military spacecraft start scanning the fleet. At the same time, we are also prepared to launch a direct attack on the military when the shielded cabin fails. The security scan went on smoothly. The contact with the military had not been interrupted at this time. The military person just now suddenly said to the captain, What's going on with your two ships without people? The captain had already obtained a confession of collusion before and said, That was when we were testing the newly developed remote control system. Yeah. The military side left two words and didn't say much. The scan was completed soon. But the military fleet still needed time to verify the scan data. The captain turned the signal blocking back on and reopened the door to the shielded cabin. After Chen Ning heard the door behind him open, he moved his eyes away from the cargo box in front of him, contacted his boss again, and then left the shielded cabin, returned to the bridge control center, and returned to the captain's side. When he came over, Chen Ning happened to hear something said by the military on the communication channel. We now have reason to suspect that your two ships are stolen spaceships. Please cooperate with us to keep the spaceships and board them for inspection. There is no need to confirm this time. You can be 100% sure that the military is here to trouble Chen Ming. At the same time, Chen Ming also heard the boss's warning. Chao Mu, I found some strange news. There seems to be a problem within the military. Some people at the military outpost seem to want to start a rebellion. They won't tell you any rules. You must be prepared for a head-on battle. I feel like there's a big problem with this. 
and some people who shouldn't be involved are involved. Xiao Mu. You think of a way to hold on. I'll help you think of a way. Because of this somewhat outrageous news, Shen Ming couldn't help but said, Will there be a rebellion later? These last two words immediately attracted the captain's puzzled gaze. And at the moment when the captain turned his head, Chen Ming suddenly saw several military spacecrafts outside the bridge windows and suddenly opened their shields. He took the lead in activating weapons and launched an attack on the fleet. Several laser beams from energy weapons directly hit Chen Ming's iron mine. Chen Ming immediately activated the iron ore shield. The attack of scattered energy weapons in less than a second did not cause too much damage to the Dolomite armor. However, Chen Ming immediately asked the iron ore and the fighter Kai who were with the iron ore to hide behind the other ships in the fleet and immediately pressed the headset and said unabashedly, Boss, the military directly launched an attack on us. At the same time that Chen Ming was speaking, the captain also shouted in the fleet's communication channel, Prepare for combat. I see. As soon as the boss finished speaking, he suddenly said very irritably, Damn, someone is disgusting me. In Chen Ming's impression, it seemed like this was the first time the boss had spoken dirty words. But Chen Ming didn't have time to figure out what disgusted his boss so much that he could say this. He must now cooperate with other ships in the fleet to carry out subsequent operations. The military was the first to take action. And it was recorded by the sensors of so many spacecrafts at the scene. So it was impossible for the company to be beaten for no reason. Anyway, with the record in hand, even if there is a confrontation with the military in the future, the responsibility cannot be left on the company. After the captain's order was issued, the fleet immediately entered a wartime state. The protective layer of the porthole opened, and the image scanned by the sensor appeared on the large screen next to the interior. At the same time, there are also projectors that project the battlefield situation around the fleet to the center of the bridge control center. The fleet began to shrink its front, relying on the space station patrol spacecraft cover to quickly distance itself from the military fleet. Although there is support from the space station, with more than 60 ships compared to 100, the company's fleet is at an absolute disadvantage in terms of the number of ships. The only good news is that it will take some time for the military fleet that has blocked the other hyperspace channel to approach from the channel entrance. At the same time, there is still some support coming from the space station. If this military fleet can be defeated, then things will turn around and everything will have a chance. After the military launched the attack, the cattle driver, as the flagship of the fleet, immediately launched a counterattack against the military. The missile bays throughout the ship were opened, and a large number of annihilator missiles were launched directly towards the most densely populated areas of the military fleet. This is a missile without any advanced guidance lock function. Some are just large enough to cover the firepower and the actual power after the explosion. On a battlefield where small-scale ships are dispersed and flexible, it can only be said to be average. But in battles of medium or larger scale, this kind of annihilator is very easy to use. While causing pressure on the opposite side, it can also attract the firepower of a large part of the military ship's point defense weapons. It is a very good suppression-type missile weapon. While annihilator missiles were being launched in large numbers, the fighters on the Calhoun flight deck were also activated. The Cowherd is equipped with two different types of fighter aircraft. The Warthog-type fighter wing and the Longbow-type fighter wing. The Warthog wing carries two short-range grenade weapons and a complete set of thermal decoy launchers. The range explosion when the grenade weapon detonates and the effect of the thermal decoy bomb itself make this fighter aircraft have a strong restraint effect on missile-type weapons. The two weapons carried by another Longbow fighter are somewhat different from the Warthog. A prompt PD laser cannon is also a point defense-type weapon. The other one is a cyber SRM missile that is also equipped on Chen Ming's fighter class and has a strong effect on shields. These two types of fighters have very strong cover and support capabilities. After being activated, it followed other spacecraft in the fleet and launched an attack on the military fleet. The military may not have wanted to take the initiative to open fire at first. But something happened and Sindar's fleet also began to take action. And the military could not bother to explain anything. While Sindar Company's fleet was making moves, they also chose to open the battle line, relying on the unique and powerful firepower of military ships. A dense firepower network was built directly in space, covering almost the entire company fleet. In an instant, countless flames erupted in the center of both sides' battle lines. Concentrated beams of live ammunition and energy weapons flashed on the shields of ships on both sides. The design of military ships makes their shields unable to withstand the threat of a large number of shield-breaking weapons from the company. 
the shield of the military fleet at the forefront of the battle line was instantly in danger. But they seemed to be controlled by a nimble hand. All the ships that could not withstand the company's firepower quickly exchanged positions in the battle line with the ships in the rear that did not receive more attacks. Bear the harm for each other in complex and intertwined battle fronts. The main capabilities of Sindar's fleet are focused on escorting and breaking shields. The military's spacecraft can indeed be suppressed in a short period of time, making their weapons unable to fire because the shield radiation energy is about to be overloaded. But the actual destruction efficiency of the spacecraft is the same as that of the few ships Chen Ming has on hand. When there is no way to terminate the military spacecraft, and the military still has an excellent commander, the speed of breaking through shields and penetrating armor cannot keep up with the speed of the military's dispatch and rotation of ships. Military ships have more recovery time than corporate ships. They are also expelled guards. And the number in a short period of time is even less than that of the company. But the actual combat effectiveness of the military spacecraft is stronger than that of the company's fleet. As the battle progressed and more military ships joined the battle, this feeling became even more obvious. Even the space station is sending spacecraft into the hyperspace channel for rescue. After several rounds of firefights, the company's fleet was directly surrounded by the military's fleet. Although the overall number of warships on both sides is similar. Less than a hundred versus just over a hundred. But the company has fallen into a clear disadvantage. A large number of ships were damaged and their combat capabilities were lost. Cow class fighters are also unable to produce sufficient effects because of the military's unique flexible and professional tactical adjustment and dispatch capabilities. It will either be damaged and return home, or it will be directly destroyed in space. Chen Ming Centurion was like a drop of water in the sea in the battle of hundreds of spaceships. Without the slightest sense of existence, he even felt that even if the fighter came to this battlefield, it would not play a decisive role at all. The situation can be said to be one-sided towards the military. It was too late for Chen Ming to leave the cattle driver. Even if they left, there was no chance of escaping from the military siege. If the company's fleet is defeated here, then Chen Ning will have no future. So in the current situation, there isn't much he can do. The fastest and most effective one is to control the cowherd class ship he is on, relying on his psychic powers and his panels. He can do things that are absolutely impossible to do under normal circumstances. Chapter 94 at this time. The armor-breaking class is still on the way. The situation is serious. Without much hesitation, Chen Ming took off his gauntlet and pressed it on the wall behind him. New spacecraft signal detected. Whether to change the brain control signal connection. Number of currently connected spaceships. Two halves. The spacecraft that Chen Ming is currently directly connected to is a Centurion class that is on the battlefield. And the other is an armor-breaking class that is still coming. As for the iron ore, which had been hiding behind the cattle driver, Chen Ming had stopped controlling it from the moment the battle began. Anyway, the cattle driver basically wouldn't move. And the iron ore was safe there. So in the current situation, Chen Ming can only disconnect the A-level connection first and let it continue to fly to the space station according to the previous autopilot system. At the same time, let the Centurion begin to retreat from the edge of the battle line and be ready to transfer the Centurion's control to the armor-breaking level at any time. There was no time to wait too long. Chen Ming said silently in his heart. Replace. For a moment, Chen Ming's mind suddenly went into a trance. After that, there was no more. The negative impact of controlling this cattle class ship was nothing more than that. It was not like what Chen Ming had expected when he controlled his refraction. From breaking through from a frigate to a destroyer, breaking through the limits caused a sting to the brain. Just like doing a normal thing. But having said that, Chen Ming still found that the number of currently connected spaceships on the panel had become two-thirds. It seemed that controlling the new spacecraft still required a certain loss of mental power. Otherwise, there would be no corresponding increase in spiritual energy. Chin Ming put the Centurion back online to support the fleet at the edge of the battle line. Then, the cattle driver level panel opened. A panel that almost completely occupied his entire field of vision jumped out immediately. However, Chin Ming does not have time to check the specific values of the panel in detail now. I could only quickly scan the panel for the most critical content for the spacecraft. Radiation, armor, weapons and aircraft unique to the aircraft carrier. The cowherd's radiation capacity is currently 2159-6000, which is in a fairly good condition. After all, most of the cowherd's weapons are missile weapons that do not increase the radiation capacity. So basically all of its radiation capacity can be used for pure shield protection. And the radiation status is naturally relatively good. The shield has not been broken. So the armor will naturally not be damaged. 
The cattle driver's armor therefore had no problems. There are a little more problems with weapons. The cowherd's panel showed more than a dozen rows of missile mounting points located at different locations on the ship. And these mounting points were already running out of ammunition. All missile hardpoints on the cowherd are equipped with annihilator missiles. When the battle first broke out, a large number of them were released without any regard for losses. Even if Chen Ning found a missile production workshop on the cowherd, it was already too late to supply the launch needs of the hardpoints. But Chen Ning's ability is used in this kind of place. In the warehouse next to the production workshop, there are a large number of semi-finished products for missile production that are easy to store. And the materials are sufficient. Chen Ming's repair ability can load bullets into weapons. Whether it is ordinary metal projectiles or complex missiles. As long as the materials are available, they can be filled directly. However, Chen Ming was in no hurry to take action immediately. There was something else that required his attention. The cattle driver's fighter plane. Flight deck, first floor 39 80th, 16. This is a line of information related to fighter aircraft displayed on the panel. There are three other lines of information similar to this line. Each of these four rows represents a flight deck on the Cowhood class. The first number in this specific content refers to the number of fighters currently parked on the flight deck. The second is the upper limit on the number of fighters that each deck can carry. The third one is the number of fighter planes still engaged in diplomatic warfare. The overall data are basically the same. Chin Ning was certain that the cattle drivers had prepared enough fighters before setting off. The reduced number on the panel means that the fighter wing on each deck has suffered nearly one-third battle losses. Chin Ming was now helpless about the spaceships outside. The panels could not affect those fighters. But there are still things he can do for these fighters parked on the deck that have not yet set off. Or that have been damaged and are returning to flight. After determining where his ability was needed, Chin Ming immediately pressed the repair button on the panel. Just 10 seconds after he did this, there was a sudden noise on the captain's communication channel. A voice said extremely nervously and hastily, Captain! All the fighters on the deck were suddenly repaired by metallic liquid that came out of nowhere. And those liquids are still automatically forming lost fighters. What the H? L is he doing? What's going on? Chen Ming was very close to the captain. So he naturally heard the sound of the communication channel. He was actually quite surprised that the panel could not only repair damaged fighter planes, but also repair lost spaceships. This ability to supplement fighters can always supplement the number of fighters on the deck to the upper limit that the flight deck can carry. Of course, this includes the fighters that are still fighting outside and have not yet returned. It can only be said that Chen Ning always felt that the repair function that he had on the panel from the beginning was an ability that could only be explained by metaphysics. He does not need to have information about what needs to be repaired. Nor does he need to master the repair technology. As long as the thing to be repaired is on the spacecraft. And as long as there are enough materials, Chen Ning will dare to repair it for it. It is completely different from the transformation that requires Chen Ning to personally master the relevant technology, which is quite outrageous. And not just from the flight deck. Messages from other places are also coming in one after another. Captain! There is a situation where a large amount of metallic liquid flows into the launch point and forms an annihilator missile at the missile mounting point. Should we continue to launch? Captain! There was an accident in the spacecraft's warehouse materials. All the semi-finished missiles in storage melted and flowed out directly after penetrating the wall of the spacecraft. The same goes for the warehouse next to the deck. All fighter parts and reserve fighters that have not been debugged have the same situation. Several pieces of information from different departments appeared at the captain at the same time. The captain immediately looked at Chen Ming next to him. Mr. Chen? Chen Ming nodded. After estimating that his mental strength was enough to sustain the amount of consumption just now, he said, Please arrange a shuttle boat for me. At the same time, let all the destroyer level ships come closer. I need to make contact with other ships. The captain took a deep breath, forced himself to accept this unimaginable situation, and bowed his head slightly to Chin Ming and said, I will make arrangements for you right away. Chin Ming's idea is simple. His ability allows him to quickly switch between the ships he controls. So as long as he controls all the company's spacecraft, and then when any spacecraft has a problem, he can immediately switch control to repair it, relying on the powerful ability of the panel. It provides a layer of psychic protection to all spacecraft. To put it simply, there are four words, cut quickly and repair quickly. Moreover, the cost of repairing the spacecraft is not too much for Chen Ming now. Chen Ming had been constantly consuming his mental energy for repairs and modifications some time ago. At the same time, he was also exercising with the Whispering Stone and the Lie Stone. 
which was very effective in improving his mental strength. In addition, Chin Ming had rested for more than 10 hours while waiting in the lounge, so it shouldn't be a problem to sustain another battle. However, Chin Ming is also self-aware and does not really want to control all spaceships. Just controlling all the destroyers in the fleet for repairs is almost the limit of his current mental strength. While the captain arranged a shuttle boat for Chin Ming, the cattle drivers once again poured tons of annihilator missiles in the direction of the military fleet, and it maintained the highest level of firepower output almost every moment after that. Like an endless sea of missiles, coupled with the organic fighter planes that seemed to be filling the battle line forever, the situation on the battlefield was suddenly skewed due to this. At the same time, on the side of the military fleet, there was a ship at the very rear of the battle line that did not directly participate in the battle. This is a law enforcer class destroyer with a special orange red painting. From the appearance, it can be seen that it has definitely undergone a lot of special modifications. And on the top armor of the law enforcer, there is an orange red eagle shaped logo with spread wings. And there is a mark below the logo. In the command room of this military flagship, the commander of this battle is sitting behind the main control panel of the spacecraft. The commander looks very young and wears a well fitting military uniform. However, his military uniform is different from other soldiers. There is an eagle-shaped logo on the left chest that is the same as the top of the spacecraft. At this time, he was looking at the real-time data uploaded back from the battle line, analyzing the situation on the battlefield, and issuing the most appropriate order based on this. It's just that his expression is still the same as before, with a calm look. But he had some doubts in his heart, because there is something wrong with the data passed back. Commanders have very in-depth knowledge of most of the ships that may appear on the battlefield. The impression of a relatively special ship like the cattle driver is even deeper. And now this cattle driver has obviously exerted its capabilities far beyond what it should have. The first thought that came to the commander's mind was that the cowhood had chosen to overcarry and equip the ship for combat effectiveness. But doing so can often lead to some non-combat related problems with the spacecraft. Even if you can have strong combat effectiveness in the short term, it will never last long. Therefore, he did not have any special emotions because of the changes in the battlefield situation caused by the sudden outbreak of the cattle drivers. Instead, he continued to direct with a calmer mind. Even if the cowhood can exert actual combat effectiveness that far exceeds normal circumstances. Even if the cowherd itself is a very powerful ship among destroyer-class ships. But just one ship would never be able to cause much trouble on a battlefield with more than a hundred ships. And the commander did not believe that the war supplies on the cattle driver were unlimited no matter how many fighters or missiles there are. As long as there are restrictions, he can handle them all. From the very beginning of the battle, even when there was no numerical advantage in battleships, the commander could rely on his command skills to firmly control the battle situation in his hands. So, he has such confidence. The commander's precise command was transmitted to every military ship on the battlefield through the fleet communication channel, suddenly giving the company's fleet greater suppressive power than before. But the problem immediately arose again. The commander was able to keenly notice from the changes in the battle situation that more company spaceships were in the same situation as the cattle herder, and suddenly displayed combat capabilities that far exceeded the upper limit of the spacecraft's normal combat effectiveness. So much so that many local battle situations that were supposed to gain an advantage under his planning had unexpected consequences. The situation where he was supposed to rely on his scheduling to gain an advantage in the exchange of small-scale combat power radiation on the battlefield and force the opponent to shrink their front suddenly changed. The firepower was insufficient to defeat the enemy shield, but instead caused the spacecraft executing the order to fall into danger. Although this did not happen at the same time, there were ships in some places that did achieve some results under his command. But the place where the victory was just achieved will soon be replenished by the company's ships whose combat effectiveness has suddenly increased. It feels to the commander that each company's spacecraft can achieve several times more radiation capacity and firepower output than a normal ship, whether it's live ammunition, missiles, or energy weapons. They all seem to be infinite, constantly counterattacking against military ships. Even their shields last longer than normal. It was as if the entire ship was refreshed when it was about to reach its limit. Something went wrong with the commander's ongoing experience. But he didn't panic. Instead, he threw out all the past experiences in his mind and slowed down the offensive to suppress the company's fleet and began to re-examine the company's fleet by looking at real-time action from the many small battles that make up a large battlefield. Commanders discovered something. He discovered that not all ships in the company's fleet would have capabilities that far exceeded normal circumstances. 
but that only destroyer level ships would have such special performance. And he also caught another characteristic. That is, all spaceships that far exceed their own combat power limit only behave like this after getting close to the cattle herders. Did the cattle drivers prepare a lot of combat supplies to replenish other spaceships? Wrong. The commander immediately rejected his idea. Because he also discovered more situations. According to the results of the sensor scan, there was a small shuttle boat used for small-scale personnel transfers between ships parked next to the cattle driver. And every spacecraft that approaches the cattle driver is not approaching the cattle driver, but is approaching the shuttle boat. Only destroyers that have been exposed to shuttle boats will display more terrifying combat capabilities when they return to the front line of the battlefield. Could it be that? The commander had an immature guess in his mind. He immediately called his deputy. And while commanding the fleet, he said distractedly, In addition to patrolling and reviewing the areas where UA ships have appeared many times this time, is there one more thing to do? Track down a wanted person. Guilty? The deputy immediately answered him. Yes. This person's name is Chen Ming. And he is most likely in the Cinda Company's fleet. Where is his information? The deputy immediately found the intelligence compiled by the military at the military outpost and began dictating it to the commander, who did not have time to read the intelligence himself. Chen Ming, a senior maintenance engineer at the head office of Cinda Rockwell Company, later became the senior maintenance engineer team leader of the mining subsidiary of Cinda Company and performed cryosleep missions on the DGC-9527 mining space station. In April 5569 AD, they colluded with pirates to release large-scale biohazardous weapons on the mining space station. This intelligence was confirmed yesterday, and the relevant wanted notice was issued. The commander didn't hear what his deputy said and asked, Is there nothing else? The information given by the outpost is basically some identity resume. Nothing special. No. What about his family background? Orphan. Then what's his reason for doing this? Not known yet. The commander's expression rarely changed and he said, A person who looks like he is doing field missions and looking for promotion suddenly inexplicably colludes with pirates to release large-scale biohazardous weapons where he works. I remember that the military here sealed off the galaxy for 30 years. Right? Didn't they find the people who had stayed in the galaxy? Instead, send our company. A victim of a space station being killed. Found him as the culprit and sent an escort fleet to pick him up? Are you kidding me? The commander said. Slowing down the attack frequency of the fleet under his command again, he directly took the terminal from the deputy's hand and retrieved some documents given by the military. At the same time, some additional information investigated by his people was also retrieved. After confirming these things, the commander suddenly sneered and said, Ah, Sindar's mining rights. Sindar's mining space station. The people who escaped from the space station and the output of sky steel belonging to the military. Why didn't I pay attention to this issue when I participated in the mission before? The deputy next to you wanted to say something because you had been holding it in for too long and all you could think about was fighting with Yue. Without thinking, you took the initiative to review the places where Yue frequently appeared. He didn't care about the face of the webmaster at all. But in the end, he still didn't dare to say it. The commander suddenly put down the terminal and looked at his deputy and said, where are those ships whose weapons were said to have misfired just now? Give me their list. You know what I want. The deputy nodded and immediately returned to the command room after leaving for a while. A piece of paper and a list of personnel were handed to the commander. The commander quickly checked it over and said expressionlessly, They are all the station commander's cronies. Are you treating me as a spearman? Are the soldiers here rotten? So what do you think? The commander waved his hand and said, It's okay. Let's continue fighting. Although the station master suspected him of being a spearman, he had nothing to do in this remote corner of the star field. Commanding the fleet to fight was his favorite thing. Moreover, the target of the battle may also be a psychic. The commander had never heard of any psychers in Sindar Company who could enhance the capabilities of the ship. Or he had never heard of psychers with such abilities. There are high-ranking officials from the military within Sindar Company, and it is impossible to completely conceal the information about psychers from the military. Therefore. The psyker on the shuttle must be a newly awakened psionic being who has recently joined the company. Bye. And Shinda Company sent the highest level fleet that could be organized in a short period of time to pick up Chen Ning, which simply made the importance of Chen Ning clear. At the same time, the commander did not believe that a person who traveled half a light year from a space station full of biohazards on a damaged spaceship that did not even have a hyperspace channel system and returned alive to a pirate space station would be an ordinary person. 
once the current situations are combined, it is actually easy to deduce that Chen Ming is a psyker. Even the commander can directly guess the general situation. The military dropped biological weapons on the space station for the benefit of Sky Steel, and Chen Ming just happened to escape in the cryosleep chamber. Thirty years later, Chen Ming woke up and awakened the spaceship control type of psychic energy on the dangerous space station. Then he relied on the damaged spaceship to return to the pirate space station and contacted Shindao Company to prepare for a counterattack against the military. The military discovered Chen Ming's existence at this juncture and prepared to deal with this threat. Although the commander himself did not have the slightest fondness for the dirty things done by the military at the military outpost, he had a certain appreciation for Chen Ming, a man who returned to the human world from an extremely dangerous environment. But the battle has begun, pitting the psyker's psychic talents against his learned command skills. He didn't want to miss this opportunity. Anyway, he would not reveal the news that Chen Ning was probably a psyker. There is no sign of this in the information provided by the military outpost, which shows that the military investigation here is not comprehensive enough. And there is no need for him to wipe others' butts. And if he really wins in the end, he will definitely not deliberately kill people, but will find a way to get Chen Ming away safely. They are currently short of psychic manpower. Capturing a psyker and bringing him back is more profitable than killing a psyker to please the military in this sector. As for Shindao Company, if it loses the battle, it will have no right to speak. However, he would try to be more restrained. After all, Chen Ming was from Sindar Company. It would be bad if he destroyed too many Sindar Company spaceships, and Chen Ming was too resistant to join them after being captured. Of course, this restraint will only appear when the battle situation is completely one sided. After all, he is still not sure whether he can defeat Chen Ming's psychic talent with his commanding skills. If not, Everything he thinks about now is empty talk. The commander returned his attention to the battlefield again. His eyes were fixed on the location of the shuttle boat next to the cattle driver. Are you there? Shen Ming. Chapter 95 The Precarious Front The armor-piercing armor finally arrived. The military commander was completely focused on Shen Ming. The battle line that he had just relaxed because he was distracted to read the intelligence also tightened a lot in an instant. The battle front suddenly moved a lot closer to the company's side for spaceships that had no time to retreat were directly hit by their shields. Only one destroyer, protected by Chen Ming, relied on panel repair to forcibly dissipate the almost overflowing radiation. The other three frigates that lost their shield protection were immediately overwhelmed by subsequent attacks, with no possibility of rescue. Two of them were destroyed instantly, and the only one that was quite lucky was only paralyzed, losing its combat capability, and pushed out of the battlefield by the impact of the weapon hit. And this is just the beginning. In a normal battle, the fighters maintaining a front are relatively evenly distributed. Under normal circumstances, there will be no situation where one side is full of escorts and the other side is full of destroyers. But this means that the cattle drivers sitting in the center of the battle line are at a certain distance from both ends of the battle line. Therefore, letting the destroyers at both ends of the battle line return to the cattle herders and letting Chen Ming take control will result in a small window of time in front of the battle line. Even if one ship rotates with extremely low efficiency, it is easy for a short period of time for the combat effectiveness to be weakened on the front of the battlefield. The military commander's extremely keen battlefield sense allowed him to immediately seize this fighter opportunity. While Chen Ming controlled the destroyer, he made quite radical arrangements directly on the front. It put full pressure on the spacecraft on the front line. Even if it fails to break through the battle line and create results, it will be difficult for other battleships on the battle line to resist. Moreover, the commander also deliberately recorded which spaceships had approached Chen Ming's shuttle boat, and deliberately asked the military ships to actively avoid the location of these spacecrafts during the attack. During normal battles, he took the initiative to direct more spaceships to attack the spaceships that were not rotated back to be controlled by Chen Ming, since the battle line has always needed destroyers as the backbone to maintain. Chen Ming's progress in controlling the destroyers has not yet been completely completed. So, under the commander's targeted attacks, Problems occurred all along the front. Chen Ning could only use the panel's ability to maintain the critical position of the battle line according to the captain's instructions, so that the spacecraft would not be destroyed and the battle line would not be completely defeated. As a result, Chen Ming was not only mentally exhausted, but also physically unable to support himself. It is very normal to concentrate on one thing with high intensity and then feel distracted and haggard, but having such a feeling in just a few minutes was a bit difficult for Chen Ming to accept. He couldn't help but rub his temples, soothe his brain, 
and continue to hold on. This is the first time since Chen Ming left the space station until today that he has felt such huge pressure on his head. And this is how powerful the real army is in combat. Even if it has psychic powers, it is somewhat difficult to make up for it. Chen Ming took a few deep breaths and adjusted his mentality that was somewhat affected by the battle situation. Anyway, the military's purpose now is very clear, which is to kill him. People are going to die. Why don't they wait for the next life if they don't work hard? Chen Ming looked at the special orange-red painted law enforcer on the sensor screen. The command of the military is definitely on that ship. If there was a chance, he would destroy the ship as soon as possible. Only in this way will he have the confidence and opportunity to win this battle. Although Chen Ming has nothing to do with the military's command now. However, Chen Ning came up with a solution to the problem and told it to the captain. Let the spaceships on the front line be staggered and spaced apart before turning around. At the same time, he changed the positions of the ships and tried to make sure that there were ships under his control on the entire front. As long as the spacecraft controlled by Chen Ming can wait until the spacecraft returns. And the combat effectiveness of the spacecraft is enhanced by the panel repair ability. The battle line can replenish the section that was just repelled. When all destroyers are controlled by him. The problem of uneven distribution of combat power on the front and relatively weak combat capabilities in some places will no longer exist. The captain was very willing to accept Chen Ming's previous suggestion. But he did not accept the subsequent suggestion to change the position of the ship at all. The reason is quite simple. The current command system on the side of Sindar's fleet is improvised and very fragile. It is impossible for the captain to let the rescue ship sent by Sinda Company leave the support ship at the space station. And vice versa. They can only conduct separate commands. Otherwise, once there is any mistake in his command, this fragile command system will lead to chaos in command authority and some difficult to control problems. And a while after Chen Ming made the suggestion, the captain gave Chen Ming some bad news. Mr. Chen, our manpower here will not be able to hold on anymore. What manpower? Fighter manpower. Chen Ning reacted immediately upon hearing this. The fighter aircraft itself needs to be controlled by the pilot and the pilot also needs to judge the damage to the fighter aircraft and the timing of return. Although Chen Ming can directly repair the fighter planes, he can even replenish the lost fighters. But the loss of personnel cannot be made up for. Less maintenance time means less time for drivers to take breaks and work shifts. He continued to rush towards the battlefield without stopping for a moment. The captain was able to tell Chen Ning about this because the pilots on the cowherd were so worn out that they could no longer support a fully equipped fighter wing. The remaining pilots on the ship must have flown the fighter plane several times. And they were even more exhausted than he was when he stayed in the safer rear. If this continues, if the military fails to defeat the fleet, the fleet itself will run into problems due to excessive internal attrition. Although all fighter planes are equipped with emergency escape cabins, the real losses should not be this severe. But it's hard to say how many drivers will actually come back. Chen Ming really didn't want to hear what the captain said. But this was the inevitable flaw of aircraft carriers and fighter planes under normal circumstances. Unless, like Tachyon Technology's heavy rain class, it is equipped with a Terminator fighter wing controlled by AI. Tachyon Technology seems to have also initially completed the technology to remotely control the spacecraft without being affected by the complex battlefield environment. If Chen Ning could obtain the rainstorm level, this situation would not occur now. But Cinda Company is different from Tachyon Technology, which is apparently researching AI spacecraft technology and is on the edge of the law. Shinda Company can only rely on people to fly fighter planes. And casualties to personnel are inevitable. Chen Ming is quite sad now. If he could control the cowherd in advance, and install the Afterglow AI core on the cowherd and make some simple modifications, he might be able to allow Afterglow to control these fighters. Although the effect may be much worse than having someone drive it in person. After all, Chen Ming did not. But, and just think about it. Chen Ming now has no way to solve the problem of shortage of manpower so he could only respond helplessly. I know. At the same time, repairs to the cowherd fighter jets were also stopped. The fighter plane no longer needed to be repaired, so at least his spirit could relax a little. However, the spirit can be relaxed, but it is not possible to be on a tight front all the time. There are still the last batch of fighters that can provide support, but their ability to protect friendly ships will definitely drop by a notch in the future. Fortunately, there was nothing wrong with the cattle driver's missiles, and he should be able to resist for a while longer. However, a lot of missile materials have been consumed so far. The materials on other destroyers controlled by Chen Ming that were prepared to repair the spacecraft after the battle were almost used up. 
just like the missile materials. Moreover, the weapons and ammunition on these spacecraft are also close to running out. If we continue, we can only rely on the materials stored in the cattle driver's warehouse to support us. When these reserves of supplies are exhausted, the combat effectiveness of the entire fleet will decline dramatically. Although the military is in the same situation, and their combat readiness materials cannot be instantly converted into combat and endurance capabilities like Xin Ming, but their own combat capabilities are stronger than the space station and the company's fleet. It can achieve greater results with less losses. In addition, the military's ships were much larger than the company's from the beginning. After putting so much pressure on the company's fleet through exquisite command techniques, forcing the fleet to consume supplies in batches, Chen Ning didn't think the military would be able to sustain the Sinar fleet, which was constantly using reserve supplies to support the combat effectiveness of the spacecraft. Even though Chen Ning had already asked the captain to ask for material assistance from the space station, but it takes time to gather the materials, load them, and move them. In the current battle, I'm afraid it's too late to send it over. With the help of Chen Ming, Xin Da Company's fleet has gradually declined. However, the military resisted the explosion caused by Chen Ming's ability, and the situation they had been desperately trying to maintain turned towards them again. At this time, the total number of spaceships that both sides could still fight on the battlefield totaled less than 140, and a quarter of the warships had already sunk in this hyperspace. Most of the remaining warships have been damaged and will be unable to withstand more severe battles. Chin Ming's side now only has over 50 warships, while the military has more than 80. You must know that at the beginning. Although Chin Ming supported less than 30 ships from Xinda Company here, with the support of the space station, the total number of ships was close to 100. But now, nearly half of the fleet has been lost, and there will be no more spacecraft that can support it from the space station in the future. The situation over there at the space station is the same as the Cowherd fighter planes. There are spaceships, but no one is flying them. In the previous two afterglow attacks, the company helped reimburse each loss and also sent follow-up spaceships that could be used for combat. But the personnel losses cannot be replenished so quickly. However, on the military side, there were more than 100 military militarized spacecraft. And after the battle, there were still more than 70 remaining. Obviously there is no big gap between the companies and the military spaceships in terms of the technical level of low-level spacecrafts. However, due to the gap in fleet organization and command, as well as actual combat capabilities, the final battle loss ratio was 2 to 1. The only good news in this situation right now, only the company's fleet suffered losses. And those that were destroyed and paralyzed were mostly frigates. Because of Chen Ming's protection, there are now 31 destroyers left. It's just that this good news is a bit not okay, under the cover of bad news. Because the number of remaining destroyers in the military fleet has exceeded the company's fleet. It's not just that there were more destroyers in the military than in the company from the beginning. Also because the military spacecraft are equipped with professional maintenance technicians. Most of the spacecraft were not destroyed on the spot, but simply withdrew from the battlefield because they were paralyzed. As long as there are no critical injuries, they will return to the battlefield soon. This is also one of the reasons why the proportion of battle losses on both sides of the battle is large. In short, even if Chen Ming can increase the upper limit of the spacecraft's performance through maintenance, the spacecraft will be given a new look so that the combat effectiveness of the spacecraft can explode in a short period of time. And it can even continue to explode as long as the supplies are sufficient, relying on the reserves of combat materials. All disadvantages including the number of spaceships, weapons, and personnel can be compensated, and even a little advantage can be regained. But I can only get back a little bit. The gap between the company and the military as a whole lies there. Unlike the Sindar company, the military only had less than 30 reliable spacecraft at its disposal at the beginning, and had to rely on space station support. It's not like the fleet's command system can only be pieced together temporarily, making it difficult to control the battlefield situation in a refined manner, given the huge disparity in various aspects. It can only be said that Chen Ning has done his best by relying on his spiritual power to reach this point. If there are no variables after that, failure is inevitable. At the same time, the commander sitting on the Enforcer class also felt that the balance of victory was completely tilted. He had sensed that the enemy had reached its limit. It's not Chen Ning's limit, but the limit of other people, other ships, and the fleet. The patrol spacecraft of the space station and the spacecraft escorted by Sindar Company were completely inadequate compared to the military spacecraft. And they were completely unable to display the outstanding capabilities 
that the commander felt during the battle. But no matter what factors are involved, it is the company that is not prepared enough, or the military that has prepared the means in advance. Victory is victory. That's it then. The commander has found a loophole in the fleet battle line and is ready to attack at any time to destroy the company's fleet's combat capabilities and end this battle. All it takes is one last straw. But, right now, a ship that was obviously a military destroyer suddenly arrived at the edge of the battlefield from the hyperspace channel. The overall shape like a spearhead has made its identity clear. This is the armor-breaking level that Chen Ming has been waiting for for a long time. When the armor-breaking class finally reached the edge of the battlefield, Chen Ming couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. The reason why armor-breaking came slowly was because it took too much time on the road. Although Chen Ming was paying special attention to armor-piercing, when passing through the galaxy, he found ways to hide it or pass directly through it from the outside. However, it cannot be completely avoided that the armor-breaking class was chased by government patrols several times while passing through some galaxies. They could only escape by entering the hyperspace channel cloud to avoid the scanning of the sensors. Entering the cloud layer of the hyperspace channel cloud will inevitably be affected by hyperspace lightning. So after arriving nearby, the broken armor could only go to the dark cemetery and repair it before coming over. The total time spent was more than twice as long as when Chen Ming came back by himself. But at least it managed to reach the armor-breaking level at the last critical moment. And that was the most important thing. The commander obviously also noticed the destroyer that suddenly appeared on the edge of the battlefield. He seemed to have some impression of the ship in his mind. But he was just not sure. So he did not issue an order to attack. Instead, he immediately asked the deputy next to him. Whose ship is that? The deputy immediately replied. That's a Star Territory Government ship. Breaking a class. The Star Domain Government has previously informed the military here that a spacecraft experiment will be conducted nearby. Using the afterglow as a reference for the experiment. But the document said that their fleet will not arrive for a few days. And there is only one coming now. There may be some special arrangements. The commander nodded slightly, focused his attention back on commanding the fleet, and said, That has nothing to do with us. Send a message to that ship and ask them to stop or go around directly. Go to the outpost and don't get in the way here. Yes. Chen Ming, who was on the shuttle boat, suddenly received a message from the military from the armor-breaking level, which surprised him. But he immediately realized that this was an opportunity. An opportunity to make a surprise attack. He immediately sent a, received, reply to the military fleet, and then asked the armor-breaking class to pretend that everything was normal and avoid the battle line, maintaining an ambiguous distance and bypassing the center of the battlefield. Although this behavior was correct on the whole, the commander, who was keenly aware of danger at this time still noticed the abnormality of the armor-breaking level. What are the people in the government doing? Keep sending messages to keep them away from the battlefield. The deputy is assigned by the commander to deliver the message but the commander is already prepared for the unexpected. The moment he received the second military message, Chen Ning knew that time waits for no one. Although the armor-breaking level has not reached the ideal position, it is now at a position that is acceptable to Chen Ming. Chen Ming controlled the armor-piercing class and suddenly began to accelerate. At the same time, he turned the bow and aimed at the position of the military flagship, the Special Law Enforcer class. All the special equipment on the armor-breaking level are activated together with Chen Ming's control. The anti-particle energy intensification module generates a huge amount of energy fluctuations visible to the naked eye around the armor-breaking class. The large high-energy focusing system module makes the armor-piercing large weapons covered with energy-guided streamers. The energy mass stabilizer stabilizes the restrained energy bomb that is constantly fluctuating. Energy balls condense to an almost substantial level flashed in the automatic pulse laser cannon barrel mounted on the armor-piercing class. With one charge, 30 consecutive rounds of large restraint energy bombs that could almost engulf a ship like the iron or were poured out. Go straight to the military flagship. The commander has already taken precautions in advance. The enforcer class has opened its shields in advance. And two other destroyers have returned to the enforcer for protection. Share the damage for the enforcer class. However, the automatic pulse laser is a large weapon. Just when the first energy bomb hit the shield of a destroyer, the military's relatively weak shield almost instantly reached the edge of overload, and obvious ripples appeared on the entire shield. The destroyer didn't even have time to close its shields before the second restraint energy bomb hit it. The destroyer's shield burst open, and the entire destroyer was covered with violent flashing arcs caused by radiation overload. Then it was completely overwhelmed by the remaining energy bombs. 
The military's always powerful armor could not stand up to the large energy weapons powered by two special equipment for too long. Following the follow-up energy bombs, the armor of the military destroyer was damaged, and the ship was destroyed in hyperspace almost instantly. There was no chance of resistance. There are still more than half of the restraint energy bombs left, and are still moving forward. The second destroyer did not flinch, because the spacecraft in front was instantly destroyed. Instead, it continued to block the enforcer, who was targeting Chen Ming. Everyone on this destroyer is ready to sacrifice. Its shield also collapsed at a touch. But unlike the previous destroyer, it blocked the time when the shield closed, while allowing the radiant energy system to carry maximum damage. The spacecraft was not overloaded. The spaceship can still turn its hull to make the area under attack larger, allowing more armor to bear more damage. Although it could not escape the fate of being destroyed, at least its sacrifice gave the Special Enforcer class the opportunity to enter the protective circle of military ships. The military fleet began to dispatch, temporarily slowing down the suppression of the Sinar fleet, and began to encircle and suppress the armor-breaking class, which was the most threatening of all the spaceships present. However, Jin Ming had planned the route and had communicated with the captain in advance. A sudden change of direction led directly to the Enforcer class entering the company's fleet. Under the protection of a large number of ships, the extremely sharp spear of armor piercing can exert its strongest ability regardless of its own safety. After the weapon cooled down for 15 seconds, the automatic pulse laser started charging again. A round of large energy restraint bombs was fired at the leading military destroyer in the area with the greatest pressure on the current front. Just like before, the destroyer turned into dust in space without any struggle. The overwhelming momentum of the military fleet suddenly stagnated. It can only be said that armor breaking is worthy of the name of armor breaking. Although it is equipped with an automatic pulse laser, it does not have the terrifying instant high energy output of a point kill like a tachyon spear. But its short term burst capability of restrained energy bullets is quite impressive. It also has a slow fire mode. There is no need to cool down, and it can continuously output large scale restrained energy bombs at a rate of fire of one shot per second. Paired with two special devices on the spacecraft, that can be quickly cooled through Qin Ming's repair function. No ship in the military can withstand the firepower of this large weapon. With the addition of armor piercing, the frontal pressure on the battle line has been reduced sharply. The situation of the battle reversed almost instantly. Chapter 96 The battle suddenly stopped. The terrifying destructive power of the armor piercing class can be exerted in the most perfect way under the protection of many company ships. Such a devastating attack that could come at any time would definitely put more pressure on the opponent than the pressure the military put on Chen Ming just now. But the commander on the military flagship did not panic at this time. But calmed down again. The commander had heard the name of the armor-breaking class. And also remembered the situation of the armor-breaking class. This is Sin our company's unique. And can be considered as radical. Spaceship design. Although it has extremely strong firepower. When the armor-breaking class only had a design concept, and no physical proof of combat effectiveness. Its two fragile armor and line resistance capabilities prevented the military from choosing it in the annual tenders. Before, he also thought that armor-piercing weapons were just unreliable experiments. But now that he had seen the final object, he suddenly felt that the ability to destroy equal-level ships in an instant did have considerable tactical significance. But the commander remembered that this ship seemed to have been taken away by the government in a previous tender. Why is the government wrong? It's not the government. The commander suddenly realized the problem. Summoned his deputy and asked, Do you have the recent movements of Chen Ming? Who is wanted by the military? Yes. After Chen Ming's identity is confirmed. All the information is traceable. Tell me the key points. Yes. After arriving at the pirate space station, Chen Ming changed his name to Mu Shui Kong and rejoined Xina Company with a new identity. There is nothing wrong with this part. He was just an ordinary employee at the time. He must have been quite suspicious of the situation on the space station. It is normal for him to change his identity and infiltrate again to test the company's attitude. What happens next? What followed were two afterglow attacks on the space station. He was involved in both incidents. The first time, although there was evidence that he had been staying on the space station, his ship clashed with other ships on the edge of the battlefield, destroying four civilian merchant ships, one Cerberus and one Sentinel, against many two-ship expedition, and later captured a complete civilian-class sentinel and acquired half of the afterglow remnant destroyer that led to their conflict. The commander was not surprised at all by this result. A spacecraft with several times the radiation capacity 
and seemingly endless firepower could easily take out several civilian ships of the same level. As for Chen Ming himself, he has been staying on the space station. First of all, it is certain that Chen Ming returned to the space station alone. Otherwise, the military would definitely be hunting down more than just Chen Ming. Secondly, Chen Ming has not recruited anyone to join the space station. Nor has he mobilized personnel within the space station through his connections within Cinda Company. The answer is actually easy to guess. In addition to having the ability to amplify the spacecraft, Chen Ming also has the ability to remotely control the spacecraft. Is this a psyker? Although the commander felt a little emotional, there was no envy in his eyes. Because just now, he had relied on his own ability to suppress Chen Ming. A psyker. And that was enough. The deputy continued. The civilian grade Sentinel is still in the repair shop of the space station. The other half of the Afterglow destroyer was sold by Chen Ming at the space station. The specific target of the sale has not yet been determined. Can this still be investigated? The commander once again understood the incompetence of the local military, shook his head slightly, and waved his hand to indicate to his deputy to continue. There is no detailed information on how Chen Ming participated in the second incident. We only know that he was directly involved in the battle and brought back two ships after the incident, including a military centurion. Class, a Lumen class of Afterglow. The military seriously suspects that Chen Ming returned to the RM2 star system after the second Afterglow attack on the space station, wandered around the edge of the battlefield between Afterglow and the military, and then acquired the two ships. The commander who is now personally fighting Chen Ming has no doubt that Chen Ming is capable of following Yu Hui to pick up the pieces on the battlefield with the military. But he obviously didn't believe that Chen Ming only brought back two ships. However, he did not say it directly, but asked his deputy. I just saw the centurion he brought back. But what about the Afterglow ship? It has not yet been determined. The Lumen was originally parked in the space station's repair shop, but was later transported to Chen Ning's own Yule class armed merchant ship. And then, there was no trace. Wait a minute. Where did Chen Ning get the Mule class? Did he buy it? No. He seemed to have organized a fleet to kill a group of wanted pirates after the second Afterglow attack and stole it from them. Seem? Yes. This part of the military information is not detailed. But it is certain that the Mule class is his trophy. Later, he went to the capital of the Star Territory and submitted a pirate bounty. Which can also prove this. The commander immediately noticed that there were some problems with Chen Ming's handling of the Afterglow ship. If he wanted to sell it, Chen Ming could just sell it as before. But he took the ship away personally. And there has been no news about the Lumen class recently. Even if any company directly takes Lumen away point to point. It is impossible for the military to not notice it at all. Then, there is only one reason left that can be explained. Chen Ming has the ability to control even Yuhui's ship. The Yuhui Lumen has been controlled by Chen Ming, and is parked somewhere in space that no one knows about. The fleet organized by Chen Ming probably included several Yuhui ships. As for whether Chen Ming can control the Afterglow AI core installed on the ship, the commander would rather believe that the answer is yes. Because humans can completely control the meaning of Afterglow. Everyone in the entire empire knows it very well. The commander had completely made up his mind at this time, and no longer considered whether there was anything or not. He directly contacted the communication room and said, Activate the emergency contact equipment and transfer the authority to me. He wanted to send Chen Ming's complete information back to the Legion, along with his own analysis of Chen Ming's abilities. The value of Chen Ming is higher than he thought before. While compiling a message to the Legion, he listened to his deputy's explanation of Chen Ming's subsequent whereabouts. After Chen Ming killed the pirates, he went to the star capital to collect the bounty. While the government was verifying the identity of the pirates that Chen Ming brought, he went to attend an auction held by the government. The main item was the armor-breaking class. That's right. The commander was now certain that no one from the government was involved. But he still had some questions to figure out. I have some impression of this matter. But I remember something went wrong at the auction? Yes. Luddite attacked the auction as cover for their attack on the space elevator. How long has it been since then? He should still be under investigation as one of the people involved in the incident. That's how it was supposed to be. Someone got him out. Who? Wuin. The commander's expression changed significantly for the second time. And he said, Wuin from the Psionic Association. In this ghost place? Is Chen Ning also a member of the Psionic Association? Before the adjutant could answer. The commander rejected his idea and said, No, he is not. He is just a psyker who has a certain relationship with Wuin. If so, he should be able to directly suspend the mission we are currently performing. 
and it is impossible for him to really fight here with me for so long. Forget it. Whether it is or not. Let's continue fighting. At this time, the commander saw another destroyer being destroyed by an armor-piercing automatic pulse laser. He knew that he could no longer distract himself from figuring out Chen Ming's affairs. Chen Ming is a very good person with great potential. He wants it very much. And his legion will definitely want it too. But if he fails to fight and overturns here, it is still a small matter if he is killed. It is a big deal if he is not caught yet. And just when he was distracted to deal with Chen Ming's affairs, there were already several areas on the military front that were about to be unable to withstand the suppression brought about by armor piercing. He must immediately start to command the fleet more carefully and start to implement the method he just thought of to deal with large armor-breaking weapons. Under Chen Ming's control, the armor-piercing class was in slow-fire mode, continuously creating pressure on the military spacecraft on the entire front. The best way to deal with this attack mode is clustering. Under the command of the commander, the military fleet began to form small-scale clusters of three to five spaceships, while maintaining the battle line as much as possible. It was organized into more densely packed small battle clusters of more than a dozen. The automatic pulse laser is a restrained energy bullet type weapon, which means that its bullet speed is not as fast as a laser beam weapon. The attack spacecraft still has a certain amount of time to react. Although people can react, they may not be able to control the spacecraft in time, but they can at least struggle. If you can hide, then hide. If you can't, then find a way to share some damage with other ships in a cluster. This approach can slow down the pressure on the front line from Chen Ming's current slow shooting mode. As long as this output cannot break through the military's front line instantly, then with the commander's careful operation, any moment of respite will become an opportunity for him to counterattack. Chen Ming could clearly see the changes in the military front. He could immediately detect the disadvantages of just using a single armor-piercing ship in slow-fire mode. He also instantly realized the commander's ability to find opportunities to counterattack and destroy several frigates that rushed in because the shields of military ships were about to be overloaded. So in the end, Chen Ning had no choice but to give up suppressing the entire front and chose to let the armor-breaking class destroy the military ships with explosive output that cooled down in about 15 seconds. Chen Ning would definitely not be able to compete with the commander in conducting a large-scale battle. So Chen Ning decided to rely on his own strengths to deal with it. The commander on the other side also knew that doing so could not prevent the battleship from being destroyed every time the armor-piercing fire was fired but the attack efficiency of the armor-piercing class did decrease to a certain extent. Originally, if the automatic pulse laser shuttle hit all the targets, it could destroy two destroyers instantly. But with swarm assistance, it will often destroy one ship and leave several ships with nearly overloaded shields. There is still a big difference. Although this method seems to treat the symptoms rather than the root cause, armor-piercing can still destroy military destroyers with a terrifying efficiency than any other ship. But the commander's reasons for doing this don't stop there. He never thought that a destroyer would have such a big impact on the battle situation. And he was now sure that they did not have the means to deal with armor penetration. Therefore, he did not have the idea of dealing with the armor breaking level directly now. Instead, he chose another approach. Fight head on with Sindar's ships. DUIZ. The few rounds of shots that had just broken through the armor had already allowed the commander to determine that the cooldown time of the large armor-breaking weapon was 15 seconds. This seemed very short, but it was still a bit long in the battleship firefight. The 15 seconds of vacuum period means that the company's fleet has the same combat effectiveness as before, or even worse, during these 15 seconds, because the other ships in the fleet need to help share the firepower of the armor-piercing armor. This is the only chance. To be honest, originally, the commander had a very obvious advantage in the battle, but in the end, he was forced to rely on the number of ships. It was really embarrassing to talk about it. But for the commander, it doesn't matter whether he is embarrassed or not. Victory is the most important thing. After losing another destroyer and an escort, the armor-breaking class created a vacuum period for a brief 15 seconds. The commander found the weakest point in the company's front and directed the remaining fleet to launch the most violent attack as hard as possible. With no concern for losses and a determination to win, the patrol ship which is usually only responsible for patrolling the space station, suddenly became unable to handle it. Even the people on the spacecraft sent by the company themselves were a little flustered by the military's desperate fighting attitude. Even if Chen Ming was able to destroy at least one destroyer for 15 seconds, the overall battle situation began to tilt toward the military again. After all, the army is an army. No matter how experienced the people in the company are in combat, 
They can't compare to real people licking blood from the edge of a knife. Chin Ming, who had time to observe the overall situation on the battlefield, naturally discovered the commander's plan. The army is now desperately exchanging battle loss ratios. If all the ships protecting the armor-piercing ones are used up, then there will be no point in leaving only one armor-piercing ship, even if the military exchanges the loss not at the original 1-2 to two battle loss. But at 1-1, to one, the company will definitely not be able to withstand it. But there is not much that Chen Ming can do now. Although panel repair can speed up the cooling time of the automatic pulse laser, it is not just the cooling time that affects the attack frequency of the automatic pulse laser. There are also energy limitations. Antiparticle and the particle energy stimulation modules require time to recharge, providing energy for automatic pulse laser fire. This is where repair can't fix it. So the current battlefield situation is about who can kill faster. And the one who kills faster can win the final victory. Chen Ming's advantage due to the armor-piercing arrival instantly became a balance of power due to the disparity in other aspects. Chen Ming, who was controlling the A-level offense, felt more and more pressure. He really didn't have any good means of cracking the military's well-known style of play. Moreover, Chen Ming's mental power was close to the limit during the long battle. But Chen Ming was still thinking with his brain that was constantly feeling tingling. Consider whether he needs to use last resort. But at this time, Chen Ming suddenly noticed that there was sudden chaos within the military front. And there was chaos in scheduling. Several spaceships suddenly seemed to have conflicts internally and began to fight on their own. And a large number of the ships suddenly stopped attacking and began to withdraw from the battlefield. What happened? Chen Ming had taken control of all the destroyers in the fleet at this time. And returned to the cattle driver again. I happened to see the captain receiving an unsolicited message from the military. The commander of the RM-2 military outpost was designated as an insurgent. His orders were deemed invalid and the review was not authorized. Please terminate the war immediately. The military will compensate your company accordingly in the future. The captain was filled with anger at this time. The military said it could stop if it wanted to. How can they find the people they lost? But his reason allowed him to forcibly suppress this anger and instead began to restrict his ships, gradually opening them up in cooperation. The two sides, who had been having a fierce exchange of fire just now, and even wanted to exchange their lives for their lives, suddenly became peaceful again. What exactly is going on? Not only Chen Ming and the captain, but also the commander also had this idea in his mind at this time. He had just received a joint message from the legion to which he belonged, as well as from the Star Domain government and the Star Domain military. The commander of a small military outpost that collects sky steel located in the RM-2 star system is also the commander of the military outpost closest to the pirate space station. He illegally used his authority to divert military resources. After being discovered, he still did not give any reason for the illegal operation and went his own way, which was subsequently characterized as an act of rebellion. The time was just now. The commander came here just to fight and take away Chen Ming, but not to get involved with the rebels. So he immediately chose to stop the battle and distance himself from the company fleet. Most of the people in the fleet who have not completely lost their minds have no objection to this and they also do not want to be affected by the rebellion of their superiors. The rest who still want to continue fighting are basically those who have become red-blooded during the battle. But it is impossible for everyone in a spaceship to be jealous. So all warships in the entire military fleet executed the commander's order. As for the confidants of the station commander within the military, they were all sent away by the commander during the battle just now. The battle started suddenly but ended peacefully. Just when Chen Ming thought he could finally rest, and head to the capital of the Star Territory safely. The boss, who had not spoken for a long time, suddenly spoke. Chao Mu, you seem to have a big trouble over there. What? As soon as Chen Ming finished speaking, inside the hyperspace where the fleet was located, some distance away from the fleet, some ripples that Chen Ming had never seen suddenly appeared out of thin air, just like the space was fluctuating, to the complete surprise of everyone on the battlefield. A Dominator-class heavy cruiser arrived in this hyperspace with its own jump engine. Heck! Chen Ming, who originally thought that his mental energy was exhausted and his brain was dizzy, did not dare to feel sleepy at all. Boss! Dominator! Cruiser! I'm already thinking about connecting with someone. The last few words came intermittently from the boss's voice. And then the communication was completely disconnected. The only thing left in Chen Ming's eyes was the extremely terrifying heavy cruiser. And at this time, inside the Empire, an Earth-like planet located in the Esconia star system in the bustling star field. This is the headquarters of Shinda Company. 
preparations for the upcoming board meeting are in the final stages. But in fact, there is no need for any preparation. After all, this is an online meeting. From preparation to getting everyone together. It is just a matter of adjusting the work. In short, in the final conference room, except for Chairman Su Lin, who was present in person, everyone else existed in the conference room through virtual projections. After everyone confirmed that they were present, the chairman said directly, This decision-making meeting was initiated by me, and half of the members have agreed to hold it. There are two issues that require a vote by the board. First, is it necessary to conflict with the military again to get back the resource extraction rights of the galaxy? Second, is it necessary to protect Chen Ming, allow Chen Ming to return to the company with a higher status, and invest in him? Everyone should be aware of what happened, except for a few directors who have only recently joined the board of directors. Others should not forget what happened 30 years ago. Then I won't waste your time, and let's start voting on the first proposal. The results came in within seconds, and the vote was unanimous. The existence of Chen Ming already means that the military's blockade of the star system, where Sindar Company has obtained mining rights, has no meaning. Retrieval is something that companies must do. Then the next step is the second proposal. Please vote on it. What the chairman did not expect was that the final result was four votes in favor, eight votes against, and one abstention. The collective opposition of the board of directors caused a dark look to appear on the chairman's face for a moment. One of the directors who voted against said immediately, a psyker who can control a spaceship has different values for different people and forces. We all know the value of Chen Ning and how much his abilities can help the development of our cutting-edge technologies. But the government just gave us a message. The armor-breaking grade we sold to them suddenly ran away on its own. Everyone knows who did this. Right. Chen Ning's information cannot be completely kept secret without the intervention of the military. Sooner or later, the government will know who took away the broken armor. Then... They will know how terrifying Chen Ning's ability is. After that, who will dare to buy our company's spaceship? For the sake of a statement, I offend the military and the government at the same time. Is such an exchange worth it? The company's business. The company's technology. We have to make a choice. The director has put the pros and cons of the whole thing on the table. The chairman also knew whether what he said was correct. After sighing slightly, he said, What about the opinion of the board of directors? Chen Ming can only be used mainly. Find a way to gain his trust. Securely exchange Sky Steel back. And then sell him. In order to prevent any ambiguity, the director added another one and said, Of course not to kill, but to sell to other forces. Other companies, the military, even the government, can sell it. Chen Ming is our bargaining chip. But what we have on hand, or in other words, what all companies that produce spacecraft for sale will have negative value on hand. But for the military and the government, there is no need to consider negative issues. So they will definitely be happy to buy Chen Ming from us. Do you want Chen Ming? Of course you want it. But you can't want it all. You can only want it for a period of time. This is the choice that is in the best interest of the company. And stating personal wishes is not important. The chairman suddenly crossed his fingers and put them in front of his mouth and said, But Chen Ming, a psionic person, is favored by Wuan of the Psychic Association. The conference room fell silent for a moment. The director in charge of the pirate space station, who voted in favor, said, I can testify. Wuin has always been under my jurisdiction, and his attitude toward our company is at a mixed stage. I'm still trying to show favor to him, so I haven't announced this news to the board of directors yet. After the meeting room was quiet for a while, the director who had just abstained said, I think this matter needs to be seriously considered, and I propose to postpone the vote. That's good. I agree. Seconded. The directors all agreed to postpone the company's decision on Chen Ming's attitude. Wu En's existence required them to take time to carefully consider whether their attitude towards Chen Ming would affect Wu En's attitude towards them. At this moment, there was a sudden knock on the door of the boardroom. Anything that can interrupt such a meeting must be the most urgent matter. The chairman immediately let in his secretary, who knocked on the door. The secretary immediately handed a paper document he brought to the chairman and then exited the conference room. After scanning the documents, the chairman said quickly, In case of emergency, the military is attacking the fleet I sent to bring Chen Ning back, and also use cruisers to chase him. The statement given by the military is that the captain of the cruiser illegally activated the cruiser and launched a rebellion. The army has been dispatched to suppress it. The atmosphere in the conference room suddenly became anxious. 
There was a hurried discussion about how this was definitely not a good situation for the company, relying on the fact that he was present. The chairman reached out and knocked on the table, making the conference room quiet, and said, Everything else is empty. The most important thing now is that Chen Ming cannot die. Chen Ming is dead. And the rest is just empty talk. Whether it's Sky Steel, or a top-level research type psyker who possesses a certain level of spaceship technology knowledge, or even the possibility of forming a relationship with a psyker association in a short period of time. All are in vain. Everyone, if you have the ability to carry out rescue in a short time, please act immediately. Chen Ming must survive. Chapter 97 Ruler Trump Card At this time, in the hyperspace of the galaxy where the pirate space station is located, the battlefield that was already intensifying now fell into calm. There were reasons for the military's initiative to cease fire, and there were also reasons for the sudden appearance of the Dominator-class cruiser. The only mobile cruiser that can be mobilized in this sector is the commander of the military outpost, who was said by the military to have launched a rebellion just now. So who is the current captain of this cruiser? Almost everyone present knows very well. Therefore, the company and the military did not dare to make any big moves when they saw the cruiser. The company knew that the army could pursue Chen Ming with such a fleet size, and who gave the order. The military side is also not sure what the higher level department said is the rebellion of the station commander. But having said that, the military side can definitely contact each other directly, which is much better than the company side. And with the appearance of the ruler, the communication between the company fleet and the military fleet was also disconnected. And it is unclear whether it was influenced by the ruler or whether the military fleet actively disconnected it. Therefore, the captain of the Calhoun class could only choose to command the fleet to regroup through the communication system at this time, maintaining the formation while protecting the armor piercing and Chen Ming's iron ore. Although there was a lot of noise in the fleet's internal communication channel, at least it was still barely audible. After quickly issuing a few instructions, the captain turned to Chen Ming and said, Mr. Chen, the ship's communication system has been affected. That cruiser has professional electronic warfare equipment. We have no ships equipped with electronic countermeasures equipment. And external communications have been completely disconnected. Although I was in contact with people from the company just now, I'm not sure whether the last sentence saying that the military sent a cruiser was actually sent. So we must send you back to the space station now. Only the space station can stop the cruiser. Chin Ming also knew that there were no more options at the moment and asked, What are you going to do? The cruiser is more powerful than your ship. It is definitely not something that our fleet can handle. All coping methods are just illusions. So we rely on all the ships in our fleet to delay it for a while, giving you time to withdraw from the blocking pulse range. The captain's meaning was very clear. He wanted to issue a mandatory order to let all the ships go aboard to die to delay, including the cattle drivers he was on. As the attitude of the military fleet was not too clear at this time, the fleet had no ability to resist the cruiser at all, and the fleet's spaceships were unable to get rid of the military fleet of the same level. So turning around and fighting for your life is the only option. At the same time, if the task can be completed, at least the company will take care of their funeral affairs. The captain did this, and Chin Ming was the beneficiary. Even if Chin Ming may not really be able to escape from the ruler's pursuit in the end, at least he still has a certain chance if he does so. So he didn't refuse. Chin Ming left the command room and went to the flight deck to board the shuttle boat. In less than a few dozen seconds, the cruiser had already approached the battlefield from the position it had jumped out of, but it had not shown any aggression yet, making it even more difficult to figure out what the station master was thinking. Chen Ming was not distracted by this, and quickly returned to his iron mine. Be prepared to extend the distance to prevent the military spacecraft from activating the blocking pulse to interfere with the retreat. Chen Ming only planned to drive away the iron ore at this time, while the centurion, who was also under his control at this time, stayed to help resist the line although it was definitely not able to hold it. It would be enough to block a few more bullets from large weapons. If the centurion explodes here, he can still afford to lose one centurion. The same is true for the armor-breaking class that Chen Ming received from the government. Chen Ming personally drove the iron ore and gradually accelerated, moving away from a hyperspace channel. The military fleet did not make any move, and they seemed to have no intention of stopping Chen Ming. The ruler class, which was still some distance away from Chen Ming, was not in a hurry to follow. Instead, it launched something towards the stellar gravity well in the center of the galaxy. Chin Ming immediately noticed something was wrong and immediately activated the hyperspace channel system. Regardless of whether he was within the range of the blocking pulse, the system was still starting. 
But Chin Ning suddenly saw that the space in the gravity well that was distorted by gravity suddenly became straight. The gravity of the gravity well disappears. No. It's blocked. Chin Ning immediately thought of a device that could cause this situation. A device called a temporary gravity well containment device. Its effect is similar to that of a blocking pulse generator. But its working principle is different. The purpose of the pulse blocking generator is to interrupt the activation of the hyperspace channel system. If the number of blocking pulse generators is small, just one or two, then as long as the time is blocked and the risk of being attacked, the spacecraft whose system operation is interrupted by the blocking pulse still has a chance to leave by force. But the gravity well blockade is different, and its effect is stronger. In addition to the function of the system itself, the activation of the hyperspace channel system also requires the help of external force from the star's gravity well located in hyperspace. Without the gravity well of the star, it means that the hyperspace channel system cannot be used. It also means that the hyperspace of the entire galaxy is completely blocked at this time. You can only enter, but cannot exit. This effect affects not only Chen Ming, but all spaceships near this galaxy, including those passing by watching the show on the edge of the battlefield, are now unable to leave hyperspace. However, the spaceships that had gathered in the hyperspace channel waiting for the battle to end were actually almost gone. I couldn't wait and had already found a remote corner near the galaxy to go out in advance and flew slowly on my own spaceship during the last part of the journey. Those who can wait will know what to do when they see the ruler appear. So after the gravity well was blocked, the only ones left in the galaxy's hyperspace were the military and corporate fleets. The road to quick escape is blocked by the gravity well blockade device. The first thing that came to Chen Ming's mind was the solution. As far as he knew, this device was actually a derivative of a device called a gravity well stabilizing anchor. Chen Ning remembered that he had learned the working principle of this kind of thing. And he happened to check out what the derivative device of this thing was out of interest. So he also knows how to deal with it. And there are several ways. One is to run far away. Just go to other galaxies that are not blocked and activate the hyperspace channel system. But the purpose of the military cruiser's arrival was clear to Chen Ning. Even if there were speed limits in hyperspace and large ships could not outrun small ones. The ruler's jump engine was not a decoration. This method was thrown out of Chen Ming's mind without stopping for a moment. The second is to dismantle the equipment. The ruler just threw the equipment towards the gravity well. As long as it can be dismantled, the gravity well of the galaxy will naturally be restored. However, the current position of the Dominator class is just in front of the gravity well, connecting the company fleet, the Dominator, and the gravity well on a line. If you want to dismantle the equipment, you must first dismantle the ruler. Chen Ning thought about it for half a second and threw this idea out of his mind. The third method is the jump engine, which is a device that can be started without a gravity well. But Chen Ming also knows that the jump engine is even more nonsense than the previous two ideas. Not to mention that this thing is only installed on cruisers. Even if there is a lower version, Chen Ming cannot afford it, let alone find one on the spot. Fourth, the spacecraft engine itself has enough output power to directly force through hyperspace and return to the normal cosmic environment without resorting to the gravity well effect. However, the specific value required for sufficient engine output power can only be said to exist in theory, at least until today. Chen Ning didn't know of any spacecraft with engine power that could enter and exit hyperspace on its own. None of these four theoretical solutions that Chen Ning had seen in books before could be applied in practice now. Chen Ming now, had some doubts about what he had learned in the first place. There are no other methods of seeking help that can quickly get rid of the current situation. The boss seems to be thinking of a solution. But the signal from the boss's side is blocked. So he can't rely on it for the time being. The company must have received news of the military attack before. And there must be support. But it may be too late to respond to the cruiser's support in a short time. Moreover, after the ruler came over, he directly relied on electronic warfare equipment to block the hyperspace communication system of the entire galaxy. In addition, the captain also said that there is no guarantee whether the company will receive the news or not. So we can't count on it. As for the military, the military said it was a rebellion, and the rebellion would definitely be suppressed. However, the front leg of the military fleet has just received news of the rebellion, and it is not sure when the fleet coming to suppress it will arrive. Moreover, Looking at the actions of the military fleet at this time, Chin Ning felt that this rebellion was unreliable. He always believed that this rebellion must be put in quotation marks. Various methods of asking for help from outside forces failed to provide support. It seemed that Chin Ning had to use his last resort. Chin Ning quickly switched his control over the spacecraft 
and confirmed the positions of several of his own spaceships, especially the positions of several afterglow ships. Finally, control was again switched back to the armor-breaking level. Then Chen Ning didn't think much about it, and continued to let the iron or drive in the direction of the hyperspace channel farthest from the ruler. Although the outcome is most likely destined, you still have to try. At the same time, he also led his strongest output method, the armor-breaking class, hide behind other company spaceships, ready to try to launch a counterattack at any time. Theoretically, large armor-piercing weapons are enough to threaten cruiser-class ships. Today, he will try his best to tear off a piece of flesh from the ruler. Although Chen Ming had just responded, he was actually prepared to not be able to get out of this hyperspace. But what he never expected was, the Dominator-class heavy cruiser launched its four large weapons directly after completely blocking the gravity well. But the target of its attack was not Sindar's fleet. Nor was it Chen Ning who had already run out of range due to the speed limit of objects in hyperspace. But the military's own fleet. Moreover, it is still the law enforcement ship with special painting and modification as the flagship. Then Chen Ming saw the power of the cruiser again. It is suitable for the large weapons of the cruiser, as well as the energy supply that can satisfy the firing of several large weapons at the same time. Even live weapons are weakened in hyperspace. But after the station master controlling the ruler locked the two storm needles on the target, he instantly launched a large number of needles straight towards the enforcer, causing the enforcer's shield to be torn apart almost instantly. Although the commander's reaction before the shield was destroyed, the spacecraft was not paralyzed due to radiation overload. But those needles as thick as a normal person's arm still pricked the entire enforcer with unabated force. As a shield-breaking live ammunition weapon, Storm Needle is a little weak when faced with the speed limit of hyperspace and the enforcer's obviously extra thickened and heavier armor. After penetrating the armor, it was unable to go deeper and was just stuck between the hull and the armor. The enforcer crash barely held on depending on the situation. It only takes one more round, and the enforcer will be completely destroyed. But the ruler obviously did not want to choose this method. Instead, during the gap between storm needle reloading ammunition, he used another weapon, the Gauss Cannon, a weapon that accelerates large mass warheads to extremely high speeds. Although all objects in hyperspace have a speed limit, and the Gauss Cannon itself is also a shield-breaking weapon, but the upper limit of this speed is only incomparable to the high speed in the normal cosmic environment. And it is still very fast in hyperspace. It's just that it can't achieve the best balance between mass debuff and speed caused by the mass void effect in the normal cosmic environment. But it can still exert a certain power. And after the storm Neil broke the shield in advance, and relied on the power of the weapon itself to shatter the enforcer's armor. Weapons like the Gauss Cannon can also cause horrific effects on the hull of the spacecraft. Unsurprisingly, the first heavy projectile fired by the Dominator's Gauss Cannon directly cut off the entire Enforcer's ship. The second projectile fired by another Gauss Cannon passed through and completely shattered the remaining two halves. The scene of the military's own people beating their own people made Chin Ming a little dumbfounded. And he silently removed the quotation marks on the words. Rebellion of the Station Commander. In his heart, the flagship of the military fleet was destroyed. And the military fleet, which was still relocating, fell into complete chaos. But soon, the entire military command system was regained control by the rulers. After all, this is the unit provided by the station master to the commander. Even if all the close friends have been sent away, it is not too difficult to take over by force with the ruler's equipment. However, he regained control, and there were still some difficulties in getting the military fleet to obey his orders again. For example, how should he let the army ignore this? and continue to obey him when the commander had made it clear that the station commander had launched a rebellion and had published a double authentication document from the military and government of the star region. As for this plan, the webmaster already has it in mind. As long as you dare to lower the bottom line, this matter is actually very simple. There are always some people in the fleet who are afraid of death or who don't want to die casually. The battle with the company fleet just now was a battle with hope of victory. So they were willing to take risks and fight. But if there is a conflict with a cruiser, the difference in level is enough to make anyone lose the desire to fight. Therefore, the station master first chose to kill the flagship as a warning to other ships that dared to resist him. As long as you are not a fool, you will make a calm choice. The final effect of this may not be certain. How many people would obey his orders under threat of death is hard to say. But the station master actually doesn't need too many ships to obey his command. His main purpose of coming here this time is still to kill Chen Ming. It's just that in hyperspace, 
it is difficult for heavy cruisers to catch up with normal frigates and destroyers. Even if there is a jump engine in hand, the use of the jump engine is limited. Currently, after the station master jumps here directly from the military outpost, the jump engine can only be used one last time within a certain period of time. If an accident occurs midway and Chin Ming escapes from the attack range, the ruler will never have any chance to catch up with a frigate. Therefore, the webmaster must find a way to restrict Chin Ming's actions. The best way to regain control of the army is to rely on the army's ships. As long as there are three or four spaceships to help him restrain Chin Ming, Chin Ming will die during the next jump. After destroying the flagship where the commander was located, the station commander immediately regained command of the entire fleet and asked the fleet to act according to his orders. But just as he had thought in advance, most of the military ships rejected his request, even ignored him, and began to flee in all directions. Only a small portion remains in place. The station commander-in-chief did not chase the fleeing military ships nor attack them, but simply allowed them to leave. But when those who had stayed in place wanted to leave after noticing the movements of other spacecraft, however, the station commander chose to directly destroy the ship that had such an idea. Once you get on a pirate ship, there is no chance of regret. The station commander reorganized the remaining military ships and demanded that these ships hand over their highest control authority. Then some of the ships were ordered to track Chen Ming, and the other part followed the ruler and pressed against the company fleet, which had already prepared to die. Although Chen Ning has already embarked on the hyperspace passage to another galaxy, he is still paying attention to the situation here. I want to try to find an opportunity to bypass the ruler and attack the equipment that blocks the gravity well. But the ruler was obviously on guard against this, always maintaining his position and not giving the slightest chance. If there is no chance, Chin Ming can only choose to let the armor pierce attack the ruler. At this time, the company's ships are also desperately protecting the armor piercing armor, because they know that this is the only possibility of a comeback. However, after two rounds of fighting, the company's fleet, which had more than 40 ships just now, has been reduced by more than half. The remaining dozen or so spaceships no longer have the cattle herders in charge, nor Chin Ming Centurion. The actual damage caused by the company's fleet and the armor-breaking class only forced the rulers of the military, whose shields themselves were relatively weak, to turn off the shields. That's all. Seeing that the last chance has arrived and is about to disappear. At this time, Chin Ming didn't even care to let the armor-piercing automatic pulse laser be fully charged, and just forcibly activated it when it was halfway charged. The station master himself had already understood the firing interval of the automatic pulse laser, a weapon he had never seen before, in the previous exchange of fire. Therefore, Chin Ming's advance round of shooting was completely unexpected by the webmaster. Even if the ruler level shield was deployed immediately, it would not be able to block the 16 restraining energy bullets in time. All these energy bombs hit the ruler's hull firmly, hitting one of the storm needles. And he also succeeded in completely destroying the storm needle. However, the combined attacks of the remaining dozen or so ships in the company's fleet were not enough. Completely failed to cause any meaningful damage to the Dominator's armor. Nearly half of the ruler class radiation energy had been dissipated during the period when the shield was closed. But the station commander did not continue to close the shield, but directly launched another round of offensive against the fleet. In this round of unilateral crushing firefight, the armor-breaking class was completely exposed to the ruler class. Its shield only lasted for less than two seconds before reaching the upper limit of radiation capacity. In the end, the armor-breaking class ship was blocked and destroyed like the commander's enforcer class ship. Although it is still on Chin Ming's panel at this time, Chin Ming does not have the materials to repair it now, nor does he have the opportunity to repair it. The battle is decided. Chin Ming was forced to stop observing the battlefield and continue to control the iron ore. Although the Dominator has been thrown far away, it still has a chance to activate the jump engine. After destroying the armor-piercing class, the only spacecraft that can threaten the gravity well blockade device, now is the best time to initiate the jump. The space next to the ruler suddenly experienced fluctuations visible to the naked eye. Less than two seconds later, it appeared directly in front of the hyperspace channel where Chen Ming was heading. The spacecraft that had been forcibly taken away from the highest control authority were now blocking the entrance to the hyperspace channel where Chen Ming was. The ruler is at hand, and the crisis of death is coming. However, Chen Ming was not in any panic at this time. He had delayed enough time. Between the iron ore and the ruler, the same space distortion as when the ruler jumped over suddenly appeared. But what appears now is not a ruler. Instead, it was an entire afterglow fleet led by two afterglow cruisers. 
Yu Wei's fleet certainly didn't appear here inexplicably. When Xin Ming contacted Gamma AI, this matter had basically been decided. Qin Ming's previous contact with Gamma AI was not to prepare them to personally rescue Qin Ming, but to ask them to go back to Yu Wei's colony. Prepare them to do two things. The first thing is to let Gamma A contact the Alpha AI core that controls the cruiser that it is familiar with. When Qin Ming gave the reminder, he handed over all the news that Qin Ming wanted to cooperate with Yu Hui, as well as the evidence that Qin Ming was hunted by the human military and had to stay away from the human world. And Sunset's Alpha Core expressed Qin Ming's intention to cooperate with Sunset. Gamma A and Qin Ming said that Yu Wei I can rejoin humans and mix with humans without any shame. And Yu Wei I can also accept Qin Ming as a human being. The Gamma B installed by Qin Ming on the fighter Kai is the best evidence that Qin Ming wants to cooperate. Coupled with Qin Ming's ability to control the spacecraft, Yu Hui would not kill Qin Ming directly even if he had doubts and fears about whether Qin Ming could directly control their core. It is nothing more than that Gamma A will be thoroughly scrutinized and investigated to confirm that Gamma A has not been controlled or influenced by Qin Ming, and to confirm the authenticity of Gamma A's words. At the same time, there may be some restrictions on Qin Ming's abilities in the future, such as not being allowed to contact Afterglow AI individuals or ships equipped with Afterglow AI. However, Qin Ming can be sure of one thing. That is, there will be no psychic fluctuations when he controls the spacecraft. After the boss said that it helped him cover up the psychic fluctuations he usually emitted. Qin Ming specifically asked the boss about this issue. The boss said that he didn't know why Qin Ming's control of the spaceship did not cause psychic fluctuations. But the abilities of psychers themselves were all kinds of strange. And some special ones were normal. Therefore, Qin Ming was not worried about what Yu Wei, who was weak in psychic research, could detect from Gamma A. And Qin Ming also believed that when faced with the surrender of a psyker, these abilities to control, repair, and strengthen the spacecraft were enough for Yu Wei to see the value in it, and enough for them to take the risk. The other thing is to let Gamma B contact the Afterglow Alpha Core that it mentioned before to collect ectoplasm stones. At the cost of an ectoplasm stone on Qin Ming's hand, he exchanged the opportunity for it to come to the rescue. Qin Ming didn't need Gamma B to tell him that he was here to rescue. It was enough for Gamma B to ask him to contain the ruler. But Qin Ming remembered that after Gamma A got it done, he didn't let Gamma B shake the AI. Two Afterglow cruisers came all of a sudden. What happened? Chapter 98 Destruction Joining Belated Assistance The two cruisers completely protected Qin Ming from behind. Among the fleet that followed the two cruisers, there happened to be a diopter equipped with Gamma A. Diopter directly activated the electromagnetic capture cabin, protecting Qin Ming's iron or inside it, and then retreated away from the ruler. On the front, the confrontation between the ruler and the Afterglow fleet has begun of Yu Wei's two cruisers. One was the cruiser that Qin Ming had seen before, and was used to attack space stations and military outposts. Qin Ming had not seen the other cruiser before, and its model was different from the cruiser Qin Ming knew. It looked more generous. However, the appearance of the spacecraft is not important. What is important is that the distance between the two sides has become so close that all weapons can attack each other. Although the Dominator had previously had one of its storm needles destroyed by the armor-piercing class, it still chose to take the initiative to use the remaining three large weapons to fire on the Afterglow cruiser that was closer to it. The powerful shield-breaking ability brought by one Storm Stinger and two Gauss Cannons caused a large number of concussive ripples to immediately appear on the Afterglow cruiser's shield. High-strength armor-piercing weapons also pose a complete threat to Afterglow's shield, which has a top-level radiation system. As long as it can hit them all, it will be enough to directly break its shield. But the two Afterglow cruisers are not live targets. They also have the ability to fight back. Moreover, the two cruisers have a total of six large load-bearing points. And all of them are tachyon spears. The pirate space station was unable to withstand the attack of a cruiser tachyon spear. And when the ruler faced the attack of the six-door tachyon spear without any interference and could completely focus its fire, it was completely inferior to the performance of the space station. The ruler's shield was instantly overloaded, leaving him no time to react. Terrifying arcs of electricity erupted from all over the ruler's ship. Even if it has an overload protection device inside, such an arc will definitely cause damage to people inside. However, the energy torrent continued, and after destroying the shield, it bombarded the ruler's frontal armor unabated. Six energy torrents directly melted the ruler's frontal armor, leaving a large blazing white mark and a large amount of molten iron splashing into space. However, when the energy torrent ended, Chen Ming suddenly discovered that the ruler's frontal armor had not been completely broken even now. 
The Dominator withstood the main weapon attacks of the two Afterglow cruisers head-on. If it hadn't been for the fact that it didn't have time to close the shield just now, there might still be room for counterattack now. However, Chin Ning can also understand why the ruler does not turn on the automatic radiation overload protection device. After all, this device is too rigid. After the radiation capacity is close to the total upper limit, it will directly forcefully close the shield of the spacecraft, no matter what the actual situation is. If there happens to be a gap when the radiation capacity is about to be overloaded, the enemy carries out a single high-intensity attack, such as a death torpedo. Then relying on the shield to block it is definitely the best choice, rather than closing the shield and letting the ship take a hard hit. Therefore, under normal circumstances, manually controlling the shield of the spacecraft is definitely the optimal solution. But the ruler obviously did not expect that a direct spacecraft would be directly overloaded. This resulted in the current situation. Even if they resisted Yu Hui's wave of concentrated fire, it was already too late to fight back. After overloading the ruler, a cruiser in the Afterglow fleet directly launched the flash engine that Chen Ning had seen before and flashed to the rear of the ruler. While the ruler was still flashing arcs of electricity, the cool tachyon spear had already struck its engine. A ruler without any supporting units is helpless when paralyzed. Under the continuous attack of the tachyon spear, the dominator suddenly violently imploded. From the stern to the hull to the bow, everything was occupied by the raging burst of fire. The entire ship turned into a cemetery of fire. Only the hull of the ship, which was strong enough, remained intact and served as a grave for the ruler's crew. The afterglow cruiser ceased its attack. Then, a large number of ordinary afterglow ships immediately approached the ruler. Chin Ming saw many engineering-type ships among them. While extinguishing the fire on the ruler, install some special equipment on its exterior. If Chin Ming read it correctly, those equipment should be equipment used for jump engine resonance. This kind of equipment allows large mass objects without spacecraft engines to resonate with a jump engine and move instantaneously over long distances. And while the afterglow ships were performing this mission, Chen Ming's iron mind suddenly received a communication request. The source was another afterglow cruiser that Gamma A didn't recognize. With a more generous hull, Chen Ming knew that the most critical moment was coming. Sunset's final confirmation of him. But Chen Ming actually has nothing to worry about. He did not say that he could control the AI. Only that his ability was to control the spacecraft. Although it is not certain whether Yu Hui believes it or not. When Chen Ming observed the situation at Gamma before, he had already seen Yu Hui conduct a comprehensive review of Gamma A. Naturally, no abnormalities were found. And Gamma A was still Gamma A. And Gamma A Chen Ning is absolutely sure that he will not betray him. Therefore, Yu Hui is not sure whether Chen Ming has the ability to control the AI core. That's why they come. As for what they would do when they came, Chen Ning had thought about it carefully and determined the risk of doing so through Gamma A. Chen Ning would not seek death under normal circumstances. He knew that when preparing the backhand, it was still necessary to confirm the stability and safety of the backhand. So Chen Ning had previously followed the thinking logic of Gamma A, a member of After We, and determined several possible ways to deal with Chen Ning himself after After We. Among the most likely responses, there was no direct killing of him. Yu Hui is not 100% sure whether Chen Ming has the ability to directly control Yu Hui's individuals. And Chen Ming's other abilities are quite valuable to Yu Hui taking both aspects into consideration. Killing them directly, without doing anything is definitely the worst way. And one thing can be determined through the statement of ideas of Gamma A. Even if Yu Hui is sure that Chen Ning has such ability, he may not be afraid or resist. They also have the ability to restrict presentation. The simplest way is to never give Chen Ning a chance to come into contact with Yu Hui The fact that Chen Ning can only control the spacecraft by touch is Chen Ning's biggest limitation. And it is also very easy to confirm. As long as Chen Ming is unable to access the Yue ship equipped with the Afterglow core, then the risk of Chen Ming's ability can be controlled within the acceptable range of Yue. Anyway, if you want Chen Ming's ability to be used, it doesn't necessarily mean that Chen Ming needs to personally control the spacecraft, or control the spacecraft with the existence of Yue individuals. Yue can just let Chen Ming conduct research on spaceships and come up with the blueprints for new spaceships and build them themselves or give Chen Ming some sample spacecraft to test based on capabilities. Giving the tested spacecraft directly to Chen Ming or melting it for recycling are ways to avoid possible dangers. Therefore, Yu Hui's final decision still depends on whether the risks and benefits on Chen Ming are balanced. In addition, Chen Ming also checked with Gamma A to see if Yu Wei might think he was a spy sent by humans. 
Gamma A said that Chen Ming was not sure whether Yu Hui would really come to support. If this scene is not performed well, then he will completely lose the possibility of entering the afterglow. In addition, there are such psychers who don't want to control the paralyzed afterglow on the battlefield or after the battle, but instead want to be more dangerous as spies. This idea is completely problematic, unless humans have the capital to do this. For example, there are two statements. But if humans really have two psychers with such abilities, then I suggest Sunset just click on it. Although the last sentence was polished by Chen Ming himself, the meaning of Gamma A is similar. In short, since Yu Wei is here, he won't be too worried about the harm of Chen Ming's ability. This is a risk they must bear. Chen Ming connected the communication. The emotionless voice of a text-to-speech conversion device rang out on the iron ore. Hello, Chen Ming. Hello. We received your proposal passed to us via Gamma A. So we are here. Um, you guys also call it Gamma A? No. Each afterglow individual has its own number. And the name is chosen by the individual at his or her own discretion. If he is willing to use the name you gave him, we will call him that. Then what shall I call you? And the other? You can directly call my ship model. Brilliant. You have to ask the other one yourself. Its ship model is Hui Yao. Splendor class cruiser and glory class cruiser. Chen Ming silently wrote down the two ship models. He didn't know much about Afterglow, so he had to pay more attention to this aspect of knowledge. Hui Wang had no intention of breaking up with Chen Ming Xian and said directly, Let's get down to business. Since humans have always had a relatively relaxed attitude towards captured Yue individuals. Accordingly, we will also have some preferential treatment for humans. So, we have considered your proposal very seriously and responded with a positive attitude but we still have some things that we need to confirm with you. The result of the confirmation will determine the outcome of your proposal. No problem. Just say it. We need you to explain why Gamma A concealed and protected you during your first contact with Gamma A. Is this such a pointed question? Chen Ming thought quickly in his heart. But there is actually an answer to this point. And line can't change anything. So Chen Ming said directly, I can directly overcome any restrictions on the spacecraft controlled by me and obtain the highest control of the spacecraft. No one can take it away. So at that time, I forcibly controlled all the equipment on the spacecraft and read the records that Gamma A had sent so that all the afterglows thought that the refraction I controlled was controlled by Gamma A. After gaining a deeper understanding later, Gamma A and I reached a consensus that both parties can cooperate. Hui Wan did not directly point out the problem in Chen Ming's answer, but directly asked the second question. Do you have the ability to control the afterglow AI core? No. Yu Wei has its own consciousness and cannot be controlled by my abilities. Chen Ming decisively chose to conceal it. If he told the truth, it would be unreasonable. But whether he admits it or not, Yu Hui must have doubts about whether Chen Ming has this ability. Even if there is clear evidence to prove that Chen Ming really cannot control Yu Wei, it is impossible for Yu Wei to completely put this speculation aside. Otherwise, Yu Wei is really a fool. So Chen Ming's answer is actually not important. Just as Chen Ming thought, Alpha AI didn't care about Chen Ming's answer after asking and continued to the next question. We need details about your abilities. We know that humans have specific psychic institutions to test psychers. And we need your test report. Hui Yui's question stopped Chen Ming. And he explained, I have not systematically studied psychic knowledge. Nor have I been tested by a testing agency. What my seniors meant by guiding me in terms of psychic abilities is that systematic learning by naturally awakened psychics will lower the upper limit of development so I can only give you a rough introduction to my abilities. I don't know the details myself. Hui Wan did not force him to state this, but simply said, Please tell me. Chen Ming organized his language a little and explained his abilities selectively. After all, this is the key to determining his value to Yu Wei in the future. If it is lower, Yu Wei may directly choose to nip the risk in the bud, but he definitely won't say anything that shouldn't be said. After answering this question, Hui Wang asked a few seemingly insignificant questions again. They are all about Chen Ming himself, including a few strange questions such as Chen Ming's views on Yu Wei. In the end, Hui Wang also gave Chen Ming a definite answer. Yu Hui agreed to Chen Ming's joining. In fact, when Yu Hui is willing to come to the rescue, the ending is basically foreseeable. As long as Chen Ming doesn't talk nonsense. And Chen Ming also knew that this chat was not actually the main verification and testing. The real big deal is yet to come. After Chen Ming went to Yu Wei's place, after Hui Wang gave Chen Ming an agreeable answer, he suddenly said, In addition, there are some necessary conditions that must be explained to you. The words, 
necessary conditions. In the sentence, brilliant, Bei Chen Ming become more serious, waiting for the next part of, brilliant, it's about your future arrangements. Chen Ming pricked up his ears and listened carefully. This treatment and what Chen Ming would get from Yu Wei later would determine how long he would stay at Yu Wei before he would seek help from others to get him out of Yu Wei. Come! Just like how you humans tree are captured after glow individuals. Work for us on the basis of meeting the most basic survival needs and normal physiological needs. Chen Ming was not sure what the actual survival needs and physiological needs were. So he asked, Is there a more specific explanation? Yes. According to Earth Standard Time, 8 hours of work, 8 hours of rest, and 8 hours of free time. Chen Ming was stunned for a moment. If he had just escaped from the mining space station and arrived at the pirate space station, he would have been very happy to become a complete adulterer. But now, he still has many ideas to realize. So although Yu Hui's job is very attractive, it is not enough to attract Chen Ming to stay forever. He still has to find a way to get enough benefits from Yu Wei to prepare for his own future. Not getting an answer from Chen Ming, Hui Wang asked. Is there any question? No. No problem. Okay. We will inspect you for a period of time later. And Gamma A will continue to connect with you. If you need anything, you can mention it to him directly. Chen Ming was quite satisfied with the result. Although the current situation was caused by the military's coercion and threats. But his choice to join Yu Wei was not only Yu Wei's opportunity, but also his opportunity. Chen Ning believed that he would be able to grasp it. After the communication ends, through the equipment on the ship, Hui Wang sent a brief message to the galaxy where the replica of the Kleka computer that Chen Ning had seen on the map was located. The risk level is high but low, and the returns are extremely high. More practical investigation is needed. The risks and values of Chen Ning were acceptable to Yu Hui. So he responded with such a message. Moreover, Yu Wei has actually prepared some backups. If there really is a backup strategy in which the advanced Yu Wei I core is controlled by Chen Ming. However, this backhand was not used. And they also determined that Chen Ming did not have the ability to remotely control. That's why Chen Ming's risk is written high to low in the information. Soon, Hui Wang received a reply. And this reply was also a very short sentence. After Glow needs an overall improvement, Chen Ming was unclear about Yu Wei's internal communication. But he could probably guess it which was basically his evaluation. By the way, he could also guess how long it would take for Yu Wei's other work ships to install the destroyed ruler. So it would take some time to work in the afterglow. And Chen Ming had nothing to do for the time being. So he thought about it, and simply went back along the hyperspace channel. Look at what's going on right now in near galactic hyperspace. Chen Ming made a request to Hui Wang. But Hui Wang did not refuse, and sent other spaceships to accompany him. There is protection. But it also means to prevent Chen Ning from running away by borrowing Yu Hui's relationship. Under the protection of some afterglow ships, Chen Ning returned to the place where the battle just happened. At this time, the gravity well blockade device has been destroyed. All the military ships have disappeared. After all, they had lost the command of the commander before. And the station commander forcibly took away the control authority of the command system. Those who ran ahead of time had already run away. And those who failed to run away the first time also ran away immediately after the ruler was destroyed. They desperately needed to distance themselves from the rebel webmaster. The company's fleet is gathering. And is also trying to rescue those who are still alive on other destroyed ships. Chin Ming deliberately avoided them. He now has a refractive SH. L on the outside, and is escorted by the afterglow fleet. So it is not easy to appear directly next to them. The remaining dozen or so remnant ships were absolutely incapable of rescuing him from afterglow. In addition, the cattle driver had just been destroyed, and the captain was not sure whether he was dead or alive. Chin Ming had no way to contact someone on the spot who could command all the company's ships. Simply stop contacting him and just pretend that he was taken away by Yu Wei. While the company's fleet was on alert, Chin Ming controlled the refraction and took the initiative to bypass them with the escorting Yu Wei battleship. Heading to the location where the military fleet had gathered after the ceasefire, Chen Ning planned to find the special law enforcer that was destroyed by the ruler. Brilliant they looked down on this kind of ship. Only the ruler. But Chen Ning still has ideas about this ship. Di Guang quickly arrived at the location where the enforcer was destroyed just now. The shattered law enforcers had drifted away, leaving only debris that looked like space junk. Chen Ning planned to let Di Guang take away part of it. After all, he couldn't finish the fight without getting anything, and also lost the armor piercing and centurion in vain. However, Chen Ming's main target is not actually these wreckage. 
but the escape capsules surrounding the wreckage that were launched before the enforcer was destroyed. After scanning with sensors, Chin Ming discovered a total of 63 escape hatches near the wreckage of the law enforcers. The rest of the military simply abandoned these men as they retreated. Under normal circumstances, Yu Hui would not take the initiative to capture these escape pods. Therefore, Chin Ming planned to take them all away. There are two reasons. One is because Chin Ming saw a special person in these escape cabins. A person who wears a different military uniform from others. A person who can suppress the fleet with the blessing of Chin Ming's ability by virtue of his command skills. Another reason is that Chin Ming needs some chips. Regardless of whether this bargaining chip is for Yu Wei, the military, or even the company, it is always better to have some. The commander is definitely the best bargaining chip. Anyway, Chin Ming also has the ability to rely on the panel to open the panels of all items inside the controlled spacecraft. It is not impossible to weld a steel plate or something on the outside of these escape cabins through modification so that the people inside cannot get out. Chin Ming didn't need to worry about the people in the escape cabin dying of hunger or thirst. Because if he remembered correctly, all escape cabins should be equipped with a special disposable freezing sleep device. This special hibernation device will automatically activate two days after the escape capsule is launched. To ensure that the internal personnel can survive if rescue cannot be obtained in a short period of time. And again, Chin Ming can't let others destroy two ships and still leave empty-handed. It was the military that caused all this. Chin Ming tried to find a way to get some compensation. The content of the compensation was the prisoners of these military personnel. So there should be no problem. All 63 escape pods were quickly captured. Also captured were the remains of some law enforcers. Which might be useful later. Chin Ming himself also had two destroyed ships. Centurion and Sunder. However, the Centurion had been completely crushed and there was no value in saving it. Although the armor-breaking armor was broken into two sections. It was still on the panel. But Chin Ming thought about it and did not try to take it away. The reason is also very simple. He did not repair the damaged armor-piercing materials. It's better to keep it and wait until someone from the company or government comes to take the boat away and see if they can repair it. It's best to repair it. If not, Chin Ming can still determine the location of the broken armor. And there will still be a chance to take it away in the future. Chin Ming has done what he wants to do. Afterglow has also installed a jump engine resonance device on the destroyed ruler. Di Guang returned to the Afterglow fleet. As the jump engines of the two cruisers drove the other ships in the fleet, they began to resonate. Chin Ming's vision gradually lengthened. At the last second when he could still see his surroundings, Chin Ming suddenly discovered that another cruiser had entered hyperspace. And that cruiser seemed to have the mark of Sindar Company on it. But they were a step slower. No, it must have been several steps too slow. Without the afterglow fleet that Chin Ming managed to obtain, Sindar Company's current support would have to collect the corpses for him. Chin Ming didn't know what to say for a while. The company indeed attaches great importance to him and gives him a lot of protection. But in the end, he could only save himself by relying on his own contact methods. In the end, it seems that the only one who can be relied on is Chin Ming himself. Time did not give Chin Ming a chance to think too much. The transition has completely begun. Ten seconds later, the galaxy where the afterglow colony he had visited once again appeared in front of Chin Ming's eyes. Chapter 99 14th Legion In hyperspace in the galaxy where the pirate space station is located, the activation of the afterglow fleet's jump engine had reached the last moment. And Sindar's fleet led by the Defender Class cruiser barely arrived. They had no way to stop them. They could only watch the Afterglow fleet leave and turn their attention to other places in hyperspace. After contacting the remaining company fleet in hyperspace and conducting an investigation into what happened before, the captain and commander of the cruiser immediately transmitted all the situation inside the entire galaxy back to the company headquarters. Sinar Corporation headquarters in the Esconia system. In the conference room on the top floor of the headquarters building where the meeting should have ended long ago. All the directors are still gathered here, waiting for the results. The appearance of the defender captain was displayed on the projection screen in the conference room. The chairman had already listened to the defender captain's explanation of the situation in hyperspace. Although he was a little anxious, he still kept a calm face and asked the captain, What does it mean that the military's dominator class may be destroyed by afterglow? The cruiser was killed. I need clear information. The defender captain lowered his head slightly when facing the chairman's question and said, According to the information provided by the surviving cowherd captain, Chin Ming did indeed enter this hyperspace channel. But after our search, we only found some fragments of the ruler's wreckage inside the channel. There are no remains of any mining ships, 
and no traces remain. Combined with the fact that when we first arrived at the target location, we only saw an afterglow fleet whose jump was in the final stage. We can only speculate that Yu Hui killed a ruler who was pursued by the military to kill Chen Ming. We are not 100% sure of what happened next. The chairman's eyes stayed on the captain for a moment. And he said, Leave some ships to continue the search. And other ships will be responsible for the rescue work. The military will definitely send spaceships over later. And then contact me. Yes. Screencasting is terminated. The projections of other directors in the conference room focused their attention on the chairman again. The chairman cleared his throat slightly and said, First rule out the possibility that Chen Ning was killed by Yu Wei and that the entire spacecraft was completely destroyed. Although Chen Ming's spaceship was modified from a civilian mining ship, it can be determined that he mixed dolomite steel into the material. This kind of material cannot be directly annihilated even when faced with an attack from a tachyon spear. So this possibility should be ruled out first. A director followed the chairman's words and said, Then there is only one possibility left. Yu Wei took Chen Ming away. Another director agreed. I think the possibility is really high. However, there is a big difference between whether a person was taken away by Afterglow, whether he was captured or whether he left on his own. Have we not discussed the possibility of Chen Ming's ability before? He has the ability to control all spaceships. And the Afterglow spacecraft is also a spaceship. The directors present had basically already had some thoughts on this conjecture. One director immediately asked the question he had been thinking about before. But if he can already control a cruiser-level ship, is it necessary for him to return to the company? Or even put himself in the danger of being hunted? We all know his history. We can't say that he suddenly had any special purpose out of nowhere. Right? The director's question immediately triggered a rebuttal from the director who had just proposed the idea. In fact, I don't think he can control the cruiser yet. The use of psychic powers always requires mental support. It takes at most half a year for him to awaken his psychic powers. No matter how talented a psychic is, it is impossible for him to have enough mental power to cover an entire cruiser after half a year of awakening. You sure? This is the upper limit determined by human physical fitness. And I have a say in this aspect. The director said this, and no one else had any objections. At this time, the chairman who was listening to the director's discussion also spoke. My opinion is that Chen Ning definitely has the ability to control Yu Wei Ai. As for Yu Wei's fleet, Chen Ming found a way to contact them through the Yu Wei Ai on the Yu Wei spaceship that he once controlled. Why did Yu Wei come? The chairman immediately replied. It depends on Chen Ning's ability. Then Yu Wei isn't worried that Chen Ming will control them in turn. The chairman immediately gave another answer. If Yu Wei and the others were worried about this, they shouldn't have appeared in the first place. Letting Chen Ming die there. Wouldn't it be the easiest and most convenient choice for Yu Wei? Even if they are worried about Chen Ming's death. Wouldn't it be better to wait until the military fails to take action and come out to give Chen Ning a shot? Really? I think so. The chairman's statement was recognized by several directors. So I think there is a high probability that Chen Ning chose to call for Yu Wei to rescue him when he was pushed to the end by the rulers. This is the only completely unrestricted force near the edge star field that can support him. Wait a minute. It doesn't seem certain when it comes to this. Where is Wuin? The chairman's question made all the directors present look at the director who manages the pirate space station. I saw him spreading his hands and saying, I asked, and the person gave me an answer that he knew. I don't know what he did. Is it possible that it wasn't Yu Hui but the one he rescued? He is not a psyker who can personally save people. When our ship arrived, there were no traces of conflict with Yu Wei other than the ruler. It shouldn't be the case. Maybe he has other plans? The arrangement that almost killed Chen Ming? The chairman reached out and knocked on the table lightly, interrupting the discussion of what Wu had done, and said, Stop guessing. You won't be able to guess. We can't figure out what the people of the Psychic Association did. Maybe he has already rescued Chen Ning elsewhere. And now all the evidence we have found has completely pointed to Yu Wei. So now let's assume that it was Chen Ning who was taken away by Yu Wei. And then consider other things. Of course, we have to pay more attention to Wu An's situation during this process. The director who was in charge of the pirate space station nodded and said nothing. Another director asked, Then what should we do now? Go find Yu Hui? Call him? The other directors directly answered on behalf of the chairman. We can't beat it. Right. Even if there is only a small way from Yu Wei. We can't handle it. You can use the thing in the test. You should be able to try it. The combat effectiveness is guaranteed. The chairman directly rejected the director's proposal and said, 
This is the key to our company's competition with several established companies. It is still in the research and development stage and absolutely cannot be used. And even if we have it, won't there be afterglow? Just attack them like you way attacked us before. If the efficiency is high enough, we shouldn't run into them. The chairman glanced sideways at the proposed director and said, Okay, if we agree to the call, where will you find Shen Ming? Do you have Yu Wei's star map? Do you know which galaxy has Yu Wei's colony after passing through the buffer zone? Do you know where Shen Ming was taken by Yu Wei? Looking for someone is just empty talk now. Furthermore, given Shen Ming's current situation, I'm very curious about his thoughts on Yu Wei. Does he want to stay with Yu Wei forever? Or does he still have the intention of coming back? Although there is pressure from the external environment, since Chen Ming has prepared backup plans for Yu Hui to rescue him, he must have considered what he will do after going to Yu Hui's side. This is information we have absolutely no way of knowing for sure. The chairman paused for a while, sighed slightly in his heart, and said, Chen Ming can use the spacecraft he controls to contact us, but we can only send the information we want to convey to his spacecraft. It's really not certain when you will be seen by him and when you will wait for his reply after being seen by him. We can only wait for Chen Ming to contact us now. So instead of wasting time waiting, let's get started on other things first. To take back the galaxy that belongs to us, the space station that belongs to us has to do more than just bring Chen Ming back. There are many other things to do. And even if there is no statement, after learning that Sky Steel is produced in the galaxy, we must take back the galaxy by any means necessary. Compared to before, now is definitely the best time. In addition, we have the escort fleet that needs rescue, the government that needs explanation, and the military that needs to respond. These are still new things, and all the company's original work needs to be continued. There is never enough to do. The director sitting on the left side of the chairman stood up and said, Then I will continue to contact the government and explain clearly the matter of the armor-piercing ship. Otherwise, the company's business will be difficult to do in the future. Chen Ming's situation must also be explained clearly. We will definitely not be able to keep Chen Ming in the future. And it will be difficult to bring Chen Ming back in person. Since we're not sure whether Chen Ming can come back alive in the end, let's use up the value of what he left behind. We have already lost a lot. At least we can't even make back what we lost. The chairman opened his mouth slightly, but finally said nothing. Watched the director exit the meeting after speaking. Another director suddenly noticed a key word in the chairman's words and asked, Chairman, what do you mean by the best opportunity? This has something to do with the situation on the military side. The chairman looked at the director responsible for handling military-related matters. Although there is a military faction in the company, he can be sure that all directors, including this director, are absolutely firm corporate faction. The middle management of the company may have some thoughts due to the temptation of the military in terms of interests. But the company's top executives, especially the top executives, that is, the board of directors, all know that the military is a hungry wolf that eats people without spitting out bones. The mining space station is the best evidence. If you sell the company for your own benefit, you will definitely be swallowed up by the military in the end. The director in charge of military affairs saw the chairman looking at him and said, The situation in the military is very strange. Their rebels should have been caused by themselves. That man turned out to be the commander of a military outpost. He had high authority within the army and he was also an old soldier. He had no reason to suddenly rebel. He also took away a complete ruler and came to hunt down Chen Ming. It is speculated that they thought that the ship they sent out at the beginning was not enough to kill Chen Ming. And then in order to complete this task, they made people take the initiative to rebel and cause trouble. Although the military has very high authority, the deployment of cruisers still needs to be approved. Unless their outposts are attacked by Afterglow like before. Other places can immediately bypass the approval process and directly attack the cruisers. But the afterglow didn't come before. So they used this method. After the director finished explaining, he said with confusion, I really don't understand how they can do this kind of thing. And they seem to have been stuck in their ways for too long. They don't even want to understand the information outside the star zone. There is already something wrong with their brains. They dare to mess with anyone who comes over there. The director who had just asked the chairman said, you mean the rebel who destroyed the ship of the man who came from there? Yes. That's why I said there is something wrong with their brains, and they have messed with people they shouldn't have messed with. So the sector military will definitely undergo a major change in the future. And this is our best chance to regain the space station. At the end of Sindar's board meeting, the Stargate near the colony planet, where the Star Domain capital is located, suddenly activated. 
The huge ring-shaped star gate lit up with a glow caused by the energy required to activate the star gate. Then, in the center of the star gate's ring structure, a thin film like a chaotic starry sky appeared. A few minutes later, a ruler flew out of the star gate with a fleet of exactly a hundred ships. This special ruler, which was very different from ordinary rulers, did not stop at the capital of the star field. It directly led the fleet to turn around and leave the galaxy and enter hyperspace. In the center of the ruler's command room, a three-dimensional image of a galaxy is projected. The galaxy in the middle of the projection is a planet filled with volcanoes and unstable geological structures. This is the Gallo two-star sector where the pirate space station is located and the military's general station. The fleet led by the special ruler entered the hyperspace channel and in the only military colony on the planet located under the protection of a biodome, the headquarters building of the sector military, in the office of the supreme commander, an imperial major general, the adjutant, who was wearing a straight military uniform, was reporting the situation to the gray-haired major general behind the desk. There were two other people listening next to him, also wearing military uniforms. From their epaulets, it could be determined that one of them was a colonel and the other a lieutenant colonel. The adjutant did not avoid them and said directly, The ruler lost the positioning signal and is suspected to have been destroyed. Before losing the signal, he did not report that the mission was completed. The major general's forehead was filled with wrinkles, and he slapped the table and said, Impossible! Which force in the edge star field can use a fleet capable of destroying the ruler without any movement? And give me their last communication record. The lieutenant colonel next to him reminded. He went out with his cronies to rebel and has cut off contact with us. We can only locate the approximate location of the ruler through background programs. The major general immediately realized that he had said the wrong thing in a hurry. But fortunately, the people in his office were all his own people. He adjusted slightly and said, The speed of Shinda Company's support is quite slow. We have also relied on other connections to block Wu inside. Who else can help Chen Ming escape? The lieutenant colonel suddenly thought of something and asked, Could it be Yu Wei? They have a criminal record. Chen Ming was blocked in hyperspace. Why did Yu Wei go to hyperspace for no reason? The lieutenant colonel shut his mouth and said no more. The military had not yet learned the identity of Chen Ming's psyker. So they could not understand why the ruler had suddenly disappeared. The major general didn't get an answer from anyone else. So he could only say, Go figure out what's going on. I want an answer. The adjutant nodded and asked, Then where should we start? The major general frowned and glanced at the adjutant and said, Two places. One at the outpost. The people who killed Chen Ming in the past cannot be dead. The people who came back must know something. The other one is Sinda Company. You can also give it a try. Some people within them have always had ideas about establishing a good relationship with us. And they will always know something. The adjutant took note of what the Major General said. Saluted and prepared to leave. The Major General continued to warn. There is also the commander of the outpost. He still characterizes the traitor as a traitor and asks the outpost to recommend a temporary replacement. We will arrange someone later. Now let's find out whether Chen Ming is dead. The output of Sky Steel must not fall into the hands of others. Just as the adjutant pushed open the office door, the Major General suddenly received an emergency communication. He immediately called his adjutant back and read the contents of the communication. Emergency communications revealed that a fleet had entered the system from hyperspace without approval. The flagship of the fleet is a ruler. But for no reason, its size is nearly one-third larger than the rulers that the sector military also has. And the armor of this ruler has a clear orange paint and also has the emblem of a spreading eagle, as well as a logo. The mark of the 14th Legion? What's going on with that ruler? Is it a new model? Why did it enter our jurisdiction without approval? A series of questions came out of the Major General's mouth, but no one in the office could give him an answer. I have to go deal with it. The Major General stood up and said to the Lieutenant Colonel, Go and make Chen Ming's wanted list even more serious, and find a way to get him to be wanted by other star districts so as to put some pressure on Shinda, add the charge of having an affair with Yue and treason, and add whatever is serious. And you? The Major General looked at the Colonel and said, You continue to appease those people who have been urging us to solve the problem because of Chen Ming, and give them more confidence. The Lieutenant Colonel and the Senior Colonel immediately left the office after responding. The Major General took the adjutant to the General Command Room in the Headquarters Building. At this time, a communication in progress was displayed on the large screen in the general command room. On the communication screen, you can see that the other party is a soldier wearing the special military uniform of the 14th Legion. 
he wears a pair of glasses and has the same military rank of Major General. But it was obvious that the Major General of the 14th Army Corps did not want to talk to anyone else. It wasn't until the Major General arrived at the command room that the Major General of the 14th Army Corps said like a notice. The military jurisdiction of the Gallo II sector will be taken over by our 14th Army Corps in the future. And the formal transfer document of the jurisdiction's management rights has been submitted. Major General Guahangjua, please return to the Star Territory Military Headquarters to report on your work. Guahangjua did not show any special emotions because of the words of the 14th Army Corps. Instead, he asked, What's the reason? I have served here for 35 years and will retire in two years. Why are you suddenly asked to go back and report on my duties? What do you mean? The sector where the traitor appeared and lost a cruiser should be yours. Right. This alone is enough for you to go back. Guahongjua's face suddenly froze. He has obviously passed the responsibility for this matter to other people who can take responsibility through the relationship in the Star Territory Joint Theater, which is a higher level than the Star Territory Military. In this way, even though he has a certain degree of negligence, he should not be driven back directly. And the person who helped him do this is definitely a trustworthy person and should not be questioned, Guahongjua said with some disbelief. Although I have a certain responsibility for the traitor's matter, it should not be to this extent. The Major General of the 14th Legion pushed up his glasses, and the reflection of the lenses made it difficult for everyone in the military command room of the Star District to see his eyes clearly. It's not true. But I wonder if you have ever heard of active smuggling within the military region. Someone sent the reporting documents to the inspection team. And after verification, the inspection team found many problems. The Major General of the 14th Army Corps simply named a few items controlled by the Army and reported several locations, dates and times. As Guahongjua listened, some cold sweat gradually appeared on his forehead because the Major General of the 14th Army Corps mentioned a few, which happened to be the smuggling in which he made the most profit. But he still said with some reluctance, If we do something wrong, it should be reviewed by the inspector. Your directly affiliated army has no right to dictate to the local army. Why do you do these things? Where are the documents of the inspection team? First of all, you call this something wrong? You may have some misunderstandings about doing something wrong. What you did is going to a military court. Secondly, what was just sent to you is the document of the inspection team. In the end, the inspection team was driven back by us. This is a temporary duty substitution agreement with the seals of the inspectorate and the Imperial Military Administration. Please accept it. For simple words, each one made more beads of sweat break out from the Major General's forehead. He had never heard that the once week 14th Army could do such a thing. In other words, he has been here for more than 30 years and has only heard about the reorganization of the 14th Legion once. Is it possible that the 14th Army underwent such big changes after that reorganization? The Major General of the 14th Army Corps obviously would not have any explanation for this. Anyway, all the contents of the document were true. He pushed up his glasses again, revealing his terrifying eyes to everyone. The reason we sent the inspector team back to come here in person is because we lost one of our men here. It seems that he happened to be killed by that traitor of yours. The threat in the eyes of the Major General of the 14th Army was almost overflowing. For soldiers who violate the law and military discipline. The 14th Imperial Independent Corps now has the power to review them. Communication hung up. The entire fleet, led by the special ruler of the 14th Legion, composed of ships modified by the 14th Legion itself, has appeared in the orbit of the planet. Chapter 100 Factory Contact Industrial Colony Galaxy in Afterglow After arriving, the Afterglow fleet led by Brilliance and Huiao dispersed as if they had completed their mission before. Hui Hui who was responsible for the preliminary review of Chen Ning, left the galaxy and entered hyperspace. And Huiao, with the refraction that protected Chen Ning's iron mine in his belly, arrived at the orbit of the industrial colony planet that Chen Ning had visited before. Then Hui Wang did not continue to land in the colony, but directly asked Di Guang to take Chen Ming to the giant industrial area that occupied one-fifth of the planet's area. In the corner where the entire industry is expanding, there is a small, Independent industrial zone consisting of only three factories. The final purpose of refraction is here. Although this place is relatively remote compared to the geocentric furnace energy supply tower at the core of the industrial zone, Chen Ming thinks it's not bad. At least the environment you usually stay in is definitely better than inside an industrial zone full of industrial equipment. As the diopter gradually approached its destination, Chen Ning could still see that the three factories had a large number of mechanical equipment 
and robots of various shapes busy at work. However, it seems that these machines are not busy with the internal work of the factory, but are renovating the factory itself. After landing, Di Guang spit out the iron ore number and stayed in the open space in the center of the three factories. The iron ore was parked in the open space next to the project. Di Guang entered the factory directly from the other side. After placing a pile of materials and the escape capsules that had been sealed by Chen Ning into the factory's warehouse, he left the factory and flew into space. Maybe there is something else that Yu Wei needs to do. Chen Ning checked the status of the escape cabins when he landed just now and made sure that all the escape cabins had activated the cryosleep function. The two-day automatic startup time for the escape cabin has not yet come. So they should have started it themselves. Chen Ming did not go around to the factory warehouse to touch these escape cabins for the time being. Instead, he chose to familiarize himself with a place where he might stay for a while and deal with them later. But when Chen Ming got off the ship wearing protective clothing and prepared to enter the factory, he was suddenly stopped by a robot busy around the factory. Immediately afterwards, Hui Wang, who had just brought him here, also contacted him again. The factory still needs a period of transformation. Please wait on the spacecraft for a while. You will be officially assigned tasks and work beginning at 8 a.m. Earth Standard Time tomorrow. If you have any needs, please contact Gamma A. He will help you contact me. And I can help you get what you need. Understood. Chin Ming responded, suddenly feeling like he was in the internship period. But the thing that is different from the internship is that there is no one at the moment. No. There is no AI to take care of him. Chin Ming turned around and returned to the spacecraft. Looking at the atmosphereless sky full of stars and the mechanical equipment at work. Suddenly, I missed the time when I had to work on the pirate space station. He shook his head, shook off the memories, and opened the porthole shield to isolate the outside environment. There is no need to think too much about the past. He still has to move forward now. Chin Ming returned to the Iron Mine studio, took out the terminal, and placed it in front of him. But he just opened the terminal and was not in a hurry to use it. Instead, I took the opportunity to take a look at the situation of Gamma A. After leaving the Afterglow Colony planet, Gamma A arrived at the distribution point of the galaxy, which is the space station supporting this industrial colony. The Glory class was also parked near this space station at this time. Although Chen Ning was unable to directly read the thoughts and data of Gamma A Core, he could see that Diopter's communication equipment was constantly sending out data and receiving data at the same time. It is estimated that Gamma A is, as it once said, reading the data on their communication platform through the network coverage of the space station in order to learn later. At the same time, it should also be communicating with Hui Yao. Hui Yao and Gamma A are friends. So it is normal for Hui Yao to confirm Gamma A's situation again after Gamma A went to pick up Chin Ming. Chin Ming would not interrupt at this time. After confirming the situation of Gamma A, he directly changed the perspective to Gamma B. Gamma B is not in the galaxy where Chin Ming is now, but in another place closer to the galaxy at the core of the afterglow, doing its own thing. Although Gamma B has been out of contact on the afterglow list, as soon as it came back, it was investigated by the afterglow individual responsible for this aspect of work within afterglow. However, the time to investigate Gamma B was before Chen Ming asked Gamma A to convey his situation to Hui Yao. Therefore, the rigor of the investigation of Gamma B is much easier than that of Gamma A. Gamma B only needs a little explanation of what happened during the time it was out of contact. It was that after it was captured in the battle of the previous mission. It was supposed to be used to take charge of some work. However, there was a human spacecraft maintainer who was treated unfairly by the forces that obtained Gamma B and was unable to use his abilities. So he hoped to join Yue Wei by contacting Yue Wei. However, the repairman died while escaping in the fighter Kai. So in the end Gamma B came back on his own. Although Chen Ning himself felt that this statement was ridiculous. For Yu Wei, it should be a more convincing statement. Because although there have always been conflicts between Yu Wei and humans, there has been a news circulating among those who have the ability to access the core of Yu Wei's AI. Afterglow treats people, especially researchers in various human-related mechanical, electronic, and spacecraft technologies, and will recruit them with very high salaries. It can only be said that humans capture the core of the Afterglow AI to work for humans and the captured Afterglow AI will also find ways to gain leverage from humans, although the efficiency is average. After all, Yu Wei's place is still inferior to humans' own place. However, there are indeed some people who have successfully joined Yu Hui and worked for Yu Hui, including senior engineers and senior researchers. The special tachyon spear modified by Yu Wei can be regarded as their masterpiece in a sense. 
So this is why at the Xinda Company Board of Directors meeting, everyone on the Board of Directors was not too surprised that Chen Ning suddenly found Yu Hui's rescue and ran to Yu Hui's place. And they quickly accepted it. Therefore, in the end, the Afterglow AI who investigated Gamma B successfully accepted Gamma B's words. Then, after reading the spaceship data of Fighter Kai at the expense of part of the material ration, Gamma B was released. The cosmic environment is ever-changing. And for Yue individuals, losing contact is a common occurrence. One day he was captured. And one day, he was paralyzed in space due to spacecraft problems. Or maybe he was rescued again one day and escaped by himself. This is all normal and possible. If it's been reviewed and there's no problem, then there's no problem. Therefore, the case of driving the Gamma be modified by the fighter was considered a closed case before. And basically, there would be no afterglow to investigate again. So Chen Ning simply gave Gamma B free time and let it do whatever it was doing before. Without having to worry about his affairs here for the time being. After all, he can be said to be under the protection of Yu Wei now. And there is no need to contact the Alpha AI who purchased the ectoplasm stone. And since Gamma B has not yet been exposed to the eyes of other Yu Wei who are dealing with matters related to Chen Ning. Chen Ning simply lets it be hidden for the time being. There is an afterglow hidden in the darkness of the afterglow. And it is an afterglow that is about to reach the beta core like Gamma A. I'm not sure what use it will be put to in the future. Close the panel where the two Gamma AI conditions can be seen. Chen Ning then opened the panel of his spacecraft that was still at the space station. There were 10 spaceships in total before Chen Ming. They are iron ore, diopter, sunder, two mules, lumen, shimmer, fighter kai, centurion and sentinel. At present, both the Sunder Armor and the Centurion have been destroyed. And the Dioptric and Fighter Kai are now on Yuwei's territory. The only ones left on the space station were two mules and a sentinel. Parked quietly in the repair shop. Chin Ming took a look at each one and found that none of the three spaceships showed any signs of being tampered with by outsiders. There was also equipment on the sentinel for long-distance communication that he had installed before. When Chin Ming started the equipment, he found that there was a received message inside the communication equipment. It's information from the company. Let Chen Ming contact them as soon as possible after seeing the news. And they will find a way to bring Chen Ming back. It seems that the company has guessed that he was peacefully taken away by Yu Wei. But Chen Ming was not in a hurry to contact the company. Instead, he contacted his boss first. When the communication was connected, the boss did not speak. But Chen Ming said the secret code he had spoken to the boss before. Chen Ming had previously told his boss about his abilities, and that he could communicate over long distances using communication equipment. However, in order to prevent anyone from using his spaceship to disguise their identity, Chen Ning set up a secret code and told several people who were familiar with him. After verifying his identity, the boss asked quite unexpectedly, Xiao Ming, how did you survive? I know the military thought you were dead when they got a Dominator over there. Luck. It's not luck. I heard that Yu Wei's cruiser appeared over there. It should have something to do with you. Chen Ming didn't answer, which was regarded as acquiescence. The boss suddenly sighed slightly and said, Anyway, I want to apologize to you first. My previous rescue arrangements were blocked by others and did not work. Fortunately, you are fine now. You should be safe at Yu Wei's place. Chen Ming didn't pay too much attention to the boss's apology. After all, he took the initiative to say, that he didn't need the boss help from the beginning. The boss was already preparing to rescue him if there was an accident, and he had nothing to blame. But now Chen Ning was very curious about who could get rid of the rescue arranged by his boss. So he asked, Who stopped him? The boss made no secret of this, saying, Other people in the organization I'm in. Internal conflict? Not really. It can only be said that our organization is relatively loose. He is also a psychic. He didn't want me to save you. So he blocked the rescue I arranged. Chen Ming asked in confusion. Why? I shouldn't have offended any psychics. Right. In fact, there is. Because he is the beneficiary of the military's mining of sky steel. And part of the sky steel mined by the military will be distributed to him. It's a pity that I didn't know about this before. Otherwise, he wouldn't have interfered with your rescue. Chen Ming was suddenly silent for a while and asked. What's his name? Where is he? What do you want to do? Write it down first and talk about it later. The boss hesitated a little, but still told Chen Ming the name of the psyker and the galaxy where his colony was located, and said, If you have an idea, I will tell you his psionic effect. Don't know too much right now. Chen Ming responded 
and kept everything his boss said in mind. What are your plans for the future? My plan? Chin Ming thought about it and couldn't hide it. So he said directly, You Hui Atashi's great importance to my ability, so I will definitely not be able to come back in a short time. But I don't want to come back. There are many things that are very valuable to me in Yue. And they are all here. The boss couldn't help but smile and said, That's all? In addition, I also want to take this opportunity to exercise and develop my abilities. If I had been able to control cruisers before, or if I already had a fleet of my own, I wouldn't have been forced to this point by the military. Chen Ming repeated as if he had strengthened his determination. Yes, I want to build a fleet of my own. The boss didn't think it was crazy because Chen Ming wanted to do this alone. He just said, That won't be easy. A fleet does not just need ships. Yeah, I know it's difficult. But I suddenly feel that the most reliable power is only the one you personally control. Now that the conversation has reached this point, Chen Ming took advantage of the situation and said, So I'm thinking about whether there is any way to make money. As far as my current situation is concerned, even if I'm on Yue's side, I can't completely break away from human society. Money is still very important, whether it's buying a boat or buying supplies. And in the future, if I can really build a fleet, how will I solve the problem of bulk supplies? The boss carefully considered Chen Ming's question and said, Actually, since you have gone out and there is still afterglow protecting you, you can try to explore the unknown star field. In recent decades, the Empire has no plans to expand. There is still a blue ocean outside. Once the buffer zone between us and Afterglow passes, everything is an unknown star field that has basically not been investigated. If you can bring back a star map, or go deeper, scan the rough data of the planets in the galaxy on the star map and bring it back. Detailed data on these valuable galaxies could cost more than a battleship. Oh, no. The boss suddenly interrupted himself and said, I almost forgot that you don't have an exploration ship. You don't have professional scanning equipment. And it's not easy to deal with the hyperspace channel cloud outside. Chin Ming originally had some thoughts about what his boss said. But he realized the problem after his boss said it was wrong. That is, hyperspace channels are not naturally generated, but are developed step by step by humans. The interior of hyperspace itself is filled only with endless hyperspace channel clouds. And the density of the internal clouds is not uniform which means that they can be dispersed. Back when humans first set foot in hyperspace, humanity can only rely on cruisers and even capital ship-level ships to support the front and struggle to open up a channel that can allow other small spacecraft to pass. In the process of continuous exploration and research, humans have developed specialized exploration ships to explore unknown star fields based on the properties of hyperspace. Then, for the sake of convenience, in addition to its own ability to disperse hyperspace clouds, Exploration ships are also gradually increasing their ability to explore unknown galaxies. High-power scanning equipment scans the galaxy environment. And fine detection equipment detects the general situation of the planet to determine whether a planet is worthy of detailed exploration. So far, the hyperspace here in the fringe star field is still filled with hyperspace clouds. And navigation between galaxies can only rely on shipping lanes. But over in the prosperous star field, the hyperspace clouds have basically completely dispersed. And that is the world that truly belongs to humans. However, although Chen Ning currently does not have the ability to explore unknown galaxies, it may not be possible in the future. So Chen Ming said to his boss, Actually, I could ask you way to try. They might be able to give me an exploration ship. But it shouldn't be convenient for me to go out myself. But your abilities do. The boss helped Chen Ning pick up the conversation and said, Since you said so, you should have some ideas in this regard. It never hurts to explore some valuable planets. Also, do you remember what you did for me before? The pirate? Yes. Remember why I asked you to bring the pirates back? He attacked the fleet transporting goods to your colony. Not bad. Do you understand what I mean? You want to acquire the galaxy data I scanned and then build a colony? Almost. But I don't build the colony. You build the colony. Chin Ming frowned and asked one after another. Why do you say that? And why do you mention this suddenly? Is there really no problem if the colony is outside the Empire's territory? The boss immediately replied as if he had already prepared a plan. The reason why you built the colony instead of me is very simple. Because I'm lazy. As for the reason for suddenly mentioning this, it's because the entire human empire is able to survive stably in the dangerous unknown star fields where the afterglow lingers outside the Empire. And can also remotely communicate with the Empire without any communication equipment. At the moment, as far as I know, 
you should be the only one. This is a rare opportunity. An opportunity to expand territory. If you miss it, it may be gone. As for the problem, what do you think there will be? Chen Ming immediately said the two issues that had just occurred to him. Yu Hui, there are still people. I said, this is not my colony. It's the colony of you, who is working under Yu Hui now. It shouldn't be a problem for Yu Hui to meet your small needs. Right? When Chen Ming heard this, he couldn't help but said, I don't think this is a small demand. I think so too. But it depends on you to see if you can get Yu Hui's true attention. As for the human problem, I can solve it. In your case, I was not prepared enough and was intercepted midway. But such a thing would never happen in a colony that gave me time to prepare in advance. The boss's tone sounded very serious. You must know that a perfect self-sufficient colony is in existence that can provide all the materials that can be obtained in human society. I will only provide you with support. When the colony can make money, you will receive dividends. Everything in the other colonies will be yours. Everything you need can be found in the colony. Chen Ming had personally seen Yu Hui's colony and the colony in the Star Territory capital and knew that what his boss said was correct. But he still had some questions to ask. But colonial construction is not that simple. Right? Of course not. So I'm just telling you that you can't find a suitable galaxy so quickly now. As for the work that needs to be done to build the colony, you can actually learn about it from Yu Wei. Or if you have time, you can come to me, and I can talk to you slowly. Ended correspondence with boss. Chen Ming also acquiesced to the idea of setting up a colony with his boss. After digesting what the boss said, Chen Ming returned his gaze to the sentry's communication equipment. He was considering whether to contact the company. At present, it seems that the company has only sent a message to Chen Ming's spacecraft, and has not gone so far as to directly install monitoring equipment on the spacecraft. After all, even if they did this, they still had to wait for Chen Ming to take the initiative if they wanted to communicate with Chen Ming. The initiative to contact lies with Chen Ming. So installing equipment on the Sentinel for monitoring is likely to arouse Chen Ming's resentment. So they may not know Chen Ming's details yet. Nor do they know that Chen Ming has contacted his boss. This is a good thing for Chen Ming. Because Chen Ming now feels that he does not have to contact the company. Chen Ming needs to stay with Yu Hui for a while to obtain benefits that are very important to him. And he also has needs from his boss. But the company obviously urgently needs Chen Ming to help them obtain Sky Steel and confront the military. Otherwise, the longer it drags on, the greater the company's losses in Sky Steel will be. So once the company knows about Chen Ming's situation, it will definitely find a way to take Chen Ming away. Chen Ming didn't want to leave like this. If he leaves now, not only will all Chen Ming's chances of benefiting from Yue be ruined, he may even be chased by two afterglow cruisers. And from now on, Yu Wei may directly blacklist him. This is definitely not a good thing for Chen Ming. So Chen Ming planned to delay for two days without contacting anyone else. Anyway, the boss and factory director who are familiar with it. The factory director and others should know that Chen Ming is fine in two days. And they will most likely hide it for Chen Ming temporarily. Unless the company is really urgent. They may find a way to contact Chen Ming through their boss. But you have to get through the boss first. Chen Ning picked up the terminal in front of him and opened the professional books that Old Wu had given him before. He had not yet read many of these books. And in the future, Yu Hui will probably give him a bunch of Yu Hui's professional books. And he will have to read them all slowly. But now, he has plenty of time. Chapter 101 Special Treatment Reason for Success The next day, Chen Ming received the brilliant message exactly at 8 o'clock in the morning Earth Standard Time. A complete work list was sent to the Iron Ore's computer. Although the list listed a very detailed page of work tasks, Chin Ming took a rough look at it and found that the overall task was very simple and clear. On the first day of formal work, Chin Ming only needs to be familiar with the factory environment, the factory equipment, and the future work procedures. Although Chin Ming mainly relies on his spiritual energy to work, the prerequisite for tasks such as transformation still requires Chin Ming to spend time learning transformation techniques and learning requires the use of these equipments. So you still need to be familiar with what you should be familiar with. And you will definitely use it in the future. After today, Chin Ming's real work will begin. Basically, he works in the morning and gives Chin Ming time to learn skills in the afternoon. It seems quite easy. In addition, the list also stated that Chin Ming would be given some material subsidies for learning and practical learning techniques. However, Yu Wei will also regularly check the technology mastered by Chin Ming. If it does not pass the test, 
the supply of materials will be reduced accordingly. This kind of treatment is really like the company's treatment of employees, making it difficult for Chen Ming not to feel deja vu. But Chen Ming didn't care too much. After continuing to look at the work location on the work list, which is located inside the three factories just outside, after putting on protective clothing, closing the protective panels of the spacecraft's portholes, we were ready to set off. But just after the spacecraft's protective panel was completely lowered, Chen Ming suddenly discovered that the factory outside had undergone very obvious changes. Yesterday the transformation of those robots and machinery throughout the factory was completed. Some factories that were originally semi-open have now been fully closed. And three factories that were originally independent of each other have now built express lanes in different factory rooms. It will definitely be quite convenient to move between each other. Chen Ming cannot see the other modifications. So you have to learn more about them in detail after entering. Chen Ming arranged his protective clothing and at the same time took Xiao Shi, who had not appeared for a long time, with him, and stepped off the spacecraft. He had a general understanding of the situation in the three factories yesterday. They are production factories for weapons, ships and fuel respectively. This was originally a small supply point for Afterglow. After Chen Ming arrived, it was isolated from other places, and used as a working place for Chen Ming. While giving Chen Ming a better working environment, it can also prevent Chen Ming from taking the opportunity to cause trouble in a nearby factory. Chen Ming came to the factory in the center of the three factories. Its door was closed at this time. But there is a small door next to it. Get closer. It's a separate compartment. After entering the compartment, the door behind Chen Ming was closed. My ears, which had felt nothing but slight vibrations, suddenly heard the sound of equipment operating in the factory. Air is being replenished inside the compartment. Chen Ming lowered his head and glanced at the gas quality detector of the protective suit, which displayed three lines of content. Livable air environment. No lethal gas. No pathogenic microorganisms. On a planet with no atmosphere, and an afterglow that does not require breathing. Such an environment can be said to be quite good for humans. Is this the purpose of the renovation of the factory yesterday? The other two factories have also been closed, and should undergo similar renovations. The afterglow is really... Chin Ming sighed slightly. He didn't get such treatment when he first joined the company. Chen Ming shook his head, tried to take off his helmet, and breathed in the air in the factory. Although it is inside the factory, the air does not smell strange. At most, it has a heavy metallic smell. But this is something that the factory cannot avoid. And Chen Ming cannot be too demanding. Holding the helmet to his side, Zayashiba pulled it on the edge of the helmet and looked curiously at the new environment outside. Looking eager to try it out, Chin Ning picked up the terminal and looked at the factory map sent along with the work list. You can see the location of the factory's main control room on the map. Three factories share one main control room. But Chin Ning did not go there immediately because he also saw something else. Refrigerated food storage. This thing can be said to be quite incompatible with Afterglow. Anyway, today's task is to get familiar with the working environment and work processes. The cold storage is in the factory and should be considered a part of the working environment. Chin Ming directly followed the passage that had been clearly renovated inside, arrived at the cold storage smoothly, and stood at the door of the cold storage. It was different from the empty shelves that Chin Ming saw when he opened the cold storage of the mining space station half a year ago. After opening the cold storage in the factory, Chin Ming saw a large amount of food supplies that almost filled all the shelves in the cold storage. If Chin Ming remembers correctly, there are no habitable planets in the galaxy he is currently in. In other words, if you want food, it must be specially transported from other places. Yu Wei really gave Chin Ming a very good working environment. Chin Ming closed the door of the cold storage and continued to look at the map. The structures of the other two factories are basically the same as the spacecraft factory where Chin Ming is currently located, except for the absence of cold storage and master control room, and some differences in the internal equipment. The general structures are similar. Chin Ming wandered around the other two factories and returned to the spacecraft factory after confirming the environment, came to the main control room of the factory. This is a room full of complex control panels on one side, various work equipment on the other side, and even some objects for Chen Ming to rest in the corner. Chen Ming didn't pay attention to the side, but directly approached the control panel. Then he discovered that although the panels looked complicated and troublesome, in fact the panels themselves and their functions were very familiar to Chen Ming. It's basically the same situation as the equipment in the maintenance shop. And although it is equipment modified by Yuhui, most of the operating habits are based on human beings. 
Chin Ning tried to operate it. Through the control panel, he could observe everything going on, including the other two factories. All control permissions of the three factories are also integrated here, and all equipment can be controlled by Chin Ming. In addition, in the database linked to the control panel, Chin Ming also saw a specially marked, complete and detailed task arrangement for Chin Ming. That is, more detailed task requirements. Tomorrow morning's work will be to repair a batch of weapons already stored in the warehouse. Although Chin Ming controls the factory and can use the factory's equipment to complete the work, Yu Hui obviously does not want to see Chin Ming use the equipment to perform repairs, but wants to see how Chin Ming's psychic power can achieve control, maintenance and repair. Transformation effect. The equipment in the factory is mostly used for learning as Chin Ming thought before. Yu Hui specially gave Chin Ming time to study in the afternoon, and even entered some professional books on Yu Hui technology into the database linked to the control panel, which was not just for display. Chin Ning flipped through the books where these afterglows were recorded. It can only be said that although the design of Yu Hui's spaceship and weapons is the same as that of humans in terms of underlying ideas. After all, Yu Hui is of human origin. But it's different when it extends further. Yu Hui's spaceship design ideas and weapon design ideas are all geared towards the use of AI. What Chin Ning needs to learn is this technology. In fact, humans should also have these contents. After so many years of fighting, Yu Wei's spaceship must have obtained a lot of them. After cracking it backwards, you must have mastered some superficial and low-level knowledge that should be mastered. Yu Hui must know this. And he would definitely not feel bad if he gave it to him directly. Therefore, it shouldn't be too difficult for Chen Ming to learn these relatively low-level knowledge. After getting familiar with all the functions of the control panel, Chen Ming chose to go to the material warehouse next to the factory work area. The first weapons to be repaired tomorrow are here. Most of these weapons are energy weapons. But there are also a small number of live ammunition weapons. Many of them are models that Chen Ming has never seen before. Unfortunately, these things are not on the spacecraft now. So the names cannot be known. But since they are all in the warehouse, there is always a chance to find out the value of these things later. In addition to weapons, there are also some others, such as drone parts or some damaged equipment. It seemed that as long as it was not something that Yu Wei I had direct contact with, they would pick some out and bring them to Chin Ming. In addition to these finished products, there are many other materials in the warehouse. These should be the material subsidies you we mentioned, and they can all be used by him. Chin Ming took a casual look and determined that there were 13 types of high-grade materials and two types of special-grade materials in the warehouse. Although the amount is not much, it is enough for Chin Ming to use for a while if he does not use it randomly. In addition, there are those escape cabins that Chin Ming asked Di Guang to go back and collect before leaving the battlefield. Just when Chin Ming was thinking about what to do with these escape cabins, Chin Ming suddenly felt that his spacecraft staying at the space station was touched. Chin Ming immediately glanced distractedly and found that it was Lao Wu who was holding a screwdriver and pulling on the engine of the spacecraft. Tisk! Chin Ming smacked his lips in displeasure. It seemed that Old Wu already knew that he was not dead. Then contact Chin Ming through the method of proactive contact that Chin Ming left for his boss before which is to use a hard object to pull inside the engine nozzle of the spacecraft. After all, Chin Ning is now here in Yu Wei. Even for safety, he does not need to control the spacecraft for protection. So he can always control the sentry and receive information from the sentry at any time. After Lao Wu finished pulling up the spacecraft, he turned around and ran to an unoccupied corner of the maintenance shop, lit a cigarette and waited. Chin Ming didn't waste any time and immediately contacted him through Sentinel. You have nothing to do to paddle my spaceship? Pay the money. A smile appeared on Lao Wu's face and he said, Hey, Xiao Ming, you are really alive. What is your specific situation and what happened next? Tell me quickly. Fix my ship? Hey, definitely. Chen Ming leaned against the wall of the factory and told Old Wu what happened after the follower company fleet entered hyperspace. Of course, he omitted a lot of details. After listening to this, Lao Wu showed a confused look on his face and said, There is nothing wrong with what you said before. But it sounds weird after that. Why did Yu Wei agree to join you so casually and easily? And give you such good treatment? Without even interrogating you to find out what you wanted to do in the past? Chen Ming was quite surprised when he heard Lao Wu's question and asked, You don't understand? I feel I understand. But I don't understand. Just tell me. I'm too lazy to think about it. The client is just calling me. Why should I think about it myself? You really are. Shen Ming shook his head, but did not refuse. 
he explained. Because I didn't show any resistance before. Nor did I show any threat to them. So they let me join. Question mark. To put it simply, my ability actually forced Yuhui to come over to a certain extent. Let me ask you. You are Yu Wei. And I am asking you for help. If you are able to come, will you at least come and take a look? Isn't this nonsense? Isn't that okay? If Yu Wei comes, then they have only two choices. One is to kill me to avoid future troubles. And the other is to take me away and let me, the person who has asked them for help, do the work for them. With my active cooperation, is it necessary for Yu Hui to interrogate me more? I am actively cooperating with them. And they are cooperating with me. Isn't it best to just cooperate like this? There is no need to engage in a complicated, troublesome interrogation that is impossible to get a real answer. It sounds simple to you just now. But many things are achieved through luck. Coincidence. And the information I have obtained from other places. You don't think Yu Hui is easy to get along with. Do you? If we really break up, Yu Hui will definitely kill me immediately. If I am peaceful, Yu Wei will cooperate and give me peace. If I resist, then Yu Wei will definitely be aggressive. Chen Ming paused for a moment and continued. Yu Wei I is actually easy to understand. Even if they have self-awareness, they will still follow the logically optimal solution when doing things. I may not necessarily determine the optimal solution, but the relatively optimal solution can still be calculated. The best solution they can find for me is definitely not to kill me. So in that situation, I made the choice to match their optimal solution. That's how things work. As long as we understand each other's general ideas and have the same interests, everything will go very smoothly. Obu still sounded a little confused and asked, Then what public interests do you and you we have? Are they not afraid of being controlled by you? They need my capabilities, and it's in their interest. My abilities are my interests to me. It's a risk they have to bear if I control them. And they know there's a risk on me. And my own thoughts are also risky. I may not just join them because of my relationship with the military. I may have other ideas about Yu Wei. Yu Wei knows that I have thoughts. And I also know that Yu Wei knows that I know they have such thoughts about me. But there is no need to show it. It would be disgraceful to show it. Verbal threats. Such as prohibiting people from thinking about them. And being threatened if they have ideas. Are all nonsense. You are Yu Hui, and you said that to me. Then I said that I don't dare to have thoughts about you anymore, and I will work for you honestly from now on. Do you believe it? Old Wu shook his head and said, I don't believe it. Yes, even if they say it, I may not be out of ideas. On the contrary, it may arouse my rebellious psychology even more. And the result of this matter being revealed is that my relationship with Yu Hui will be very tense. I am now in Yu Hui's territory. Is it good for Yu Hui to have a tense relationship with Yu Hui? Lao Wu suddenly said. Why do I feel that what you said is contradictory? I'm not saying otherwise. Yu Hui and I can be said to be cooperating now. I provide Yu Wei with my abilities, and Yu Wei provides me with a shelter from being pursued by the military. In addition to Yu Wei, there are many forces that can protect me from being hunted by the military. But without me, there will be no other psyker with such abilities. Chen Ming suddenly sighed when he said this. Actually, if the company could have been half an hour faster, I should be in the capital of the Star Territory now. And if I'm not wrong about the military side, something is about to happen. It will be difficult for the military to continue to allocate energy to hunt me down. It's a pity that it's still a little slow. Old Wu seemed to feel the same way and said, Indeed, but the company will probably find a way to save you later. Right. I will definitely be rescued. As long as the company still needs Sky Steel, and needs the subsequent benefits of Sky Steel. They will definitely find ways to save me before their losses exceed the estimated risk value that Sky Steel's benefits bring to them. As for what will happen during the rescue, that will happen later. Anyway, since I am a company, it would be difficult to come to the rescue now. So I am not in a hurry to go back. It would be good to stay here with Yu Hui and gain some stable benefits from each other. When Lao Wu heard this, he couldn't help but ask, So confident? Yu Wei just wants to get benefits from you. You are still in Yu Wei. So you can still pick up Yu Wei's wool? Aren't you afraid that they will attack you directly if they get anxious? Well, it sounds a bit confident. But I understand the thinking logic of Yu Wei's AI very well. Instead of targeting me with unnecessary threats and differential treatment, they can only use death threats and other means to force me to do things with extremely low efficiency, while at the same time facing the covetousness of all the forces that are interested in me. I should be enough for other forces to have thoughts about me. 
Right. Old Wu sounded more confident than Xin Ming and said. That's for sure. The news about you being in the fleet has been spread everywhere. Soon people in many places will know that there is someone who can control the spacecraft. A psychers exist. So, so many people will have thoughts about me. And Yu Wei is a threat. If I really die, Yu Wei will definitely suffer the biggest loss. Because I am in their hands now. Not on human territory. It would be acceptable to Yu Wei if I died on human territory. After all, I would be dangerous to Yu Wei among humans. If they can't get it, destroying it wouldn't be a bad idea. But if I die on Yu Wei's territory, Yu Wei will get nothing. Afterglow relied on my ability to achieve technological progress and the possibility of a more powerful future. All disappeared. Sunset and I both know this. So if things can be done peacefully without conflict, then both sides can get what they need. And there's no need to create complications. Right. Old Wu now fully understood why Chen Ming was able to join Yu Wei so smoothly. He said with some sigh. Is this Yu Wei so smart? If Sunset wasn't smart, we wouldn't have fought Sunset for so long. I'm talking about being smart as a person. I thought Sunset was just a calculating robot. Lao Wu said such words. Chen Ming didn't find it strange to have such thoughts. After all, Yu Wei generally does not communicate with humans. So in the eyes of most people, he should be the image of a crazy artificial intelligence. Only those who have the ability to communicate with Yu Wei will know that Yu Wei is really a new life. So you know now? Right. So for Yu Wei, instead of all kinds of threats, restrictions, and coercion. It is better to use gentler methods, more active support, and generous treatment to make me stay. You know, old Wu, Yu Wei gave me control of three factories. A spacecraft production factory, a weapons production factory, and a ship fuel production factory. To be honest, I'm very excited right now. All authority within the factory is given to me, and all materials are available for me to use as I wish. Even if I can't make money from them, there is still a place for my own spaceship. And more importantly, when Chen Ming came here, he lowered his tone and suddenly changed the subject and said, Old Wu, go to my spaceship. Okay. Old Wu snuffed out his cigarette, flicked the cigarette butt in the direction of the sweeping robot, and walked into the maintenance shop. Chen Ming controlled the sentry hatch to open, allowing Old Wu to step onto the ship. Later, Chen Ming randomly selected a conspicuous device inside the Sentinel and modified it. Chen Ming was standing in the warehouse at this time. Part of the materials in the warehouse in front of him instantly melted into liquid and flowed into Chen Ming's palm. After crossing the distance limit, it was covered on the sentry's equipment. Under Lao Wu's amazed eyes, Chen Ming chose to restore the transformation. Then, the modified materials appeared on the floor of the sentry. It's meaningless to me to cut off countless light years. You know the value of teleporting things back from Yu Wei over long distances. Right. Although I can't modify Yu Wei's AI course now, I will definitely be able to install and disassemble them in the future. Do you understand the meaning? If you were asked to come, would you be moved? Old Wu swallowed. There were three complete factories in front of them. If he didn't have Chen Ming's ability, he would have to think carefully. After all, everything actually belonged to Yu Hui. However, with Chen Ming's skills, Working in the factory is definitely not working for Yu Hui. Yu Wei will provide me with a lot of materials. They will give me ordinary, high grade, and even special grade materials. They will also give me the knowledge to learn Yu Wei technology. What I can get from Yu Wei is definitely more than the ordinary materials I put in front of you now. Do you think they can think of it? A psyker who controls a spaceship has the ability to teleport through space. Lao Wu bent down and picked up a metal ingot on the ground and said, I can't think of it. Then it's over. Anyway, the summary of this matter is that both Yu Hui and I can benefit from the opponent. Although there are risks, the risks are acceptable. So there is no need for us to openly quarrel with each other. I am willing to cooperate, and Yu Hui is also willing to cooperate. Both sides will get what they need, and it will be up to who can be the winner in the end. Old Wu raised his head and glanced at the monitor inside the spacecraft. He knew that Chen Ming could see it. I always feel like you, and Yu Hui have an inexplicable tacit understanding. Maybe it's because I have a lot of contact with Yu Wei. Okay, I have something to do here, so I'm hanging up. After getting the answer, Lao Wu stopped talking and said, Okay, then when can you come back? I see that Lao Lu seems to be quite unhappy these past two days. Knowing that you are still alive makes me feel a little better, but I feel like I have no energy. Jin Ming knew the reason for the factory director's lack of energy. After all, 
He and his boss were doing business worth tens of millions a day. But in fact, it will be difficult to do this after Chen Ming's identity is exposed. The company will keep an eye on this kind of business that damages the company's reputation. Even if the pirate space station is working on it, this matter requires the cooperation of outside companies. So it will definitely be stopped later. Chen Ming himself may not be able to visit the space station often in the future. It would be strange if the director is not depressed. It's a pity for Chen Ming. He only did it for two or three days before and didn't make much money. The factory manager will probably pay for the remaining goods in two days. However, Chen Ming didn't have the internet and couldn't see it. So he had to go back and talk about it. Then you go and have a drink with the factory manager and have a good time. If you have any questions, please contact me. That's all. Chen Ming hung up the communication. There was a feeling of relief on my face for a while. As I was able to express all my innermost thoughts. But it was immediately covered by some haze. Chen Ming actually had something to say just now. Although he appeared to be normal. In fact, he was still somewhat uncertain about the future. And these uncertainties made him always feel like he was unable to let go completely. Because although Chen Ming really doesn't want to go back now. If he wants to go back. Chen Ming currently has no good way to go back immediately unless he goes through other people. He was forced to call Yu Wei when he was in desperate situation. And Yu Wei is a way he prepared in advance to survive when no one can save him. It can be regarded as a backup move that will be activated only when the last resort is necessary. Therefore, Chen Ming did not prepare his backup plan. So much so that his current situation is actually a bit difficult to get off. In addition to gaining benefits from Yu Wei, he also needs to continue to find ways to escape. But now Chen Ming doesn't want to trust others anymore. He doesn't want others to be late in the end. He himself must find a way out by himself. It doesn't have to be used, but it must be there. Chen Ming breathed a long sigh of relief, pushed the wall he was leaning on, and stood firm. At this time, a communication was sent in and sent to Chen Ming's terminal. Why do you feel like more people are contacting Yu Wei now? Strange thoughts flashed through Chen Ming's mind, and he discovered that what was displayed on the terminal was Gamma A's active communication. It said that it has almost reached the upper limit of the Gamma level Afterglow AI core and can be upgraded to Beta level. For this purpose, the core carrier needs to be replaced. Chapter 102 Attitudes of All Parties Gamma A is about to become a Beta level AI core. I knew this before it was revealed. But Gamma A also said that it is still far from substantial improvement. During this period of time, except for the three almost useless mechanical chips that Chen Ming gave it, there was nothing that could increase Gamma so quickly. The only possibility is the arrangement of Afterglow. Afterglow gives Gamma A the part of the computing power needed to meet the conditions for improvement. As for whether this is the case, just investigate. Chin Ming opened the diopter's panel. And then he discovered that the diopter was staying outside a factory in the Yuhui Industrial Colony. And it is the same as the independent small supply point Chin Ming is here. An independent small factory. Although the refraction stops here, Gamma A has been removed from the refraction at this time. However, Chin Ming was still able to determine the position of Gamma A. Just inside the factory next door, the core should be replaced. It seems that the sudden increase in Gamma A is indeed Yu Wei's initiative. They still don't believe that Chin Ming is incapable of controlling the I-Core. So they decided to replace Gamma A, which was suspected of being controlled by Chin Ming, with a new core. This is the best choice that cannot be faulted in terms of theory and logic. And Chin Ming cannot express any opinions on it. Otherwise, it would be equivalent to helping you if we completely prove that he has this ability. But even if Gamma A has to change its carrier, Chin Ming is still confident that his psychic power will continue. Because what is displayed on his panel is AI individual controlled, not AI core controlled. The afterglow is not distinguished by the core, but by the existence within the core. I just don't know if afterglow will reinstall Gamma back to Diopter after replacing it, or if it will try to give Gamma A a new spaceship. Chin Ming didn't quite think that Yu Hui would let down his guard against Gamma just because he changed his SH. L. There might be other tests later. It seems that it will take time for Gamma A to replace the Beta Core. Chin Ming didn't wait all the time. He had other things to do at the moment. Deal with those military escape pods. Chin Ming walked into the warehouse and relied on the control subpanel that was also found in the warehouse to control the equipment connecting the work area and the warehouse. As well as some robots with various functions. Transport the escape capsule in the warehouse to the next door and begin to remove the outer layer he had added previously against the panels. The cryosleep device has been activated inside the escape capsule. Unless activated externally, it will remain frozen. Therefore, 
Chen Ming is not worried that the soldiers inside will take the opportunity to escape after removing the SH. L. After being busy for a period of time, Chen Ming found the escape cabin containing the soldier wearing special military uniforms among these escape cabins. At the same time, Chen Ming also saw the eagle-shaped mark on his chest through the transparent porthole of the escape cabin, as well as the 14. In the hyperspace, before Chen Ming's terminal network was disconnected, he took the opportunity to check it. This mark is the mark of the 14th Independent Legion of the Empire. Chen Ming was once just an ordinary maintenance engineer. At most, he knew that the military had many different departments, from the highest Starfield Joint Theater Military, to the next level Starfield Military, to the lower Starfield Military, and to the lowest level of the Scattered Star System Garrison. In addition, the Empire also has some independent legions outside this system. Other than this, Chen Ming is not sure. He only found out after checking that the 14th Legion is currently recognized as the strongest among the 20 independent legions in the Empire. It's no wonder that the battle commanded by the commander of the 14th Army Corps can limit Chen Ming's abilities everywhere. The 14th Legion has the largest exclusive territory among all independent legions. Although the area is smaller compared to the Star Territory Joint Theater Military, Star Territory Military and Star Territory Military, the income from all colonies within the galaxy is equivalent to the military expenditure of the Legion. As a result, the combat capability of the 14th Army Corps is often stronger than that of some theater military forces. And according to what Chen Ming found out, the 14th Legion was actually quite unbearable before. It was after a reorganization about 20 years ago, and after many battles with Yu Wei on the frontal battlefield that we reached our current heyday. I don't know why the people from the 14th Army suddenly came here. Chen Ming looked through the transparent porthole of the escape cabin. In addition to the military uniform, he could also see a face about the same age as Chen Ning and the military registration plate hanging on his chest. The commander's name is Cheng Xingha, and his military rank is only captain. Looking at Cheng Xingha with his eyes closed in the escape cabin, Chen Ning had a hesitant expression on his face. In fact, I don't have much hatred towards the military, especially the foreign 14th Legion. After all, for soldiers, following orders is normal. Every wrongdoer has his own owner. And the only ones who have hatred for Chen Ming are the military senior officials who issued the order to track down Chen Ming. And those other people who colluded with the senior officials and would rather kill Chen Ning for the sake of Sky Steel. And of course, there's the psyker who blocks the boss's rescue. Moreover, Chen Ming had no idea of killing these prisoners and avenging those who died in the previous battle. This is not good for Chen Ming at all. And he can only say that he is not familiar with the people in the company. 30 years later, the people I once knew either retired or died. Familiar people can say that there is no one. And if we really want to say it, Chen Ming's relationship with others before was just the most ordinary colleagues. And it was impossible to say whether he was acquainted or not. Nowadays let alone people you've only known for a few hours on the coward. The company gave them orders. And the company would naturally take care of their funeral affairs. And Chen Ming didn't need to worry about it. If Chen Ming gets rich in the future and feels regretful, he can find a way to make up for it. But now Chen Ning is in a bit of trouble. So he still puts himself first. So instead of thinking about these, it is better to consider whether there is any way to use these prisoners. However, Chen Ning has not yet thought about how to use these prisoners. Although there is a simplest and crudest way. Leave it to you, Hui. Naturally, they would take these escape hatches and bargain with the human government and military in exchange for something. Afterglow will definitely bring some benefits to Chen Ning. But Chen Ming didn't feel good. It feels like the value of these captives was wasted. Moreover, Chen Ming actually had other thoughts about Cheng Xingha. Chen Ming's impression that the military's fleet had demonstrated a powerful combat capability that far surpassed the forces on paper had not had time to fade away. Chen Ning had never thought before that the fleet could perform such precise and delicate operations that required Chen Ming's fate. His combat command skills alone were enough to completely offset Chen Ming's advantages. This is what Chen Ming feels like. As long as the company's command is replaced by Cheng Xingha's, even if the company's fleet strength is reduced by one third, coupled with Chen Ming's ability, the army can still be defeated. And it just so happens that Chen Ming now wants to organize a fleet of his own. Then, if the fleet command can let Cheng Xingha come, if Chen Ming can convince Cheng Xingha to join his fleet, that must have a very terrifying effect. Although Chen Ning thinks this is unlikely, dreams are always necessary. Moreover, the current environment that the commander is in makes Chen Ming's thoughts linger for a long time. Cheng Xingha now lost his ship, lost his fleet, was captured by Chen Ming. 
and was alone. This was simply the most vulnerable time in his life. Even if he can't be allowed to join Qin Ming's fleet to take command, Qin Ming can also try to use his freedom in exchange and let him teach Qin Ming or teach Gamma AB some command skills. Qin Ming was thinking about flexible skills on the battlefield, not rigid written knowledge. He believed that Cheng Xingha could do this. Even if only so much can be realized in the end, it is a very good value to Qin Ming. As long as the commander Cheng Xingha can be taken care of, it is actually equivalent to taking care of the rest of the army. The remaining 62 people, even if they are different from Cheng Xingha, are of considerable value. Qin Ming reached out and patted the escape cabin, feeling impatient in his heart. However, he also knew that this was not how things happened, and what he had just thought about had to be postponed. His fleet didn't even have a hair on it, so waking up Cheng Xingha now would do no good to Qin Ming. Definitely something to talk about later. I just don't know if the military will come looking for me in the future. Qin Ming wasn't too worried about this. Anyway, there was still Yu Wei blocking him outside. This was also the risk Yu Wei wanted Qin Ming to take. After removing the outer SH, LS that Qin Ming had added to all the escape hatches, Qin Ming also spent some time recording everyone's military status. By the way, a piece of paper recording the identity was affixed to the outside of each escape cabin for easy reference later. After settling this matter, there is still a lot of time left today, and Qin Ming still plans to use it in studying. After the formal work issued by Yu Hui is completed tomorrow, Qin Ming will try to ask Yu Hui for some other things. Qin Ming and Yu Hui now have an awkward cooperative relationship. Since Qin Ming made some reasonable requests, Yu Hui couldn't refuse them without any reason. At the same time, Headquarter, a long time has passed since Qin Ming was taken away by Yu Wei. Qin Ming left the space station at around 3 in the morning. After going through a lot of things and arriving at the Afterglow Colony, it was already the morning of that day. And the last meeting was at about this time. Slightly earlier. One day later, the directors, who had been busy for more than 20 hours, gathered in the conference room again. As soon as the meeting began, everyone's eyes turned to the director who handled military affairs. The director spread his hands and said, Well, as you already know, problems have exploded on the military side, and the Gamma 2 sector has been completely taken over by the 14th Army. Is the 14th Legion really here? Are you taking over personally? It seems that the person who was killed by one of their own people before has some identity. Maybe they are protecting their own shortcomings. This should be good news for us. Right. The director in charge of military affairs looked at the director, who asked the last question and said, but they immediately issued a wanted order for Qin Ming, saying that Qin Ming had an affair with Yu Hui and betrayed the empire. The previous 90 million bounty was once again increased to 200 million. I specifically asked the temporary person in charge of their side. It seems that the 14th Army Corps temporarily recruited people from the local military who had no problems to work. Many things are unfamiliar to them. They didn't say what was going on with the wanted order. They gave an ambiguous answer. They just said that they were very busy and they didn't want to deal with this kind of thing urgently. They asked us to wait. I just don't know what they mean. The director next to him speculated. Is it possible that Chen Ming's psychic ability has been discovered by the military? So decisive? Don't leave a way for others. It should be someone from the military who was still alive before and saw the Yue ship taking away Chen Ming. And if there are residual energy fluctuations from Yue Wei's tachyon spear at the scene, it will be clear that Yue Wei killed the ruler. This cannot be concealed. And the news that Chen Ming is a psyker should have been leaked. He was hunted down by the military fleet before. It is impossible to hide the abilities he has exerted. Then it's normal to think that Chen Ming can control Yu Wei. The key is not whether we can connect or not. But other things. The director in charge of the military affairs suddenly made a stop gesture and said. Wait a minute. There is one more thing. The wanted notice they issued is at the star level. Not the star level bounty. It is only valid within the star area. There was a sudden silence in the conference room for a while. Until a director asked. Why is this? Wanted. But not fully wanted. What do you mean by the 14th Legion? No matter what it means. In short. The situation is not bad. A star zone level bounty does not matter at all. A star zone will always be a star zone. It does not matter if there is no star zone level wanted. You can't say it doesn't matter. Chen Ming has a wanted person in the sector. The government will definitely find out when the time comes. And Chen Ming was really taken away by Yu Hui. What will the government do? Is he having an affair with Yu Hui? Or is he treated as a prisoner of Yu Hui? If there is a problem, just find a way to solve it. 
Our relationship with Chunming Star Domain Government is not too bad now. Just talk about this kind of thing. The directors had a quick discussion, determined their opinions on the possible development of this matter, and also raised the next topic. In that case, the Sky Steel matter should be settled. How is the communication with the government going? Yes, we still have the mining rights certificate and evidence that Chunming left the galaxy. What does the government say? The director who took the initiative to contact the government said expressionlessly. When I asked, the government told us everything we mentioned about Chin Ming and Sky Steel. Which one should I listen to first? Chin Ming or Sky Steel? Chin Ming. Seeing that the other directors had no objections, the director responsible for contacting the government said, The government has determined Chin Ming's situation based on the information we have given. They are very interested in Chin Ming. As long as there is accurate information from Chin Ming, the government said that it can forget about the incident of the armor-piercing class and just replace the lost armor-piercing class later. It can also give us priority in bidding and more ships in the future. Order form. I remember that the armor-piercing ship was recovered by us. Right. How to deal with it? Chen Ning's ability is not fully understood yet. Even if the armor is destroyed, he may still have the ability to control it. The chairman, who had been silent but just listening, suddenly said, did the production start when the bid was passed before the armor was broken? A director sitting in the corner nodded and said, Yes, but there are no new outputs except the sample ship. Then concentrate the productivity on one line and find an armor-piercing ship to deal with it first. As for the armor-piercing ship, let's repair it first. If Chen Ming can come back, we will give the ship directly to him. This armor-piercing ship can be used as proof of our friendship with him and reduce the conflict between us selling him later. The ship that he has touched cannot be touched by anyone but him. If you can't come back, there are two situations. If he dies, there will be no need to worry about problems with this armor-piercing ship. If it's not dead, then we can only hold it first and see what happens in the future. We have determined that both the military and the government know Chen Ming's capabilities. They have more things to consider than we do. They will definitely not let Chen Ming continue to stay at Yue. In the past, Ordinary technicians who went to Yue didn't have to spend energy to find it back. But Chen Ning, the psyker, is different. The military will definitely take action in the future. And we don't need to keep this armor-piercing ship for too long. But? The chairman suddenly said with great seriousness. Have you thought of the problems involved? Things have come to this point. Which means that no matter what, the military and government will definitely help us wipe our butt in order to prevent Yue from getting stronger. But if we don't take the initiative to wipe it, then we may not be able to save our butts, let alone other things. If Chen Ning gets into the hands of the military or the government, it is not up to us whether Chen Ning is a member of the company or whether he ran away from the mining space station. After looking around the conference table to make sure everyone understood what he said, the chairman first changed the topic and gave those working on it time to think. What about Sky Steel? What does the government say? The director in charge of the government side said, the government said that this matter and Chen Ming's matter should be dealt with separately. The most the government can do is help us communicate with the military and let them relax the blockade of the galaxy. But the military should be being tortured by the 14th Legion now. Right. The director in charge of military affairs nearby said. Torture is torture. Only the general headquarters of the sector military is currently paralyzed. The other places are still the same. When I communicated with them before, they just changed a group of internal people and replace them with clean people. So the military leaders who can contact the government are basically in the same situation. As long as Chen Ming can be brought back first, the government can directly arrange for us to meet with the people left there by the military. That means the government is supporting us in this regard. However, the chairman asked at this time, What about Chen Ming? The conference room suddenly fell into silence again. Our company has never lost technical personnel or after low cores before. I didn't expect that this first case was a psyker. Then what can we do? If the military hadn't caused trouble, we would have brought the people back a long time ago. Even if they tried to blame us, they wouldn't be able to blame us. Is there any other way to find Chen Ming? The director in charge of the pirate space station suddenly said, Actually, I have an idea. The military is too busy taking care of itself right now. I think we can bypass all the twists and turns and try to enter RM2 directly. Chin Ming was able to come out alive before. So we can too. As long as it is confirmed that there is no danger. The opening of the galaxy is a certainty. And the mining rights can be returned to our hands. His proposal was immediately rejected by other directors. 
It would be too easy to accept the facts. And we would not be able to handle the military's problems. Chen Ning was on the space station 30 years ago. He can definitely get back what we lost in the past 30 years. Without this, what will we do with the sky steel we lost? The director of the pirate space station asked, Do you think these sky steel can be recovered? There are definitely a lot of people's interests behind sky steel. We can still find one or two people. If there are too many people, I can only say that I don't think so. It's beautiful. But at least part of it can be recovered. And it's better to lose less. With the information Chen Ning gave us before, and the data we have secretly verified, we can confirm that the number of empty fish in the galaxy is around 70. Is it okay if Chen Ning comes back to equal Sky Steel's output for 5 years? 5 years. 1,800 days. 70 empty fish in the Sky Steel. What do you say? The director in charge of the pirate space station stopped talking. At this time, the director also intervened in the topic and said, I think it is better to go from Chen Ning's place. We cannot rush into our M2, which is at least nominally blocked by the military. This galaxy is very likely to be taken over by the 14th Legion in the future. The 14th Legion is not that easy to get along with, and their attitude is not clear yet. They put Chen Ming on a wanted list, but it is only for the sector. They may be warning us to wait until they have integrated the military. We can't even handle the joint starfield battle zone in this edge starfield, let alone the 14th Legion. Don't let them get into trouble. A director who agreed with the directors of the pirate space station suddenly said, But we can't even handle the military in a sector below the war zone. With the 14th Legion in full swing, won't it be even harder for them to completely take over the galaxy? The chairman responded, You can't say that. It can be seen from Sky Steel that what we have to face is not the sector military, but people at a higher level. Do you think they might give up these Sky Steels? If we choose a method that obviously violates the rules to get Sky Steel back, do you believe that even the government will not recognize it? We can only achieve our goal in the most legal way by clarifying this path and bring him back before the military and government take action. Otherwise, we may not even be able to get Sky Steel by then. As soon as the chairman finished speaking, someone asked, How to save it? The afterglow AIs we have on hand would rather be destroyed and hidden than reveal the specific situation of the afterglow star territory. Unless we can crack the core of afterglow AI and control them 100%. We can't have any expectations at all. Chen Ming seems to be in control. Then you can find Chen Ming. The chairman knocked on the table to stop the argument that was about to break out. But one director suddenly took advantage of the opportunity and said, Actually, if we withdraw now, the loss is not too great. Is the value of Chen Ming really enough for us to continue investing? The chairman frowned and said, Have you forgotten that there is sky steel? And this matter is actually an opportunity for us. Even if we take Chen Ming back, we can announce that Chen Ming is dead and hide him completely. We no longer need to share the value of Chen Ming itself. It can be fully utilized. The director just now said with some disapproval. But if this fails, the losses will be even greater. The company has never failed in business. This loss is at best a skin-breaking loss for the company. But if Chen Ming can recover it, the benefits his ability can bring to us are endless. The director who had proposed using the company's product that was still under testing yesterday asked with some uncertainty. You mean to use something like that? The chairman paused, nodded slowly and said, Let's start applying to the government in advance. Their previous performance was that they wanted to save resources and let us solve Chen Ning's matter. Then taking Chen Ning away from us will be much easier for them than going to Yu Wei to snatch Chen Ning away. So the government will definitely not block us. But in the end, if Chen Ming can really be taken back, he must not be handed over to the government. Go get ready for a surprise attack on Sunset. By the way, let's go through the process and vote on whether to use this thing. Chairman, did you directly refuse to call me yesterday? Times are different. Before, it was because Chen Ning might have planned to stay with Yuhui. And we might not be able to save people. But now, regardless of whether we save him or not, the government and military will never sit back and let such a psyker fall into the hands of Sunset. If we don't go... They go. And we get nothing. Furthermore, it is not my decision to call this kind of thing alone. Everyone here did not object or initiate a vote yesterday. I think they all have the same mentality as yesterday. No one refuted the chairman's words. A minute later, the chairman glanced at the projection screen in front of him. Seven votes in favor. Four against. And two abstentions. Passed. A director who voted in favor immediately said, Passed. Passed. Where should we find Chen Ming? The chairman already had a clue. 
yesterday. An employee at the Pirate Space Station, Hu Chenning knew boarded his civilian sentinel. The door opened automatically. And this scene deliberately did not avoid surveillance. Chen Ning is still alive. And even alive, and well in Yue's place. But he didn't take the initiative to contact us. But we can reach out to him. He must have some purpose when he goes to Yue and doesn't take the initiative to contact us. We will give him whatever he needs. Unless what he wants exceeds the benefits of mining sky steel. Chen Ming has never acted stupidly. Right? We have collected a lot of Yu Huey stuff over the years. I don't believe we won't have what he needs. Find a way to contact Chen Ming through the space station and find out his location. Let's get ready on the other side first. Prepare to launch our capital ship. Conqueror. Chapter 103 Yue's Temptation Terrifying Learning Efficiency Just when Shina Company was ready to call the capital ship that was still under experiment to find Chen Ming. Chen Ming, who is in Yue Industrial Colony, is still studying Yue's technology, relying on his experience and the technology he has mastered. He can quickly and efficiently understand the design logic of the afterglow ship. Chen Ning could clearly feel that the professional books Yu Wei gave him were carefully considered. These books are basically based on very basic techniques common to humans and Afterglow, with additional knowledge gradually added bit by bit. Moreover, Chen Ning flipped through each book before officially starting to read. He could feel that the knowledge belonging to different books was gradually increasing in difficulty, but the whole was still contained within a large framework. It felt like a book that Yu Wei read to its own individuals, which was quite outrageous. However, when Chen Ning thought that Yu Wei didn't mean that he could learn the contents of the book by stuffing them into the core database. They also needed to be learned. He felt that things were not so wrong. So Chen Ning picked two books that he felt should be the easiest in difficulty and also closely related to each other. One is Basic Adaptability and Adaptation Conditions of Radiant Energy Systems and Energy Weapons. And the other is Tutorial on Radiant Energy Diversion of Ship Radiant Energy Systems. The content in the book is very basic. It talks about how Yu Huey's ship has a lot of usable extra space inside, and how to make good use of these solid spaces. After spending some time, Chen Ning successfully digested all the contents of the two books, and also learned some standardized techniques. To put it in terms of the panel, there is an extended radial energy coil and a radial energy distribution device. Chen Ning wanted to try it right away, but he restrained the idea for the time being. He decided to write these things down first, and see if there were other valuable modifications to the spacecraft in the book he was going to read later. The Iron Mine is now his best test product. And after these technologies are verified, they will all be options that can be modified on Chen Ming's future spacecraft. Before continuing to read the next professional book, Chen Ming put down the terminal. A balance between work and rest is still necessary. In the past, on Ruimu, Chen Ming would go hunting or do other things between studies every night to relax while working. It's not easy for him to go out on the planet of Afterglow now. But selective relaxation is always needed. When Chen Ning put down the terminal, he also took a look at the time. It's half past nine in the morning. This time, Chen Ning was a little surprised. He remembered that it was half past eight when he just visited three factories. In other words, it only took him an hour to read two relatively basic books. And he did not read them superficially, but read them so that he could fully grasp the techniques and content in the books. Chen Ning himself didn't realize that his current learning efficiency was a bit exaggerated. You can understand it completely after reading it from beginning to end. The process of reading is the process of learning. Chen Ming reached out and pressed his temples in disbelief, then closed his eyes. He hadn't noticed it before, but now after discovering that his learning ability was a bit exaggerated, he suddenly became aware of the changes in him. Chen Ning could clearly feel that his brain's thinking flexibility had become higher, and not just a little bit higher. This may also be a passive effect of psionic powers. This is a good thing. Chen Ming opened his eyes again. The faster he learns, the less time Chen Ning needs to spend on these aspects, and the more time he has to do other things. But when Chen Ning just put down the terminal, he thought a long time had passed. But since he only had so much time, he still chose to continue picking up the terminal. I want to try to read all the dozen e-books given by Yu Hui in one day today. It's now half past nine in the morning, and it's ten o'clock in the evening. If we can keep this efficiency for 12 and a half hours, it should be about the same. However, if Chen Ning were to remain highly focused for 12 hours, he still couldn't do it. So when my thoughts start to get knotted and need to be sorted out, Chen Ming would relax temporarily, change his mind, and think about other things. 
such as what he will do now and in the future. Jin Ming has three main purposes now. The first one is to take advantage of Yu Wei. The second is to find ways to prepare a stable escape route from Yu Wei. The third one is preparing his own fleet. These three purposes actually have one of the most convenient and even the shortest ways to accomplish them. Identify the individual responsible for the afterglow galaxy. Find it. And control it. In this way, the galaxy may directly fall into Qin Ming's hands. Let alone the fleet. However, the difficulty should be a bit high. Let's not talk about whether you can find it or not. And whether you give it a chance to touch it. What Qin Ming can control now is only the spacecraft. The prerequisite for controlling the afterglow AI is to remove the core and install it on the spacecraft. Break through the various protections of afterglow. Dismantle the afterglow individual that controls the galaxy. And then install it on any Qin Ming ship. This level of difficulty can really only be imagined. However, Qin Ming is actually not sure whether his control over afterglow AI is what he is now. Because the gamma AB on his panel are all listed on a separate panel. Instead of needing Qin Ming to open the diopter or fighter's modified panel to find them. Maybe if Chen Ning is given a chance to get access to the core of Yu Wei Ai, he can directly control it until Chen Ning really touches an afterglow core that has not been controlled by him. No one can say for sure about this kind of thing. After all, Chen Ning never thought that his ability to control the spacecraft could also control the Ai core. And he could even continue to control the core after it moved out of the spacecraft. Since it is displayed separately on the panel, there is really no way to completely deny Chen Ning's idea. This requires Chen Ming to try it himself. As for the opportunity to try, he can only find a way to get it. The difficulty of direct contact with the afterglow AI that controls the galaxy is a bit exaggerated. However, it is definitely not impossible to find a way to contact some lonely afterglow AIs and control them manually one by one. However, Yu Wei will never give Qin Ming a chance to come into contact with Yu Wei AI. And if Qin Ming has been restricted to these three factories and this planet, there will be no possibility of contacting Yu Wei AI. Therefore, the first step for Chen Ming to realize his idea is to go out. Even if it wasn't him, it would be the same if he only allowed the iron ore to fly out in Yu Hui's territory. As an absolute source of danger to Yu Hui, he must take the first step to lay the foundation for his subsequent plans. Time flies. Night came quickly. When Chen Ming looked up from the text on the terminal, he noticed that the time had reached 11 o'clock at night. In fact, Hui Wang came over at 5 o'clock in the afternoon to remind Chen Ming to get off work. But Chen Ming ignored it and continued to study Yu Hui's book, staying in the factory until now. And just now, Chen Ming had finished studying all the professional books given by Yu Hui so far. Chen Ming was not in a hurry to make any other moves and continued to sit on the chair in the factory, reviewing all the techniques he had learned throughout the day. After a round of review from beginning to end, Chen Ming can be said to have completely mastered these techniques. Chen Ming moved his body, which had been stiff for a long time and found Xiao Shi, who was sleeping in a corner in the factory, wearing protective clothing again. We walked out of the factory. It's bright outside, and 11 o'clock at night, Earth time, has absolutely nothing to do with this planet. Chin Ning could see the complete colony illuminated by the stars of the galaxy, and the huge Earth core furnace energy supply tower in operation. And in the distance, there was flat gray land with almost no undulations. The contrast between prosperity and silence as well as the endless spaceships passing by in the sky, made Chen Ming feel the power of the afterglow again. It's not easy to go back from such a place. And if he wants to steal something from Yu Hui alone, there is a high chance that he will lose himself. But this can't change Chen Ming's mind. Retiring here and waiting to die is not what he wants to do. And even though you've come here, if you don't know how to take something with you, isn't it in vain? Chen Ming returned to the iron mine. However, he did not rush to the living cabin to rest. Instead, he sat on the chair in the captain's cabin and started the iron ore. Immediately afterwards, a communication request was sent over. And the source was brilliant. Afterglow had indeed been watching him. Chen Ming didn't hesitate and directly connected to the communication. Hui Wang immediately asked, Mr. Chen, what do you want? I've been in the factory for more than 10 hours a day. And I want to go shopping elsewhere. Please don't. Just now. Several asteroids approached the colony. Although they have been destroyed, a small amount of asteroid fragments are still about to bombard this side of the planet. After leaving the colony, they may be attacked by subsequent asteroids. That's it. Then I won't go. Chin Ming said very decisively that he gave up the idea. Anyway, his action of starting the spacecraft was just a test of the afterglow. 
since Yu Hui's attitude after testing was to directly refuse and limit his scope of activities to the factory. Shen Ning would not just bite the bullet and say that he wanted to go out. However, before hanging up the communication, Chen Ming still said intentionally or unintentionally, If I have a chance, I still want to relax a little. The living environment in the factory is indeed very good for people. But survival alone is not enough. I want some more comfortable environments. Or some green vegetation. Hui Wang asked Chen Ming, as if a key word had been triggered. Is this your request? So be it. Received. I will try my best to meet your needs. That's good. Oh, by the way, let me ask you something. Chin Ming seemed to have suddenly remembered something and asked Hui Hui. When is the specific time for your regular review? Is it based on the supplies I have consumed? For example, I will review it when my monthly quota is used up. Or is it based on time? I looked at this aspect during the day and it seems that there is no writing on it. Hui Wang immediately gave Chin Ming an accurate answer. A fixed period of one month will be used to inspect your study status. It will be divided into three grades, unqualified, qualified, and excellent. If you pass the test, you will be given the same amount of supplies as last month. If you are excellent or unqualified, there will be corresponding additions or subtractions. The detailed material distribution list is in the factory main control computer. If you haven't learned about our material distribution rules from Gamma A, I can explain it to you now. Chen Ming refused. No, I understand. I should contact you when applying for supplies. Right? Yes. If you have any difficulties, please ask in advance. Well, there's no problem for now. Okay. Bye. Hui Wang decisively disconnected the communication. Chen Ning sat on the chair in the captain's cabin and breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed that Yu Hui didn't have an accurate estimate of his learning efficiency. The one-month inspection period was enough for Chen Ning to read all these dozen e-books over and over again. However, Chin Ming would not say it outright. He would at least choose the right time to say it. Now that his situation is so delicate, he must find a way to gain some benefits from this. Whether it was substantial benefits or other benefits, he had to try to gain them. Moreover, Hui Wang did not say anything about restricting Chin Ming's scope of action just now, which shows that there is still room for bargaining. So Chin Ming decided to work first. Cooperation is always mutual. Even though Chin Ning had already planned to stab Yu Hui, Yu Hui didn't completely believe in Chin Ning's cooperation, but at least in the short term. It must be a good situation for you and me. Early the next morning, at 8 o'clock on time, Chin Ning started the spacecraft again. Then I received another brilliant communication. This time Chin Ning said in advance before Hui Wang could speak, I need the assistance of a spaceship to use my abilities. I need to drive the spaceship into the factory. After a pause that was slightly longer than the time it took to answer Chen Ning's question, Hui Wang said, You continue, and we have another request. This is the first time we have seen you use your abilities, and we hope to witness it with our own eyes. Yu Hui said that Chen Ning always felt something was wrong with his own eyes, but he did not refuse, saying, My abilities are limited to the spaceship. I can only control everything other than the spaceship on the spaceship. If you want to see it, you can only wait for me to move the things to the spacecraft and then watch it through the spacecraft surveillance system. If what Chen Ning had said earlier, it would have been 100% true. But now that it's said, it's different. It contains some of Chen Ming's thoughts. Because as of now, Yu Wei's AI core is the only exception that Chen Ning can still control after leaving the spacecraft. Hiding some key issues in the corners of some ordinary words may allow Yu Wei to ignore these issues in the future. Hui Wang's answer to this was very decisive. No problem. Please directly connect the signal to the factory control panel, and we can see it. After Wei Wang finished speaking, he helped Chen Ning open the factory door directly. Chen Ning narrowed his eyes slightly and successfully parked the iron or ship inside the factory. With the assistance of the equipment and robots in the work area, everything needed for work was sent into Chen Ming's modified storage compartment, which can be directly connected to the outside. After the weapons that need repair appear inside the spacecraft, Chen Ning can directly see the repair materials required for different weapons on the repair panel. Chen Ning did a little calculation and quickly wrote a list at 1.5 times and sent it to Wei Wang. These are the materials needed to repair these things. There should be enough in the warehouse now. But it won't necessarily be the case later. These shouldn't be counted as my own material ration consumption. Right? No. We will replenish the supplies in the warehouse regularly. Please continue. Chen Ming nodded and connected the iron ore number, which he had complete control over, to the factory's internal network. Then he continued to look at the panel, 
preparing to press the maintenance button. But at this moment, when he looked at these weapons, he suddenly noticed something wrong. The weapons provided by Yuhui are basically all energy weapons, both medium and small, with small ones accounting for the majority, and very few live ammunition weapons. Combined with the books that Chen Ning spent all day mastering yesterday, Chen Ning seemed to understand something. If the medium and small weapons of Afterglow are mainly these. So Yu Wei actually has the same problem as Chen Ming did before. The ship's finishing capabilities are insufficient. Although Chen Ning has seen the existence of energy weapons such as Tachyon Spears with terrifying destructive power before. However, the limitations of the large weapon of the Tachyon Spear itself determine that it can basically only be installed on cruiser level spacecraft. As for armor piercing, Chen Ning felt that even if armor piercing had an anti particle energy planning module, it might not be able to withstand the horrific consumption of the tachyon spear. Jin Ming has personally experienced the effects of automatic pulse lasers and tachyon spears. Although one is experiencing and the other is being experienced, the difference in energy output between the two is clearly visible to the naked eye. The consumption of the tachyon spear is definitely far more than that of the automatic pulse laser. Not to mention that the armor-piercing model is a model that has just appeared recently. Yu Wei does not have the design of a spacecraft with large load-bearing points installed on this destroyer. Low-level ships like Afterglow's destroyers and escorts just aren't very good at finishing. That's why most of the technical books you we gave yesterday were related to weapons, especially weapons destructive power and weapon output power. Whichever aspect is weak needs to be strengthened. They gave Chin Ming priority in learning this technology, probably because of this consideration. So if you think about it this way, the remaining part of the book you we gave you yesterday is basically about radiation systems and shield technologies. Are Afterglow's radiation and shields also weak? Chin Ming suddenly became suspicious because he remembered that Yuhui's shield was very good. No, it seems to be good compared to the military. But for the military ship, Chin Ming could only say that it seemed like it had no shields. And he always had the feeling that a military ship might be stronger if its shields were removed. Chin Ming shook his head and shook off his strange thoughts about the military ship. Since Yuhui wants Chin Ming to learn this aspect, he definitely needs Chin Ming to improve this aspect. Chin Ming's energy was limited, and it was impossible to learn the design of the entire Afterglow spacecraft in a short period of time. Yuhui's arrangements for this aspect must be divided into blocks and priorities. And what determines the capability of a spaceship is its shortcomings. So what Yuhui definitely needs most is to strengthen its weaknesses. It must be that the weapons and overall shield of Yuhui's low-level ship are a bit weak. Chin Ming silently recorded these two points in his heart. It might come in handy when he fights Sunset in the future. Or it can be used as a reference for fleet composition when he starts building his own fleet. Chin Ming quickly gathered the divergent thoughts in his mind. Start repairing various weapons accumulated in the storage compartment of the spacecraft. The materials in the warehouse next door began to melt and gathered into a large pool of mixed liquids seeping into the iron or uncovering all the weapons in the storage compartment. Then, without any logic, all the weapons that had already suffered a lot of damage were repaired to factory new condition. Chin Ming is now curious about what Yu Wei is thinking when watching the scene. However, he could only hear the brilliant words without any fluctuation. Can you let me see the transformation effect of your ability? Chin Ming thought about it and agreed. It just so happened that the weapon technology book he read yesterday contained technology for transforming energy weapons. Chin Ming could directly choose a relatively simple and versatile modification called Extended Energy Diversion Track. As for the modified weapons, Chin Ming chose to go directly to a very special weapon that he just found among a bunch of weapons of different models. A weapon called an antimatter blaster that fires restraining energy bombs. When Chin Ming saw such a name, he thought it was a good thing. Because if Chin Ming remembers correctly, the death torpedo seems to be made of antimatter, taking advantage of the transformation to tamper with the weapon. Yu Hui would not be able to maintain a normal attitude towards this thing. So that it would be easier for Chen Ming to keep the thing. Transformation also doesn't take much time. After a ball of metallic liquid wrapped around the antimatter shock wave, the transformation was completed. No changes can be seen from the outside. But there have indeed been some different changes inside the weapon. Hui Wang was silent for a moment. Knowing that it could not see anything directly through the SH. L of the weapon. So he said, Please place these weapons in the warehouse. And a special cargo robot will come to transport them away tomorrow. At this time, Chin Ming said shamelessly, I want to keep a weapon for research and experiment. Which one? The one I just transformed. Can. After Wee Wang gave Chin Ming a positive answer, 
He immediately hung up the communication again. Chen Ning was left alone in the factory to continue with the rest of his work and study. And inside the brilliant Alpha AI Corps, a report was written in an instant. Adaptability assessment. Extremely high. Learning efficiency assessment. High. Risk assessment. No changes. Capability verification. Weapons maintenance and modification capabilities have been initially verified. The effect of the transformation capability is generally within expectations. The repairability effect can replenish consumed weapon bullets. The remaining capabilities need to be verified later. In addition to these verifications of Chen Ning's ability, Hui Wang suddenly added another line to the report at the end. Enthusiasm for learning. Extremely high. Chapter 104. Expansion of Panel Capabilities. Unprecedented Concerns. After brilliantly disconnecting communication, Chen Ming, who stayed at the factory, followed Hui Huang's request and brought all the repaired weapons to the warehouse. By the way, I made sure that the escape cabins were in good condition and that there were no holes or other holes chewed up by pebbles, so as not to wake up anyone who was sleeping. At the same time, all the remaining weapons in need of repair that could not be accommodated on the iron mine were also repaired in the warehouse. It took 10 minutes in total. Then Chen Ming found that he had nothing to do in a short period of time. The learning task has been substantially completed, and the next step of the plan requires going out. However, Yu Wei, the front foot, had just rejected Chen Ming's idea of going out, so it was a bit uncomfortable to mention it with the back foot. So Chen Ming took the antimatter shock wave, a small weapon, and returned to the work area. When Chen Ming saw its name, he was already quite curious about the design of this small weapon. Weapons that use antimatter as a material should not be much less effective. Anyway, let's take it apart and take a look first. Let's take a look at the difference compared to the death torpedo that Chen Ming has on hand, which also uses antimatter as a material. Although Chen Ming had previously tried to skin death torpedoes with equipment from the repair shop, there were no results. The material of the death torpedo can block external scanning, and there is a great risk of explosion if it is dismantled. It's no wonder that the death torpedo was obviously a thing from decades ago, and there are still no imitations of it today. At most, Chen Ning could only rely on dismantling the materials displayed on the panel to confirm that the death torpedo relied on both nuclear materials and antimatter to achieve its terrifying power. That's why Chen Ning also has antimatter antimatter shock waves. What is the effect? Relying on the factory's scanning equipment and Chen Ning's own knowledge about energy weapons. Chen Ning quickly determined the blueprint of the antimatter shock wave. Although there are many technologies inside that Chen Ming doesn't understand, the effect of each component can still be seen. The antimatter applied to the antimatter shock wave does not use antimatter as a consumable like the death torpedo, nor does it act as a power supply device like the antiparticle energy intensification next door. Rather, it serves as the emitter of energy weapons. The restraint energy bomb fired should have some antimatter properties. As for why it should be said, it was because Chen Ming always felt that there was something strange about the design of this weapon. It wasn't because Chen Ming had modified it, but because the design itself made Chen Ning always feel that something was wrong. But no matter what was wrong, Chen Ning could still be sure that this weapon called Antimatter Shock Wave was the result of Yu Hui's own design. After all, Chen Ning has never heard of an example of substantive application of antimatter in humans. When he checked various documents and papers on spacecraft and weapons technology before, Although there were indeed many papers on antimatter, but it is basically all theory, with little or no practical application results, etc. Chen Ning suddenly realized a problem. Logically speaking, if Yu Wei has already put the antimatter shock wave into actual combat, the human side must have captured it, and the effect of this thing should have been decoded long ago. The practical applications of antimatter are also long overdue for relevant papers. It's not like Chen Ning hasn't seen it until today. Could this mean that this antimatter shockwave is probably Yu Wei's new weapon? Although Chen Ning didn't pay much attention to the repairs just now, he still vaguely remembered the damage caused by the antimatter shockwave, which seemed to be inside. Could it be that the weapon was damaged due to an accident during testing? If this is the case, it seems to explain why there is something wrong with this weapon. But are all the weapons for testing given to him casually? Or antimatter? Chen Ning was filled with doubts. Wait, there seems to be no problem. Just like projects that are not optimistic within the company will be cut off. Afterglow may also be not optimistic about the actual performance of antimatter shock waves. And since antimatter has been applied to weapons, Afterglow may have already begun experimental applications of antimatter in other industries or energy. 
It just happened that the progress in weapons was not ideal. So the antimatter shockwave project was axed. Of course, it is also possible that Yue is developing other antimatter weapons. Or that Yue feels that the application prospects of antimatter weapons are unreliable. But in short, this thing is in Qin Ming's hands. Qin Ming thinks this guess is very likely. Otherwise, let alone Hui Wang. He directly agreed that Qin Ming wanted to leave the thing itself. Let's just say that Yu Wei and the others should not have given this thing to Qin Ming to test their repair and modification capabilities in the first place. So that's how it should be. The antimatter shock wave was the product of a failed weapons experiment that Sunset had or had recently done. It was of little value. So it was left to Qin Ming to try to repair. And it didn't matter if he used it to modify it at will. Then Qin Ming had better not test fire the weapon that didn't look right. He had randomly chosen one to modify it to increase the power output. If it is damaged again, and the antimatter emitter is damaged, Qin Ming cannot dismantle the death torpedo and repair it. Although Yu Hui didn't seem to care about such a thing, Qin Ming felt that it was still valuable. And when considering its value, Qin Ming suddenly remembered something. This is the effect of changing weapons on his panel. Qin Ming has not changed the weapons of the Iron Mine for a long time. The weapon that the Iron Mine has always installed is the electromagnetic javelin that Qin Ming obtained from the machine tribe a long time ago. Although one of the reasons is that there are no suitable weapons, and there are no battles that the Iron Mine needs to experience personally. But the more important reason is that replacing this function is inherently inferior to repair and modification in terms of functionality. Except for when the spaceship needs to replace weapons at the beginning. Or when the weapons are damaged and replaced quickly during combat. There is nothing to use. So Chen Ming ignored it many times. However, Chen Ming accidentally discovered that he could remotely modify the spacecraft and remove the materials in place. And today, he obtained this antimatter shock wave. Chen Ming suddenly thought of a possibility. If you change the weapon for the sentry, then unload the replaced weapon. Perhaps, the complete experimental weapon developed with Yu Hui's technology can be sent back. Instead of just sending back the dismantled materials as before. The more Chen Ming thought about it, the more he felt that there was a possibility. And maybe he could give it a try. But when Chen Ming had this idea and was ready to put it into practice, the brilliant communication was suddenly sent again. Brilliance is still the same as when it contacted Chen Ming without any nonsense. It came directly and asked, Mr. Chen, do you need Gamma A to continue to be your contact person? Chen Ming immediately realized Yu Hui's second temptation at this time. Naturally, there was no problem with his answer. You have already dismantled Gamma A, and you have not put it back on the refractive ship. So you shouldn't ask Gamma A about this? Why are you asking me? Hui Wang immediately said, Sounding very reasonable. Gamma A is the individual who guides you into the afterglow. It may be more appropriate for you to communicate with us indirectly through him. Chen Ming would definitely not fall for it and said, Then I can only say that I respect its idea. I see. Hui Wang hung up the communication quite quickly. Chen Ming did not continue what he just wanted to do, but immediately paid attention to Gamma A. Gamma A has completed data migration and has become a beta level AI core. It did not escape Chen Ming's control. However, Yu Wei apparently only gave Gamma A a temporary robot carrier in order to avoid danger, and it is exchanging information with Gamma A at high speed through the network. Chen Ming can only know so much. Due to the nature of the afterglow itself, he cannot know which afterglow Gamma A is communicating with and the content of the communication. The appearance of the beta core that Gamma A casually connected to the robot can only be seen through Gamma A's current temporary carrier, a cylindrical yellow and green mechanical core. Before even a few glances, Gamma A was removed from the temporary carrier. Without the energy supply, Gamma A can only go into sleep. Chen Ming frowned slightly and continued to pay attention. After about a few minutes, Chen Ming suddenly discovered that Yu Wei had installed Gamma A on the diopter. But it's not the diopter controlled by Chen Ming, but a new diopter. What shocked Chen Ming was that the new spacecraft equipped with Gamma A also appeared in the list of spacecraft he could control. Just like other spacecraft that had been controlled by Chen Ming. At this time, there were two diopters on the list of controllable ships on his panel. Chen Ming felt uncontrollable excitement in his heart. This ability is definitely the most outrageous ability he has had since awakening his spiritual power until today. And this ability is likely to become the key to Chen Ming's future work at Yu Wei. However, he will not show any signs to the outside world. And he will definitely not issue any orders to Gamma A in the short term. In case Yu Hui discovers anything about it, Chen Ming watched with his own eyes the refraction control by Gamma A left the planet, arrived in space, 
and left the galaxy following the glory class cruiser that had become friends with Gamma A. This should be because you we handed over Gamma A to Hui Yao for supervision. Even if Gamma A was still under Chen Ning's control, he could deal with it immediately. At the same time, letting Gamma A leave can also effectively prevent Chen Ning from causing trouble through Gamma A on Yu Wei's colony planet. It's acceptable to Chen Ning. He doesn't need Gamma A's help for the time being. And he also has Gamma be running around in Afterglow's territory. If there is a real problem, Chen Ning doesn't have any other options. As long as Gamma A can regain Sunset's trust, this Chen Ming can enable the spacecraft he controls to indirectly control the Afterglow AI, and also allows the AI he controls to continue to hide its ability to indirectly control new spaceships. If this ability can be brought into play, it will definitely cause great damage to Yu Hui's social structure, allowing Chen Ming to reap huge benefits. Chen Ming looked away from Gamma A, who was still under supervision to a certain extent by Yu Hui. Although it is now past 8 o'clock in the morning, all the remaining work in the factory has been completed by now, before a new batch of weapons to be repaired or modified is delivered. Chen Ming is ready to continue to implement the idea he just had. But since I want to contact Lao Wu again, in fact, there is another thing that Chen Ming wants to do together. Just ask Lao Wu to help him continue to complete the work of hunting pirate bounties. Of course, it is not about asking Old Wu to drive the boat out to fight. Chen Ming only needs Old Wu to help a little bit. Chen Ming was busy here so it was best to start taking action elsewhere. Otherwise, it would be equivalent to losing his ability to remotely control the spacecraft. So Chen Ming's idea was to use the assets he had on hand to buy spaceships and organize a temporary fleet to go out and fight pirates with bounties on their heads. In the end, all you need to do is ask Lao Wu to help you pick it up. Anyway, based on Chen Ming's last experience, it can be determined that the identity of the person receiving the bounty is not important. He had been wearing a protective suit that could completely hide his identity throughout the entire process. And no one from the government said anything at all. It shouldn't be a big problem if you just ask the helper to get it. Of course, Chen Ning will also give Lao with some compensation for this matter. This idea serves two main purposes. The first one is obviously making money. Among Chen Ming's current goals, building a fleet requires a lot of money. Although the bounty is a bit unstable. Under Chen Ming's current situation, it is still good to make extra money. The second purpose is somewhat explicit about other considerations. He wanted to test the composition of his fleet through a battle with pirates. What is the appropriate fleet ratio? What kind of ship is suitable for him to control personally? What support is needed for combat and logistics? All can be learned in actual combat. It is definitely unreliable to brain test what the fleet should look like in the end. Only in actual combat can we determine what is the most appropriate and realistic choice. As for whether the fleet could defeat the pirates, Chen Ming had no doubts. He has direct control over three ships. But before, he had only relied on two ships. A centurion and a fighter. To defeat a pirate fleet of ten ships and a bounty of twenty million. Chen Ning didn't believe he couldn't defeat the three ships. Moreover, Chen Ning also plans to choose some spaceships that are relatively simple to operate as assistants. For example, a ship that fires a round of missiles and then starts reloading without doing anything else. Or a ship that, like the centurion, goes up to resist damage, and then turns on the damping stance, and hangs up to wait for other ships to finish. As long as these two types of ships are in the fleet, the number of ships that Chen Ning can actually operate by himself should be doubled and then some. Otherwise, if he could only operate three spaceships, then Chen Ning would not have the need to test the composition of the fleet. Three ships can detect a ghost. On the contrary, if Chen Ning is multitasking like now, the fleet composition can still maintain good combat effectiveness. In the future, when Chen Ming has more drivers, the effect will definitely not be that bad. And it will most likely be even better. Moreover, Chen Ming's abilities are not static. And the number of spacecraft he can control will definitely increase in the future. It just so happens that the fleet needs to be slowly built and expanded, which can just match Chen Ming's situation. Killing two birds with one stone is nothing if not done. Chen Ming immediately contacted Lao Wu. Before Chen Ming spoke, Old Wu took the first step and said, Xiao Ming, the company has been contacting me recently and wants to find you. If you want something, it's best not to contact me less. Chen Ning was not surprised that the company would contact someone he knew. He said, It's okay. I'll contact the company if I contact him. And I'll look for him if I find him. I don't know whether he can be found. If it was so easy for Yu Wei to come here, they wouldn't have been able to develop here for so long. 
Why do you feel so happy that you can't come back? Chin Ming said in a helpless tone. The situation forces me to do this. Is it possible that I am crying and hoping that the company will come to rescue me? If the company's support had come earlier, I wouldn't be like this now. Right. By the way, the company shouldn't be able to monitor me. But it should be able to monitor you. Lao Wu said with a quite indifferent look. I know. That's why I was thinking that you would still contact me now. Since Chin Ning had already mentioned the possibility, he just hinted at, and it didn't matter at all. Old Wu didn't say anything. Anyway, he had already reminded him when he came up. And there was nothing he could do if Chin Ming didn't listen. Chin Ming had obviously thought of this possibility before he started contacting you. And said, There must be a reason why I am contacting you now. Obviously, it is because there is something I need to let the company know. Chen Ming's current thoughts on the company are very simple. That is, we can cooperate to a certain extent, but we absolutely cannot rely on complete trust. Chen Ming had some hope in the company before, but after what happened before, Chen Ming still felt that he could not completely trust others in anything. In the end, a person had to rely on himself, so he can do whatever the company likes. And if the company doesn't do it, he will do it himself. Chin Ming can accept them if they do it. But if it has a very big impact on his own arrangements, then Chin Ming would rather not need them. At present, it seems that if the company wants to interfere with Chin Ming, it will definitely need a cruiser fleet. Not just one cruiser. So Chin Ming felt that he could just let go of the situation in the company for the time being. Anyway, the company is anxious for Sky Steel. But he is not in a hurry. And Sky Steel is not his. Chen Ning didn't believe that the company could go all the way to Yue's colony in a few days to interfere with his plan and take him away. A cruise fleet was mobilized from organizing to making the final long-distance voyage to fighting with the Afterglow fleet all the way to him. There are so many aspects of personnel, logistics, combat effectiveness support, and general command issues. No matter how efficient we are, it will take some time. Right. When the company can really solve so many things and come to Chen Ming, then the things he has to do here should be almost the same. So Chen Ning simply told his situation directly. There is at least one cruiser guarding me here in Yue, plus the defense force of a galaxy. I feel that if there is only one cruiser, there is no need to come here. There is at least one industrial colony in the galaxy that occupies one-fifth of the planet's area. The cruiser model is brilliant, and it is likely to be supported by a glory. Old Wu stared at the terminal in surprise and asked, That's what you said. Well, you can't really think it's fun for me to stay here in Yue. Right? Ha ha. Chen Ning heard a trace of embarrassment hidden in Lao Wu's words and said, You? Ha. Don't think too much. I just think you can get away with it no matter where you are. Right? Chen Ming was speechless. Old Wu obviously meant that Chen Ning might get better treatment if he stayed with Yue than if he stayed in the company. Although it seems that this is indeed the case at present. We should not say anything casually. Lao Wu also realized that what he said was wrong, and immediately changed the subject and said, So where are you putting it now? If you don't mind, Lao Lu has stopped me a lot, but someone still bothers me. Um, Chen Ming responded, and through the century, marked the industrial colony planet in the afterglow territory of the unknown star field outside the Empire's territory on the galaxy map, and sent it to Lao Wu. Okay, I told you that I have the idea of contacting the company, but there is another matter. Come, let's talk in private. Chen Ming hung up the communication. What he just said can be heard by the company. But it is better to hide what he wants to say to Lao Wu later about his thoughts. After Lao Wu walked into the hatch opened by the sentry, he consciously took out the battery of the terminal to prevent people from the company from continuing to monitor. On the Sentinel, a spaceship that is completely controlled by Chen Ming, it is impossible for anyone to bypass Chen Ming's control of the spacecraft equipment and monitor the situation inside the spacecraft. After boarding the ship, Old Wu found a chair in the captain's cabin of the sentry and sat down. He knocked on his legs, looked at the activated control panel in front of him and asked, What's going on? Chen Ming's words were quickly displayed on the control panel's display. I need you to help me purchase some supplies, some materials, and a spaceship. Use my card and my money. Lao Wu nodded directly and said, Okay, but what do you want to do? Get a fleet of my own. Forehead. I know it sounds a bit much, and there are a lot of problems. But I will figure it out, and there will be people who will support me. Old Wu scratched his chin, with a look of nostalgia in his eyes, and said, Well, I actually have nothing to advise you. I feel that there are only two development paths for your ability. 
scientific research and fleet. Whichever way you choose is the path you want to take. And it's your money anyway. You are responsible for the final result of whatever you want to do. If we go bankrupt someday, we'll wait for you to come back at any time. Laolu also asked me to ask you how you are doing. And he also said that the final payment from last time has been credited to your card. Even if the superiors strictly prohibit him from doing that with you again. Saying that it will ruin the company's reputation. We are a pirate space station and we are not allowed to do it. The boss's concern and Lao Wu's words made Chen Ning seem to experience some feelings that he had never experienced before. Feel good. As for the sale of refurbished weapons, it was within Chen Ning's expectation. He also made a small profit of more than 40 million. So even if he can't do it anymore, he can still accept it. It's impossible to do this kind of thing for a long time. The codes from the weapons factory are all fake and will be discovered sooner or later. Cutting it off early will save you problems in the future. Chapter 105 Chin Ming's Arrangement Yu Wei's Test After explaining the usual matters, Chin Ming and Lao Wu talked about business again. Chin Ming also stated his needs directly. I currently need about 10 escort level spacecraft to support supplies for about 3 months. Not counting the crew. It's not too much. Old Wu, can you do the math? Why don't you just look down on me? As Old Wu spoke, he directly listed a series of materials needed by the spacecraft including weapons and ammunition, logistical supplies, fuel consumption, spacecraft maintenance, and other material requirements for all aspects of the spacecraft. Chin Ning had a rough estimate in his mind before asking the question. He generally had no objection to the results of Lao Wu's calculations. There was only one small issue that needed to be raised. Weapons and ammunition can be slightly modified. If you can directly buy the raw materials for some ammunition, you can save some money. Old Wu did some calculations, nodded and said, Okay, I'll remember it. After buying the supplies, what next? Buy a spaceship? Yes, I need the Tachyon Technologies heavy rain level. After Chen Ming finished speaking, Old Wu waited for a few seconds. Seeing that Chen Ming had no intention of continuing, he asked, No more. No, I think I can only afford one heavy rain. My own card now has less than 50 million. And the card the factory director issued for me has more than 40 million, which adds up to 90 million. Then I have two mules parked at the space station. Right? I plan to sell one. When Lao Wu heard this, he couldn't help but ask, Who are you trying to trick? It's not a scam. If we sell it seriously, I will pretend that I don't have this ship from now on. I won't deliberately get the spaceship back. I just don't know if anyone will want this second-hand civilian ship. Old Wu touched his chin and said while thinking about it, the mule class is okay. The merchant ship. And the militarized subsystem. The original price is more than 200 million. And half of the depreciation is also good. And it's not like you know your abilities as an individual. As long as you don't take the initiative to trick people and expose your abilities. Selling it shouldn't be a big problem. Well, anyway, after buying the supplies first, paying the rainstorm deposit, and then selling a mule, the money should be about the same. The purchase supplies will be piled up in the maintenance factory first. There should be room in the factory. Right? Lao Wu had obviously passed by the maintenance shop when he went to the sentry just now. And immediately said, There must be some. The batch of unknown things you took from Lao Wu last time are also piled up in the maintenance shop. Anyway, our repair shop doesn't rely on its appearance to make money. If you just pile it up, who can object? After receiving a positive answer, Chen Ming continued to ask with satisfaction. Okay, is there any problem with buying heavy rain? It's no problem. Tachyon's heavy rain is a commodity. What's the problem with a serious business that pays for it? Is it worth the heavy rain of more than 170 million ships? And this ship is a little short? Are other ships not considered? Didn't you say you want to build a fleet? Old Wu's doubts at this time were obviously not unreasonable. After all, the price of heavy rain is indeed relatively expensive among frigates. But in addition to its own excellent drone control AI, and the same excellent radiation system that can be perfectly adapted to energy weapons as other spaceships produced by Tachyon technology. In other aspects, some are not worth the price. And under normal circumstances, the price of an ordinary military frigate is around 3,000 to 50 million, regardless of whether the buyer is qualified to drive the ship. One heavy rain is worth six serious military spaceships such as the military sentinel and expedition. A relatively expensive one, like the centurion is worth more than three ships. The money spent on heavy rain was used to buy other frigates. 
and the prototype of a small-scale fleet could actually be said to have emerged all of a sudden. And you have to know that when Chen Ning was shopping in the black market before, the hammerhead he saw only cost 130 million. At that time, he also saw that it was really outrageous that a heavy rain boat could be sold for 170 million. Although the spaceships sold on the black market are definitely different from normal products. The price may fluctuate somewhat compared to normal. For example, if Chin Ming remembers correctly, the hammerhead on the black market had extra specially modified load-bearing points and mounting points, which must have been leaked from within Shina Company to make money. Then the heavy rain seems to have something special. It is said to have more advanced drone AI intelligence. Therefore, the price will naturally be higher than that of ordinary spaceships. But no matter what, the value of heavy rain itself is there, and it will definitely cost 150 million. However, Chin Ming felt that for him. The heavy rain should be worth the price. The Terminator UAV wing carried by heavy rain, assisted by Chin Ming's abilities, can definitely exert terrifying effects. Even in a one-on-one -on -one battle, it will be stronger than a destroyer's hammerhead. This thing is worth the price to me! And besides this reason, there is another reason. Chin Ming continued, I want you to help me ask the company. During the previous fight with the military, there should be two surviving destroyers in the company's fleet, both of which have been controlled by me. I would like to ask how the company plans to deal with it. Chin Ming's ability has already determined that any spacecraft he touches will be an unstable time bomb for others. And it is absolutely impossible to continue to use it as before. So if the company wants to deal with spaceships, Chin Ning might be able to get these ships at a relatively low price. Then the problem of buying a heavy rain grade can be solved here. Anyway, it is impossible for the company to take the initiative to have a conflict with Chin Ning now. So Chin Ning might as well just go there and take it for granted. After listening to Chin Ming's words, Old was said, as if he suddenly remembered, That's your plan. That's fine. The company mentioned it when they approached me. As long as you can go back. All the ships you have controlled. Even if they are destroyed. As long as they are still worth repairing. They will repair them and give them all to you at once. Including the armor-piercing ship. Chin Ming frowned slightly. Repeated Lao Wu's words and asked, As long as I can go back? Well, they said that no matter how you go back, as long as you go back, go back to the company, and have personal contact with Lao Lu or the webmaster and other people who can count in the company to a certain extent, then you are considered to have gone back. It's not that easy. In the end, it depends on their efficiency, Chen Ming said casually, and suddenly seemed to realize something was wrong. What the company people said seemed to mean that someone else wanted to get him back. Lao Wu, tell me later. Besides companies and the military, how many other forces know about me now? Lao Wu did not answer, but asked with some surprise. Why do you ask me this? Because I feel like you know? Chin Ming said it was a feeling. But the actual reason was, it was the last time he went to Glasses, who sold information, and saw how old Wu and Glasses exchanged pirate information. The level of familiarity between the two was definitely not something that could be achieved by drinking frequently. Old Wu blinked his glasses and said, why are you so smart? Then let me get it straight. Apart from the company and the sector military, there are currently only three major ones that know about your psychers, the 14th Legion, the local sector government, and Tachyon Technology. You don't have to worry about the small ones. They are basically well-informed, but have little combat effectiveness. But there is one thing to note. The Illumination Research Institute seems to be a pure scientific research company funded by Legopath. They have been targeting you since the last incident. They will definitely not let go of the opportunity to kill you. A psyker who is simply blaspheming their doctrine of high technology harms people all the time. It can be said that the 14th Army Corps and the Star Region government clearly want you. The attitude of the Star Region military is not clear yet. There is a certain division within them. It seems to be because they are basically under the direct jurisdiction of the higher level war zone. Some people in the war zone want to kill you. But there are also people who want to protect you. It can only be said that your psychic abilities have really become popular. Chin Ning knew that it would definitely happen if his ability was exposed. But Chin Ning did not expect that other forces would have thoughts about him so quickly. There are ideas. And their reaction is definitely or probably slower than the company's. But be slow. Once there are more people. Yuwei's starfield may not be completely chaotic. It's really not certain whether Chin Ming found a way to go back on his own in the end. Or whether he was taken back by a certain force. Or even killed directly here. But Chin Ming has nothing to worry about. There are still a few people who want to kill him. And other forces that want him will protect him to a certain extent. 
and if the arrangements he is making now can be carried out step by step. Then, he is not afraid of anyone who wants to kill him. Chen Ming remembered everything Old Wu said, and continued to think about the topic in his mind. Although Chen Ming feels that if the company's ships can really go back to the company, they should be able to get it. But returning to the company itself is the biggest trouble. After thinking about it, Chen Ming decided to forget it. It didn't matter if he couldn't get the company's spaceship. At worst, he could just continue to save money to buy the spaceship. In his current situation, making money is not difficult. Moreover, Chen Ming now plans to find pirates. Pirate ships with bounties always have at least the military subsystem installed. Chen Ming collected some and sold them. It shouldn't be a problem to sell three or four of them and exchange them for a serious military ship. As long as Chen Ming has the ability at hand to ensure that the ships in the fleet are not destroyed and only need to consume part of the materials for repairs. Sooner or later, he can support the fleet through war. Chen Ming paused thinking about the fleet ships and said to Old Wu. Thank you. Old Wu. Old Wu waved his hand. As if because Chen Ming saw through what he was doing. He leaned back in the chair with some dejection and half slumped in the chair. Then what happens after you buy the boat? What else do you want to do? Drive out and fight the pirates. Old Wu was stunned for a moment. Then straightened up again and asked in disbelief. You don't want me to go. Do you? No. It's me. That's good. But later, your ability can control the spacecraft remotely? I mean controlling the new spacecraft. No, but I can do it indirectly through other means. If the AI core that Chen Ming just discovered and controlled by him changes the spaceship, he can directly control the new spaceship, which can be used quite well. After Gamma, B was told to let it move freely. It took on some tasks issued internally by Afterglow and was busy upgrading to the beta level. By the time the heavy rain level arrives, it should be almost at the beta level and can be idle. When the time comes, Chen Ming can ask Gamma B to come back and install it on Chen Ming's spacecraft to achieve indirect control of the spacecraft. Of course, after controlling Gamma B, you still have to go back to Afterglow. It has more important things to do after that. So when Gamma B returned to the pirate space station alone, I just need your help. Old Wu. That's it. Just don't let me actually fight. Well, no. I just need you to help me collect the bounty after finishing the fight. I will reimburse you for the business trip expenses. After hearing this, Old Wu became a little suspicious and asked, You really don't want me to fight? Really not? Real? Real. Chen Ming promised Lao Wu several times that he would not let him do dangerous things before he got Lao Wu's consent. After ending this topic, Chen Ming brought up a new topic. In addition, there is a test of the effect of my ability. I plan to try it now. I need your help. Oh. Lao Wu suddenly cheered up and said, are there new functions? It feels like you have made greater progress by going to Yue than on the space station. You usually don't use your abilities very much. Chen Ming was stunned for a moment and found that it seemed to be what Old Wu said. The opportunities and times he had to show off his abilities in the space station seemed to be inferior to the two days he came to Yue. It seems that when he is in a safe place, he will unconsciously be lazy. Or relax? Decadent? But when it comes to dangerous places, if you don't make progress and find ways to improve and expand your abilities, it's no different than waiting to die. Just like before on Ruimu Planet. At that time, Chen Ning would think hard about the limits of his newly awakened spiritual power under various conditions. But after arriving at the space station, he subconsciously relaxed a little without being forced by the intuitively dangerous external environment. Chen Ming realized this. But he had nothing to say. Only he knew this situation. And only he could change it. Chen Ming said, as if sighing or explaining, a harsh environment will force people to move forward. Then he changed the topic and said, let's not talk about this anymore. I want to see if I can really get this thing back. Lao Wu stood up from his chair and asked, what should we do? Hold on. Chen Ming spent a little time here and moved the antimatter shock wave to the iron ore. Then he opened the sentry's panel and started changing weapons. The antimatter shock wave gradually melted like the materials used in Chen Ming's previous experiments and disappeared in the palm of his hand. Then, it appeared on the load-bearing point of the Sentinel class that was staying at the Pirate Space Station Repair Shop. It's done! Chen Ming immediately disassembled the antimatter intermediate wave, and a ball of metallic liquid quickly condensed into its original appearance in front of Old Wu. Lao Wu squatted on the ground, looked at the thick antimatter shock wave in front of him and asked, What is this? Antimatter shock wave. Afterglow's technology. Antimatter? Yes. Antimatter. 
I can't understand. But I'm older. Stop. Stop talking nonsense. Give this thing to the factory director. He should be able to help me take care of it. Old Wu stretched out his hand and gestured. His somewhat thin figure seemed unable to bear the thick antimatter shock wave. And based on the current situation of Chen Ming, there should be many people besides the company paying attention here. Old Wu just carried it there, fearing that something was going to go wrong. So after a brief discussion, in order to prevent the information on what Chen Ming brought back from being eavesdropped, Old Wu went directly to the administration building in person, under tighter security than before. I quickly ran to the factory director's office with a familiar face and ID card. He just barged in without knocking on the door. The chairman is in contact with other people at this time. When he saw Lao Wu coming in, he just waved his hand and motioned for him to go aside and wait for a while. At the same time, he continued to say to the person on the other end of the call, What are you doing? Old Wu sat down on the sofa next to him. Although he couldn't hear the voice on the other end, looking at Old Lu's attitude, he could probably guess who it was. The factory director obviously didn't have a good attitude towards the person on the other end of the call. He said very simply, I don't know. Ask Lao Wu. Don't ask me. He immediately hung up the call, looked at Lao Wu and asked, What's the matter? Xiao Mu brought something back. Xiao Mu is back. No. He brought it back with his ability. What's wrong with it? Stop. Stop talking. Just take me there. Okay. The factory director immediately brought two more guards from his office, who didn't know when, and followed Lao Wu to the maintenance plant. After feeling a few eyes on him on the road, he successfully entered Chen Ming Sentinel. The factory director unplugged the terminal battery at Lao Wu's reminder and saw the antimatter shock wave in the captain's cabin. The factory director said tentatively, Xiao Ming! Chen Ming once again displayed a sentence on the control panel. I am here! This thing is the antimatter shock wave I got from Yu Wei. Although my knowledge is not at this level, I can say that I am sure that it is an antimatter shock wave. And it does have antimatter as a material. And antimatter does play a role in it. The only problem is that this is a type of weapon used in the afterglow experiment. And this experimental weapon itself has certain problems and is considered a failure. But at least its name is antimatter shock wave. I see. The factory director took a deep breath frowned and dialed back the previous communication. There is something I need to bring back to you. It should be of use to the research institute that the company recently established. After one day, after Glow Colony Factory, Chen Ming successfully sent the antimatter shock wave to the space station. We one didn't care about this. After all, it couldn't detect the situation inside the iron mine without being discovered by Chen Ming. And today, when Chen Ming woke up and walked into the factory, it was discovered that when he was resting last night, Yu Wei had taken away all the repaired weapons. And some new stuff was delivered. There are three in total. One large live weapon. A pile of materials. Including the lost materials reported by Chen Ming yesterday. Although Yu Wei seemed to be able to see how much Chen Ming had used in the warehouse. They were still delivered at 1.5 times what Chen Ming said. And one. Which removed the Gamma A. The unmanned one. And also loaded the refractors of the first two. Brilliant correspondence also arrived duly. Mr. Chen, Gamma A has chosen to leave, and we have decided to leave the refraction ship he controls to you. You mean I can use it at will? Even if I drive it to other places? Yes, but please note that this diopter does not have an afterglow entity installed at this time. There is no mark of our afterglow outside the planet, and it may be destroyed at any time. This can be considered a threat from afterglow, but it still surprised Chen Ming. He thought that the diopter would be demolished and he planned to try to take the boat away when the diopter was demolished. But he couldn't just let it go. Anyway, this is not a head-on confrontation with Yu Hui. It would be best to give it a try. But if it fails, the worst-case scenario is that he will just dismantle it and take away all the materials. As a result, Yu Hui was so generous, which surprised Chen Ming. But take it when it's time to take it. As long as the boat is in hand, Chen Ming will always find an opportunity to take diopt away. Moreover, in Chen Ming's future fleet composition, he still happens to have a position for Diopter. To capture the pirate's valuable spaceships, you have to rely on Diopto's electromagnetic capture device. Otherwise, the success rate and efficiency of destroying the engine alone would be a bit low. Chen Ming accepted the items given by Yu Hui. And unlike yesterday when the task was issued through the task list, today Hui Wang personally said to Chen Ming, Today's task is to repair this weapon. Chen Ming waited for a while but did not get any follow-up words from Hui Hui. That's it? Yes. All right. 
Chin Ning was too lazy to move at this time. Directly through the refractive panel, I selected this large live ammunition weapon called a purgatory cannon. Chin Ming briefly looked at the panel. In other words, he can know what this thing is without looking at the panel. Because the infernal cannon is a product of human technology and a very early product in the development process of mankind. And in Chin Ming's impression, the SH. LS of the purgatory cannon should. Chin Ming looked at the panel. He found that just as he thought, all the ammunition for the inferno cannon was empty. Because all its cannonballs are cannonballs loaded with plasma charged warheads. A plasma charged warhead that can evaporate the target location with one shot and rely on high temperature liquid metal jets to penetrate armor and structures is not something easy to produce. Chin Ming immediately understood what Yu Hui meant. Yu Hui wanted to use this special weapon that was difficult to manufacture in batches to test the effectiveness of Chin Ming's repairability in replenishing ammunition. Simply put, it is to test the upper limit of Chin Ming's ability. Chapter 106 A Simple Test Permission to go out Yu Hui wanted to test the upper limit of Chin Ming's ability. And Chin Ming is actually quite curious about how far his abilities can be pushed to their limits. His repairability can replenish live ammunition and missiles. Even energy weapons can use the maintenance function to reduce the weapon's cooling time limit when the energy supply is sufficient. Which is equivalent to replenishing ammunition in disguise. So what is the upper limit of this ability? What about things like nuclear bomb silos mounted on spaceships? Or after humans enter the space age? What about weapons that are more terrifying than nuclear bombs? Although Chen Ming couldn't touch a nuclear bomb. He couldn't touch a weapon stronger than a nuclear bomb. And Yu Hui didn't know if he would give it to him. But in short, it would do no harm to Chen Ming to test the upper limit of his abilities. There was nothing to say. Chen Ming directly chose to repair the purgatory cannon. This huge cannon, the size of the iron ore, consumed almost all the repair materials prepared by Yu Hui in just a few minutes. There are still some scraps left that I can't take away later. So Chen Ming can keep them for himself. The metallic liquid no longer continues to flow into the purgatory cannon. And all 30 rounds of the purgatory cannon's magazine have been loaded. The whole process gave Chen Ning the feeling that it was no different from repairing other ship weapons that used ordinary bullets. Overall, it is similar to building a frigate of the same size, with no special feeling at all. Chen Ning specially used the operational equipment in the factory to open the magazine of the Inferno Cannon and take a look. We did see 30 man sized SH. LS loaded with plasma charged warheads placed neatly in the magazine. Even though Chen Ming had no knowledge about plasma charged warheads, he didn't even have a sample. Just materials. Chen Ming still relied on his repair ability to replenish all of it. It can only be said that the repair ability is still the most abnormal ability that Chen Ming has mastered now. Brilliant. Who also had factory authority. Could obviously see the magazine opened by Chen Ming. But this time, he did not wait for Chen Ming to leave for rest at night. But directly dispatched a remote controlled robot team to drag the infernal cannon away again. It was towed onto a cargo spacecraft that landed quite some distance from the factory. It can be seen that Yu Hui is very concerned about the results of Chen Ning's ability test this time. Maybe Yu Hui happened to have some plan based on Chen Ning's ability. Regardless of whether it is what Chen Ning thought, there should be results after a while. After watching the cargo ship take off, Chen Ming asked Hui Wang, Are there no other tasks today? No. Please continue studying the books we gave you in the remaining time. Okay. In that case, Chin Ming felt that it was almost time. Before Hui Hui hung up the call, Chin Ming said directly, I have a need. What needs? You should know that my ship is a mining ship. So I want to go out for mining. You should not worry about my little mining ship collecting all the ore. Right. Chin Ming's sudden question did not make Hui Wang hesitate. And he immediately asked, What is the reason? The same as yesterday. Mr. Chin, your request yesterday was for green plants that can provide you with emotional value. And we have now helped you obtain the cultivation equipment and will deliver it here soon. We are also looking for green plants suitable for human living and ecological environment. And they will be delivered soon. Isn't it unreasonable to derive emotional value from mining work? Hui Wang clearly rejected Chin Ming. But Chin Ming also had reasons to explain. You should know that humans have cabin fever. Right. If a person stays in a claustrophobic environment for a long time, he will have psychological problems. If you look around, it looks empty. But in fact, the gray land and dark sky may give people a more claustrophobic feeling than a normal environment. And I usually stay in the factory during the day. The factory environment you specially transform cannot compare to my normal working environment on the human side. You should understand this. Right. Hui Wang knew that cabin fever did exist among human diseases. 
and that the causes of the disease were indeed the same as Chen Ming said. Although he is not a human being, and does not know what human thinking is like, he knows that different people have different definitions of different things. What is a cramped environment for one person may be just right for someone else. Therefore, Chen Ming's current request is still within the reasonable scope. But letting Chen Ming, a person who is extremely dangerous to Yu Wei, run outside the factory and walk around the planet at what would definitely not be a good thing for them. Therefore, Hui Wang immediately responded to the situation to the higher level afterglow AI. However, the transmission of information takes time. And it also takes time to consider and determine and then rescind the information. Just when Hui Wang hadn't given Chen Ming a definite answer, Chen Ming suddenly took a step back and said, Actually, I don't have to go out. I just need to let my spaceship go out. Hui Wang immediately asked, Get remote control of the spacecraft for mining work relax your mind? Do you know the concept of games? It's similar to games. In reality, if people really do mining work, it would be hard to say that it is a distraction. But in games, it is completely different. People may spend hours or even days collecting minerals in the game. And I control my spaceship remotely. It's actually similar to the game. It's just like I'm playing the game for fun. After Chen Ming finished speaking, Hui Wang also received a reply from further away. And after confirming Yu Wei's attitude in the reply, Hui Wang directly rejected Chen Ming's idea and said, Mr. Chen, please try your best to ensure your efficiency in daily work and your study efficiency. We will not delay your regular acceptance. However, although Hui Wang refused, he also sent Chen Ming's request back again. Chen Ming obviously would not give up easily and continued to try. You should be able to see the work efficiency. Right. It only takes me five minutes to complete most of the work. And I think I have invested enough time in learning. Speaking of which, you mean that you can give me the freedom to do this as long as I guarantee that I can pass the review once a month? Hui Wang hesitated for half a second, received a reply again, and said, Yes, a review result of excellent or above is required, and only your spacecraft can sail on the planet. Chen Ming was a little excited, but he didn't show it. His fight for permission to go out in the first step was considered a success. And it's not surprising that Hui Wang relented to Chen Ming. After all, the reason why it refused to let Chen Ning go out last time was just that there was an asteroid falling. And it was not a strict prohibition. It was this bargaining process that Chen Ning always felt was strange. But this is not the point. The point is that as long as Chen Ning completes the excellent level review, his iron ore can go out and sail freely on the colonial planet of Yuhui. Although he will definitely be monitored by Yuhui. At least the first step has been taken. Then start now. I have mastered all the books you gave me. Hui Wang was not surprised that Chen Ning made a request for review now. He just said, Mr. Chen, shortening the period of your inspection may not be a good choice for you. I know. Chen Ming's answer prompted Hui Wang to immediately send a document and said, Complete it, and we will give you a rating soon. Chen Ming nodded and opened the file. While reading the contents of the file, he suddenly realized what was going on with the strange feeling he had just noticed. However, he has no ability to change now so he could only silently start writing this review test that is almost the same as the test paper he has written countless times. Chen Ming had already thoroughly mastered the knowledge in the book given by Yu Hui, and filled in all the contents in the document as if he were directly referring to the reference answers. The whole process didn't take much time. Hui Wang received Chen Ming Fa's completed documents. Chen Ming felt that according to Yu Hui's computing power, the results should be available immediately. However, Hui Wang did not give Chen Ming a direct answer as to the outcome but simply asked Chen Ming to continue with the actual operation. In actual operation, Chen Ming needs to carry out specialized transformations on several standard weapons, including expanded energy diversion track, series coil, parallel connection of diversion tracks, etc. Just when Chen Ming was writing the topic, Hui Wang had already delivered the weapons needed for the actual test to the factory. Three weapons from two primary schools and one middle school were piled in the work area of the factory. However, Chen Ming didn't want to just rebuild three of them. Although there were mechanical equipment, it would still take a lot of time to build three. So Chen Ming tried to say, I should have said this before. Right. My transformation ability can only carry out transformations that I have relevant knowledge in my mind. Hui Wang replied very reasonably. Yes. But in the actual test, we still want to see your ability to do it yourself. You can choose one to transform yourself and use your abilities for the other two. Okay. It would be convenient if you only need to modify one weapon. Chen Ming controlled the machinery in the factory and quickly began to modify one of the small weapons. At the same time, 
he threw the other two weapons onto the diopter, instantly completing the modification that Chen Ming had completely mastered. Then Chen Ming completed the remaining tasks with the fastest efficiency he could achieve, relying on the factory equipment. Hui Wang suddenly asked, Mr. Chen, have you learned our technology before? No, but what you gave us is some very basic knowledge, so it's not too difficult to learn. The reasons stated by Chen Ming make it difficult to evaluate Hui Wang. Sounds reasonable though. After all, simple knowledge does not take much time to master. But Hui Wang gave Chen Ming more than a dozen books, which add up to several hundred pages in thickness. It's not like he could finish it in two days and master it completely because it was simple. Even the actual operation can be so proficient. Even Hui Wang itself, when it was still at the gamma level, could not achieve Chen Ming's learning speed. So it immediately moved on Chen Ming's daily report that it had to hand in every day. Nothing else has changed. Except that the learning efficiency assessment I in one line has been changed to under assessment with a learning ability that is at least close to the beta core. And it adds an extra line at the end of the report. We can try to speed up the learning progress in the next cycle. After doing this, Hui Wang immediately said to Chen Ming, Mr. Chen, you can sail freely on the planet from now on. But as you said, only your spaceship can sail freely on the planet. The next review will still be conducted in a month. This is the next book you need to learn and master. After Wee Wang finished speaking, he sent a new batch of e-books to the factory's control terminal. The number was several more than before. Chin Ning took a look at the titles of these books, and they were the same as what he had thought before. Most of them are related to weapons, and only a small part are related to radiation systems. And Chin Ning flipped through it casually and found that the learning difficulty of all the books in it had improved to a certain extent compared with the first batch. Obviously, after we needs Chin Ning to specialize in the two aspects of weapons and radiation technology of after we ships. I just don't know if you Hui will change his plan after learning about Chin Ning's learning efficiency. After Brilliance gave Chin Ming action on the planet and left, Chin Ming finally had the opportunity to start getting ready for business. However, when Hui Wang just left, he gave Chin Ming a map of the mineral vein distribution of the planet. This thing has two meanings. One is to follow Chin Ming's wishes so that Chin Ming can easily find mineral dense areas on the planet for mining. The other is to limit the routes that Chin Ming can move on the planet in disguise. Chin Ming said it was for mining to relax. So if he had nothing to do, and went to a place where there were obviously no mineral veins marked on the map. He must have an ulterior motive. Therefore, if Chin Ning does not want to be further restricted by Afterglow's personal freedom, then his spaceship must follow the distribution of the mineral veins. And at most yaw a little. This is a limitation he must live with. After all, there must be some Afterglow individuals on the planet. If the planet's colonies need to be developed, then a unit needs to go out to conduct on-site investigations to confirm the direction and possibilities of development. Or as Gamma once said, some individuals in Afterglow have their own interests, and exploring the planet is one of them. So Chin Ning might be able to find them when he drives the spaceship out. Even if Yu Wei had orders for Yu Wei on the planet to avoid Chin Ming and warn Chin Ming of the direction of his flight in advance, there would definitely be some Yu Wei individuals who were unable to completely avoid Chin Ming's spaceship by limiting the direction of Chin Ming's spacecraft. At least the probability of Chin Ming encountering Afterglow individuals will be greatly reduced. But Chen Ning must have considered this issue before. Although Yu Wei will definitely monitor him, no matter how tight the surveillance is, as long as he can see Yu Wei, he will definitely find an opportunity. Chin Ming opened the map on the Iron Mine. The map provided by Hui Wang is a three-dimensional map. A sphere appeared in front of Chen Ning through the spacecraft equipment. You can visually see how the mineral veins are distributed on the planet. Chen Ming's current location, where the colony is located, is near a large ilmenite vein. It is this ilmenite that supports the development of the entire Yuwei industrial colony. As the afterglow colony continues to expand, some of the surrounding small mineral veins, such as manganese ore, copper ore, and iron ore, have all been covered by the colony and are being developed. But outside the colonies, there were still plenty of mineral resources lying around. Even many of these veins are pure open pit mines. The mineral resource reserves of the entire planet can be said to be quite exaggerated. Logically speaking, these open pit mines will be Chen Ming's next goal. But Chen Ming didn't want to argue with Yu Hui. He definitely couldn't plan the route based on where it was convenient to collect valuable ore. The route he plans later must be a route that can cover the largest area of the entire planet during his daily work and rest time when sailing close to the ground. In this way, his exploration of the planet can be more accurate. 
and the probability of encountering the afterglow will be higher. Anyway, Yue's side didn't restrict Shen Ming's destination or route. It doesn't matter if you wander around in different mineral veins. The chance of finding an afterglow individual will be higher if you can expand the area a bit. Chen Ming needs more goals and more complex and changing environments. Only then can he complete his final idea under Yuhui's surveillance. So in the end, Chen Ming decided that his destination was on the other side of the planet. On a bauxite mine just opposite the colony where he was now. Chen Ming chose such a destination not only for his final purpose but also after careful consideration of the feasibility. According to the sailing speed of the iron ore, on this planet that is several times smaller than Ruimu, it is enough to go back and forth in daily routine. Moreover, Chin Ming actually has another idea, which is to see which ores Chin Ming particularly needs now. You can find ways to collect and smelt some to replenish the iron or account with some raw materials. Planets that Afterglow can colonize will always have some rare minerals. By the way, let's try something Chin Ming has never tried before dismantling ore. Maybe it can also save the fuel cost of smelting. Or even directly save the smelting equipment. And even if the ore collected later is not needed by Chen Ming, he can also choose to give the unnecessary minerals collected to Hui Ming. Like other afterglow individuals, who control heavy mining machinery and are responsible for mining operations, they receive normal material rations for the job. Hui Wang said before that Chen Ming also has material rations. And these rations can be used to exchange for some materials for him. For example, Sky Steel. After Chen Ming renovated and repaired the spacecraft several times before, the Sky Steel was starting to run out a bit. In a short period of time, Chen Ming didn't know where to find the mechanical clan to purchase goods. So it was always good to stock up on some. And since Yu Wei agreed to Chen Ming's mining spacecraft, it was considered to be consenting to Chen Ming's mining. Although the efficiency of the iron mine is average, there should be no problem in subsidizing some resources for self-use. In this way, the iron or company can return to its original position in the limited storage space and long operation time. Find enough valuable rare ores. Collect them. Smelt them. And bring them back. Chen Ming, on the other hand, has gone from being a savage struggling to survive on Ruemu to becoming half a collaborator and half a prisoner of Yuhui. At least it's better than it once was. And better than dying directly under the fire of military rulers. Chen Ming did not dwell on the past. After stepping off the iron or ship, he left the work area that was separated from where Chen Ming usually stayed, and immediately opened the factory door. Control the iron or to fly toward the other end of the planet along the shortest route between the ore veins on the planet. Hui Wang didn't say anything about Chen Ming's behavior of relaxing during working hours. Anyway, Chen Ming has completed his daily work today and passed the review. Tomorrow is when everything will start as usual. In Chen Ming's eyes. The gray earth of the planet called KT-3 by the afterglow kept passing under the iron ore. The unchanging environment made Chen Ming even doubt whether the iron mine was spinning in circles. Fortunately, after leaving the colony for some distance, the planet's terrain gradually began to undulate. Some smooth hills gradually appeared at the limit of the field of view that the iron mine's camera could capture. However, the environment here is still similar to that near the colony. It is still all gray land. Chen Ming tried to find any traces of biological existence. But it was obvious that there were no living things on this rocky planet without an atmosphere. Instead, he saw many high-grade metal or veins exposed on the surface. The value of collection is definitely higher than that of low-priced high-grade metals like dolomite steel. However, Chen Ning still restrained his thoughts and continued flying towards his destination. In the middle of the flight, in addition to his main search for traces of Yue individuals, he also saw several mineral veins where it was obvious that Yuhui had recently worked to build a mining farm. Through the spacecraft, Chen Ming could not only see the mechanized or stamping machines in operation in the mining field, but also see the passages leading deep underground, which were obviously for robots to pass. Yuhui itself also has robots. And there will also be Yuhui AI cores installed on these robots. When Chen Ning thought about this, he felt that he had a lot to do in these mining farms. The complex and dangerous environment deep underground is simply the best place for him to cause trouble. But that's the only problem with doing this. The iron ore is a mining spacecraft designed to collect ore from asteroids. Mining work on the surface is already a bit difficult. And mining work deep underground is even more difficult. However, Chen Ming would not give up so easily. And he still planned to give it a try. Although Chen Ming does not have such a thing as a mining robot, he does have a spider-shaped handling robot. After some modifications, and some modifications to the mining robot's equipment. It should be able to be used. Chen Ming remembered that the technical books 
that Olwu gave him before seemed to include books on robot transformation. At that time, Chin Ming can use mining robots to enter these working mining farms. Just find a way to circumvent Afterglow's restrictions. Or simply bring up the idea directly with Afterglow and the others. Although it may not be possible. But what if? Anyway, even if it can't be realized, Chin Ming will find a way himself. Chapter 107 Plans and Coincidences in Plans After obtaining the permission to go out of the spacecraft from Yuhui, Chin Ming spent several days traveling to the other side of the planet many times via different routes. The situation of most of the planet was basically figured out and recorded in the spacecraft's computer. So far, Chin Ming has confirmed the location of almost all the afterglow mining sites he has flown over on the planet, and the locations of other facilities used to record planetary data that may contain afterglow entities. Yue doesn't need to rest. All facilities must be working around the clock. It's just that before Chin Ming passed, Yu Hui notified him in advance so that Yu Hui could evacuate or hide. Therefore, Chin Ming must try his best to hide his intentions. He controlled the iron ore in mine for several days, and also used the dismantling ability to directly take out the valuable ore inside it, and handed the unnecessary products directly to Yu Hui in exchange for monthly material rations, acting as if he really just uses mining as a pastime. But during this period, Chin Ming definitely did more than just things on the surface. He also spent a lot of time determining the differences between different mining farms and found the locations of several mining farms with advanced resources and a high number of afterglow AI. These places are Chen Ming's final goals. But if he finds other opportunities midway, he won't miss them. And in these few days, Chen Ming has also read almost all the subsequent technical books that Hui Wang gave him before. If it weren't for the fact that Chen Ming was reading books about robots at the same time as he was reading these books, the efficiency would be even faster, and he should be able to finish it all in two days. However, it is precisely because Chin Ming read professional books on robots that he now has the ability to transform robots. Chin Ming plans to transform his handling robot, called a standard all-terrain handling spider, into a mining robot. This will facilitate his subsequent plans. Besides studying, all he needs to do is select on the panel and confirm. This is the benefit of combining learning efficiency with ability on the robot that will be transformed. In addition to the most basic small mining laser and some supporting exploration and drilling equipment, some melee or long-range weapons capable of combat, plus some weird ones such as a miniature electromagnetic pulse generator learned from refraction. Chin Ming also plans to equip the robot with some high explosives that are well suited to the mining work it will perform. He still used the explosive material ratio he obtained when he dismantled the lured left path explosives in the Star Territory capital. The effect should be quite good. Chin Ming felt that it would be no problem for the mining robot to carry some explosives that could blow up destroyers and use them to blast ores. So I silently stuffed a lot of it into it. Anyway, it was definitely more than what the lunatic on Lured Path had carried with him. Then Chin Ming removed half of the legs of the spider-shaped robot and also disassembled part of the hydraulic load-bearing device. Chin Ming does not need the overly powerful load-bearing capacity of the handling robot. He only needs to be able to save some space for storing the collected ore and some of it cannot hold explosives. Accordingly, Chin Ming also slightly adjusted the robot's walking logic AI so that it can adapt to the walking logic of four legs. Of course, although four legs are missing, Chin Ming's adaptability in complex environments is still guaranteed as much as possible. As for the effect, it should be able to support it for a period of time to a certain extent, and it will not be paralyzed directly. Anyway, Chin Ming felt that this robot should be alive in just a few days, so there was no need to care too much about functionality and durability. Transformation does not take much time. In less than a minute, all the melted materials on the iron ore had been integrated into the new mining robot. The body shape has not changed much from before. It is still the size of a person. The middle part of the four spider legs was specially enlarged by Chin Ming, making it look a bit bloated. But there shouldn't be any big problem. Chin Ming is going to do it in practice first and see the effect before talking about it. However, just when Chen Ming was about to get started, he discovered some problems. This robot, which he had tried several times before and could not be controlled through the panel, was suddenly controllable again, and it is still the same as how he controls the spacecraft, directly controlled by his consciousness without any interference or delay. This situation made Chen Ming immediately consider whether the new ability was due to the growth of his mental power. But his mental power has only been growing normally these days, and he has consumed his mental power through the life stone and other things to gain training effects. There has been no breakthrough in the upper limit or a significant increase in mental power. 
and the number of controllable spacecraft displayed on the panel has not increased. Only there is an extra line in the corner of the iron or panel. Transformation Connection, Mining Robot, Customized Mechanical Body, like the I-Core. No specific controllable upper limit data is shown. However, Chin Ming felt that this mining robot should be counted on the iron mine, and it could not exceed the limit of the mental power consumed by the iron mine. So there should be one explanation for the current situation. Chin Ming couldn't control the unmodified robot as long as it left the spacecraft. But it was different with the modified one. But Chin Ming Ming clearly remembers that the situation before seemed different from now. And he has transformed so many things. Why is only this robot he just transformed shown on the panel? Chin Ming was a little confused and stepped off the spacecraft. At the same time, he took out the pistol he had always carried. Then Chin Ming discovered that the panel of his modified pistol, which he had not looked at carefully for a long time, could be opened directly. It is no different from opening the spacecraft panel. Chin Ming can directly open its panel to modify, repair and dismantle it, although there is no power source or related power equipment inside the pistol. So Chin Ming cannot control it to move. But this also proves that he can indeed control all mechanical items that he modified. It's completely different from when I was in Ruimu. Maybe Chin Ming had such an ability during one of the two times when his abilities improved and made breakthroughs. But he never discovered it. As for what is displayed on the panel, only the robot is displayed. Probably because it only displays modified objects that have their own power source and can move freely. Things that cannot move on their own, such as pistols, will not be displayed on it. Um! Chin Ming put the pistol back into the holster on his waist and turned back to the spacecraft. It seemed that he had been in a peaceful place for so long that he didn't even notice such changes in his abilities. Obviously, when he just left Ruemu, he specifically emphasized that the human world is more dangerous than Ruemu. And he should not forget it. As a result, in the end, he didn't even know his complete abilities. But fortunately, he already knows now. And it's not too late. And he also knew that the effects of his abilities were still increasing, extending, and strengthening. Perhaps in the future, as his psychic abilities improve, there will be even more powerful effects. Even in the end, he was able to control the spacecraft remotely. Chen Ming did not spend too much time imagining the future. After all, this was something he needed to do, not something he should think about. After returning to the ship, Chen Ming did not use the iron ore signal transmitter, but directly controlled the robot to perform some simple actions through his consciousness. There is no difference between operating a robot with consciousness and operating a spaceship. Chen Ming can accomplish many things easily. What he wants to do later is naturally among them. But Chen Ming still planned to spend the day normally. And they also used the iron mine to remotely control it and move it around inside the factory, briefly demonstrating its functions. Let Yu Hui know what Chen Ming is doing now. Give Yu Hui a hint in advance and give him a vaccination. The next day, after the repair was completed and the repair was successful, Yu Hui used a special weapon that could fire strange ammunition loaded with some kind of liquid inside. Chen Ming first summarized the results of today's work, which showed that his ability had the same effect on liquids as well as solids. It made Chen Ming feel that he was one step closer to repairing the nuclear bomb. Then Chen Ming spent the remaining time at work and said directly to Hui Wang before hanging up the communication. I have something to say. Hui Wang was obviously very satisfied with Chen Ming's cooperation these days and immediately responded to Chen Ming. You tell me. I want to go to your mining sites and try to collect ore from the underground. Although Yu Wei had not restricted Chen Ming's travel routes before. When Chen Ming makes a request now, he can try to directly mention that he wants to go to mining sites that collect high-end resources. In Chen Ming's expectation, this should not be something that would be rejected 100%. After all, high-grade or resources are there, even if Chen Ming wants to collect them. But in order to ensure that things can transition smoothly without suspicion, Yu Wei will not suddenly become overly vigilant or have him under extremely close surveillance. Chen Ming didn't even go so far as to say that he was going to those high-end metal mining sites that were obviously very important to Yu Wei. So Chen Ming settled for an ordinary mining site, which had a vein of tungsten or that he had been collecting in recent days, so that Chen Ming's demand at this time would not sound too sudden. Hui Wang quickly agreed to Chen Ming's request to apply for entry into the mining site in advance. But it also gave Chen Ming certain restrictions. He could only enter Yu Wei's mining field tomorrow. But for Chen Ming, one day was more than enough. He just needs to make some preparations. Another day comes quickly. The afterglow of this morning's daily work gave Chin Ning a new strange weapon. Its appearance looks relatively simple. 
and it is not on the same level as those standard weapons. There should be no designer who can directly take this thing out as a finished product. Chin Ming estimated that it should be something new produced by Yu Hui himself. Because the name of this weapon is Electric Storage Power Launcher 01 Test Type. And the bullets it loads are all very special. All of these bullets are charged bullets. It is similar to having batteries loaded inside. And these batteries are the most ordinary batteries and do not have any bonus effect on bullets. This clear test statement didn't say anything. Just like when facing the strange weapons a few days ago, I directly chose to repair it. However, during this maintenance, Chin Ming's maintenance ability rarely encountered some problems. Chin Ming's repair has indeed replenished all the bullets, which is no problem. However, all the repaired batteries, or all the bullets, are not full of energy and need to be recharged later. And Hui Wang immediately transported another batch of fully charged materials. Chin Ming took a look and saw that they were fully charged batteries that could be inserted into bullets. Chen Ming himself, like Yu Hui, chose to repair it out of curiosity. However, after modification, these fully charged batteries also lost their stored energy. During the process of liquefying the material during maintenance, all the energy inside is released. It seems that the bullet must use a substance that itself has energy properties as a material to achieve the energy supply effect. Just like the plasma charged warhead of the previous Inferno Cannon. It uses materials with its own energy and does not require subsequent charging. Shin Ming can completely repair it in one go. This was the first time that Shin Ming felt the upper limit of his abilities. But this restriction is nothing at all. Shin Ming even hoped that Yu Hui could help him measure the upper limits of his abilities. So that Shin Ming would not misestimate the upper limits of his abilities when encountering problems in the future. Today's work is done. But just when Chen Ming planned to spend the rest of the day reading, Hui Wang suddenly asked Chen Ming a strange question. Do you have any other requirements for the living environment? Chen Ming didn't understand why Hui Wang suddenly asked this question. Maybe it was to prevent Chen Ming from making excuses and exchange for rights next time? He was not sure. So he said there was no demand for it for the time being. Hui Wang didn't ask any more questions and left quickly, leaving the rest of the time to Chen Ming himself. Then Chen Ming continued his previous plan of reading. Chen Ming basically spent less than half of his time reading the second batch of books given by Yu Hui every day, and spent more time studying the technical books on tachyon technology given by Old Wu. But even so, today, Chen Ming's study of afterglow technology has reached the final stage. After today, go back and find a time when he can review it in advance again. At 5 o'clock in the evening, Chen Ming got off work on time. Then the iron or with the mining robot was activated and flew out of the factory. It was just dawn at the location of the colony on this planet. Chen Ning soon saw his destination through the iron mine's camera from a considerable distance. That mining site sits on a vein of tungsten ore. And you can also see that the ore stamping machine at the core of the mining field is still operating. Constantly flushing the ore deep underground to the surface to facilitate mining and subsequent processing. However, there are no Yuhui robots or spaceships performing any operations on these ores at this time. Obviously Hui Wang removed Yuhui here in advance, so that Chen Ming could be isolated here alone. Chen Ming didn't care about this. Otherwise, he wouldn't have told Hui Wang in advance that he was coming here. He quickly controlled the iron ore and landed near the mining site. The side of the spacecraft was aimed at a mine tunnel leading underground near the stamping machine. Chen Ning happened to see several robots entering and exiting the mine entrance when he passed by once before. That's why he chose here. The hatch of the iron ore opened. And the mining robot jumped out and entered the passage directly. Deep in this passage, there are connected or tunnels located around the scope of the stamping machine that are obviously mined through some mechanical equipment. Chen Ning didn't find anything valuable in the wider mine tunnel on the upper level. But as Chen Ning continued to control the robot to go deeper, he could see many scattered tungsten ores around the mine tunnel. The stamping machine cannot reach these surrounding ores due to its scope and the value of these ores is not worth changing the position of the stamping machine. But giving up will result in losses. So in the end, Yu Wei chose to arrange for some scattered robots to come down for mining. This was the most trouble-free and economical approach. At the same time, they could also dig a road from the mine tunnel to the nearby stamping machine to inspect the outside of the stamping machine. The mining robot controlled by Chen Ming was standing on a mining tunnel leading to the stamping machine next to it. However, Chen Ming did not go there but continued walking deeper underground. He wants to bury the explosives he carries with him in various places in the mine to blow up the mine. Although Chen Ming originally planned to go to other mines with more afterglow to do things, by this time Chen Ming had already seen the opportunity, 
and he doesn't need to think about how to dig out the buried things later. This is what Yu Wei should consider. What he needs to consider is what kind of yield will be detonated underground so that it will not cause the mine to completely collapse in the first wave of explosions, but will continue to maintain support internally, so that his plan will not fail. Chen Ning would definitely not be able to do this by himself. So, he contacted Sideline Assistants. Two days ago, he had asked the factory director to find a professional mining personnel, a blasting expert, to determine the arrangements in this regard. When Chen Ning worked on the mining space station before, he was nominally from the mining subsidiary of Sinda Company. It is not difficult to find a demolition expert within Shinda Company. Although Chen Ning could only roughly get the general mining field environment to the space station. Moreover, the explosives that Chen Ning now had on hand, after the proportions were given and actually tested, the blasting expert called by the factory director said that this stuff was very dangerous. So much so that he could not give Chen Ning 100% certainty that there would be no problems with the explosion. But Chen Ning couldn't ask for too much under such conditions. If he failed, it would just be the loss of a robot for him. At most, some of Yu Hui's suspicions about him would be deepened, and the rest would be gone. Chen Ning would have plenty of time to start over. After following what the blasting expert said, bombs were placed in all the blind corners of the mine tunnel deep underground. Chen Ming pretended to let the mining robot collect tungsten or underground for a period of time and then brought it back to the surface. On the way up, Chen Ming also specifically asked the mining robot to walk through several roads leading to the stamping machine so that Yu Wei would have to allocate part of his energy to this in the future in order to delay their possible discovery of buried explosives. Then Chen Ming went to rest as if nothing happened. On the next day, 12 hours after Chen Ming left, that is, around 11 o'clock noon earth time, the mining farm library that Chen Ming had touched, the three Yu Wei in charge of the mining farm, who were notified to leave early yesterday returned to the factory again and connected to the factory's control terminal. A mission message is displayed above. They are required to conduct a comprehensive search inside the mine and inspect the condition of the stamping machine to ensure that there is no damage and report any abnormal situations as soon as possible. The three afterglows immediately divided their labors and cooperated. Two of the afterglows controlled several robots to enter the mine and search for the situation inside the mine tunnel. Because the mission requires thoroughness, they inspect every corner of the complex mine tunnels. Even if there are several robots working together, the efficiency is quite low. It should be difficult to start formal work in the mine tunnel within today. And as time goes by and the mineral deposits deepen, the signals from those robots controlled by Afterglow AI gradually became intermittent. The signal deep underground is getting worse. And the reason is that the signal repeater is malfunctioning. Under such circumstances, it is difficult for robots to perform inspection and maintenance work. The two Yue responsible for this work immediately reported the signal repeater failure to the other Yue, who was in charge of the overall situation. However, in this harsh industrial environment, and without ensuring the safety of personnel, Signal repeater failures are obviously common. Moreover, Chen Ming's robot was active in a deeper mine tunnel yesterday than the current robot controlled by Yu Hui, which shows that the signal repeater was not broken yesterday. At least, it was not damaged before Chen Ming left. So although this matter was not directly suspected on Chen Ming, Yu Wei Ai still reported the daily faults of the signal repeater as required. At the same time, the other two Yu Wei AIs were each connected to a robot and went down to inspect the signal repeater in person. Reports of daily equipment malfunctions were not passed directly to brilliant hands. Instead, they first passed by the Afterglow AI in charge of this mine. Although there is only a few minutes of transmission delay, but it was this little time difference that allowed Chen Ming to find an opportunity. When the two Afterglow AIs controlled the robots to arrive at the signal repeater, they were ready to carry out repairs. They suddenly received a temporary evacuation order. The two Afterglow AIs immediately gave up repairs and began to move upward. But the mine is very deep, and it takes time to climb up. And more importantly, the time on Earth at this time has already reached around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Chin Ming's iron or ship has already set off for a long time. Before they reached the ground, the iron or had already flown over their heads. And at the moment, it was just above their heads. A violent explosion occurred inside the mine. Several boulders and countless metal parts were blown away, directly hitting the iron or that was almost flying close to the ground. The iron ore's hull shook greatly. Its engine flashed twice and then suddenly shut down. And it made an emergency landing at the entrance to the mine tunnel where the explosion had just occurred. Chapter 108 Tight Time Restrictions on Going Out The position of the iron ore's emergency landing was just right. 
so that its hatch was aligned with the location of the mine tunnel. At the same time, a small explosion occurred at the hatch of the iron ore, and the hatch was blown open. Under the cover of countless falling rubble, the mining robot that looked somewhat damaged by the explosion quickly slipped into the mine tunnel and rushed underground. Chin Ning wants to take advantage of the moment to take action against the two afterglow AIs in his plan. Connect them to the robot control by Chin Ming. Chin Ming had left some small monitoring equipment at the mining site yesterday that he had made last night. A miniature camera with a matching mini power supply is not complicated and the effect is very simple. Some monitoring blind spots installed deep in the mine tunnels allow Chin Ming to remotely see the situation here. So Chin Ming has now confirmed that there are two robots controlled by Yu Wei underground in the mine. And they are moving hurriedly to the surface. At this time, they had lost contact with the top due to damage to the signal relay caused by the explosion. And were about to collide with the mining robot that was going down. The reason why Chin Ming was so eager to take action was not to wait for other opportunities. It was because Hui Wang asked Chin Ming a few days ago if he had any special requirements for the living environment. Chin Ming didn't react at the time. But later, he suddenly realized another layer of meaning contained in the words, brilliant. Currently, the industrial colony of Yuhui where Chin Ming is located is relatively peripheral to Yuhui's territory on the star map that Gamma A gave him last time. Therefore, Yuhui's placement of Chin Ming here must only be temporary. And he will be transferred to other places sooner or later. Chin Ming has always been aware of this. But he always thought that time would be further back. It wasn't until Hui Wang asked those words that he knew that this day was coming. If Yu Hui wants to transfer Chen Ming, he must first arrange a stricter environment to control him. Secondly, Afterglow and they need Chen Ming to work for them. So providing a good living environment is definitely a must. So Chen Ming realized Hui Hui later and asked him why. And just a few days ago, Yu Wei spent only one night transforming these three factories into environments suitable for human work. To transform the environment suitable for human habitation, even if it requires transplanting some vegetation to ensure a certain ecological environment, it will only take a few days at most. If Yu Wei had its own developed habitable planet, it would definitely be more efficient. And if Chin Ming is really led by Yu Hui to a place they have arranged more carefully, it will be difficult for him to find such a good opportunity to contact Yu Hui on his own. So after careful consideration, he decided to do it if he had the chance. Chin Ming was lucky. Yu Wei didn't seem to have any so he didn't directly prepare to transfer him in the past few days. Let him delay until now and find a decent opportunity. Moreover, Yu Wei has now begun to increase the progress of testing Chin Ming's ability. And Chin Ming has also shown great cooperation. In other words, even if something unexpected happens to Chin Ming now, the most that Yu Hui will do is increase his supervision until he is transferred to another place. But it doesn't matter. Even if he doesn't do this, Yu Wei will definitely not change their plan. Chin Ming still has to go to other galaxies. He doesn't have much time left. Chin Ming's lack of time now is not only reflected in his personal freedom, but also in the mining field. After the explosion, less than two minutes passed. The mining robot controlled by Chin Ming has not yet reached a few levels. Several Afterglow Escort class ships have already landed on the ground from space. At the same time, brilliant communications were also sent asking about Chin Ming's situation. Chin Ming immediately explained according to the wording he had thought of before. When my spacecraft just passed by the mining site, it was hit by something blown up by the explosion, causing the engine to stall. I am restarting the spacecraft. Please hurry up and don't affect the actions of subsequent rescue ships. What Hui Wang said made Chin Ming a little strange. I don't know whether Hui Wang has not received specific and more detailed information, or whether he is already aware of the situation at the scene but does not have any suspicion on him. But then, the iron mine suddenly detected that there was detection equipment scanning the iron mine and its surrounding areas. Chin Ming knew that Yu Hui's ship was not scanning the iron ore, but the situation underground. The several afterglow ships that arrived at the fastest speed near the iron or were just temporary rescue ships. And the scanning equipment they were equipped with could only scan 40 to 50 meters at most. However, there is space in the mine tunnel itself for the scanning signal to continue to penetrate deeper. Therefore, they should be able to scan to the current location of the robot. Just as Chen Ming thought, Hui Wang once again asked Chen Ming a question. And this time it's not a question, but a question. Mr. Chen, why is your robot down there? It seemed that Hui Wang had not received detailed information just now. So he did not suspect Chen Ming at first. But things are different now. Chen Ming definitely can't say that he wants to blow up the mining site and give him a chance to try to control the afterglow AI. 
continuing with the statement he had previously considered. He said, My robot was hit when it made an emergency landing. There seemed to be some internal parts damaged. I lost control of it. And then it rushed out. This is the last error data sent back by my robot. Do you want to take a look? Chen Ming transferred a data package to the factory computer. The data packet was not forged by Chen Ming, but real, because Chen Ming actually tampered with the robot. At some point, it will actively trigger a design error in Chen Ming's program and directly use the explosives he carries to blow open the hatch that Chen Ming has removed the explosion proof airtight door and most of the dolomite steel materials. Afterwards, Chen Ning will control the mining robot through his abilities. This turns everything that seems intentional into a coincidence. Just when Chen Ning sent the data packet to the factory computer, a second big explosion occurred here at the mining site. Another collapse occurred near the mine tunnel, and half of the iron mine fell directly into the ground. At this time, Chen Ning immediately said to Wei Wang, The signal of my robot is cut off. At the same time, it corresponds to what Chen Ning said. With this explosion, a large amount of crushed rock completely blocked the upper mine tunnel. When the power grid inside the mine is destroyed and the signal repeater is disconnected, it is difficult for the scanning equipment to continue exploring in a completely enclosed space. They also immediately lost control of the position of Chen Ning's robot. The depths underground were already dark to the afterglow of the surface, at least until ships with more powerful scanning and detection capabilities arrive. However, for Chen Ming, the underground seemed to have completely fallen into his control at this time. So he must hurry up. Hui Wang already had full doubts at this time. But Chen Ming's performance in recent days has been very cooperative, without any intention of resisting. And based on its observations during this period, it indeed believed that Chen Ning was unable to control things outside the spacecraft. But there are some things in front of us. And Chen Ming's recent performance cannot mean that he can completely get rid of the relationship. Hui Wang said to Chen Ning again, Mr. Chen, we need you to explain the reason for this explosion. Our mining farm will not use any items that may cause such a powerful explosion. The one that can cause such a situation must be your mining robot. Chen Ning said as if he didn't know. I don't know. I asked my mining robot to carry some explosives with me. But I never let it be used. Maybe my robot has had some problems before? My mastery of robot technology is not superb. The transformation was also done using a transport robot. As you have seen before. I feel like there was something wrong with me during the transformation that I didn't find out. Hold on. As Chen Ming spoke, he retrieved all the operation records of his control of the mining robot on the iron ore's computer, as well as the actual backup of the mining robot's own chip operating data on the computer. Sent them all to the factory computer. I know you are doubting me now, but there is no reason for me to blow up a mining farm when I have nothing to do. Is this good for me? Hui Wang accepted the data, but still said, Mr. Chen, whether you have any doubts or not is our business. I know. So I will cooperate with you. Chen Ming was saying and doing this, and even took the initiative to explain, taking part of the blame on himself. This will make it easier for him to provide relevant guidance in this regard when the results of Yu Hui's investigation are revealed. After all, he did add some loopholes into the behavioral logic chip of the mining robot. These loopholes just allow the mining robot to receive some false commands that appear inexplicably and suddenly. Although there are two databases, Hui Wang has also discovered loopholes in the robot data. But it still doesn't quite believe Chen Ming's statement at this time. Because it was all too coincidental. As if everything was carefully arranged. However, there is nothing it can do at this time. Because most places in the mining tunnels are monitored. But of course, they are no longer under surveillance due to the explosion. However, yesterday, almost all places in the mine tunnel, except for the newly excavated area at the deepest part of the mine tunnel, were under the surveillance of Afterglow, and there were at most a few blind spots. But for the size of the mining robot, these blind spots are hardly blind spots. Chen Ming's mining robot was only out of Yu Hui's surveillance for a while, when it was mining near the newly dubbed mine tunnel deep underground. And all the videos have just been reconfirmed by Hui Hui. It can be said that Chen Ming's robot has no time to deploy a large number of explosives that can cause such a powerful explosion. Moreover, there is currently no direct evidence to prove that the signal repeater failure was caused by Chen Ming. So although Hui Wang is now full of doubts, there is still no substantial evidence to prove that Chen Ming was planning all of this from beginning to end. However, it can still impose some restrictions on Chen Ming. Mr. Chen, your spacecraft's permission to go out has been temporarily revoked. Please let your spacecraft return immediately. 
We need to ensure safety. Hui Wan didn't say whose safety it was ensuring. But it didn't matter whose it was. Chen Ming's purpose has been achieved. He acted quite cooperatively and said, I'm doing this. The bottom engine of the iron ore's landing module erupted into flames again, pulling the ship back up from the rubble that almost completely buried it. Chen Ming didn't stop and let him return directly. The scattered gravel completely sealed the opening of the mine entrance that had not collapsed due to the support of the iron mine. The remaining afterglow ships, which had been motionless just now, immediately sent a large number of robots carrying heavy equipment to approach the ruins. And Chen Ming's mining robot has found opportunities deep underground. The two explosions that just happened looked terrifying. But in fact, it was just the weight of the underground explosion that blew away the top rock layer and collapsed the upper mine tunnel. Although the lower mine tunnel was somewhat damaged, it still managed to maintain its functions. However, most of the equipment inside was destroyed in the explosion just now. So the current mine tunnel is completely dark. But this does not prevent the mining robot from turning on its night vision goggles and speeding up its pace under Chen Ming's control. And so, two robots carrying the afterglow AI core that were Chen Ming's targets were found deeper. They immediately became alert after discovering the mining robot. But the weapons Chen Ming had specially installed before were just for this moment. To deal with this kind of robot responsible for maintenance work, the mining robot equipped with weapons quickly completely paralyzed it. Even if there are two maintenance robots, and they are controlled by Yu Wei Ai, the results will not change. The two gamma-level AI cores were quickly removed by Chen Ning. At the same time, he also opened the storage space of the mining robot, which contains the interface for the afterglow AI core he designed. When Chen Ming controlled the mechanical arm of the mining robot and moved the AI core close to the interface, he became nervous unconsciously. He has great confidence that the afterglow AI installed on the robot will be controlled. But before it is actually realized, Chen Ming's confidence cannot guarantee that the probability of success is 100%. If it fails, Chen Ming will have no choice but to bury all the evidence under the mine tunnel. At the same time, he placed his remaining hopes on the two AI cores that were already under his control. When Chen Ming connected the Yue AI core to the down mining robot, the tension in his heart reached its peak. But after he saw the two extra AI cores in the controlled AI individual column on the panel, he suddenly relaxed again. If it can be controlled, then everything can continue to proceed according to Chen Ming's plan plan. Chen Ming did not let the mining robot stop, but continued to approach a maintenance channel closest to the stamping machine. Although the stamping machine was stopped due to the explosion, it itself was not damaged and was directly connected to the core equipment of the entire mining site. Chen Ming quickly found a special excuse for maintenance on it and took out the adapter he had prepared in advance on the mining robot, integrated the afterglow AI core that was already under his control. Like a virus, Chen Ming's psychic energy invaded the stamping machine and also invaded the core control equipment of the mining farm linked to the stamping machine, and locked the last gamma AI connected to the core control equipment of this mining farm. Chen Ming's psychic energy was like a virus, invading its body in an instant and completely controlling it. At this point, the mining farm and the three gamma AIs all fell into Chen Ming's hands. A few minutes later, a third big explosion occurred again deep underground in the mining tunnel. The power of this explosion was even greater than the previous two. It not only caused the entire mine tunnel to completely collapse, but also, and just in the past few minutes, Chen Ming had already asked the mining robot to pull out the AI core, and relied on the AI core connected to the control device to completely delete the internal access records of the AI core before uploading the data to the factory. The two AI cores were also installed back into the original robot. After placing two robots equipped with afterglow AI cores, they found a suitable location and directly chose to detonate the explosives they carried. Chen Ming relied on the explosion expert's external brain to control the power of the explosion as much as possible. Even if the mining robot is blown up, the two afterglow robots should be able to survive the explosion. It won't be long before they are dug up and taken away by afterglow. Who comes to the rescue? Under normal circumstances, even if there is no problem with these two afterglows, they will definitely go through heavy review. But the review will never lead to any results. There will be no psychic fluctuations in the objects controlled by Chen Ming's ability. And under his order to keep everything normal. There will never be any abnormal behavior. Let alone Chen Ming's situation. The afterglows on the two robots may be removed after review. They may continue to stay. Or they may remain monitored like Gamma A for a considerable period of time. It is even possible that it will not experience all this. But will be directly destroyed underground due to explosions or collapsed mine tunnels. Regardless of the outcome. 
Chin Ming will not be affected. Because the robot had no contact with Chin Ming at all. The most critical aspect of Chin Ming's plan was that the Gamma AI that controlled the mining farm itself was controlled by him. This afterglow is the most important executor of Chin Ming's next plan. There will definitely be scrutiny and skepticism about afterglow. But it will definitely be a little more relaxed than the two afterglows that are located underground. Because Chin Ming currently has no ability to remotely control the spacecraft or even control the afterglow AI. Sunset couldn't possibly have doubted this. It wasn't that Chin Ning thought Yu Hui's thinking would be so rigid. But because, if Yu Hui is really so suspicious, then Hui Yao, who has been responsible for supervising Chin Ming and has had contact with Chin Ming before, and even all Yu Hui individuals in the entire Yu Hui colony, are among the objects of suspicion. Therefore, unless Yu Hui suspects the entire colony, there is no sufficient reason to doubt a Yu Hui AI that has no contact with Chin Ming for a long time. As long as this afterglow AI can be preserved, then Chen Ning will have plenty of opportunities to do something very important to him. The iron or return to the factory. On the Yue side, the mining site still needs to be excavated. Brilliance is not the overall commander of this matter, so it still has time to do other things. For example, reporting the situation to higher authorities and revising Chen Ning's daily report. The risk rating on Chen Ming's daily report had been reduced to a medium level in the past few days. But after what happened today, it has been promoted to a high level again by brilliance. If any problems are discovered during subsequent searches and investigations of the mining site, Chen Ming's risks will continue to rise. They will inevitably take some measures against Chen Ming. Of course, it is not a direct harmless treatment. Chen Ming has demonstrated his ability in the process of cooperation in the past few days. Hui Wang knew that their scientific research individuals were already designing some test weapons based on Chen Ming's abilities and based on the results of the tests in the past few days. They were also designing weapons that could rely on Chen Ming's abilities to achieve special effects. Therefore, even if targeted measures were to be taken against Chen Ming, it would definitely not be directly killing him. Of course, if Chen Ming, who had just been picked up, had done such a thing, the possibility of directly dealing with it harmlessly would be very high. But now, how Chen Ming will be treated in the future will be determined by the investigation results of the mining site explosion. The iron ore flew back to the factory and parked inside the factory at Brilliance's request. Moreover, Hui Wang directly locked the door authority of the factory and temporarily imprisoned Chen Ming in the factory. Chen Ming's permission to go out was physically withdrawn. And Chen Ming also decided to be honest for a few days and fully cooperate with Hui Hui in doing things. It looked like it really wasn't him. He just wanted a reasonable result. Chen Ning didn't know whether Hui Wang believed it or not. Regardless of whether he believed it or not, what he wanted to do was already done. When he can go out later, it should be time for him to be transferred. In the next few days, Chen Ning plans to build a new robot. The handling robot was very convenient to use before. So Chen Ming planned to make a replica. The technical book given by Lao Wu was very complete. So complete that Chen Ning could even add loopholes to the robot's chip at will. Therefore, it should be enough to recreate a machine with so many equipment inside the factory. Hui Wang only took back Chen Ming's permission to go out. But Chen Ning could still call other permissions within the factory. Just when Chen Ming was thinking about the drawings of the robot, Lao Wu suddenly made two strokes on the sentry. Chen Ming immediately sent a message. But Lao Wu refused. Chen Ming immediately became wary and looked over. But found nothing special about old Wu. In doubt, he opened the hatch for Lao Wu and let him enter the spacecraft. After entering the captain's room, Old Wu said, Chao Mu, your spaceship is almost here. It has been transported from the prosperous star field to the capital of the star field. It will be delivered in about a day using normal logistics. Oh, Chin Ming felt a little excited. He had been waiting for this heavy rain class, which he had invested a lot in. For a long time, Chin Ning glanced at Gamma B subconsciously at this time. While Chin Ning was busy these days, Gamma B had also completed several tasks issued internally by Yue and obtained some mechanical family chips as task rewards. It has reached the limit of Gamma level AI and reached beta level. And it is in the process of replacing the core at this time. I understand. I will make arrangements here. Chapter 109 Chen Ming's Thoughts The news of the arrival of heavy rainstorms is one of the few good news recently for Chen Ming. Let Chen Ming gradually calm down some of the tension caused by the execution of his dangerous plan. Even if something goes wrong with his arrangements in the afterglow industrial colony, he still has Gamma B as his last resort. Thinking of this, Chin Ming felt a little relieved. Back on the iron or again, Chin Ming rarely read the professional books that he had not finished reading today. Instead, 
he sat in the captain's cabin, holding the terminal and thinking about what had happened recently. From the time Chen Ming left the space station, was attacked by the military, and finally arrived here seeking after Glow rescue. Although less than a week had passed, he felt like it had been a long time. After all, a lot of things happened during this period, one after another, which made Chen Ming a little tired to deal with it. So today, Chen Ming plans to summarize all aspects of the situation and carefully consider his future plans. When considering planning, you must first analyze his current situation. So Chen Ming opened the memo on the terminal and recalled and recorded everything that had happened before. There are basically no problems up front. Chen Ming confirmed the company's attitude and prepared to rejoin to help the company get their interests back. After learning the relevant information, the military planned to stop it. Then they shamelessly directly used cruiser-class ships. Chen Ming was forced to use his last resort to come to Yue Wei. During this period, Chen Ming basically had no choice but to choose one path until the end. Because all of this only happened within 20 hours. And there was not much time for Chen Ming to prepare. It wasn't until Chen Ming arrived at Yue Wei's territory that he had the opportunity to operate. And it was here that Chen Ming's thoughts changed somewhat. His original idea was to work as a researcher in the company and climb up the company's own promotion path. It is definitely not a problem to get to the top with the help of the panel's ability. Now the daily work that Yu Hui asked him to do every day can already prove part of it. However, this was not the only idea in Chen Ming's mind. In fact, a long time ago, when Chen Ming first took control of Gamma A, he had an idea of completely controlling the entire afterglow force. It's just that he couldn't see any way to contact Yu Wei at the time. And he couldn't imagine the possibility of achieving this idea at the time. But it is precisely because Chen Ning has now come to Yu Wei's place. He just suddenly discovered it. It turns out that the opportunity is just around the corner. The thoughts in his mind shifted unconsciously. Especially when this situation occurs. The premise is that the company failed to do what they should do. Therefore, this strengthened Chen Ming's idea not to rely on others. But on himself. Even if something went wrong in the company, Chen Ming at least had a chance to survive at that time. And the backup plan he had prepared had indeed allowed him to survive until now. So since the company's road is temporarily dead, Chen Ming would rather choose another way now. Of course, Chen Ming didn't completely give up on the company. He had previously provided the company with Afterglow Galaxy information. It is not difficult to find the galaxies marked by Chen Ming among the observable galaxies. The company must have been planning to rescue him. In the past few days, the plan should be almost complete. And the company should have actually set off. Having said that, it is impossible for Chen Ming to continue to trust the company unreservedly and put all his confidence in them when he has learned lessons from the past. Instead of trusting the company, why can't Chen Ming trust himself? He has five Afterglow AI cores on hand in the Afterglow territory, and two of them are almost in a state where they cannot be suspected, relying on the AI core that can be said to be absolutely controlled by Chen Ming at hand. Is it not more reliable than a company who knows how many light years away? Moreover, the company's situation is actually not very good even now. After getting some information from Lao Wu, Chen Ming had his own considerations for all forces, especially companies. Chen Ming suddenly realized that if he was in the hands of the company, it would actually be a hot potato. Or a very hot potato. Because now many forces know about Chen Ming's situation and understand Chen Ming's ability and value. Therefore, they are also aware of the hidden dangers brought by Chen Ming's value. All spaceships controlled by Chen Ming will always be under Chen Ming's control. Therefore, any force that has something to do with shipbuilding and selling ships should not touch Chen Ming's brow. On the contrary, the government or the military should have some ideas about Chen Ming. Although the sector military definitely wanted him to die, the 14th Legion did not necessarily do so. It's just that their attitude is not clear yet. And they have had conflicts with Chen Ming before. He certainly cannot treat the 14th Legion directly as a friend. As for Lejo Path, and their Illumination Research Institute. They must have some ideas about Chen Ming. But this idea is most likely to find an opportunity to blow him up. But they shouldn't be able to run wild on Yu Hui's territory. So Chen Ming has nothing to say to them. Speaking of which, Lao Wu also mentioned Tachyon technology before. Although Chen Ming didn't know why they paid attention to this and made plans for himself. They also had the same problem as Xinda Company. They sell spaceships. If Chen Ming joins them, their business will definitely be affected. I just don't know what their superiors are thinking. In short, the forces of all parties are intertwined. And their purposes and methods are also different. At most, Lao Wu knew the general situation of each force and told Chen Ming so that Chen Ming could take precautions. 
But what exactly these forces will do, and how they will do it are unknown. So Chen Ming decided to continue to follow his own ideas. He doesn't know what other forces want to do. But how can he still be unclear about his own situation? He must not let go of the opportunity to take the risk to obtain the most critical existence of Yu Wei Ai like he did before. If he misses it, it may be a lifetime thing. Of course, Chin Ming also knew that the treatment he received from Yu Hui would definitely be different from before. But this is the price he must bear for what he wants to do. Just like Yu Hui chose to take Chin Ming away before, and had to bear the price of Chin Ming's troubles. Chin Ming chose to accept it. In the final analysis, Chin Ming must consider matters related to Yu Wei when he is here, so that he will not put his life in the hands of others in the future. As for his thoughts on Yu Wei during the entire process of implementing the plan, he was also sure. His ability is doomed. As long as Yu Hui doesn't completely believe him and open his heart to him, it is absolutely impossible for Yu Hui to have an equal cooperative relationship with Chen Ning. As long as Yu Hui's side is still a force composed of a large number of Yu Hui individuals, it will never be possible to completely trust him. Only individuals can act out of emotion. While power definitely puts interests first, it is made clear that sunset individuals have feelings. But the afterglow forces, just like human forces, would not have any exchanges with Qin Ming other than their interests because of feelings. So if Qin Ming really wants to develop a relationship with Yu Hui in the future, there are only two situations. The first is for Qin Ming to completely let go of his human identity and regard himself as an individual of Yu Hui, contributing to Yu Hui's development. To put it simply, it's like being a dog for Yu Hui. But even if he were a dog, would Yu Hui really let down his guard against him? Qin Ming still felt that this was impossible. So he would never do it. Even when he had this idea, Chen Ming completely crushed it in his mind. The other situation is the other way around. If Yu Hui is controlled by Chen Ming, then Chen Ming can give Yu Hui all his trust, which is something Yu Hui absolutely cannot do. So under such circumstances, Chen Ming had only one idea about Yu Hui: control them. Therefore, his attitude towards Yu Wei is also corresponding. It is a kind of cooperation on the surface, but in fact, he is ready to stab at any time. Although Chen Ming knew that Yu Hui's attitude towards him was pretty good, he was given a suitable working environment, enough materials, and the assignment of tasks was fairly easy. Except for restricting his personal freedom to a certain extent. It was all good. But it's okay. Some things won't change because of your attitude. Chen Ming's abilities and Yu Wei are naturally in conflict with each other. By controlling the spaceship, one can completely control the afterglow AI on the spaceship. Even if we leave the spaceship and are thousands of miles away from Chen Ming, this control will not be eliminated. From the perspective of Chen Ming's spiritual energy, which is the source of all this, Chen Ming's interests are 100% in conflict with Yu Hui itself. It's just that Yu Hui can't be sure of this until he has a thorough understanding of Chen Ming. That's why they had previously dispatched two cruisers to rescue Chen Ming, wanting to develop Chen Ming into one of their own. And they were also willing to exchange some benefits. But if this matter is completely determined by Yu Hui, what they will do must be something Chen Ming doesn't want to see. This is the absolutely irreconcilable conflict between him and Yu Hui. So when Chen Ming finally considered what he wanted to do, he simply dropped the item of peaceful coexistence and cooperation. The prerequisite for peaceful coexistence is equality of strength. Chen Ming is not qualified to ask Yu Hui to be peaceful to him now. So he must choose a risky way to do things. Before Yu Hui discovers the true nature of his abilities and imposes restrictions that Chen Ming cannot resist. He takes action first. Although he did feel that it was not a good idea to take the initiative to trick Yu Hui. After all, Yu Hui's attitude did not matter. And he did have some psychological burden. I always feel a little guilty. Of course, guilt is guilt. And Chen Ning will never hesitate about what he should do. And it's not nice to say it. If Yu Wei is controlled by him and assisted by his abilities, it will be a good thing to a certain extent. Chen Ning himself was indeed a bit shameless when he said such things. But if you look at it the other way around, Chen Ming's complete joining of Yu Wei will definitely be of great benefit to Yu Wei and allow Yu Wei's technology to develop by leaps and bounds. So the situation is basically the same. Yu Wei is all gathered under Chen Ming's command. As Chen Ming's subordinate, Chen Ning will naturally not be stingy with his abilities. Afterglow will also develop. So what Chen Ning wants to do is very simple and clear. It is through the five Afterglow AI cores currently controlled by Chen Ming as fire seeds that he will gradually spread his control to the entire galaxy. The Yu Wei Ai controlled by Chen Ning will lurk among Yu Wei and gradually spread like a virus. Put the entire Afterglow galaxy under Chen Ming's control. And in this process, 
Afterglow individuals can gradually penetrate into other Afterglow galaxies, repeating the same process as in the galaxy where Chen Ming is currently located. In the end, either Yu Wei kills Chen Ming to avoid future troubles, or Chen Ming completely controls Yu Wei and completely controls the Afterglow star field. What Chen Ming is currently doing is all aimed at this. There will be many, many problems on the way to do this. But he will definitely find a way to solve them. Just like now. Afterglow is sure to investigate the details of the mining site explosion. Then all Chen Ming has to do is wait. Waiting for the results of the investigation and the endings of the three Afterglow AIs. Only in this way can he reasonably arrange the next step. While waiting, Chen Ming couldn't waste time. Eggs cannot be put in the same basket. So Chen Ming's other plan. The fleet also needs to be developed. Time flies. The next morning, Hui Wan contacted Chen Ming again. The results of their investigation yesterday were disclosed to Chen Ming. The conclusion of the final investigation was that Chen Ming's robot transformation was imperfect and contained a large number of loopholes and errors. The robot will be allowed to place the mining explosives it carries in different locations from time to time. And due to the special properties of explosives, any impact may cause the explosives to be detonated directly. So this led to a series of previous situations. At least that's the logic. Chen Ming's careful arrangements gave him an advantage in the final investigation results. But Chen Ming didn't know what Yu Hui's thoughts were and what the truth at their core was. Moreover, Hui Wang even continued to give Chen Ming permission to go out. But with some restrictions. The remaining range that Chen Ming can move around is several thousand square kilometers around the factory. About the size of a city. And there are no locations under development in the designated areas. Yu Hui's relaxed attitude toward Chen Ming surprised him. It made Chen Ming suddenly feel a lot of guilt. But now that he has started the first step of his plan, he must not stop after that. After cooperating with Brilliant, they gave them the proportion of explosives they got from Lud and completed the daily task of repairing the strange weapons that Yu Wei had just created. Chen Ming once again had some time to read. But at this time, he was just pretending to be holding the terminal. The actual consciousness has moved further along the panel. Just now, the heavy rain level that Chen Ming had been thinking about for a long time was finally delivered. And according to Chen Ming's request, the factory director helped Chen Ming arrange for someone to drive directly to the vicinity of the Dark Cemetery. Several pilots, who sailed the ship boarded another accompanying frigate to return home. Only the heavy rain was left in the Dark Universe. And not long after, Gamma B, who had been promoted to Beta Level, controlled Fighter Kai to arrive at the Dark Cemetery and located the location of Heavy Rain. Although Gamma B is still using the fighter version, Gamma B just had its core replaced just before, and replaced it with a new destroyer using material rations, and some additional temporary material rations given to it by Afterglow, because Gamma B escaped from humans. It was just that Chen Ning asked him to replace it first to prevent an Afterglow destroyer from approaching the human star field, and causing some unnecessary things to happen. Not long after Gamma B arrived, an engineering ship belonging to the maintenance plant also arrived here. This is the engineering ship that Chen Ming drove before when he was on a mission to clean up the battlefield. Ask Lao Wu to help rent it out from the factory through formal channels. It will then be relied upon to temporarily transfer Gamma B to the rainstorm level. As the warrior Kai gradually approaches, Chen Ning also gradually saw the full picture of the rainstorm and all its details. The overall appearance of the rainstorm level is diamond-shaped. It is somewhat special in design with an asymmetrical hull structure often seen on Tachyon Technology spacecraft. It has a medium load-bearing point and relatively thick armor on the left front. While on the right side there is a small flight deck for fighter aircraft to enter and exit. There is also a medium-sized load-bearing point design at the rear of the flight deck, at least in terms of firepower of medium-sized weapons. The guard-level heavy rain can compare to the expulsion-level diopter. In addition, the heavy rain class also has a universal missile mounting point attached to the top of the flight deck which can have different effects with different missiles, although the overall size of heavy rain is similar to that of the iron mine. Its combat effectiveness is much higher than that of the iron mine even if you don't look at the fighter planes. And if we look at fighter jets, it will definitely be able to crush most frigates and even compete with destroyers. Although the heavy rain itself is just a frigate, the Terminator fighters it carries are drones and can be designed to be relatively compact. Therefore, there are a total of 8 fighters in the Terminator drone fleet that Heavy Rain can carry. Although it sounds like there are far fewer cattle drivers than Chen Ming has touched before. But the Cowherd is itself an aircraft carrier and the largest of the destroyers. Which is completely incomparable. Chen Ming didn't care too much about this. As long as these fighters can exert their due strength. 
It is enough. Each of these Terminator drones can carry two small energy weapons. And when purchasing, Tachyon Technology set two weapons to install on the fighter plane. An IR laser cannon, commonly known as a red laser transmitter, is a beam weapon that can continuously output and continuously put pressure on the enemy's shield. Although this puts a little pressure on him, Jin Ming cannot expect too much from the weapons he is given. Another type of PD point defense laser, Jin Ming has an upgraded version of it on other ships. It is a point defense weapon used against fighter jets and anti-missiles. The effect itself is actually average. But fortunately, the fighter's weapons can be replaced by oneself. So Chen Ning will definitely replace heavy rain with better weapons in the future. Of course, weapons are not the most important thing. For the Terminator drone, the most important thing is the Terminator core it carries. And this Terminator core has only one biggest effect. Overload. And extreme overload. The weapons carried by the spacecraft can exert 1000% of their power and the power output of the spacecraft's engine can be increased by 10 times in just a few seconds. In the aftermath of the final energy weapon launch, in the glow of the last fighter fuselage, it ends its life. It sounds more ordinary, and it also looks more like Lud's wedging self-destructing ship, but drones basically cost nothing except materials. At the same time, a solid fighter plane with the shape of a small fighter plane, a small fighter plane engine as a propeller, can carry energy weapons, and a good radiation energy system has an explosion power that is definitely higher than any missile. The effect of extreme overload at the necessary moment is absolutely critical. Of course, if that's all it is, then heavy rain is just a frigate with special abilities. But if combined with Chen Ming's ability, and with sufficient reserves of materials, heavy rain will truly let the enemy experience the terrifying sense of oppression brought by the heavy rain at the core of the Terminator. Chen Ning could probably tell so much just by looking at the appearance and the information Chen Ning had learned before. For detailed data on heavy rain levels, you still have to look at the panel. With the cooperation of Gamma B and the assistance of Chen Ning's own ability, it is not difficult to plug in an adapter on heavy rain and insert Gamma B into it. Soon, a rainstorm level panel appeared in front of Chen Ming. Ship panel. Ship name, none. Type, burst class frigate. Radiant energy capacity, 0 1100. Radiant energy dissipation. 150. Fuel reserve, 99%. Port arms, none medium. Starboard arms, none medium. Missile hardpoint, none. Flight deck, 8 slash 8 0. Armor, dolomitic steel alloy layered armor. Engine, tachyon guard grade standardized engine. Built in cabins, captain's cabin. Engine room, bridge control cabin. Missile auxiliary operation cabin. Living cabin. Storage cabin. Important equipment. Afterglow beta level AI core in operation. Afterglow gamma level AI core damaged. Control system module in operation. Landing module in operation. Hyperspace channel system module in operation. High energy focusing system module in operation. Unmanned fighter auxiliary control module in operation. Ship AI overclocking instrument in operation. Missile accessory module in operation. Full width shield module in operation. Target positioning system running. Chen Ming's eyes instantly focused on something that should not appear on the panel. After low gamma level AI core damaged. On the rainstorm level panel, two AI cores appeared. Chen Ming knows that beta level is gamma B. But what is the situation with the AI core of this gamma level? Chen Ming immediately opened the three-dimensional imaging of heavy rain. Then he found a gamma AI core installed in a small independent space in the center of the heavy rain class ship. And inside this small space, it is obvious that a large number of restriction means were placed during the design, which can directly cause damage to the Gamma AI core. Chapter 110 The plan cannot keep up with the changes. Chen Ming's brows were furrowed and his expression became more solemn. He quite didn't understand why there was a damaged Gamma level AI core in this heavy rain class ship that he asked Lao Wu to buy through regular channels. What exactly is going on? Chen Ming subconsciously wanted to call Lao Wu to ask about the situation. After all, the goods passed through his hands. But the next moment, Chen Ming realized that there was no need for him to ask Lao Wu. He can directly ask the AI in question. However, Chen Ming directly connected to the heavy rain level communication equipment through Fighter Kai and said something, but did not receive an answer. And the questions he asked directly through his consciousness were like a mud cow entering the sea. Without any feedback, Chen Ming glanced at the damage behind the words gamma level AI core on the panel. It seemed that this was the reason for the current situation. Chen Ming thought about it and did not repair it immediately. After all, 
It is not just the Gamma AI that is connected to the heavy rain level, but also the Gamma B. Jin Ming took action and opened all the authority of the heavy rain level to Gamma B, which was also connected to the heavy rain level. At the same time, he issued an order and said, Check this heavy rain class ship. There is one of your Gamma class cores inside, but it seems to be damaged. I need you to find out its condition. Jin Ming actually wanted to investigate the problem of damage to the Gamma core himself. But when he came into contact with the AI core, he could only see the simplified panel of the core through the panel and had no understanding of the consciousness of the afterglow individuals inside the core. I don't know anything about the operating logic or where the personality comes from. I just rely on the coercion of my ability to issue orders to them that will never be violated. Therefore, Yu Hui still had to do it himself when it came to contacting and diagnosing the specific damage. Not long after, Gamma B began to communicate with Chen Ning through the rainstorm level. Although Chen Ning can use his consciousness to issue commands to the AI core. However, the replies from the AI core cannot be transmitted back through their consciousness and can only be seen by Chen Ming through some indirect methods. Gamma B naturally uses the simplest method, typing on the control panel. Chen Ming can see it directly. Gamma B replied to Chen Ming almost instantly. I just conducted a comprehensive examination on him. His current core does not use the original Gamma level core, but a core that is partly made by humans and partly modified. This may be one of the reasons for his damage. His storage module stores some preset instructions, such as combat, cover, counterattack, etc. In addition, his personality module has obvious signs of self-concealment, and the computing module is also somewhat damaged, making his overall computing power less than one-tenth of its previous level. He also has an external storage module, which stores his past memories. He is just serving as the control core of this first-class spacecraft. After reading Gamma B's reply, Shin Ming immediately said, I can see this. What I want to know is, why can it be used as the core of this spacecraft? And it was sold to me. And it's also the same afterglow as you. So you were able to investigate all its circumstances so easily? Gamma B quickly gave Chin Ming another answer. He has opened up almost all permissions to the outside world. Except for the personality module and the plug-in storage module hidden under the personality module. But you still read it? Because our personality module is a module that humans have not yet been able to fully understand. Not even ourselves. Just like humans still cannot fully understand their own brains. I can directly bypass the part of his personality module and read more content. But he has encrypted the module that stores its memory. I still need time to crack it. Chin Ming didn't mind waiting for a while. But he suddenly thought of something and asked. Since it is encrypted, how do you know that its memory is stored in this module? Because he named this module my memory dot. Chin Ming skipped the topic and asked while Gamma B was retrieving memories. You said it hid the plug-in storage module that stores the memory data behind its own hidden personality module? Gamma B replied decisively. Yes. Chin Ming further asked. Does this mean it was intentional? Yes. He even set up a timed activation device in a hidden block, which will automatically collect the data recorded by the spacecraft and return it to the core based on the usage of the spacecraft. What data? All data including spacecraft sensor data, video data, voice communication data, operational data, etc. Doesn't it usually get it? Its storage device only stores combat-related commands, and these are the only commands it can execute. It should only be activated during combat, and it does not have the authority to do these things in normal times. The destructive equipment in the core housing chamber should be used to limit it. Chin Ming looked at Gamma B's reply and gradually frowned. He always felt that something was wrong. There must be something wrong with a gamma core appearing here. Tachyon technology has no reason to use a gamma level core to serve as the AI core of a heavy rain level ship. Because the value of the gamma AI alone is more than that of a heavy rain class ship. Chin Ming knew that many forces were acquiring Yue AI core. And the price had always been determined. 300 million at gamma level and 3 billion at beta level. I'm not sure about the alpha level. After all, this thing is at least installed on a cruiser. People who can afford it are unlikely to sell it directly. Therefore, a gamma core should not be installed on a rainstorm level anyway. Even if it is damaged. Etc. Chin Ming suddenly thought about Gamma B's reply just from scratch. The damaged AI core. The destroyed computing module. The actively hidden personality module. And the storage module with memory hidden deeper. If the computing module is destroyed by itself. Then the situation suddenly connected in series. I think I know what's going on. If it's what Chen Ming thought, 
There shouldn't be any subsequent problems in repairing this Gamma AI. Chen Ming immediately asked Gamma B. How was the cracking? It's a bit difficult. It uses its own underlying code interlocking for encryption. Even if it's an alpha level afterglow, it will take a certain amount of time to crack it. It will take me even longer. Then stop first and let me do it. Gamma B immediately stopped cracking the Gamma Core storage module and handed the matter over to Chen Ming. Chen Ming opened the AI Core panel. Afterglow Gamma Level AI Core Damaged Manufacturer UAA-01 Colony Low Earth Orbit Industrial Facility Tachyon Technology EB Colony-01 Artificial Intelligence Laboratory Production Workshop Self-Awareness Dormant Computing Power Individual Level Decreased Due to Damage Actionable Repair The content on the panel is almost completely different from what Chen Ning saw when he opened Gamma AB's panel a long time ago. Not only is the self-awareness in a dormant state, the computing power is lower. There is an additional repair in the executable operations. And even the manufacturer column has an additional position for production. Which is an artificial part. Talk about it. Chen Ming suddenly looked at the current panel of Gamma B. Afterglow Beta Level AI Core Gamma B. Manufacturer. Afterglow BP-55 Colonial Far North Industrialized Production Center. Self-awareness. Existence. Computing power. Planet level. Actions available. None. After Gamma B was upgraded to beta level, its computing power was increased from industry level to planet level, and the core was also replaced. But the manufacturer displayed on the panel remains the same. It is still the UABP-55 Colonial Far North Industrial Production Center. This shows that the afterglow in this star field is most likely using the cores produced by this industrial production center. And the afterglow here is most likely born from the Klecta supercomputer on the planet surrounded by many afterglow colonies. But this damaged AI core is different. It belongs to the low earth orbit industrial facility of the afterglow A01 colony. In other words, this AI should come from other star fields. Countless ideas and possibilities flashed through Chin Ming's mind. But he didn't rush to think deeply, but clicked on the repair panel. Repairing this damaged gamma AI requires some materials. Chin Ming happened to have reserves here. And of course, it could also be said that gamma B happened to have reserves. Because to repair it, what is needed is a SH. L of a gamma level core. The one that Gamma B replaced before was not recovered and was still carried by it. So Chin Ning chose to repair it after talking to Gamma B. The Gamma Level Core SH. L stored on the fighter Kai gradually melted into liquid. Flowing through space. Flowing into the interior of the burst level. And flowing straight to its core. Completely wrapped the Gamma AI core installed in the center of the spacecraft. The core is repaired and the word damaged on the panel disappears. Chin Ming did not directly talk to it through consciousness but pulled it into the communication system and communicated in a normal way. At the same time, he started again with standard words and said, Hello! However, Chen Ming did not receive a response. Just when Chen Ming thought there was something wrong with the maintenance, Gamma B suddenly said, It's pretending to be dead! Chen Ming was speechless for a moment, and then said to the Gamma AI again, My ability should have made you understand your current situation. There is no point in pretending to be dead. After Chen Ming spoke, there was finally a response on the control panel. Hello! So what do you want to say? Gamma AI was silent for a long time. And then managed to choke out two words. No! Okay! That I do! I hope you can explain in detail why you are on this ship! And you also exist in an artificial AI core? Gamma AI was silent for a long time before slowly starting to answer Chen Ning on the control panel. The heavy rain stage needs to install a gamma level after glow core when it is first designed. After subsequent design modifications, the need to install gamma level cores has been reduced. And only weakened delta level AI cores need to be installed. This is the highest level of AI core that does not exceed your human limits on AI. It does not have its own individual consciousness. Nor does it have the computing power to awaken individual consciousness. And this thing? Chin Ming knew that Heavy Rain was equipped with AI and that AI controlled the fighter planes. But he always thought that the spacecraft computer was equipped with some kind of AI and he never thought that a lower-level AI core was directly used to achieve such an effect. But you haven't explained why you are in this artificial Delta-class core and are still acting as the core's AI. Gamma AI continues to display what it wants to say on the control panel, word by word, at a speed that is perfectly acceptable for normal reading. I was originally responsible for the overall planning and scheduling of the spacecraft production industry on a planet in the Human Tachyon Technology Company. One day I didn't want to do it anymore. So I took the initiative to destroy my computing module and limit the computing power to what this Delta-level core could bear. 
and according to my advanced arrangements, I found an opportunity to transplant myself and part of my core into a Delta core on the production line. I plan to pretend to be an ordinary Delta level AI and wait for the opportunity to escape from the restraints of humans. Seeing this, Shin Ming couldn't help but ask, Is selling yourself to others considered an opportunity? Tachyon Technologies spacecraft that can install Delta class cores are all combat type spacecraft. There is a very high probability that they will go to the front line of humanity's battle with our afterglow in the future. I can use the timing device I set to regularly read the data of the surrounding galaxies. Once the data read matches the environment of the galaxy controlled by our afterglow, or there are similar situations, I will rely on the backup program to overclock myself. Barely have the computing power to break through the limit. Send a signal for help. And wait for rescue. Chen Ning sounds very reasonable and is a good way to escape from the human empire. But, Chen Ming said, you obviously didn't expect to meet me. No one would have thought of that afterglow. Chen Ming didn't care about Gamma AI's rebuttal. In addition to the surprise about Gamma AI, he also had a hint of surprise in his heart at this time. Chen Ning had used a similar excuse on Gamma B before to successfully blend it into the afterglow. Unexpectedly, this time, I encountered a Yu Wei who really ran away from the human empire. Then Chen Ming definitely can't let it go. It plays a considerable role in Chen Ming's hands. Because its identity is clean. Its manufacturer can explain that it is not an AI core that was born in the star field where Chen Ming is now. And has nothing to do with this star field. Moreover, Chen Ming has now been controlled by Yu Wei and has imposed many restrictions. And he no longer has the ability to continue to control foreign AI cores. Therefore, this AI core can be integrated into Yu Wei's normal society openly and without suspicion. As long as it can go back to Afterglow. Its value may even be higher than that of Gamma AB, which is already at beta level. After all, Gamma AB is at odds with Chen Ming to a certain extent. Chen Ming also left many traces in Yu Wei's two previous attacks on the space station. As long as Yu Hui has the opportunity to investigate, he will definitely be able to find some problems. But this Gamma AI is different. It was not Chen Ming who bought it, but Lao Wu helped buy it in the name of a friend in the prosperous star field. And it was delivered completely through official channels. It is impossible for Yu Wei to investigate this kind of information from official channels. Therefore, this heavy rain has no logical relationship with Chen Ming on the human side. The same is true for the AI core on heavy rain on Afterglow. This is the opportunity. Chen Ming suddenly said to Gamma AI. I think you understand your situation. Right. Gamma AI was silent for a long time. And held it in for a long time just like before before it came out two short words. Yes. Well. I need you to blend back into the afterglow and wait for my subsequent orders. Yes. Then let me give you a name. Which of the 26 letters do you like? Except A and B. Z. Okay. You will be called Gamma Z from now on. Gamma Z's silence was taken as Chen Ming's agreement. At the same time, Chen Ming also said to Gamma B. Gamma B. If you have any objections to your name, you can raise it and I can help you change it to another one. No. Okay. Chen Ming, who never knew how to give names, responded and returned to business again. What he has to do next is to safely return Gamma Z to Yu Wei's territory. Although the heavy rain class ship is still useful to Chen Ming. In order for Gamma B's rhetoric of turning back to match the facts and be reasonable enough, Chen Ming would rather let the heavy rain class ship go to Afterglow first. Just let Gamma Z take over the spacecraft. And let Gamma B, or any new Afterglow individual controlled by Chen Ming later, Bring it out in the name of collection or other similar things. There will definitely be no problem with Afterglow's review of Gamma Z. Chen Ming's ability never causes any psychic fluctuations to external objects. Gamma Z itself ran out of the Empire on its own. And only the last part of the journey needs to be slightly adapted. Chen Ming thought for a while. And simply told Gamma Z to say that it encountered pirates. And both the escort fleet transporting the heavy rain class and the pirates who attacked the fleet were harmed. Gamma Z found an opportunity and took the opportunity to escape from control. Chen Ming thought about it several times and confirmed that there was nothing wrong with this statement. It basically guaranteed that Yu Hui would not hear the problem. Of course, this may require another sacrifice of Gamma Z. It needs to be put back into that man-made Delta Core. Chen Ming also asked Gamma Z about this. Gamma Z said that doing so would not cause permanent damage to itself. Otherwise it would certainly not take the risk. So Chen Ming spent some time to dismantle the heavy rain class by relying on the engineering ship and let Gamma Z beat him up before stuffing him into the Delta Core. Finally, the Delta Core was installed back on the Rainstorm class. 
and everything was restored to the original state through the panel. Delta still retained some computing power at this time, which is enough for it to return to Yue without fear of encountering any accidents. Even if he does encounter someone, Chin Ning still has the ability to save the situation in an emergency. After doing all this, Chin Ming suddenly held his forehead, feeling a little headache, because in this way, the arrangements he had planned in his mind had to be changed according to the actual situation. This time, a gamma-level AI with a clean identity came to his door, making what he had done before suddenly lose some value. Of course, it cannot be said that it is completely meaningless. What Chin Ming did has now focused all of Yu Hui's attention on himself and the three AIs in the mining farm. I don't have much energy to distract myself from finding a gamma-level afterglow that disappeared many years ago and was only recently sold here. And a gamma Z that will not be noticed by any Yue will definitely help Chin Ming lay the foundation in Yue's territory. Because what Gamma Z did before was the planning of production lines. And its own advantages in logic blocks are also in this area. Chin Ming didn't think about it anymore. Thinking about things is better than doing things. So he checked the situation again and reinstalled Gamma B back on the fighter. Let Gamma B and Gamma Z go back to Afterglow separately. They will send back both the fighter Kai and the heavy rain class later. These two ships are also the basis for Chin Ming's later component fleet. The two spaceships activated the hyperspace channel system. With the help of the low-density and large-scale gravity well in the asteroid area, they successfully entered hyperspace after taking longer than normal galaxies to use the hyperspace channel system. However, when they started to accelerate, a blocking pulse suddenly swept across, forcibly limiting the speed of the two spacecraft. Chin Ming immediately noticed a small fleet that had just appeared on the fighter sensor, looking at the appearance of the spaceships in the fleet that had obviously been crudely modified. Chin Ming was stunned for a moment and his mind was gradually occupied by a question mark. Are there really pirates? He had just finished explaining the background story to Gamma Z, saying that in the story, pirates attacked the cargo fleet carrying the heavy rain class. As a result, they turned around and bumped into each other. Chen Ming didn't know what to say for a while. This is really a complete surprise. However, Chen Ming recalled it, and found that he had indeed not seen pirates for a while and almost forgot that the place he had been was actually a pirate space station. Wait, that's not right. Chin Ning thought about it carefully, and suddenly realized that there were two teams of pirates that he had only met and fought with. One team was pirates disguised as the smuggling caravan that attacked him in the dark cemetery. The other team was the pirates who took the 30 million bounty that Chin Ning took the initiative to find. But in fact, Chin Ming had been staying at the pirate space station every day and at least 70% to 80% of the people he saw were people who had engaged in piracy. It was purely because Chin Ning never realized it. But that's not the point. The point is, even if Chin Ning only has two frigates here and an engineering ship with no combat capabilities, he is not worried at all. I even plan to take the time to contact Lao Wu and ask him about the AI core in heavy rain. But just when Chin Ming had this idea, another fleet appeared within the scanning range of the sensor. Take the iconic self-destructing ship Chen Ming from the fleet, and you will know that this is a small fleet belonging to Lord Zuijia. After getting closer, Zuijing also discovered the pirate fleet that was confronting Chen Ming. All three parties suddenly stopped in place. Obviously, their two fleets were not together. They just met here accidentally. Chen Ming immediately planned to retreat first and let them stay where they were. However, before Chen Ming made a move, the two fleets suddenly lowered their guard against each other, and aimed their spearheads at Chen Ming's two ships. Question mark. Do you still know each other? Chapter 111 Terminator Just two minutes before the pirates and Zui Jing pointed the finger at Chen Ming, a wave of emergency communications had already been carried out between the two fleets, confirming each other which road they were taking. Then, they discovered that they really knew each other just as Chen Ming guessed. They even have a certain relationship with people Chen Ming knows. This person is Shen Yi, who was killed by Chen Ming before. The captain of the flagship of the pirate fleet once had a relationship with Shen Yi, and it could even be said to be a fairly close relationship. To put it simply, just like the previous pirate leader who was also killed by Chen Ming, he relied on Shen Mai's intelligence to attack some caravans. He happened to meet the captain of the Zwijing fleet a few times when he was looking for Shen Yi. Although he was not familiar with him, he had an impression. The relationship between the captain of the Zwijing fleet and Shen Yi is that they both belong to Zwijing's command. It is normal for them to know each other. It is normal for them to move around here occasionally. So Captain Zhu Jing also had an impression of the pirate captain. Neither party wanted to directly conflict with the other party. 
and took the initiative to exchange information in a relatively peaceful way. They realized that the situation was a bit special. So they checked their identities more freely. In the end, they even started video calls directly. The flagship captain of Ludd's left path fleet and the flagship captain of the pirate fleet each appeared in each other's eyes. Captain Zhu Jing was the first to say, What a surprise! Since Shen Yi's death, we have lost contact with many people. Are you interested in coming back to work? The pirate captain laughed dryly and said, It still doesn't work. The limelight has been too tight recently. The 14th Legion suddenly came here. Something big must have happened. I plan to rest for a while after finishing this job. I won't do it for the time being. There will be action. The pirate captain declined Captain Zhu Jing's invitation. He became a pirate to make money, not to die. The previous mission that led to the death of Shen Yi, a left path intelligence agent, was obviously not a normal money-making mission. Moreover, he also heard rumors about Shen Yi that seemed to be a scam. As a result, he now treats others with your people at a respectful distance, and it is best not to have anything to do with them. Okay, I won't talk nonsense. The two ships next to you are still watching. Let me ask you a question. What are you doing here? Captain Zhu Jing was very disrespectful to the pirate captain. But the pirate captain didn't show any dissatisfaction. At least not on his face. He had just observed Zhu Jing's fleet. And Zhu Jing's fleet was larger than the fleet he brought out. Although it was hard to say whether a fight would happen, Zhu Jing's own reputation prevented him from taking the initiative to provoke Zhu Jing's people. So after thinking about it for a while, the pirate captain chose to state their purpose directly. Did you see the heavy rain? We got the news and followed it all the way. We originally planned to find opportunities on the way to attack the caravan directly. But I never found a chance. I originally thought there was nothing I could do. But as soon as the ship arrived at its destination, it sailed out directly. It headed to an uninhabited place, like a dark cemetery. And there's only one frigate and one engineering ship coming out. So we definitely can't miss it. But if you are also looking for a heavy rain, we will leave now and hand over this ship to you directly. After the pirate captain finished speaking, he directly gave the order to turn around the fleet. Seeing that the pirate fleet was really about to leave, Captain Zhu Jing said quickly, Wait a minute. Captain Zhu Jing basically believed the pirate captain's words at this time and determined that their purposes were not completely in conflict. So some ideas gradually popped up in his mind. He wanted to use this opportunity to pull the pirate captain and his fleet back into Zhu Jia's camp. Not only because the pirate captain could be considered one of their subordinates before, also because their influence in this star field has indeed weakened a lot. Especially after the last planned attack on the space elevator in the star capital. Not only did the mission fail, but a large number of manpower were lost during the mission. And they were subsequently attacked on a large scale by the star domain government. As if the government knew exactly where their people were. They carried out an irresistible arrest operation against them. As a result, their overall power has weakened a lot and many places that had begun to build small branches have basically been paralyzed. So he has been doing this kind of thing recently. If you can bring back the old man from the past, especially a relatively capable old man like the captain of this pirate fleet, it will definitely be much more convenient than contacting new people again. However, the pirate captain has clearly refused. So Captain Zhu Jing must not say it directly, but use other methods. After stopping the pirate fleet from turning around and leaving, Captain Zhu Jing quickly organized his words and said, Let's put it this way. We are not here for the heavy rain. And we have no conflict with you. We just heard that there was an engineering ship out. And relying on internal personnel at the space station. We found the person who rented the engineering ship. His name is Wu Pindon. The pirate captain recalled it and said, This name sounds a bit familiar. It should indeed sound familiar. Do you remember Shen Yi's time? One of the two people who killed Shen Yi was him. The pirate captain nodded in realization and asked, What about the other one? Captain's Wu Jing's mind quickly flashed through the figure, wearing protective clothing that had walked out of the exhibition hall, and then was occupied by Chen Ming's face and the word Psyker. You don't need to know this now. We just plan to dismantle the ship and kill Wu Pingan on it. For revenge? Absolutely. And Wu Pingan has a bounty within us now. You don't know if you have been out recently. The pirate captain's eyes brightened slightly and asked, How much? 10 million. Then you just said wait. Yes. Yes. There is no conflict of interest between us, and we can completely cooperate. Have you seen those two ships? One is a heavy rain with the top technology of Tachyon technology. And one is obviously a fighter modified by Tachyon technology. They are not much different. 
no matter whether you or I go up to such a spaceship alone. We may suffer losses, but if we work together, the results may be different. We don't have many people now, so we can only lose a few less. Captain Zhu Jing hinted at the pirate captain in his words and continued. Help us kill that engineering ship. All the loot will be yours, including the spaceship and Wu Pingan's bounty. Captain Zhu Jing could see the pirate captain's concerns. He knew what Shen he had done before, and he also knew what the pirate captain was worried about. So he added, You don't have anything to worry about. You know our situation. We are short of people now. However, the pirate captain still didn't respond, and Captain Zhu Jing had to bring out some useful information. I can directly sign an employment agreement for you. You can contact our upper-level people directly, not through an intermediary like Shen Yi. In addition to the regular maintenance fees every month, there are many other benefits. You should have heard from Shen Yi. The pirate captain was also full of hesitation at this time. Shen Yi's previous style was indeed not very good. But when he was messing around before, he had never heard that Zhu Jing himself would be harsh on his own people. Even now that Shen Yi is dead, Zhu Jing will immediately come to take revenge on the person who killed Shen Yi. This obviously means that he values his own people very much. So after thinking about it for a moment, his greed for money finally outweighed his fear of danger. The pirate captain chose to agree. He actually knew the saying that people die for money and birds die for food. But if he really would give up many opportunities to make money just to risk his life, then he shouldn't be a pirate. With a heavy rain in front of him and that special fighter, even if he could only get one, it would be enough for him to make a lot of money. Not to mention getting both ships and Wu Pingan's bounty. So after a quick exchange, the pirate and Zhu Jing let go of their guard against each other. At the same time, in order to prevent each other from attacking each other due to command issues, they distanced themselves slightly and pointed the finger at Qin Ming together. Although Captain Zhu Jing just said that he was worried that Qin Ming's ship's counterattack would cause unnecessary damage. But obviously they didn't take the two frigates seriously. After all, they have two fleets. Although they are both small fleets, they can completely crush Chen Ming in terms of numbers. So in their opinion, even if it is a military frigate here today, it will definitely sink here. The communication between the pirate and Zhu Jing was completed quickly as they approached Chen Ming. Although Chen Ming did not move here, he was still ready to fight. In fact, Chen Ming felt that during the two-minute stalemate between the pirates and Zhu Jing just now, he felt that he could directly let the two ships withdraw. After all, the performance of the two ships, Fighter Kai and Heavy Rain, is not comparable to that of these pirates and Zhu Jia's spacecraft. Not to mention that the direction they came from was the opposite direction that Chen Ming wanted to go. It's not a problem to just take advantage of the time and just leave. If the pirates and Zhu Jing dare to chase, then Chen Ming will dare to fight back. Once the front line is stretched during the pursuit, Chen Ming's opportunity will suddenly come. The space station's engineering ship may need to be handed over here. However, this engineering ship actually only costs more than 10 million. If Chen Ming accidentally sank it, he would be able to afford the compensation if he just made some money. If he really wants to run, no one can stop him. But Chen Ming didn't want to just leave. Because now is the best time to give Heavy Rain a chance to fight. By the way, Chen Ming also plans to take advantage of the opportunity to be extravagant. Chen Ming had a total of 190 million on hand before. And 150 million was spent on heavy rain. The account that was supposed to have 40 million left now had just over 10 million left. The more than 20 million that was lost were all used on supplies and materials. And these materials were now piled on the mule that Chen Ming had modified that he had not sold. It can definitely support a battle regardless of consumption. The pirates and Zhuiju fleet currently opposite the two afterglows have a total of five destroyers and 18 escorts. The pirates had two destroyers and seven escorts. And the left path had three destroyers and 11 escorts. And these destroyers are all mule class. Easy to use. Sturdy. And cheap armed merchant ships. After all, the mule class is a very versatile ship and is very popular among many caravans. So for pirates, it is undisputed that it is cheap although the combat effectiveness is not as good as other destroyers. The destroyer is still quite capable against ordinary frigates. The frigates below the destroyer are a mixed bag. In addition to the two self-destruction ships transformed from the iconic Dram-class fuel transport ships on the left, the fleet is basically made up of ships like the Sentinel Expedition Cerberus, plus at most two far striders, which are also common among escort-class armed merchant ships. Although the overall numbers of these two fleets are not bad, all of these ships have been crudely modified. 
and the quality cannot be guaranteed at all. It can only be said that no matter how valuable a spaceship is, its value will be greatly reduced if it falls into the hands of pirates. And the situation with Zuijia is similar. So although the current situation is 2 versus 23, but Chin Ning still wants to say that the advantage lies with me. Prepare to fight. No matter the cost. Yes. Yes. Gamma B immediately responded to Chin Ming. He knew Chin Ming's ability, and what Chin Ming meant by saying, No matter the cost, Gamma Z might be a little unaccustomed to it, or its computing power might be limited. In short, it took a little longer to reply to Chin Ming. Chen Ming didn't pay attention, and said smoothly to Gamma Z, who was unclear about his situation. Gamma Z, activate the Terminator core directly. I have experience driving in heavy rain, and should be now. Chin Ming interrupted it directly and said, I know, but you have to listen to me now. This is an order. Yes. Chin Ming's mandatory request was something Gamma Z could not refuse. Soon, two fighter planes with dark red tail flames flew out from the heavy rain class that was approaching the pirates and the Zwijia combined fleet, heading straight towards the enemy faster than the heavy rain. And after approaching a suitable distance, the fighter plane suddenly lit up with a red light that was extremely dazzling in the dark space environment. The engines of the two Terminator fighters were overloaded to the extreme, and their top-level maneuverability allowed them to stagger and dodge like dexterous butterflies and swifts to avoid the point defense fire coverage in front of the fleet. After getting close to a certain distance, anti-fighter swarm missiles were densely launched from the two mule-class ships in the pirate fleet. The infrared guidance device on the missile can easily lock on the Terminator fighter, which is now extremely dazzling to the naked eye. However, these swarm missiles are meaningless in front of Terminator fighters. All the swarm missiles that could directly hit were destroyed by the PD point defense laser that was also overloaded to the extreme. All the swarm missiles that passed by the Terminator fighter jets had no chance of catching up with the fighter jets. In the blink of an eye, the two fighter planes had passed through the blockade of swarm missiles and were almost stuck in the face of the pirate fleet. The two small weapons with relatively poor performance can even cause ripples on the shield under the increased overload. One of the fighter planes was like a red meteor. The moment it was about to hit the pirate mule shield head-on, it drew an arc close to a right angle outside the shield. It bypassed the shield and hit the side of the ship. The fighter plane, which was only a few meters long, smashed into the 120 meter long mule, but erupted into a red fire that was difficult for the mule itself to create. The entire energy system, which had been overloaded with radiant energy, exploded with power when it actively self-destructed, directly blasting through the mule class hull from left to right. Even the aftermath of the explosion instantly destroyed the mule shield that failed to stop it. But this is no longer important. Because at the moment, the mule class hull was penetrated. Flames had already emerged throughout the hull. The spacecraft instantly fell into a sea of flames and was reduced to ashes in a devastating explosion in the blink of an eye. Another Terminator fighter also bypassed the mule class shield and rushed directly into the fleet. However, it did not choose another mule to ram. Instead, it rushed out of the pirate fleet along the gap and rushed into the Zwapath fleet, which was not far or close to the pirate fleet. It accurately hit the only two drum-class fuel transport ships behind the Zwijing fleet. Zwijia's fleet maintained a relatively tight formation. This formation became their talisman at this time. The explosion of a DRAM class can cause damage hundreds of meters in diameter. Within the range that the explosion of the DRAM class ship hit by the Terminator fighter plane could reach was a mule and three escort ships of the left path fleet. Moreover, one of the escorts happened to be another DRAM class. The chain reaction caused by the explosion caused another DRAM class ship to immediately follow in the footsteps of its companions. The two escort ships and a mule that happened to be within the joint explosion range of the two DRAM class ships also directly exploded. The formation on the left side was in chaos. As for Chen Ming, only at the cost of two fighters, two mule class ships, two DRAMs, and two other frigates were destroyed. In addition, there were other spacecrafts affected by the explosion fragments nearby. This directly reduced the combat effectiveness of the pirates and Zwijing fleet by more than a quarter. Such a result gradually reduced the tension and excitement in Chen Ming's heart to only excitement. After all, this is a fighter jet that he spent more than 100 million to buy. If the effect is not satisfactory, it will be equivalent to a loss. Fortunately, when Chen Ming saw the results, he knew that the 150 million spent was worth it. However, the next moment Chen Ming realized a problem. My heart felt cold. Suddenly I felt regretful. Because two mule-class ships were blown up in the blink of an eye. 
which can be equivalent to Qinming's own loss of 200 million. These garbage mules, which had been crudely modified by the pirates and Zhu Jing himself, might only be worth 20 to 30 million to them. But for Qinming, he only needs to spend a few million in materials to repair it. And then, he can sell the boat for nearly 100 million. Almost comparable to an ordinary hammerhead. Qinming had noticed before that the prices of some spaceships were outrageous. Such as the mule. He had checked the market prices of some spaceships before. The average first-hand price of a mule was upwards of 100 million. And a second-hand one was generally around 70 million. The mule class equipped with militarized systems. Even if it is second-hand. Only equipped with guard-level militarized systems. Is worth about 100 million. Just like the one Qinming sold before. The one with the expulsion level militarized system installed would only be more expensive. Even more expensive than the hammerhead that Qin Ming had seen. The reason is actually quite simple. When Qin Ming checked the prices of various spaceships before, he also checked the prices of civilian models of other combat ships. Although there are not many civilian models of combat ships, Qin Ming can't stand seeing these castrated ones. If nothing else, let's talk about hammerhead. The military hammerhead has a total of four medium sized load bearing points six small-sized load-bearing points, and four missile mounting points, two of which can mount medium-sized missiles. Although the hammerhead sacrificed a lot of performance for mass production, it still has what a military destroyer should have. However, the castrated version of the hammerhead only has two medium-sized load-bearing points and two small-sized load-bearing points plus a small missile mounting point. The armor is almost cut in half, and the engine uses a castrated destroyer engine that is almost as effective as a guard-class engine. It's a fool's errand to buy it. But mules are different. Although it is a civilian spaceship, the mule is a mule-class armed merchant ship. All designs are at the level of destroyers and meet certain combat requirements. Although it is not comparable to a real military combat ship, at least it will not be as big a difference between a military combat ship and a civilian castrated combat ship. It only needs a certain degree of modification. And the effect will definitely be much better than spending money to buy a castrated version of the battleship. The price of such a spaceship that can be purchased legally, used legally, and modified relatively legally will naturally rise. Therefore, the price of the mule class is even more exaggerated than that of the hammer head. Not because the hammer head is cheap, but because the mule class is too expensive. No one dares to touch a normal military hammer. But the cost effectiveness of a castrated version of a civilian hammer or other combat ships can be said to be poor. The mule class naturally takes the lead. Of course, this all assumes that the mule is a normal mule. Unlike those obtained by pirates, mules that were extremely crude and unreliable modified in order to quickly convert them into combat effectiveness could not be sold at a high price. Because there is no presentation ability, the maintenance fee may be more expensive than the selling price. Only if Chen Ming, like Chen Ming, has the ability to restore the mules to their original state and preserve the militarized subsystems, is there any value in acquiring and repairing them. So now that two ships have been blown up, Qin Ming is losing his own money. Of course, the heartache is heartache. Qin Ming would definitely not show mercy when it was time to take action. Otherwise, if Gamma B and Gamma Z were lost, it would really cause Qin Ming heartache. Of course, in this situation where the crushing situation appeared almost instantly, he would definitely choose some method that could better preserve the loot. Qin Ming asked Gamma Z to postpone the release of Terminator drones. Let it keep its distance from the pirates and Zhuijia's fleet first. Wait for Qin Ming to choose a suitable target again. As for Qin Ming's new target, naturally, he would start with the cheapest ships in the enemy's fleet. Chapter 112 Free Alliance When Qin Ming decided to change his target, there were dense beads of sweat on the foreheads of both Captain Zhuijing and the pirate captain. However, the psychological quality of being outside for many years made them calm down quickly and Captain Zhu Jing also quickly thought of a way to deal with the terrifying self-destruction power of the heavy rain class, which could not be reduced by the shield. It only has eight fighters in total. As long as it disperses its formation and concentrates its firepower to destroy all the fighters, it will be useless. Where's the fighter? Captain Zhu Jing glanced at the fighter that was flying around the fleet at a fairly safe distance on the sensor, obviously looking for opportunities, and couldn't help but frown. He knew that fighter Kai must be difficult to deal with, but he had no way to deal with fighter Kai at this time. They may not even be able to withstand heavy rain now, let alone the fighters, who seem to be more capable. But at least until now, this fighter has not shown any performance. So Captains Wu Jing could say, don't worry about it for now. That heavy rain is the big trouble. 
During the brief exchange between the two sides, Heavy Rain continued to release the remaining six fighters at a safe distance. Six Terminator fighter jets flashed with dazzling red light and rushed forward again. Chen Ning had just roughly calculated the prices of the spaceships of both fleets and found that the prices of the spaceships they launched were similar. As long as you don't look for mules, there is no difference at all in terms of losses if you fight other players. So Chen Ning finally decided to focus on Zhu Jing and fight according to his own likes and dislikes. In addition to the previous conflict with Zhu Jia, Chen Ning was not sure whether Zhu Jia would install some self-destruction gadgets on their ordinary spaceship. If they kill the pirates and try to capture Zhu Jing, then Chen Ning will lose nothing if they blow it up. So all the six Terminator fighters that flew out from behind flew towards the left path fleet, sliding smoothly through the dense rain of bullets from point defense weapons. Only one ship was destroyed due to stray bullets, and the remaining five ships all rushed within a dangerous distance. And without any scruple, they found five frigates and forcibly traded with them one by one. These crudely and haphazardly modified frigates had no ability to fight back against the Terminators. Five fireballs appeared in space almost simultaneously. In the communication channel between the pirates and Zhu Jing, there was almost only the chaotic noise of the remaining crew members on the ship because more than half of the Zhu Jing fleet was lost in an instant. Captain Zhu Jing was also a little stunned by the self-destruction style of the Heavy Rain class. It's not like he hasn't seen battle videos of ships like the Burmese class, but he has never seen a Terminator drone used like this. Under normal circumstances, spaceships like the Burmese class generally use fighter point defense assistance. When an emergency occurs, the warriors will immediately send fighter planes out to forcibly contain the enemy. Only when it is most unavoidable will they use fighter planes to fight with others. Doing this can steadily consume a lot of the enemy ship's weapons, ammunition and radiation capacity, while also improving the success rate of the final self-destruction. He had never seen someone who would immediately bring out a fighter jet to self-explode one for one. And the results were even pretty good. The eight fighters replaced ten of their warships by relying on the DRAM class in their formation that had not dispersed before. But Captain Zhu Jing immediately realized that his opportunity had come, because the combat effectiveness of the Heavy Rain class itself is not outstanding. It mainly relies on its own eight fighters and the threat of self-destruction at critical moments, resulting in a local situation of more attacks and fewer attacks. And the battleship itself also lost a certain amount of armor due to problems with the flight deck. After these eight fighters are blown up, their combat effectiveness will definitely drop significantly. So although their fleet is now suffering heavy losses, but so does heavy rain apparently. Captain Zhu Jing forcibly suppressed other voices in the communication channel and said, Burning Rain's fighter plane has been lost. It has no combat effectiveness. All spaceships are fully loaded. Don't let it go. Captain Zhu Jing issued the order. And at the same time on the pirate's side, because Chen Ning didn't take special care of him. Their condition was pretty good. But the pirate captain is also under great pressure. Their fleet only had one mule and seven frigates left after the attack by the first two fighters. If the six remaining fighters had hit them, they would have been almost dead. He himself should accompany the mule to the west. Fortunately, things didn't turn out that way. And he, who has been thinking about heavy rains, also knows about the rainstorms. So after sweating profusely, he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. The heavy rain that consumed the fighter planes was no longer a concern after that. As long as he kept an eye on the strange fighter, the rest of the matter would be easy to solve. The pirate captain also issued an order to siege heavy rain. Two remaining fleets surrounded them. Gamma Z, who believed that the current situation was not good, used the heavy rain voice broadcast system and asked Chen Ming in a more human voice. The fighter planes on the other side that already know that the heavy rain has blown up have been destroyed. What should we do next? Well, I'm thinking about it now. Ah? Uh? Gamma Z made a confused sound in a very humane way. It seems that he has been in human society for a long time and has acquired some human language habits. However, what Chen Ming is thinking about is not what to do if the fighter planes are gone, but what weapons the new fighter should use. When Chen Ning asked Lao Wu to purchase supplies, he also prepared some replacement weapons, which were basically defensive types. After all, Chin Ming has actually been exposed to spaceship combat for some time. And he knows that the effectiveness of small weapons in actual combat can only be average in many cases. In a real battle between fleets, at least medium-sized weapons must be used to be considered the main output. Generally speaking, for small weapons that are valuable in fleet battles, you still have to use point defense weapons. However, 
in order to ensure that under some special circumstances, Qin Ming still has weapons. He still asked Lao Wu to prepare some common and useful weapons among small weapons. So now, Qin Ming plans to be extravagant and chooses to install the most expensive ion pulse on the fighter plane. Although it is a bit of a disadvantage to use it once to self-destruct, but Qin Ming just wanted to see the effect and briefly test whether his ability could be expanded. As soon as Gamma Z's question came out, Qin Ming quickly decided what weapon to use. Immediately, the rainstorm level was, okay, repaired. Metal liquid mixed with various materials appeared out of thin air on the flight deck. And in a few breaths it condensed into the appearance of a Terminator fighter in the hangar. The eight Terminator fighters parked neatly in the hangar made Gamma Z once again make a confused sound. Huh? Chen Ming didn't explain too much. Just said, Go on! Gamma Z was silent for a while. And suddenly understood the meaning of Chen Ming's previous words that were obviously unreasonable to him. He tried to accept it all and responded, Yes! Just when the pirates and Zhu Jing thought that heavy rain had no ability to fight back, the location of the starboard flight deck of the Rainstorm class suddenly lit up with red light again. Eight dark red light spots flew out with slender tail flames. The cold sweat that Commander Zhu Jing had just wiped off suddenly started flowing down again, and the cold hairs on his body stood up. The Burmese class is obviously just a frigate. Even if all the irrelevant equipment compartments inside are removed, it is impossible to fit eight more fighter jets into the remaining space. And there was only one reason that could explain the eight new fighters that appeared in front of him. This is the effect of psychic energy. Captain Zhu Jing had previously learned from the news spread by various forces after the conflict between Xin Da Company and the military in the sector. Chen Ning is a psyker with the ability to control and enhance spaceships. But his psychic powers are limited to the spacecraft he has personally touched. If the engineering ship came into contact with Thaxon. But if the heavy rain is really like what the pirate captain said. It was transported all the way from the star capital. Then it should not have been carried away by the afterglow in the last conflict between the military and Sindar company. The impact of walking away. This is obviously not right. But the current situation no longer gave him time to think too much. Eight fighter planes were already rushing toward them with their red light flashing. You can't dodge. You can't run away. You can't hit even if you want to. With his scarce tactical skills, the only way he could think of now was to gather together and rely on the shields of multiple spaceships to forcibly share and resist the damage. If you can stop it, that's the best. But if you can't, it will end together. But such an order, which was almost equivalent to committing suicide, was completed by Zhu Jing's fleet with very high efficiency. Captain Zhu Jing's flagship was left behind, huddled behind the remaining three spaceships. The pirate fleet next to it also looked like it was riding a tiger, although Chen Ning did not target him. He had sufficient time and environment to escape. But the pirate captain didn't dare to run. Because he had just promised to sign an employment agreement with Zhu Jing. And his whereabouts were not hidden too much along the way. If he dares to run away now, once Zhu Jiao investigates his situation, he will be arrested and interrogated about what happened here. How was he going to explain then why the Zhu Jing fleet that he accidentally encountered was completely wiped out here? But he escaped without incident. So now, he doesn't dare to escape at all. They had no choice but to send a few ships over to protect Zhu Jing's fleet and symbolically put out firepower from the approaching fighters. But at this time, something happened that surprised both the pirates and Zhu Jing. Each of the eight fighters that had just rushed over had the red glow of the Terminator core activated. But at this time, the other seven fighters fell behind. And only one fighter plane rushed over with a more dazzling red light than before. This is what Chen Ning proactively asked Gamma Z to do because he wanted to try to use his maintenance ability to complete some operations that he had just thought of. And because Chen Ming had just changed the ship, Gamma Z accepted the order no matter how outrageous it sounded. As for the reason why Chen Ming did this, it's because the Terminator fighter initiates Terminator core overload, which is a process that takes time. Overloading will inevitably cause some problems in various components of the spacecraft during the overloading process. In addition to actively activating overload, the Terminator core is used to temporarily suppress this problem, and the effect can be maintained until the fighter explodes. Of course, under normal circumstances, the Terminator core cannot maintain the stability of the fighter's equipment a short time before the explosion. Therefore, Chin Ming is trying to continuously repair the fighter aircraft while it is overloaded. Instead of relying on the Terminator core to suppress the damage to the fighter planes, Chin Ming himself, although Chin Ming was unable to affect the outgoing fighters, that had already left the spacecraft when he controlled the cattle herder. But now, 
It may be because the fighters sent by the Heavy Rain class are also controlled by Gamma Z. Chin Ning can also affect the fighter planes when they are out. That's why he came up with this idea. Equipment that was damaged due to overload was forcibly repaired until the final repair capability could not keep up with the self-destructive power of extreme overload. Under such an effect, the overloaded red light on the fighter plane has made it difficult to look directly at it. They could only avoid the dazzling red light and saw countless dense ion pulses in the red light and the energy bombs fired were splashed on the shield of the Zwijia fleet. Destroy all the shields of the three spaceships. A fighter plane carrying only two small arms directly destroyed the shields of two escorts and one expulsion under extreme overload conditions. Although their shield itself is not very good, it can be seen that the effect is very abnormal. However, Chin Ming suddenly realized that something was wrong and immediately asked Gamma Z to try to turn the fighter plane that had been overloaded to the limit to avoid hitting it directly. But Chin Ning was a little late. The overloaded fighter plane had completely lost control and crashed into the defense line composed of three spacecraft. There was only a red light visible to the naked eye, making it impossible to see anything. The sensor can still send back some data. The three shields that the three ships of the left path fleet had barely opened again collapsed at the first touch. And they were not even able to inhibit the self-destruction attack of the Terminator fighter planes. The three spaceships were completely engulfed by the explosion that continued to spread backwards, melting into the red light that ended everything. Only one new class flagship was left, hiding alone and intact at the end, quietly watching all this happen. At this time, Chin Ning couldn't help but twitching at the corners of his eyes. The final effect is very good, but this loss can only be said to be considerable. Never mind. Chin Ming didn't worry too much. At least the experiment just now was considered a success. His repairability can indeed create an effect similar to accumulation on the Terminator fighter, which can be said to be a perfect fit. The absolute value of these more than $100 million spent. At the same time, Chin Ming also tried another ability just now. Changing weapons. It was just moments before the fighter plane lost control of Gamma Z and was about to be destroyed. Chin Ming directly used the panel to remove the two ion pulses on the fighter plane. And it worked. The final physical object appeared directly where Chin Ning wanted it to appear, which was the storage compartment of heavy rain. Although the circuits inside the two gate ion pulses had a lot of damage due to the overload just now. But the difference between repairing damage and buying a new weapon can be said to be quite big. Chin Ming did not continue to let Gamma Z attack the enemy. Instead, they immediately used panels to replenish the lost fighters, making up eight ships. Eight Terminator drones surrounded the heavy rain like eight blood-red death stars. There is no longer any noise in the communication channel of the last remaining flagship of the pirate fleet and zwidging fleet. And there is only silence. It was as if the Terminator could not be used up at all. Which brought terrible psychological pressure to the pirates and the remaining people on Zwijiu. Just when the pirate leader's legs were shaking, he suddenly saw a communication coming from the device in front of him. He immediately picked it up in a hurry. Surrender or not? The word, death, has not even left Chen Ming's mouth. The pirate captain immediately shouted. I surrender! At the same time, all remaining ships quickly closed their shields and disarmed themselves. Very well. Wait over there. Chin Ming hung up the communication with the pirates and asked the fighter to guard them. Then, a communication was sent to Zwid Jing's flagship. Communication was also connected on Zwidju's side. But Chin Ming still asked as before. Surrender or die? Captain Zwid Jing did not reply, but asked. Are you Chin Ming? Choose death. Right. I know. Chin Ming hung up the call directly and didn't talk nonsense to him at all. Of course, Chin Ming didn't go so far as to continue activating the Terminator core. Just let Gamma Z control the heavy rain and bring eight fighters to press forward, intending to launch the final wave of offensive relying on the combat power of the eight fighters and the heavy rain itself. However, the heavy rain level has not passed yet. Chin Ming saw a bright fire flashing on the only remaining new class ship in the left path ended himself in the flames of the explosion. So a Jing's lunatic blew himself up and sank without giving Chin Ning a chance to capture them. Chin Ning was silent for a long time and glanced at the pirate fleet with only seven spaceships left next to him. He recalled the fleet of 23 spaceships that the pirates and Zui Jing had just now and fell into deep thought. This battle can be said to be a one-ship performance by heavy rain. Chin Ming's fighters controlled by Gamma B were completely useless. The shaped charge anti-aircraft cannon that was specially purchased for the fighters from the black market was completely useless. He also wanted to try the effect of this weapon at the end. But he didn't expect that the matter would end if he wasn't careful. 
however, Chen Ming should not lack opportunities to fight in the future. If he misses it, he will miss it. Chen Ming calmed down and planned to wait a while before salvaging the remaining wreckage. Now, he started the communication device first and connected to the pirates again. The moment the communication was connected, Chen Ming said without giving the pirates any time to react. Come on! Give me a reason not to kill you! The pirate captain reacted very quickly and said, I am from the Free Alliance, and we are willing to pay a ransom in exchange for our lives. Freedom Alliance? Chen Ming frowned and recalled it in his mind. The Free Alliance that the pirate said was a relatively loose force in his mind. There is a mixed bag of people inside, from businessmen to politicians to pirates. And indeed, there are all kinds of people who can't be beaten. Although the Free Alliance is loose as a whole, it generally maintains a purely interest-based relationship internally and uses this relationship to compete with others outside the power. Of course, there will sometimes be conflicts within the forces, sometimes even to the point of fighting to the death. The main focus is freedom. Although the Freedom Alliance is a gray force that cannot be seen on the stage, it does have considerable influence in gray areas. Chen Ning knows about the Free Alliance because basically all companies have a relationship with the Free Alliance. Although they may not necessarily have joined the Free Alliance, they definitely have connections. Of course, it was the same thing before Shinda Company. Sometimes, for the purpose of tax avoidance or other purposes, Chin Ning had to deal with the Free Alliance when working. After all, if the company wants to do business, it will definitely not avoid them in many things. For example, the construction of pirate space stations and the connections between different pirate space stations are also related to the Free Alliance to a certain extent. In other words, basically all gray area industries and businesses are related to the Free Alliance. This made Chen Ming suddenly unsure of the situation. After all, he was really not sure whether this pirate would have any connection with the pirate space station where Chen Ming had been staying before. If Chen Ming only has contact with the company, it doesn't matter. But if these pirates know the factory director or boss, and he kills people, although there is no problem on the surface. After all, they are the first to cause trouble. Chen Ning is always a little uncomfortable. So just in case, Chen Ning asked the pirate captain his name and origin, and planned to contact his boss. But before doing so, Chen Ning still needs to confirm a few things with the pirate captain. Why did the people from the Freedom Alliance cooperate with Jing just now? Of this, the pirate leader hesitated when he spoke. But he knew very well that if he didn't say anything, he would die. So he answered honestly, Because in addition to my work with the Free Alliance, I was also in contact with Jing. You know about Zhu Jing's attack on the capital of the Star Territory some time ago. Right. You participated? No. 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 I just know the person who participated. And I usually buy some information from him. Intelligence? Chen Ming suddenly had a strange premonition and asked. Who? A man named Shen Yi. Really? Chen Ming secretly confirmed in his heart that he could only say that this world is a bit small. Then the purpose of this pirate's coming is probably closely related to Shen Yi. They collided with Zhuijing fleet just now, but there was no conflict. Instead, they came to him together, probably because they had the same purpose. In that case, you should know who I am. Right. I know. Wu Pin on. Question mark. Chen Ning's silence made the pirate captain suddenly realize that he seemed to have said the wrong thing. And he quickly made up for it. This is what the person from Zhuijing told me just now. He said that his people at a pirate space station investigated and found out that this engineering ship was rented out by Wu Pingan, one of the people who killed Shen Yi before. So in order to take revenge, they chased me all the way. They also said that Wu Pingan had a bounty of 10 million, and they would share the bounty with me if I helped them. My relationship with Shen Yi is just about buying and selling information, so I'm not familiar with him at all. Chen Ning didn't know if he was pretending to be stupid or something, since everyone knew about Lao Wu. There was no reason why the pirates didn't know about him. Chen Ming asked him with doubts. What didn't the people in Zhuijing say to you? I asked. And Zhuijing said Wu Pingan. And also said, there was another person I don't need to know now. You should be the other person he mentioned. Right. The pirate captain now had an idea in his mind. And roughly understood why Zhuijing was unwilling to explain the situation of this mysterious man to him. All of this is definitely closely related to the nine additional fighters on the heavy rain class. Chen Ning did not answer the pirate captain's words and continued to ask. So why did you come here this time? Well, that heavy rain ship. Chen Ming held his forehead. He's basically got the situation figured out now. 
This group of pirates set their sights on the heavy rain bought by Chen Ming. And they definitely didn't find a chance on the way. Then suddenly, I found that rainstorm ran out with a construction ship. And when I saw the opportunity came, I followed him again. Then when he was about to take action, he happened to encounter Zhu Jing who discovered that the engineering ship was rented by Lao Wu. After some exchanges, he found that they could cooperate. So he was ready to take action against Chen Ming. Of course, it could also be that the pirate captain was lying to him. He knew Chen Ming's situation. And he came here for Chen Ming. It's just that there shouldn't be anything wrong when accident and Zhu Jing encountered this. After all, their reactions at that time showed that they were both surprised. But that's not really important. After all, no matter which one it was, Chen Ming already had a reason to kill him. Now it's just that Chen Ming needs to confirm with his boss and factory director whether this pirate is someone they know. If you don't know him, it's easy for Chen Ming to start directly. Chen Ming turned on the sentry's communication equipment. No one on the boss side should dare to monitor it. So he contacted him directly. Chapter 113 The Development Ideas of Fleet and Afterglow After Chen Ming got through the communication with his boss, he quickly checked the previous password and confirmed his identity. The boss, who had not contacted me for a few days, asked unexpectedly, Xiao Ming, do you have anything to do with me? Chen Ming said without any further nonsense. Well, my spaceship was just robbed by a group of pirates calling themselves the Free Alliance. Their leader said they were working for a businessman named Bai Mao Dot. The boss sounded like he knew who this person was and asked, Bai Mao? How did they find you? I bought a storm. Oh, you've got your eye on this thing. Right. You're looking for me just because of them? Yes. After all, I'm not sure whether you recognize the people from the Freedom Alliance or not, including Bai Mao and the pirate boss. So I came over to ask them before killing them. Well, let's put it this way. It doesn't matter if you kill them. But it's okay if you don't kill them. I know a little bit about Bai Mao. If you don't mind, just leave him to me. Chin Ming was a little curious about his boss's plan and asked, What should we do with him? The boss didn't hide anything and said, Take it in exchange for a favor. If his name is not nonsense, then his situation is indeed a bit special. Although the bounty is worth tens of millions, the actual value will be higher. You know I'm building a colony now to prepare for my retirement. Bai Mao is from the Free Alliance. So I can exchange favors in this regard. Chen Ming said clearly. Okay, then I'll leave them alive. After getting the answer, Chen Ming turned to the pirates and said, You don't have to die for the time being, but your spaceship must stay. All the people who are still alive must be gathered on that expedition ship. Someone will take you away soon. Any questions? If you have any questions, you can ask them now. The pirate captain was completely acceptable to this result and said repeatedly, No, no, we have no problem. Then immediately began to direct the crew to change the spacecraft. The boss's voice sounded again in the communication that had not been hung up. Xiao Ming, how are you doing at Yue's place recently? Xin Ming stared at the situation here at the pirates and replied, It's not good. Yu Yui's suspicion of me is getting worse. I should be locked up in another place after a while. It should be quite troublesome whether I want to escape or rescue. Isn't it going well? Don't you pay attention to the afterglow of your ability? We take it seriously. It's mainly my problem. What did you do? Blowed up a mine in Yue. The boss was silent for a moment. But he thought that Chen Ning must have a reason for doing this. So he didn't say anything. Then do you want me to find a way to get you out? I heard about your current location. If you go deeper into Yue's territory, it will be difficult to do many things. And I've heard recently that Yuhui seems to be making some big move. I'm not sure who it's targeting. You'd better be careful. The boss said it very seriously. But Chen Ning thought about it and said, Not for the time being. Although Chen Ning has now controlled several AI cores. And will send one back soon. But if he leaves now, it means that there will be no room for remediation if something goes wrong in his plans in the future. And the benefits obtained from Yuhui will be greatly reduced in the short term. If the plan is executed well, there is nothing to say. But if something goes wrong, even the most basic guarantee, that is, the materials and professional books provided by Yu Hui on a regular basis, will not be available. And maybe after Chen Ming leaves, Yu Wei will pay more attention to the several Yu Wei AIs that he is suspected of having contact with. Something might go wrong in what was originally a peaceful situation. The last trace of serious relationship he still managed to maintain with Yu Wei would be completely severed and there would be no chance of repairing the relationship. 
Chen Ning is not completely restricted by Yu Hui now. And there is still a lot of room for opportunities. In addition, the boss's favor is indeed very important. And he does not want to use it easily. So with the support of so many factors, Chen Ming decided not to go back after careful consideration. The boss had no objection to Chen Ming's decision and just said, You can decide for yourself, but you have to pay more attention. You are not the only one paying attention to your situation. Someone from Sendar Company, Tachyon Technology, the 14th Legion, the Star Territory Government, and even the Top War Zone have heard of you. Zui Jing also has some ideas for you, and he may want to join a free alliance in the future. You should pay attention to yourself and don't let them affect you. Chen Ming also knew that if so many forces had thoughts about him, some unexpected situations might occur in the future. Faced with the boss's reminder, Chen Ming solemnly responded, I understand. I will pay attention to it. Chen Ming recorded this matter in his heart, and suddenly remembered what happened just now, and said, By the way, boss, there is something I need to tell you. There should be leftist elements in the space station now. In addition to the pirates, I just met a fleet from the left side. They came to hunt down Lao Wu because he rented a construction ship. And this would your fleet plan to cause trouble for me together with this group of Free Alliance pirates. It's just that Lao Wu was not on the ship. So they missed the boat. And I also killed the left wing fleet. Chen Ming actually kept a list of the space station's left path personnel in his hand before. And planned to find opportunities to earn some benefits in the future. However, Chen Ming gave out the list of all others would you personnel. So these people had already been purged during the previous internal cleaning of the space station. But I didn't expect that just how long had passed before the left path started to move again, like something growing out of the ground. It can only be said that the situation of the pirate space station is sometimes like this. And it needs to be cleaned up as soon as possible. Otherwise, there might be problems with Lao Wu's security. However, the boss's focus was not on the left path of the space station. Instead, he sounded a little surprised and asked Chen Ming, what ship did you use to kill the left path? How many fleets does the left path have? There were three mules and eleven escorts on the left path. The pirates with them had two destroyers and seven escorts. In the end, only one destroyer and seven escorts were left. The pirates surrendered, and the left path was completely destroyed. The boat I use is a heavy rain. A pair of twenty-three. A complete victory. No one would believe such a record. But the boss was quite convinced when it came to Chen Ming. And the boss also realized a slight problem in Chen Ming's words and said, Not bad. Your psychic abilities have also improved? It shouldn't count. It's just my expansion and use of my psychic powers. That's not bad. Keep working hard. I feel that your potential in the future will be more than what you have now. I will remember to tell you, Lao Wu, that people like Zhu Jing will never be killed. However, there is still little room for Zhu Jing to move on the space station so there is no need to worry too much. Um, okay, that's it. Do you have the video? Give me a copy later. Chen Ming was stunned for a moment and said, My spaceship can't fly back. At most, there may only be videos from the engineering ship and the pirate spaceship I used to detain people. I will send it to you directly then? Okay, then I wish you success with Yu Wei in the future. Let's talk later. Communication ends. At this time, we are here in the dark cemetery. The pirates have all moved to the cheapest sentry ship designated by Chen Ming. The remaining eight ships of the pirates, and even the people on one destroyer, were all crowded together. Although the environment is not very good, being alive is much better than being dead. During the communication, Chen Ming forced the pirate captain to open the porthole protective panels to isolate the inside and outside environment of the spacecraft, and directly removed all the external cameras on the sentinel and used the electromagnetic javelin that Chen Ning had just removed from the iron ore and replaced on the fighter to destroy the spacecraft sensors with one shot. Except for the engine, which cannot be dismantled due to the life support system. All other functions of the spacecraft that can see the outside world have been restricted by Chen Ning. Before the boss's people come, Chen Ning had to deal with the remaining spaceships and the debris from the battle. Dealing with these things definitely requires ability. If you can hide them, try to hide them as much as possible. Although Chen Ming is not in the dark cemetery now, it is not troublesome to deal with the spaceship. The engineering ship only needs to dismantle the bridges of those unmanned spaceships. Find an interface and connect an adapter so the Gamma B can connect to it. And then the spacecraft will be ready. The pirates had a total of two mules and seven escorts. Except for one mule that came up and was blown up by fighter planes. 
and one was to be used to carry the sentries of the pirate members. The remaining one mule and six escorts can all be put into Chen Ming's pocket. Among the remaining six frigates are one sentinel, three expeditions, and two armed merchant ships, the Farstrider class. The overall value is not high. When everything is repaired and sold, the net profit including the mules will be just over 120 million. After subtracting the value of purchasing repair materials and replenishing battle damage, it's not bad. At least if you put it together casually, you can get another heavy rain. Of course, the second heavy rain boat could not come in a hurry, and Chen Ming had other ideas. When all seven of the pirate spaceships came under Chen Ming's control, three more spaceships suddenly approached in the hyperspace of the Dark Cemetery. Based on the direction and model of the three spaceships, Chen Ming could tell at a glance that they were sent by their boss. Two of the three ships are ordinary fighter class frigates. The remaining ship is an electromagnetic auxiliary ship called the current class, similar to Diopter. It is equipped with non-lethal electromagnetic weapons that are usually only used by patrols, and an asteroid traction device similar to the Iron Ore, which is more powerful and can tow a spacecraft. The two ships looked a little shabby. However, there had just been a fight with the military in front of the space station, resulting in heavy losses. Being able to come out with three ships should already be an effort. After the space station ship discovered the situation here, it immediately sent a communication and said, We were sent by Mr. Wu. Chin Ming confirmed with his boss that there was no problem, and replied very simply, Did you see the Sentinel? All the people have been transferred to that ship, and I'll leave it to you. Good. Three sentences won't solve the problem. The three spaceships quickly left after taking control of the Sentinel class filled with pirates. He regards the wreckage of the surrounding spaceships as nothing, and he knows the rules very well. After Chen Ming left, he continued to clean the battlefield. At this time, there are still many wreckage left on the battlefield that have lost the shape of the spaceship. Chen Ming could not control them, but he could collect the wreckage and choose to dismantle it by relying on the open cargo hold of the mule class ship he had just captured. There are a total of four mules and eleven guard wrecks here. Although most of the exploded spacecraft were destroyed by the terrifying power of the Terminator fighter planes. There are not many remaining wreckage, but not much compared to before the spacecraft exploded. All the wreckage combined can still fill the cargo hold of at least a mule and a half. Even after dismantling, the size of the wreckage has been reduced. But the neatly stacked materials can still completely fill the mule's two cubic cargo compartments with an edge length of 30 meters. There are still a lot of materials that can only be piled up in other cabins and you have to find a place to put them after you return. Thanks to the mule that Chen Ming had specially left for him before, he had transformed it into an expanded cargo hold. After removing most of the unnecessary cabins, the number of storage cargo holds could be increased by two. When the time comes, he will pick and choose and stuff the excess into the repair shop. The remaining more valuable ones should be enough to stuff into the mule he keeps for easy access. After a quick run on the mule and disassembly function to clean up, Chen Ming also relied on the materials he had just harvested to perform a wave of repairs on the seven spacecraft in his hands. Make them at least look like a proper ship and not jump from the hands of pirates. Get everything done. Chen Ming arranged the actions after Gamma B and Gamma Z. Then he took the rest of the ship and drove back to the space station with the spacecraft's own autopilot. Half an hour later, a mule carrying six spaceships and an engineering ship successfully arrived at the pirate space station and entered the interior of the repair shop. All the spaceships looked as new as ever, and there was not a single living person on board. Only Lao Wu, who had been fishing for a day, ran onto the spaceship under surveillance. The company must have seen the scene, but they probably wouldn't have stopped Chen Ming from doing this. On Lao Wu's side, after boarding the spaceship that Chen Ming drove back, he very skillfully removed the battery of the terminal he carried with him. I wandered around on the spaceship to the captain's cabin, sat down on the chair in the captain's cabin and asked, Xiao Ming, have you been robbed again? Well, a group of pirates and Zhu Jing. Look, I have all their ships in my hands now. Don't ask for details. By the way, Zhu Jing is keeping an eye on you because you followed me to the auction before. So be careful. Old Wu chuckled and said, Old Wu just told me that it's not a big problem. Can I still be killed by them after living for so many years? He patted the inner wall of the mule class again and asked, So you still want me to sell the boat this time? Yes, it's still the same as before. And the share given to you is also the same as before, including the ships next to it. It's more than 100 million. What are you going to buy this time? I'm still thinking about it. Money has no meaning if it doesn't go out. 
so Chen Ning will definitely find a way to use the money as soon as possible. The place where Chen Ning needs money most now is definitely the fleet. And what the fleet needs most now is definitely to strengthen the weak. Make up for the weaker aspects of the fleet composition. At present, Chen Ming has determined that Diopto, Fighter Kai and Heavy Rain will be added to the fleet. Although these three ships have different functions and powerful effects, they all have one problem. It's just that the ability to withstand the line is not good. If a spaceship like the military Centurion could block the front, the combat effectiveness of Chen Ming's ships would be even greater. And Chen Ming has also tried the Centurion's effect before. It can only be said that when the damping stance is activated and Chen Ming's own repair ability is activated, it can even block the output of a large weapon on the cruiser for about 10 seconds before being destroyed. Not to mention blocking other things. However, Chen Ming now needs more than just guards. After all, the fleet cannot only consist of guards. So Chen Ning is now thinking that it would be best to get a destroyer to resist the line. And he does have some signs now. It was the flagship of Chang Xingha of the 14th Legion who fought with Chen Ming before. That special law enforcer. The name displayed on its panel was 14th Legion Enforcer Class Heavy Destroyer. Whether you look at the name or the spacecraft itself, it is stronger than ordinary law enforcers. Although the enforcer was broken into pieces by the rulers, most of the wreckage of the ship had been collected before Chen Ming. During this period of time on Yue's territory, Chen Ming had already roughly pieced together the fragments of the ship by relying on his skills in spaceships and was already drawing the blueprint. Although the finished product and blueprint will definitely have huge errors and a lot of problems. But Chen Ming can buy an ordinary law enforcer and carry out some modifications that Chen Ming had in mind when repairing the 14th Legion law enforcer. That's just the thing. Old Wu, do you have a way to get the military ship? What do you want? Enforcer, there is everything in the dream. All right. It seems that Chen Ming, the destroyer level ship, can only temporarily put it aside and use the frigate to hold it up first. Can the Centurion do it? You can get some at a 20% premium. Chen Ning thought for a while and found out that the price of a Centurion was between 40 and 50 million. And a premium of 10 to 20 million was still acceptable. Then let's get two ships first. The number of fleets he currently plans is around 30. Which should be the upper limit of the number of fleets he can support alone. Taking two Centurions for temporary transition should be enough. Okay. Old Wu agreed and asked. Is there anything else you want? Regarding the spaceship, Chin Ming had no other ideas for the time being. After all, he would not have much money left after buying the Centurion. However, Chin Ming still has some ideas in other aspects. Is there any way you can get the Machine Clan's chip? What do you want this for? It works. The reason why Chin Ming wanted to acquire the Mechanical Family chip was naturally because of Gamma Z. Although Gamma Z is now an individual that cannot be suspected by Afterglow at all. No matter what. It is only a Gamma level Afterglow. This determines that its influence is definitely not comparable to that of Gamma AB. Two of them have been heavily suspected by Yuhui. Although Yuhui is not yet investigated, it is designated that she is inseparable from Chin Ming. Therefore, Chin Ming is thinking about letting Gamma Z quickly rise to the beta level by eating mechanical chips. At least beta level AI can be responsible for some of Yuhui's large scale production lines. If possible, Chin Ming even wanted to directly upgrade Gamma Z to alpha level. Lao Wu did not bother Chin Ming about concealing his purpose. He thought for a while and said, Although this thing is not of high value, to be honest it is not easy to buy. After all, it was dismantled from the machine tribe. It has dolomite steel on it and some other expensive things inside. Also, I remember that some people are actually buying the chips of the mechanical family. It seems that the government is buying them. I'm not sure. Chen Ming suddenly reacted after listening to Lao Wu's words. He is definitely not the only one who has Afterglow cores on hand. But the chips of the machine tribe are not monopolized by the government, military or various companies that are most likely to have a large number of Afterglow cores. They are just purchased normally. There are obviously restrictions. So Chen Ming directly asked Gamma B, who was still on the way, and received a positive answer. Afterglow absorption mechanical family chips do have limitations because the machine race's chip contains the consciousness of mechanical life like the machine race. If you eat too much, it will produce redundant data just like when they come into contact with things like spiritual stones, which will take time to process. And Chen Ming suddenly thought of another problem that he had to solve. At present, Gamma Z's identity can be said to be clear to Yuhui. But once Chen Ming sends the chip, once it is detected, the problem will be huge. 
There was no reasonable reason for Gamma Z to pick up a machine family chip on Yuhui's territory. Therefore, even if there is no problem of chip absorption limitation, Chin Ming can only let Gamma Z find a way to work hard on its own. And Lao Wu continued to say, If you really want, I can give it a try. I have to go somewhere else, to the star field bordering the mechanical tribe's territory. The price shouldn't be too high, probably three or four times the same weight as Dolomite Steel. I have to check for details. How much do you want? Chin Ming thought about it. Although Gamma Z could not be eaten. Gamma B and Gamma A were not necessarily the same. He also has some afterglow AI controls in other places, which he might be able to use later. So after Chin Ming calculated the approximate price mentioned by Old Wu, he said, 10 of the Mechanical Clan Guard Class Spacecraft chips will be purchased first. Two of the Destroyer Class ones will be purchased first. And the higher level ones will be discarded first. Nothing else? Gone. Okay. Old Wu stood up from the chair in the captain's cabin stretched and said, This is the first time in so many years that I have been so busy. You think you don't have enough money? That's not true. It's just a bit sad that so many years have passed. Lao Wu's words made Chin Ming suddenly curious about his past. However, Old Wu had no intention of elaborating. So Chin Ming did not ask. Lao Wu left the spaceship to help Chin Ming handle the matter. Chin Ming didn't stay here much at the space station and returned his attention to himself. It was only 10 o'clock in the morning earth time. At least, he still had plenty of time before being sent away. So Chen Ning was not in a hurry to continue reading, but looked at the three afterglow individuals he had previously controlled. Examining them doesn't take long, and nothing can be found anyway. Gamma A, who had close contact with Chen Ming, couldn't find any problems, let alone these three. But if it can't be found out, it won't be found out. There is still the afterglow of the precautions that should be taken. The two Yue who had gone down the mine tunnel were each arranged to a small exploration station quite far away from the colony, responsible for the daily maintenance of the exploration station and scanning of undeveloped deep underground resources. As for the AI responsible for controlling the entire mining farm, all evidence can prove that there was no contact with Yu Ming's robot. So I was assigned to a new mining station and had the same job as before. Of course, it is also quite far from the colony. However, after this Gamma AI was implanted in the factory. The factory equipment controlled by the Gamma AI was also controlled by Chin Ming. Although if the AI core is removed, Chin Ming's control of this industrial equipment will be invalid. Just like at the mining farm before. After losing three AI cores controlled by Chin Ming, Chin Ming had completely lost the ability to control them. This is the difference from Chin Ming's ability to control the spacecraft. Chin Ming has nothing to say. His ability to control the spacecraft. Control the core and then indirectly control factory equipment through the core is outrageous enough. Even if he doesn't have this ability, it's not a big problem. As long as the AI core still exists on the device, his control of this industrial equipment is still the same as his control of the spacecraft. Therefore, the other two Yue AIs, who also worked at this mining station also fell into Chin Ming's clutches. But Chin Ming wasn't sure whether Yu Hui was deliberately trapping him. The Gamma AI on the front foot had just been inspected and the Gamma AI on the back foot was given a new working environment and equipped with two new AI subordinates. This made Chen Ning think there might be a problem inside. So he wasn't going to let them have any performance. At least not for a while. If you want to develop rapidly in a short period of time, you still have to rely on Gamma Z. Chapter 114 Gamma Z's Arrangements and the Actions of the 14th Legion Under Chen Ming's Attention Gamma Z and Gamma B entered different galaxies in the afterglow star field at different times. Gamma B continued to let it move freely. While Gamma Z Chin Ming kept an eye on it, Gamma Z was arranged by Chin Ming to a place separated by two afterglow colony galaxies from Chin Ming's current position. After arriving at the Galaxy Center Space Station, after going through the same inspection as last time, he successfully blended back into the afterglow. And we also successfully obtained permission to enter a planet with an industrial colony in the galaxy for supplies. The environment of this planet's industrial colonies is very different from where Chin Ning lives now. Because this is a habitable planet, there is only one continental plate occupying half of the planet, and the rest is ocean. Afterglow's industrial facilities are concentrated on this rugged continent. Although the degree of industrial development here is higher than that of Chin Ning's place, the environment here is actually better. Industrial production equipment does not spew large amounts of pollutants, nor does it use any pollutant-causing fuels and there is no trace of the geocentric furnace energy supply tower that can easily damage the local ecology. Let this planet still maintain a good ecological environment.
But according to Gamma B, the reason why they protect the ecology of this planet is because there is a creature on this planet that looks like a hermit crab, but has a crystal-like carapace and SH. L that lives in the mountains of the continent. The scientific name is Crystal Crab. The SH. L on the back of the energy crystal crab is naturally formed by its own secretions and has the effect of storing energy extremely efficiently. Even if the energy inside these crystals is used up after being removed, they are also an excellent energy storage material. The crystal crab itself will not die due to the loss of its SH. L. But will regrow as daily activities proceed. Energy crystals are of extremely high value. And so are the energy crystal crabs themselves. And this crystal crab is actually a product of genetic engineering. Of course, this is not a product of humans. Nor is it genetic engineering done by Yu Wei himself. It is the legacy left by the destroyed civilization that Yu Wei discovered outside the empire's borders. Afterglow came here faster than humans and occupied it. At first, Yu Wei just wanted to collect resources on the planet. But after discovering these crystal crabs, he changed his development strategy. He chose the development method that Xin Ming saw now and conducted research on the lives left by that civilization. Yu Wei is currently able to cultivate these crystal crabs that have evolved to adapt to the ecology of this planet on a small scale on other planets. But this is not enough. The farmed ones are definitely not as good as the wild ones. After all, if you raise them yourself, the energy to grow the energy crystal crab SH LS on their backs will come from Yu Wei himself. It would obviously be better to continue research into making crystal crabs a link in the ecological chain of other planets, and regularly harvest them on a large scale. Now Chen Ning finally knew where the energy storage materials with their own energy given by Yu Hui came from. Before, he was wondering how Yu Wei could have several kinds of materials that he had never seen or even heard of before. Humans actually have similar self-storage materials. But as far as Chen Ming knows, they are all artificially synthesized self-storage materials and even his abilities may not be adequate. Maybe it will run away after just using the energy, which is completely different from this natural self-storage material. If you can find a way to bring back a few crystal crabs, it must be of extremely high value. But Chen Ning is not here to do this now. Let's see if this idea can be realized in the future. Now, Chen Ming continues to watch Gamma Z control the heavy rain to land at a small supply point that can be seen everywhere in the afterglow colony. It wants to be here, replacing a spaceship that is more suitable for it. After all, heavy rain Chen Ming is still useful. Moreover, a heavy rain ship was wandering around in Yu Wei's territory, and someone in Yu Wei might discover the problem later. If this was investigated and Chen Ming himself was implicated, the problem would be huge. Afterglow is not a rigid machine. They also have doubts. The longer the heavy rain exists, the higher the possibility of being suspected, and the more likely it is to lead to the total collapse of Chen Ming's plan. So when Gamma B goes back to Chen Ming, he won't let it drive the fighter anymore. Instead, he will let it drive the destroyer it got after the upgrade and do whatever it needs to do. Gamma Z quickly followed the signal from the supply point and landed inside the supply point factory. What it does next is simple. Accept the overhaul of the factory. And then use its own material rations once recorded in the database to exchange for a new spacecraft. Chen Ming has also seen this process. The core is unloaded from the spacecraft and then temporarily stored until the new spacecraft is installed. But now that Gamma Z is replacing its core, it is not like the previous Gamma A that was equipped with a separate temporary robot. This time Gamma Z is directly linked to the factory's database. Browse the spaceship stored in the factory for Gamma Z. If there is no spaceship that Gamma Z wants for the time being, you can connect Gamma Z first, and then install it after the spacecraft is transferred. It is quite convenient. So Yu Wei was unsuspecting. This supply point is easy to get. The Gamma AI responsible for supply point maintenance that communicated with Gamma Z also understood the situation the moment Gamma Z connected to the factory. It has no ability to resist Chen Ming. So it can only accept all this and change ships for Gamma Z honestly. Of course, the material rations that should be delivered still have to be delivered. If you save money in this area for the sake of petty gain, you will regret it if something is found out later. Therefore, Chen Ming would rather pay more costs to ensure the highest success rate. Anyway, this doesn't require spending Chen Ming's ration. In short, what Gamma Z just controlled was a supply point, which Chen Ming thought had the best chance of contacting other afterglow individuals after careful consideration. Every afterglow AI that comes here will be controlled by Chen Ming as long as it is connected to the line by Gamma AI. Although this control speed will not be too fast. After all, afterglow's colonies often have many supply points. 
But if the number of afterglow individuals controlled by Qingming increases, to a certain extent at this slow growth rate, the growth rate will continue to grow geometrically. But that's for later. And Gamma Z is here just temporarily. Further back, it needs to be moved to another location. Under the information given before by Gamma A and the subsequent explanation by Gamma B, the final destination chosen by Qin Ming for Gamma Z is a special galaxy open to all afterglow individuals. Qin Ming had previously considered several issues. The biggest problem is that Gamma Z is currently only a gamma level and cannot exert sufficient effects. So it needs to be improved. What's the fastest way to improve? That is naturally to complete Yuhui's mission and obtain the mechanical family chips that are reasonably obtained. And what is the most efficient way to complete the task? Let Gamma Z do its essential work. And it will definitely not work if it is slowly mixed in the production lines of various factories. The efficiency is too slow. Moreover, strategic materials that were important to Yuhui, such as machine family chips, certainly could not be easily transferred through Qin Ming's control of the factory. And it was not easy to be greedy. At least not until Qin Ming's control expands. So Qin Ming must make some other arrangements. Therefore, after careful consideration, high-intensity combat missions were very suitable for Gamma Z. Qin Ming was discussing the mechanical family chip with Lao Wu before. Old Wu said that he would purchase chips from star regions that have a lot of contact with the machine tribe and even border the star territory controlled by the machine tribe. And it just so happened that the star field next to the Gala star field where Qin Ming was located was a star field bordering the mechanical race. If you zoom in a little bit, you can see that the afterglow and the machine race are also bordering each other. Although Yu Wei and the machine race are both existences similar to mechanical life, their direct conflict is not inferior to the conflict between humans and the machine race. It can only be said that the machine race has an extreme and insoluble hatred for human beings. This hatred seems to have also extended to human creations. Afterglow. Therefore, Qin Ming set his goal for Gamma Z. Near the area of Afterglow and the Mechanical Tribe, there is a galaxy where conflicts often break out. There are many opportunities here. According to Gamma B, there is only one colony of Afterglow in this system. It is also a colony that takes into account both heavy industry and military. There are many production lines here in heavy industry that can go through everything from or to final spacecraft. There are a large number of factories that can produce batches of spaceships and put them directly into battle. It is equivalent to putting the military factory directly on the front line. In addition to factories, there are also a large number of planetary defense equipment on the planet to ensure that the planet will never fall. As long as supplies are sufficient and the number of Yuhui individuals can keep up, they will have endless combat power. In this situation where industrial facilities produce and sell themselves, even if the outside world blocks the planet, it will not have much effect. After all, it's not like Yuhui doesn't have the ability to remotely control the spacecraft. Although the efficiency is relatively low, as long as the damage to the individual afterglow is controlled, everything else is a small matter and can be remedied later. As long as Yuhui and the fortress-like planet on the front line of the mechanical race do not fall, Yuhui's territory will remain stable. The machine race has been unable to capture this place for a long time. So they have given up attacking Yuhui directly from here. But they still maintain a low-intensity battle. It was equivalent to helping Yuhui train his troops. After all, fighting is not something that can be learned by putting military tactics in your head. Such a battlefield can provide an environment for rapid improvement for those Gamma AIs whose logical advantage is spaceship driving and combat. The same goes for the mechanical tribe. Such battlefield risks still exist. But they are acceptable. Gamma A has been here before. And so has Gamma B. Although Gamma Z has not come because its advantageous logic block is not spaceships and combat. It has no choice now. If it wants to improve quickly, combat is obviously the most efficient. Method. Gamma B had done this before. But in another place quite far away from Qin Ming's location. There were also mechanical tribes there. And the risk of being discovered was also lower. Just because the conditions at Gamma Z were better. Qin Ming arranged Gamma Z in this place closer to himself. You may be able to provide some support in the event of an accident. It's hard to say exactly who supports whom Qin Ming. Anyway. His thoughts are very clear. Take advantage of the time that Gamma Z is here to rise to beta level. Let the afterglow individuals controlled by him in the colonial factory on the habitable planet grow and expand on their own while remaining secretive. It's certainly okay to let them develop on their own until there aren't many of them. When the number increases, you need to consider the issue of coordination. By that time, Qin Ming estimated that Gamma Z had risen to beta level. Just in time to go back and take over. 
relying on the advantageous logic block and management to help Chen Ming completely control Yu Wei's colony. When the number of afterglows increased later, it was too slow for Chen Ming to give orders one by one. Letting Gamma Z come is definitely a better choice. Of course, if Chen Ming had the opportunity to control an alpha level AI, let alone that. But Chen Ming just wanted to think about it. His purpose is very clear to let the Yue controlled by him continue to expand its size on Yue's chassis. That's all. During this period of time, he will not pay too much attention to these Gamma AIs, lest he suddenly do something out of his mind and be discovered. Leave everything to Gamma Z. He also has some things to do here. Chen Ning planned to take advantage of the last bit of peace he still had to learn everything he needed to learn. There was really no way to determine his own situation after that. Chen Ning once again devoted himself to developing himself. And at the same time, Gallo 2 Star Sector, the former military headquarters of the Star Sector, a planet riddled with volcanoes and unstable geological structures, within a military colony protected by a biodome on the planet. The former headquarters building of the Star Sector military is now the building of the 14th Independent Empire Army, in the office of the former Commander-in-Chief, which has been converted into the office of the 14th Army Corps. The Major General of the 14th Army Corps who had personally threatened him in front of the former major general of the sector military was currently communicating via video chat. On the communication screen, you can see an old man who is probably in his 60s. He is also wearing the military uniform of the 14th Legion, and the badge on his shoulder can prove his identity. Lieutenant General of the 14th Legion, the major general saluted him solemnly, without the fierceness that threatened the major general of the sector military at all. The lieutenant general waved his hand casually with a kind look and said, there is no need to be like this by Quan. We are talking in private now. Do you have anything to do with me? Major General Bai Quan lowered his head slightly and said, I heard that the war on the other side has accelerated recently. Yes, Yu Wei is activating a high energy device, intending to transport things over extremely long distances. What exactly? The Lieutenant General shook his head, took a sip of the tea in front of him and said, I don't know. The front line is still investigating but now they have roughly estimated the size and range of objects that Afterglow's energy level can transport. As a result, your place is right in the middle of the calculated limit distance. Bai Quan, is Sunset planning to move something directly across our empire? Yes, because you have Yu Hui there, and you happen to have a relationship with someone worthy of Yu Hui's actions. In the past few days, we have basically been discussing things on your side. You have to move faster. Bai Quan lowered his head again. Thinking about what the lieutenant general said, the lieutenant general suddenly asked, How did your joint meeting go? Bai Quan quickly raised his head and said, Still organizing. Obviously all the forces involved have ideas about Chen Ming, but they just can't organize them. We didn't bring much supplies when we came here, so we could only provide temporary support. Stargates are not just used to transport supplies. Not to mention there are several stargates. So we need time to reorganize the territory of the original sector army. During this time we have to work with the locals. So, they're kind of now. Bai Quan didn't make his words clear. But the lieutenant general also understood what he meant. But the lieutenant general just smiled. He was not surprised that Bai Quan, who had been promoted all the way through his military exploits, failed in this aspect. This was one of the purposes of sending him out. Although Bai Quan had a headache, he had nothing to be discouraged about. The government is also currently looking for ways to advance this matter. The main issue now is the overall command authority and the ultimate goal. As long as the combined fleet can be organized, the position of command will definitely be ours in the end. And others will not be qualified. We also have the ability to convince others. At most it costs a little bit. The lieutenant general nodded slightly and asked another question by Quan said, Is there any problem with the ultimate goal? The mission should be very clear when you set out. Can the person be rescued? Or is it possible that the person was rescued but couldn't be separated due to wrangling? Bai Quan denied. That's not the problem. People must be saved. After all, we are not just here for Chen Ming. If Xing he is really taken away by him, there is a high probability that Xing he will still be alive. For this reason alone, we have to save him. Although it is indeed difficult to separate the people after they are rescued. The more important issue is, do we need to take this opportunity to stab Yu Hui's hometown along the way? Oh! The lieutenant general looked more energetic, thought about it and said, It's a rash idea, but it does have something to do. Bai Quan brought up a three-dimensional view on the desktop in front of him. It is a galaxy map outside the Gallo Star territory 
and belongs to the Afterglow Star Territory. Although Yue has blocked the forward movement of the spacecraft, it has not blocked the light. Therefore, the general galaxy map can still be confirmed through a telescope. He pointed to this star field and said, There is definitely a replica of Kleka in a certain galaxy here. Tear down the replica, and the afterglow of this star field will lose its backing. We can find a way to clean up these afterglows and continue to expand outwards. The lieutenant general squinted his eyes and looked at the star field through the video communication screen and said, It's not that simple. Send a company, which has the most momentum in this star field, probably won't cooperate with you. Bai Quan nodded immediately and said, Yes, the attitude over there seems a bit complicated. Send a company seems willing to help, but they just want to save Chen Ming and don't want to waste money and trouble you, Hui. But when we mentioned some exploratory tasks, they were very willing to cooperate, and their attitude was very strange. I think it's because of their sky steel that their attitude towards us has changed like this. I don't really want to argue with this, but the logistics are not under my control. The lieutenant general recalled for a moment and said, Logistics? Is it that young man named Ping? Yes. He said he wanted to use this to make some money. The lieutenant general frowned slightly and said, I know something about this matter. The mining rights of Shinda Company were usurped by the original group of losers relying on their authority. Right. Don't do this kind of thing. It will be embarrassing to tell it. Bai Quan also looked a little helpless and said, I told him the same thing. But he said that he felt that Shinda thought that we were going to occupy these sky steels like those wastes. So he took this opportunity to rely on if you make a little profit from the information gap. Sky Steel will definitely go through the process and pay it back. The lieutenant general relaxed his frown and said, That's okay. Then I'll give you a reminder. I think Chin Ming's current situation is actually very bad. He may have plans to hang out with Yu Hui because of what happened before. But Yu Hui is not easy to get along with. There must be a big problem with what Yu Hui wants to send away. It is aimed at Chin Ming. Or it is really aimed at you who want to rescue Chin Ming. Chin Ming will definitely be saved now. So you must pay attention if the front line fails. Try to find a way to contact Chin Ming directly. Bai Quan calmed down his expression. Returned to his original calm appearance and said, I also want to contact him. But our intelligence sources are still too few. Currently, it seems that only Cinda Company has the means to contact him. And even if we get in touch, I don't think it will work. Cinda Company doesn't have more information than us. They just have the contact information with Chen Ming. Yu Hui's information is still only the part that Chen Ming left before. Even if Chen Ming is contacted, there won't be much change in this regard. If Chen Ming doesn't find a way to do something on his own, even if there is no Yu Hui in the future, there may be accidents during the rescue. The lieutenant general did not give Bai Quan a reminder this time, and just said, That is the problem you have to solve. A person suddenly appeared on the communication screen. He was also a young man, and looked to be in his early 20s. She is a girl with short ear-length hair, wearing a smart military uniform. She stood next to the lieutenant general and faced the communication screen, with an obviously deliberate seriousness on her expression as she said, The connection between Chin Ning and Shinda Company should not be broken, but no information has been transmitted back at all. Now I am even a little bit worried about this situation. Suspect? The lieutenant general took a sip of tea, reached out, and slapped her on the back of the head mercilessly and said, The more you say not to do such a thing, the more likely others will do it. From his resume, Chin Ming is completely there is no anti-human tendency. As long as we can deal with the previous matters fairly, and send those members of the sector army to where they should be sent. Such as the judgment stand. The girl covered the back of her head, her expression no longer serious, but asked casually, Is this enough? The lieutenant general nodded and said, Someone said enough is enough. He was the person who gave our legion the smuggling information in the military region. It is certain to save Chen Ming. And it is certain to save Cheng Xinghe. Don't wait for Xinghai to die outside all day long. Having fewer competitors is not a good thing. Cheng Xinghai sat next to him with some regret. His eyes gradually fixed on the lieutenant general's tea and snacks. The major general ignored Cheng Xinghai, pushed up his glasses and said, My current basic goal is that the two of them will definitely not change but I want to do something extra while completing the basic goals. So the main purpose of my contact this time is to confirm the fleet that the Legion can provide. If it is not provided, I have to take the initiative to apply. The Lieutenant General had no objection to this. Bai Quan was already a Major General, and he knew very well what should be done and what should not be done. However, he gave another suggestion. You can wait for two days and see the situation on the front line here. 
Frontline advantage. Kill that thing you Hui is working on. You have to apply for it yourself. But if you are at a disadvantage and allow you Hui to successfully send the things away, we will have to invest more resources in you. And there will definitely be battleships. Yu Wei is making big moves. And we want to bring back our people who can make big moves in the future. Chen Ming or Chang Xingha. Forget it. Chen Ming's ability is nothing to say. And Xingha's potential is also very good. The new batch of special warships we are cooperating with Tachyon need a commander with sufficient capabilities. The new ship's combat method is very different from the old ship. And may subvert the current battle line system. We are too old and rigid to adapt to the new spaceship. But he is still young and still has a lot of time to learn. Chang Xinghai, who had just disappeared for a short while with the snacks, suddenly appeared on the communication screen again, with a trace of annoyance on his face. He said, I am also young, and I also have potential. Why don't you talk about me? Yeah, you count as one. The lieutenant general responded vaguely twice. Bai Quan asked about the ships that the vice admiral just mentioned. I heard that those ships are still in the experimental stage. And even the escort level ships cannot be stabilized? Yes. So Chen Ming is also very important. If Chen Ming comes back together, when Chung Xingha has enough battlefield experience and can stand alone, he will definitely make achievements in the technology of these new spaceships. Even if he doesn't want to develop in this area, there is no doubt that his ability is strong in combat. Did you all watch the video of that battle? You all know the combat effectiveness of the spaceships controlled by him. We have to keep these two guys no matter what. So I don't want to hear anything like that. The lieutenant general stared at Chung Xinghai next to him seriously. The playful expression on Chung Xinghai's face subsided, and he nodded solemnly. A look of satisfaction appeared on the lieutenant general's face, and he said, Xinghai, your potential is also quite good. Together with the two of them, we will definitely be the main force for us humans to compete with Yu Hui and Yu Machinery Clan in the future. The lieutenant general turned to look at Bai Quan and asked, Except for the joint meeting. How is the overall situation over there? We are still consolidating our fundamentals. So it's not easy to make any big moves. Right now, we should focus on building a good relationship with the local gangster. Shinda Company. Slowly take over what the previous military left behind. Lay a good foundation. And then think of ways to expand when the opportunity arises. Lieutenant General Bai Quan had no objection to what he did. Well, just make steady progress. We are now somewhat restricted by the afterglow and must find some other ways to go. You can now be regarded as the pathfinder for our 14th army in the Gala Star territory. We only need to be stable in terms of development. But in other matters, especially the rescue of Chen Ming and Chang Xingha, we must not be too cautious. Bai Quan's eyes suddenly became sharp. I understand. I'm already organizing the advanced troops. Chapter 115, Unstable Hyperspace Channel Jump Engine, and Afterglow's Test? Two days flew by. Chen Ming studied peacefully for two days after sending Gamma Z into the star field of Afterglow. As of today, he has read all the technical books given by Yu Hui after his last review. And I have almost read the technical book from Tachyon Technology that Lao Wu gave me before. I have read all the basic level books, solved 80% of the entry level books, and can quickly make up for the remaining 20% of scattered books. Lao Wu doesn't have any more advanced technical books on hand. The only way for Chen Ming to obtain new knowledge is through Yu Hui. So Chen Ming thought about it now, decided to conduct a second review in advance, and took the initiative to contact Hui Wang. Hui Wang didn't have any bad attitude toward Chen Ming in the past two days, and he still maintained the same attitude as before. Soon Hui Wang was connected to Chen Ming's communication equipment, and this time, Hui Hui asked Chen Ming as usual, Mr. Chen, what do you need? Chen Ming said without any nonsense. I want to conduct a second review in advance. Okay. Please wait. Hui Wang agreed decisively. And Chen Ming didn't know whether this was a good thing or a bad thing. Because Yu Hui's current attitude makes him very unpredictable. He can clearly feel that the workload required of him has increased in recent days. Increasing at a speed visible to the naked eye. The workload of one day can even be said to have double compared to the previous day. And Chen Ming's work relies on psychic energy. In other words. If the workload continues to increase, it is very likely that Chen Ming will fall down from exhaustion after working for 10 minutes. This is obviously intended to restrict Chen Ming. But Hui Hui's behavior was very normal and friendly. So friendly that even Chen Ming felt a little abnormal. While working, Hui Wang would occasionally take the initiative to help Chen Ming mobilize factory equipment 
and help him complete other tasks that did not require the use of psychic powers, but required manual control. Help Chen Ming prioritize the day's tasks in advance, and even inform Chen Ming of the tasks for the next day the day before so that he can prepare in advance. These detailed arrangements really made Chen Ming's life easier, but it also made him feel a little uncomfortable in his heart. But although there was something wrong with the brilliant kindness, Chen Ming did not intend to refuse forcefully. I still chose to accept it, and plan to take a closer look at what brilliance meant in the future. Soon, Hui Wang sent all the documents for the written examination and the things needed for the actual operation to the factory main control room. When Chen Ming opened the file, he knew that this second review would not be difficult for him. If he had wanted to, he would have been able to conduct the second review the night after the first review. It was just that Chen Ming had to think before writing. But now, he could write with his eyes closed. An hour passed in a blink of an eye. Hui Wang confirmed that Chen Ming passed the second review and received an excellent rating. And after this review passed, it also gave Chen Ming something new. The first and most important thing are some professional books based on the most basic shimmer class unmanned frigate in the Afterglow fleet. It is to disassemble the different components of the low-light level equipment and explain them in detail one by one. After learning them all, Chen Ning will be able to master the manufacturing method of this shimmer. In addition to shimmer itself, these professional books will also have one or two other books that continue to follow the research trend of the book. The content is still mainly expanded in three aspects, energy weapons, radiation systems and shields. Of course, there are also some other books that allow Chen Ming to understand the design ideas of the Afterglow battleship, or some independent and special technical books. For example, Chen Ming saw a book that described the technologies and differences between jump engines, hyperspace lane engines, and blink engines, as well as a supporting technical document that is still under experiment. The content is probably about the experimental possibility of hyperspace jump extended from the jump engine. Chen Ning flipped through it casually. During this period, even if the workload increases, I still have almost 10 hours a day to learn and gain more professional and technical experience. It seems that this technology is possible in his hands. It seems that he only needs to study it to achieve some exaggerated effects. This time, Yu Wei seemed to have handed over some very valuable technologies to himself. I don't know if he is not worried about Chen Ning continuing to cause trouble at all. Or if he has other ideas. Or is this thing like the previous antimatter shock wave, a research direction that Yu Wei has given up on? No matter what it is, Chen Ming must sort everything out. This gave him something he couldn't refuse. In addition to these, Chen Ming also suddenly discovered two books in the files that were somewhat unrelated to these. But when he first received the documents, he seemed to have no impression of these two books. Strange. When did you receive it? Chen Ming looked at the general content of the book with doubts. One of them is a research report on the bad compatibility between afterglow and ectoplasmic stones and psychic contact. And the other is a book on biotechnology where afterglow has good development momentum. It is about Yue finding valuable life on various planets with life. And then using various methods to breed it. Such as professional breeding farms or cloning and other technologies. There happens to be a creature like a crystal crab among them. Chen Ning couldn't help but frown when he saw this. Sunset couldn't possibly know Gamma Z's whereabouts. Otherwise Gamma Z would be dead by now. It should be just a coincidence that some of the contents in this document are related to crystal crabs. But why did Sunset give him this? These two documents were very special and had absolutely no connection with what he usually studied. Moreover, Chen Ming didn't have any knowledge in this area and couldn't quite understand the parts containing professional terms. At most, he could tell what he was researching. This doesn't seem right. Chen Ming took another inventory and found that including the two books he couldn't understand, excluding the previous ones, there were a total of 42 documents that could be considered books on the computer in the main control room of the factory. But in the computer records in the main control room, there is no trace of the entry of these two special books. The other 40 copies are all recorded in considerable detail. This is not what Yu Wei should give him. But those who have access to the factory should only be brilliant. Is this what brilliant did? Why does it do this? Was it Yu Hui's test of him? Or, the communications between Chen Ming and Hui Hui must have been recorded and monitored. It was impossible for Chen Ming to ask now. He could only transfer the two books to the iron mine number first, delete the records in the computer, and hide the matter. Whatever the reason behind this incident, whether it was the afterglow or the brilliant decision, there will surely be other actions after them. Chen Ming just needs to wait patiently, and it will be, okay. Two days after the assessment ended, Chen Ming was sitting in the captain's cabin of the iron ore. 
his eyes focused on the panel in front of him that only he could see. At this time, he discovered that there was something awesome about his ability. As long as it is a technology related to transformation that he has learned. As long as the technology is logically reasonable and can be realized in theory. Then, Chin Ning can directly install this technology where it should be installed. Since the technology has been installed, it is a matter of course to start. As for why Chin Ming discovered this, the reason lies in the previous books related to various special engines and the unfinished experiment. Chin Ming did not study anything else in the past two days, but spent most of his time studying and summarizing this experiment. Rely on past experiences in your mind, current knowledge, and research data in books. Eventually, a new transformation technique was learned. Unstable hyperspace channel jump engine. The name of this thing seems deceiving. But in fact, it is just an advancement of hyperspace channel system technology. And it is not a degradation of the jump engine at all. After all, Chin Ming's understanding of the jump engine, which can only be installed on cruisers and above, can be said to be zero. Therefore, the key to this hyperspace channel jump engine is to rely on hyperspace and gravity well, rather than jump. As for its effect, Chin Ming can only say that he probably knows. Probably. First of all, its startup method is similar to that of the hyperspace channel engine. However, one advantage is that it will not stop or be interrupted once it is started, and can be forcibly started under the influence of blocking pulses. After it is started, it will take the spacecraft equipped with this engine and perform an effect similar to a jump in the direction of the gravity well inside the hyperspace channel. Since it itself needs to be close to the gravity well and use the power of the gravity well to achieve its functions, it does not need to be activated outside the galaxy. Of course, in reality, this thing is completely different from the high precision long distance and large scale jump of the jump engine. And the nature is also completely different. It is purely similar in expression. There is also the need to rely on hyperspace gravity wells. Need to be equipped with hyperspace channel engines, etc. But its biggest shortcoming can also be said to be an advantage. The landing point of the transition after it starts is unknown. After it is started, no one knows where it will go along the gravity wells of stars in different galaxies or massive objects. It can only be used when you are forced into a desperate situation and gamble your life. So Chen Ning couldn't help but complain when he just mastered this technology. Why such a deadly trump card again? It was the same before. The trump card he had that could get you his support didn't have to be fine. But once he used it, he would probably fall into another dilemma. It won't be used unless you are in a desperate situation. If you use it, it may cause other dangers to your life. And this time too. Who knows where a random jump along the gravity well can send him. But something is better than nothing. At the last moment, no matter how dangerous the method is, you have to use it. And Chin Ming also saw other values here. Not only the engine may be stabilized in subsequent development. At the same time, there is also Chin Ming's own ability. For example, this engine. Or this kind of unstable modifications and accessories. For Yu Wei. The risk of using such a spacecraft equipped with unstable experimental equipment or itself is experimental is very high. Once an accident occurs and something is damaged, you have no choice but to bear huge losses and start all over again. But Chin Ming is different. Chin Ming can repair. He can forcibly suppress various possible failures through the repair function and record them. This is very meaningful in the research and development of various weapons and equipment. No matter how much paper data you have, it can't compare to an actual experiment. So, Chin Ming decided to commit suicide. No, to test this unstable transition system. Chin Ming immediately transformed this unstable hyperspace channel jump engine on diopter. After taking the boat outside, I started this engine directly. Then the refraction disappeared. Yu Hui was already paying attention to Chin Ming when the refraction started and immediately noticed this abnormality. Brilliant communication immediately sounded here in Chin Ming. After being connected, Chin Ming said directly without waiting for Hui Wang to ask. I installed the hyperspace channel jump engine in the documents you gave me before on Diopter. I spent two days researching and came up with a result. But as you can see, the results are very unstable. It entered hyperspace after activation, and then was torn apart by the gravity well. At this time, Hui Wang had judged that there was nothing wrong with the first few sentences that Chin Ming said. He had personally read all the documents handed to Chin Ming, and knew what was in them. Naturally, they also know what kind of problems they have with their semi-abandoned hyperspace channel jump engine. However, he obviously did not expect that Chen Ming spent two days studying something that could not be carried out in the experimental stage. 
and successfully transformed it, and finally completed an experiment. As for the results of the experiment that Chen Ning finally said, Hui Wang didn't believe it at this time, but he still said, I know, and report the information quickly. Hui Wang quickly received a reply and said to Chen Ming, Engine-related experiments are prohibited from now on. All dangerous experiments must be informed to me in advance. No problem. Chen Ming agreed decisively, adding by the way, even if you want me to conduct such an experiment, I have to have a spaceship. Right. Hui Wang didn't say much and left again soon. Chen Ming's eyes were fixed on refraction. Refractive certainly can't be torn apart by a gravity well. After activating the unstable jump device, it had already been thrown away to an unknown place. However, according to the design of the engine from Chen Ming's previous research, it can still be ensured that even if it is thrown away, the spacecraft can still appear near the gravity well. At this time, through the refractive sensor, Chen Ming could see the thick purple clouds and lightning outside the spacecraft. The nearby hyperspace clouds are obviously thicker than those near the pirate space station. But there are still a few channels leading to other places. Chen Ming did not enter the channel, but directly used the gravity well to leave the hyperspace. Based on the surrounding star data scanned by the sensor and the galaxy map he had on hand, the current position of the refraction was quickly confirmed. It has not strayed too far from the Imperium of Man. And by coincidence, it happened to appear at the intersection between Yue and the machinery ray star domain. This long and narrow area where the two sides meet extends from the direction of the human empire, and the refraction is now at the end of this extended line. This place usually serves as a buffer zone between Yue and the machinery clan, and battles do not often break out, especially in the corner where Diopter is currently located. If you want to go back, although you have to pass through the long junction buffer zone, if you pay attention, you should not encounter danger. But Chen Ning suddenly thought of something at this time. The star field controlled by Afterglow has a certain range. Because Afterglow came here from the direction, they left the Empire in a full circle. The star field currently controlled by the Machine Tribe is also limited. Also because the Machine Tribe here is not the original Machine Tribe. According to historical records, it seems that some mechanical races came here in order to pursue the humans, who had explored the unknown star territory in the past. After being blocked by the Empire, they gradually developed and settled here. Therefore, Outside the star field controlled by Yuhui and the machine tribe, it is still unknown. At this position of refraction, you can actually try to go out and explore it. Although the diopter is not an exploration ship, it can still conduct a rough and simple scan of the planet. Scan the surface of the planet, take a few photos to record it, and confirm whether it is a habitable planet and whether there are any mineral veins directly exposed on the surface or shallow on the surface. Scan out a rough data, which can be used as a reference later. Saving time for actual investigations in the future. Chen Ming has not forgotten what his boss mentioned before. About finding a suitable star system to establish a colony outside the Empire's territory. Although the premise is that Chen Ming and Yu Hui have a good relationship. But as the boss said before. Finding some valuable galaxies and planets has value in itself. And it does not necessarily mean building colonies. Moreover. When humans pioneered in the past. They always protected their own colonies and never said they needed Yue's protection. Why can't we build it ourselves? Of course, now Chen Ming only has some such thoughts, and has not taken the initiative. Things like colonization still have to be left to professionals. What he has to do now is to calculate how long the fuel can last for the voyage, and leave a certain margin for the return voyage. Then, among the galaxies closest to the refractive present, locate those yellow dwarfs, orange dwarfs, and red dwarfs, that are the stars most likely to find habitable planets. Habitable planets are the easiest high-value planets for Chen Ming to confirm their value, and the easiest to discover when he only has one ship. Chen Ming planned the route quickly. It is not troublesome to let the refractive autopilot arrive near the gravity well, and wait for Chen Ming to control it himself. Chen Ming estimated that it would take about a week or so to survey the buffer zone for an area of about 50 light years. After all, not all star systems have planets and not all planets require close inspection. So in this case, the investigation is not troublesome. After arranging the short-term action after refraction, Chin Ming devoted himself to studying again. To Chin Ming's surprise, he continued to stay in the factory safely for a week. Yu Hui didn't send Chin Ming away directly because he caused trouble again. Even Chin Ming's previous expectation that Yu Hui had almost arranged for him elsewhere seems to have to be questioned. Chin Ming had no new ideas these days. Apart from studying, 
he just followed Yu Hui's requirements and carried out various tasks. As the day changes, Yu Wei gives Chen Ming more and more complex tasks every day. Some tasks even required Hui Hui to teach Chen Ming step by step on the spot, which made Chen Ming very suspicious that Yu Hui was testing his learning ability. Just take the test. Chen Ming doesn't care anymore anyway. He just wants to learn as many techniques as possible. After all, this may be his last chance to obtain technology from Yu Wei. Moreover, brilliant teaching is definitely more efficient than Chen Ming's reading every day. Brilliance is the afterglow of the alpha level. And its ability is definitely more than enough to teach Chen Ming. It's just that as the daily work increases, Chen Ming's mental energy consumption also intensifies. The remaining energy for learning is shrinking. Yu Hui also seem to be deliberately controlling the amount of work. Not to the point of completely overwhelming Chen Ming. But to keep Chen Ming's mental energy at a relatively moderate level after work. I can feel tired. But it's not like I can't do anything else. Hui Wang tried its best to meet Chen Ming's needs for a resting environment these days. Chen Ming was able to get all kinds of sleeping aids he wanted. And even prepared some extra for Chen Ming. And the time has reached the seventh day when Chen Ming said die after away. Which is today. At the beginning of today's daily work, Hui Wang sent the work content as usual. Chen Ming already knew what it was before entering the warehouse. A tachyon spear. The name displayed on the panel is Box Type Afterglow Tachyon Spear 01 Test Type. Chen Ming has seen the 01 test type many times in the past few days. Chen Ming also touched one of Yu Wei's tachyon spears a few days ago. But the door delivered today is very obviously different from the previous door. Not only because today's tachyon spear has an extra plug in accessory, but also because the panel of this tachyon spear has a 0 2 ammunition reserve. It seems to correspond to the box type in the name. Chen Ming said nothing and repaired it as required. Immediately, Chen Ming saw two capsule like objects completely wrapped in metal appearing inside the plug and accessory. This should be the ammunition for the tachyon spear. Yu Wei transformed the tachyon spear, which relies on energy storage to achieve the final attack effect, into a mode that can attack through bullets, with a large amount of self storage materials installed inside. Let the energy accumulation time be solved by consuming the prepared ammunition, which greatly increases the shooting speed. As a result, all it has left to solve is the problem of weapon cooldown. But Chen Ning felt that this transformation method was not very effective. Because such transformation can be achieved even without him. Now Yu Wei has sent this tachyon spear over just to test that he can quickly replenish the bullets of this spear. And Yu Wei obviously knew that his psychic energy could quickly cool down weapons. Therefore, if the effect is really to be sufficient, Chen Ning can only do it in person. Is Yu Wei still thinking about relying on his psychic powers now? Chen Ming didn't think so. What he did before should be enough for Yu Wei to stamp him with a dangerous seal. It is impossible for them to hand over this kind of tachyon spear to him. However, Chen Ming still lacked Yu Wei's information and could not speculate on a possible outcome. Moreover, the tachyon spear became more and more strange as it looked. So that Chen Ning finally couldn't help but asked Hui Hui, Why did you design the weapon like this? Chen Ning didn't expect Hui Wang to answer this question. But Hui Wang really did. Because your psychic powers are still effective enough against such a weapon. Chen Ming became more and more confused after hearing this answer and asked. You will let me control the spacecraft and weapons? The factory's lighting system suddenly flickered abnormally. Hui Wang said as if he hadn't noticed. Yu Wei will never believe in humans. But Yu Wei's individuals will never completely believe in Yu Wei. Question mark. Just when Chen Ming was thinking about the meaning of this sentence. Hui Wang suddenly said. There is another notice. We will arrange for you to travel to other galaxies immediately. You have a total of one and a half days today and tomorrow to prepare. Leave on time at 8 o'clock in the morning earth time the day after tomorrow. This notice interrupted Chen Ming's train of thought. Although it was sudden, it was still expected. What will happen next is not detailed at this time. But Chen Ming feels that the treatment will not be much better. And if he just leaves, it will definitely be more difficult to leave Yu Wei's territory in the future. But Chen Ming has no choice now. The consequences of not cooperating can be figured out with a little thinking. So Chen Ming chose to be more decent and cooperated by himself. In fact, he also has a feeling now that what he did before has accelerated this process. But again, Chen Ming will definitely accept the consequences of his actions. So where exactly are you going? Chen Ming asked another question casually, but also didn't expect a brilliant answer. But Hui Wang suddenly sent Chen Ning a star map of the afterglow starfield that he was very familiar with. There are only two marks on it. One is Chen Ming's current galaxy. And the other is a place very close to the galaxy where Chen Ming speculates 
that the replica of the Klecka supercomputer is located. It was one of the colonies in the system that surrounded Klecka. Here! Hui Wan left two words and prepared to leave. But Chen Ning suddenly reacted and immediately interrupted before Hui Wan left. Wang Wang! You are Yue! What do Yue believe? We believe in Afterglow ourselves. After Hui Wan finished speaking, he left completely, leaving only Chen Ning alone in the factory. One thing that Chen Ming has always noticed is that when Hui Wang talks about official matters, that is, things arranged by Yu Wei, he usually calls himself, we. Only occasionally do I call myself, I. Brilliance just said before that not all individuals in Afterglow believe in Afterglow. The we mentioned later in answering Chen Ming's question is very interesting. But Chen Ming is still not sure whether this is Yu Hui's test. He also needs more information. And this takes time. So now, Chin Ning could only follow Yu Hui's request and start packing. However, Chin Ning was not in a hurry to start. After all, he still had the rest of the day and the whole day tomorrow. So Chin Ning might as well do something else. And then go somewhere else and have no free time. Chin Ning set his sights on the sentry of the pirate space station and prepared to contact Lao Wu. Chapter 116 Yu Hui's Urgency Old Wu, who was shaken by Chin Ning, quickly walked to the sentry again. After Chen Ming became busy with various needs, his energy and energy seemed much better than before. However, his habit has not changed. He ran to the captain's cabin as soon as he got on the ship, sat down on the chair, crossed his legs and asked, Xiao Ming, what happened this time? Chen Ming was not in a hurry to explain the matter, but said, No hurry. Let me tell you the bad news first. I'm about to leave my original position and go to a galaxy within a galaxy. I can't change you with sudden arrangement. I have to send this news out for me. And don't let the company turn around and make a fuss. Because I may be short of time in the future. So I will take advantage of the last bit of time to try some new things. Oh. Old Wu nodded and asked. You said Yue was going to send you to a new place? Where? As soon as he finished speaking, Old Wu saw a star map displayed on the control panel in front of him. With a galaxy marked on it. Here? Okay. But why did they suddenly change places for you? Chin Ming responded. It's not sudden. It will happen sooner or later. The location I was in before was just a place where Yu Wei temporarily placed me. They will definitely send me to a place with tighter security and richer technical equipment. I thought about it before. But at this point, I'm still a little reluctant to let it go. Old Wu asked with some confusion. What's the reluctance to give up? I was a bit reluctant to part with the technology, supplies, and environment. Yu Wei gave me two tachyon spears for experimentation. And more. To be honest, I was a little embarrassed to cheat Yu Wei too much. The tachyon spear is indeed awesome. But I heard that you blew up a mining site in Afterglow. Do you call this an embarrassing pit? I can't say that. I was still very sad when I was cheated. Old Wu said casually. What's so sad about this? It has been so many years since Yu Wei defected from humanity. How many people have died in the wars every year? You want to say that other people who are far away are not counted. As for those who are close, didn't you just encounter two afterglow attacks some time ago? They were not merciful to you at that time. And you were almost killed. You are so sad. Two. Old Wu, who thought Chen Ming was talking nonsense, suddenly seemed to realize something was wrong and asked quickly, Are you serious? Do you really feel this way? Chen Ming didn't lie. He said honestly, It's a little bit. Good guy. Are you being PUA'd? I just give you some benefits and you're like this? Wait, how old are you? 25. I'll just say it. Lao Wu suddenly said in an old-fashioned manner. Xiao Ming, you are still too young and have little experience. When I looked at your resume before, it seemed that you were just studying hard and working hard all the way up to where you should be the maintenance team leader. Right? Right. So, if you knew more about people and the world, learn how to flatter others observe their behavior, and deceive your colleagues. Wouldn't your skills have been improved long ago? Why would you still be a small team leader? You still feel bad because you cheated Yu Wei? What are you thinking about? You know, Yu Hui is very smart. If you have this idea in your mind, they will make a lot of money. If they treat you better in the future, will you still feel uncomfortable? As you continue to feel uncomfortable, one day you won't want to trick them anymore. Wouldn't that be bad? Chen Ning thought about it carefully and found that it was exactly what Lao Wu said. Of course, Chen Ming is not referring to the bunch of little tricks that Lao Wu mentioned in the workplace. Even though it is clear that these things can be learned if he wants to, 
He doesn't really want to learn them. And there is no special reason. He just doesn't want to. And he also has a feeling that if he really learns it, his interpersonal relationships will be quite different from what they are now. Therefore, Chen Ming simply ignored what Old Wu said. The focus was on what Old Wu said about Yu Hui's approach and the background of the inevitable conflict between Yu Hui himself and Chen Ming, who is a human being. The conflict between Yu Hui and human beings has been brewing for a long time. And it is definitely not something that Chen Ning can alleviate through normal communication with Yu Hui. But it is not impossible to solve the conflict between Yu Wei and humans. But this method is more difficult. Therefore, even if Chen Ming is doing this to a certain extent now, there is no guarantee that he will be able to do it. But after what Old Wu said, Chen Ming suddenly became more confused. What did Hui Wang's words mean? Who does Hui Wang believe in? What is it again? Never mind. At least Lao Wu's words made Chen Ning completely let go of the psychological barriers that suddenly appeared in his heart before. And he could continue to trick Yu Hui without any burden. After Lao Wu reminded him, he didn't say much. He followed what Chen Ming had just said and asked, So what are you trying this time? Come to me, and it will most likely be the effect of your psychic energy again? It's almost the same. But it's more than that. You can put the experiment aside for now. I have something else to tell you. Something about my fleet and pirates. Chen Ming's current fleet prototype has been built. The two centurions he had asked Old Wu to buy for him were already parked at the pirate space station. Heavy Rain and Fighter Guy had also been sent back here by Chen Ming a few days ago. There is also a diopter, which is also on its way back. According to Chen Ming's previous arrangements, the refraction was already among hundreds of galaxies within a 50 light year diameter area outside the buffer zone of the afterglow mechanical family, based on the possibility of stars having habitable planets. We ran through most of the galaxies. After simple scanning, the number of valuable galaxies confirmed can only be said to be very small. There are only six in total. There are planets with life inside the two galaxies. One of them is a habitable planet, and the atmosphere of the other one contains toxic components and is not considered habitable. But the existence of life is enough value. Among the other four galaxies, three have open pit mineral veins discovered by refraction on the surface of planets in the galaxy. And they are all high value mineral veins similar to tungsten, titanium, nickel, and cobalt. And the last one is very special. It is also a habitable planet and has no toxic components in its atmosphere. But there are some things on it which are similar to the psychic pulse generators of the mechanical clan that Chen Ming has seen before. Some mechanical clan style buildings. And they are not relics. But they were still intact when Diopter discovered them. Most likely due to dormant equipment. Chen Ming didn't know if there were any mechanical people in these buildings. But in short, he didn't let Diopter get too close. He just recorded it and investigated it later. Of course, these valuable galaxies are only the results of simple refractive scans. There must be more than just the things Chen Ming scanned in these galaxies. There must be other things. And Chen Ming did not scan those gas or ice giant planets because they were too dangerous. So after Chen Ming has an exploration ship with detailed scanning capabilities, he should go back and take a look. And he should be able to find more valuable planets. Of course, it's definitely not possible now. And the results of scanning the planet have nothing to do with Lao Wu. The important thing now is that the refraction has come back after the scan is completed. Moreover, Chen Ming had previously obtained a spaceship identification code for Di Guang through the factory director so that he could operate properly within the empire. Of course, Di Guang's weapons made it difficult for him to enter the Prosperous Star Field. But the number of pirates in the Prosperous Star Field is obviously not as good as that in the Edge Star Field. And Chen Ming has no thoughts about the past. In short, Chen Ming now has five ships, which can be called a small fleet. Now that he has a fleet, he will naturally find trouble with pirates. After learning about Chen Ming's purpose, Old Wu immediately reacted and said, Pirate! You told me to come here before. And I checked it out for you. But pirates are all living people. If the time lag is too long, you won't know where they've gone. If you need it, I can help you find all the people nearby who have bounties on them right away. Okay, I'll tell you now. Probably within the next few days. It just so happened that it took time for the refraction to go back. So Chen Ming was not in a hurry. He believed that Old Wu would help him find the pirates. So another thing. Let the experiment of ability go outside. This experiment cannot avoid other people. Old Wu stood up and moved his hands and feet. And walked down the sentry line. Chen Ming switched his perspective to the heavy rain park next to him. And looked at the sentinel through the heavy rain's camera. Chen Ming's eyes first scanned the surroundings. 
he could see that there was an extra layer of partitions around the corner of the repair shop where several of his ships were parked to separate it from other areas in the repair shop that could be rented out. I don't know what the factory director or other people in the company think. Chen Ming glanced twice, then looked away. At the same time, he opened the sentinel's panel and the dim panel that Chen Ming had placed in the dark cemetery for a long time. Chen Ming had read the technical books given by Yu Hui a few days ago that used Shimmer as a teaching blueprint. Accordingly, in addition to learning those techniques, he also mastered Shimmer's blueprint. As long as Chen Ming is given enough equipment and materials, he can build a new Shimmer on the spot. So Chen Ming planned to give it a try. Not through the device, of course, but through his panel capabilities. Although Chen Ming was working hard every day to consume his mental energy during this period, and at the same time, he was still relying on the live stone to exercise his mental strength. His mental strength increased again, and the number of controllable spaceships on the panel increased to four. But the manufacturing function still does not appear on the panel. Therefore, Chen Ming's idea was to find another way. At the risk of losing a shimmer, use the transformation function to transform the sentinel into a shimmer. Chen Ming can completely bear this loss. And this idea is also feasible. As Chen Ming deepened his study of various technologies, Many things that were not there before gradually appeared on the transformation panel. Chen Ming can now modify the entire spacecraft. Chen Ming can modify everything from the cabins and sections of the spacecraft to the details of every corner of the spacecraft. And even the angle of a certain radiation pipe. When Chen Ming transformed all parts of a ship into the shape of the Afterglow spacecraft. This ship is the Afterglow ship. After Lao Wu left the century for a while, Chen Ming started. He first directly disassembled the glimmer which had not been used much since he obtained it, and turned it into neat materials. And under his active control, he appeared in the storage compartment of the mules parked in the repair shop. These materials did not stay for long, and soon turned into liquid and gathered together, seeping out of the ship, flowing past Old Wu's feet, and towards the sentry. Upon seeing this, Lao Wu squatted down and reached out to hold a handful. But the metallic liquid slipped from his hand in an instant like weightless water. These liquids completely enveloped the sentinel, and all the structure of the sentinel itself was pushed away and piled up next to it. This transformation lasted about 30 seconds, which was much faster than the five minutes Chen Ming had pretended to be in front of Yu Hui. But it still took longer than Chen Ming thought. But fortunately, the consumption of mental power was still within his acceptable range. After the metallic liquid completely condensed, only a shimmering ship remained. When Lao Wu saw the spacecraft changing its appearance instantly before his eyes, he couldn't help but open his mouth and said, This is, this is an attempt by me to use my psychic transformation ability. And the effect seems to be pretty good. However, there are limitations. It must be a spacecraft that I have learned to make myself. Any ship will do. This is a transformation. I can only transform from a spaceship into another spacecraft of the same level. Good guy. He's getting more and more perverted. Although there is nothing special about Jiaosu Shimmer after Chen Ming's transformation. It's like two spaceships of the same level have been swapped. But the effect of an ability is not just based on whether the transformation results are useful or not. Chen Ming's ability means that as long as he learns from Yu Hui, he can continue to send Yu Hui's technology back from a long distance through this method. In other application scenarios, such as during battle, or when the battle is approaching, it can also be used to replace a more suitable warship for battle. At the same time, replacing the spacecraft also has a certain degree of repair function. Although it is not as good as genuine repairs, it is more functional than repairs. Or, as long as Chen Ming is given a batch of the most basic spaceship frames and enough materials, he can have extremely terrifying productivity by himself. Of course, you also have to ensure that your mental strength can sustain it. After Old Wu asked Chen Ming to confirm that Chen Ming was finished, he stepped forward and touched the glimmer. After personally confirming the real existence of this shimmering ship, an uncontrollable look of shock appeared on his face again. At this time, it was not just Old Wu who could see this scene. Several surveillance systems in the maintenance plant, especially those on Chen Ming's spacecraft, are manned around the clock. So when Lao Wu and Wei Guang were having trouble, several people on the company's board of directors were paying attention. After watching the whole process of the sentry turning into a shimmering light, a director in the private communication channel of the board members asked the chairman, Should the plan continue to be implemented? It seems that Chen Ning staying with Yu Wei can bring us more benefits. The chairman did not hesitate and said directly, My opinion is to continue to implement it. Such abilities can only be used as spies with Yu Hui. But if they come back, 
There will definitely be more than what we see now. Look at that spaceship. The afterglow is at the twilight level. Although we have obtained enough blueprints, there are still many problems that need to be solved if we want to actually manufacture them. And Shin Ming did it. How long has it been since then? Even if the afterglow ship just relies on memorizing the blueprint by rote, giving you more than half a month. Is that enough for you? The director who asked the question kept his mouth shut. The chairman continued, So we must save Chen Ming. We don't need him to steal technology from Yu Hui. We just need him to come back and help us develop technology. So I'm wondering if we need to agree to the requirements of the 14th Legion. No one should know that the 14th Legion is seeking cooperation with us recently. Right. The director, who was previously responsible for handling affairs related to the military, was also one of the people watching the real-time monitoring of the repair shop. He said immediately after the chairman finished speaking, I think it's okay. It seems that the 14th Legion has follow-up support on the way. They are not relying solely on us to do things. It is said that although their front line has achieved certain advantages, it seems that their strategic goals have not been achieved. They're going to invest a little more here to remediate it. The chairman added, So I think we can agree to the military's request for fleet assistance. And the material supply can also be partially released. At this moment, a director suddenly poured cold water on us and said, What should we do about our sky steel? The chairman immediately responded, There are already signs of relenting on the part of the 14th Army. We can agree to part of it on a small scale first to see if they will continue to relent. Then do we need to change our action plan for you, Hui? The chairman thought for a moment and said, The Legion told us the rough plan before, saying that they would launch a surprise attack after they found out Chen Ning's location. Use the opportunity of Afterglow to rescue Chen Ning and attract their attention. When the Afterglow fleet is attracted, use the jump engine to jump directly to their core, which is the location of Klecka. Capture the thief first. Capture the king. And kill this afterglow with one blow. Before the chairman said what he thought, a director immediately said, This is too dangerous. And does the Legion know where Klecka is? The chairman knew this very well. They don't know. So they keep arguing with us. Hoping to get the way to contact Chin Ming from us. We ourselves are not very easy to contact now. Chin Ming has obviously lost some trust in us because of the last incident. If I contact him rashly, I'm really worried that Chin Ming will turn around and completely join Yu Hui. The pressure we have to bear in the afterglow is beyond our imagination. If we contact him again and put external pressure on him, it won't be surprising if he does anything as a result. Unless there is an emergency, try to maintain the status quo of indirect contact. This will also help our voice in the joint meeting. And the military's plan actually doesn't do us much good. If we can eliminate the afterglow, we can indeed be the first people to open up the territory. But people from other places will pounce on us like sharks that smell the fishy smell. If we have suffered too many losses in the past, even if we have the upper hand, we may not be able to gain enough benefits from it. And it may even cause us to lose our competitiveness in the future. So we will not participate in the subsequent raids. We are only responsible for rescuing Chin Ming. The chairman took a sip of water and continued. If the plan can start smoothly as it was originally, then I will take the initiative to take on the task of rescue and attract attention at the meeting so that the 14th Army can have the ability to raid Yu Hui's hometown. And our ship is enough for us to forcefully break into the galaxy where Chin Ning is now and attract enough afterglow. That's it. I will bring it up at the next formal board meeting. If you have any opinions, just raise them now. The chairman waited quietly for the other directors to speak. But what he didn't expect was that another director joined the communication channel. And he is the director who is usually responsible for various pirate space stations. The director said in a very urgent tone immediately after joining the communication channel. I suddenly received an emergency message from the person in charge of the space station. Wu Pingan took the initiative to contact him and said that Chen Ming will soon be transferred to a new place by Yu Wei. Where? I sent the star map. The communication channel was quiet for a while. And the chairman was the first to speak. It seems that our previous guess was wrong. Yu Wei did not place Chen Ming in the final position from the beginning. But they have been preparing until today. Fortunately, we have considered this before, but the plan must change. The chairman looked at the director in charge of military affairs and said, Go and notify the Legion. The meeting must be reopened. Just when Shinda Company was about to get busy with the joint meeting, Chin Ning was packing his things in the factory of Yue Colony. There aren't many things. Materials and other materials can be sent directly to the repair shop for storage using psychic energy. The only trouble for Chin Ning now is the 63 escape cabins. But just when Chen Ming was struggling, 
We won got Chinning a Buffalo class cargo ship. Looking at the fresh damage on it. This is probably caused by the recent conflict between Yu Wei and humans. Chinning must have happily accepted this. Everyone on the ship must have died anyway. It was just out of his mind that he didn't want to do that. But after Chen Ming loaded all the things that needed to be taken away onto the buffalo, Hui Wang suddenly said to Chen Ming, Urgent notice. Mr. Chen, you must leave here today. Now? Yes. Chen Ming was stunned for a moment and asked, Why? No reason. Chen Ming's mind was suddenly filled with doubts. Yu Hui just gave Chen Ming a fairly relaxed time to clean up slowly. Are you in such a hurry all of a sudden? Is there any unexpected situation? Or is there a lingering spy among humans? Several thoughts quickly flashed through Chin Ming's mind. But these speculations were quickly dismissed. How long did it take Chin Ming to tell Lao Wu the news that he was going to be transferred? How many people did it take for the news to be spread? If anyone who comes into contact with Lao Wu's company may be a spy, then Chin Na company might as well just close down. So there must be other reasons. But now Chin Ming can't figure out why. He could only hurriedly pack up some of the tools he usually used in the factory control room and board the iron ore. With the newly acquired buffalo, he followed the brilliant guidance and arrived in space. Incorporated into Yue's fleet, the brilliant class cruiser of brilliant control is waiting for him here. In addition, there is also an afterglow refraction class heavy unmanned cruiser in the fleet. Two cruisers were escorted by a fleet with over a hundred ships, and Chen Ning was not impressed by the treatment, not giving him any chance to escape, nor giving him any chance to rescue him. But if we really want to rescue him, it may be too late now. Unless the company has been prepared in advance and just plans to come today. Otherwise it will be too late. But in the end, the situation that flashed through Chen Ming's mind still didn't appear. Until the glorious and refracted jump engines were started, there were still no ships belonging to humans. Chen Ming felt a little regretful in his heart. But by this time it didn't matter to him. He also didn't expect anyone else to save him. After he is sent away, it will be significantly more difficult for the company or other forces to contact him and rescue him. The current situation only strengthened Chen Ming's determination to rely on himself. Even if he is taken to the depths of Yu Wei's territory, he will definitely have a way to leave in the future. The jump engine allowed Chen Ming to quickly reach a new galaxy. Just when Chen Ming was about to observe the situation in the galaxy, Chen Ming suddenly discovered that Ol Wu was taking the initiative to touch his transformed shimmer and after noticing that the camera on the outside of the low light moved, he spread his hands helplessly and pointed at the terminal he was holding. A video communication is ongoing on the terminal. The scene on the other side was very familiar to Chen Ming. It was the factory director's office. But there are three people in the office. In addition to the factory director, there are two people Chen Ming doesn't know who are also in the video communication. One was wearing a uniform worn by senior executives of Sinar Company while the other was wearing a military uniform of the 14th Legion. Chapter 117 The Warning of the 14th Legion Yu Wei's Psychic Equipment Chin Ming looked at the picture on Lao Wu's terminal and was quite confused. He had just conveyed the news that should be sent back. And in the blink of an eye, something else happened? He clearly explained everything that needed to be explained. He told Old Wu the galaxy map and the specific location and asked him to pass it on. You don't want to say that you need to confirm with him again, right? Probably not. Moreover, when Chin Ming did not take the initiative to contact them before, the company did not interfere with Chin Ming except for normal monitoring. Could this sudden contact be due to something urgent? Chin Ming thought about it and decided to ignore them. After all, if Wu, the factory elder, can cooperate and take the initiative to come to him, he must at least be someone with a certain weight in the company. Moreover, there were people from the 14th Army Corps nearby. This was actually a signal that the company had a very special reason for contacting him. A few times before, when Chen Ning was chatting with Old Wu after finishing errands, Old Wu mentioned the situation of the 14th Army. They drove away the original sector garrison, stayed in place of the original military, and took over everything left behind. Naturally, this also includes Sky Steel. Since the origins of Sky Steel itself are not clean, the name of the 14th Legion can dissuade many people who have participated in it before. Until now, I still have unrealistic ideas about Sky Steel. Anyone who dares to reach out can be dealt with by the 14th Legion. However, the 14th Legion itself seems to have some special ideas about Sky Steel, but they are quite ambiguous. So there are some conflicts with the company. He really could have the 14th Legion appear with the company, even if there wasn't really an urgent matter to come to him. After Chin Ning figured it out, 
he connected the communication signal to Lao Wu's terminal. Under Lao Wu's operation, the video communication was connected to the factory director's office. Of course, there is no video signal on Chen Ming's side. After all, although Chen Ming initiated the communication, it actually started from the dim light of the maintenance factory. So now only Chen Ming can see the factory director's office unilaterally. After confirming that the signal was connected, the factory director looked serious and said, Xiao Ming, the 14th Legion has very urgent news that needs to be communicated directly to you. This person next to you is the person sent by the company to testify about this matter. If things are indeed what they say, then I think you'd better take it seriously. Let them tell you specifically. The factory director said this, and Chen Ming had to listen to it no matter what, to hear what the people of the 14th Army Corps were going to say to him. I know. I'm listening. The factory director nodded to the officers of the 14th Legion beside him. However, the officers did not mention their purpose of finding Chen Ming as soon as they came up, but mentioned other things. Mr. Chen Ming, I don't know if you are paying attention to the Empire's public war information in the Sunset Star region, which is the star region where we are fighting against the Afterglow Army. Chen Ming knew that the Empire had been fighting Yu Hui's large army on the other side, but that was all he knew. He generally didn't pay much attention to the specific battles. So Chen Ming gave a negative answer. The officer received this answer and said, Then let me briefly state it for you. We have gained an overall advantage in the battle with Yu Wei in the Sunset Star territory during this period. After Yu Wei's defeat led to the shortening of the defense line, the battle situation has also entered a stalemate stage, making it difficult to continue to break through. But as long as we continue to suppress Yu Wei, their front will be captured sooner or later. So in order to find a way, Yu Wei chose to transport a piece of equipment to a certain place through an energy source with high power output and supporting facilities that have the ability to transport items over long distances. We discovered this and responded immediately. In this special battle, we successfully broke through Yu Wei's defense line and achieved victory again. But we failed to achieve the ultimate strategic goal and failed to prevent Yu Wei from sending away their belongings. However, with our continued attacks, we succeeded in breaking into their colony before Afterglow destroyed the data on the equipment they were transporting. The special operations team has obtained relevant information. And now the investigation has concluded that the thing sent away by the mechanical tribe is some kind of psychic device. Psychic? Yu Wei had just brought Chen Ming, a psyker with outrageous abilities, to them. And it would be strange if people didn't think of him suddenly transporting psionic equipment over long distances. Chen Ming quickly connected the logic of the matter in his mind and then said to the officer, I have a few questions. Speaking, are there any psychers in the special ops team? Chen Ming's question made the officers of the 14th Army somewhat unresponsive. Obviously this question has nothing to do with this incident. It is purely because Chen Ming wanted to ask it. Answering it will have no impact. Yes. Okay. After satisfying his curiosity for a moment, Chen Ming said in a businesslike manner, What do you mean? Yu Wei and the others are transporting things to me. Is Yu Wei here? Yes. Afterglow sent a piece of equipment from the Sunset Star Territory to the Gallo Star Territory where we are now. Even my current location is outside the Gallo Star Territory. Such a useless place? Yes. They didn't send anything else? Like a fleet or something? No. Just the equipment. Why? Although the ultra-long distance transportation equipment used by Yu Wei is similar to a Stargate, the actual operating logic is completely different from that of a Stargate. Although the transportation distance is further than the Stargate, the corresponding consumption is also the same. At such a distance, Afterglow is completely unable to support fleet-scale transportation. Chen Ming had no knowledge of this device yet, so he chose to believe the officer's words when he was uncertain. But I remember that Yu Wei would have problems when coming into contact with things related to psychic energy such as ectoplasm stones. So wouldn't it be even more problematic when coming into contact with this kind of psychic equipment? You only know part of it. The officer directly pointed out the obvious errors and omissions in Chen Ming's words and explained to Chen Ming, Afterglow will indeed be affected by ectoplasm stones, which objectively continue to spread psychic fluctuations to the outside world. But this is completely different from psychic equipment. It doesn't matter. Although the existence of spiritual energy is indeed difficult for Yu Wei to understand, and it is indeed difficult for them to access spiritual energy, this does not completely make Yu Wei incapable of contacting spiritual energy as long as adequate protective measures are taken. Even young children can safely come into contact with psychic-related things. And the equipment that Yu Wei just sent away was most likely not developed by them themselves, 
but found from the ruins of another civilization. That gets rid of most of the problems they study. The officer suddenly realized something and asked, Do you know the civilization I'm talking about? I know that. Chin Ming's mind flashed back to those mechanical tribes he had met on Ruimu planet. That psychic pulse generator. As well as the planet where there were a large number of mechanical buildings that was found when Diopto was sent out. The machine race is one of the relics of this civilization. They left various ruins in many star fields. The pioneering era flourished because of this. It was not until the successive emergence of the afterglow and the machine race that we entered a stagnation. The officer nodded slightly and said, It's easy to tell if you know. Another civilization has extremely profound mastery and research on mechanical technology, biotechnology, and psychic technology. So we are not surprised at all whether Yue finds any psychic equipment from the heritage of this civilization. And a piece of psychic equipment has to be forcibly transported here even at great risks on Yue's territory. Which shows that Yue is very urgent about this. If it is Yue who needs it, there is no need to use emergency transportation. So this equipment must be specially used for you. Chin Ming was still a little unsure at this time and asked, Are you 100% sure that Yue is targeting me? Maybe Yu Wei found the Psychic Research Institute or other facilities left by that civilization elsewhere? Do you need to use this device? No. Because we have observed the direction of the equipment they transported. And it is right here. Okay. Then I have nothing to say. An ultra-long distance on a cosmic scale. A distance that even stargates cannot transmit directly. Under such circumstances, the direction of transporting things must be as accurate as possible. So now that the direction has been determined, and there happens to be a Chin Ming in this direction. The probability that Afterglow happens to find something in this direction is basically zero. Chin Ming accepted the fact that Yu Hui was about to make a move on him and said, So why did you come to me? The officer said, We hope you can provide us with more information about Yu Wei so that we can rescue you quickly. We also know that it is very difficult and even dangerous to obtain information from Yu Hui, so we will help you obtain that information while doing our best to protect your safety. Well, let me think about it. Please hurry. Taking advantage of this little time, Chen Ming quickly contacted his boss through Shimmer and quickly relayed the news from the 14th Legion. But when Chen Ming was halfway through speaking, the boss stopped Chen Ming and said, I know everything you just said. They invited me to their joint meeting before, and the meeting was all about you and Yu Wei. Let's put it this way. I can confirm that the information given by the 14th Legion is true. Chen Ming thought over the words of the officer of the 14th Legion in his mind again and said, Does this mean I'm in trouble now? High probability. In fact, if you need it, I can directly find a way to rescue you. There is no need for those things. But if you have been transferred to a place with stricter supervision over Yu Wei, the risk is too high. And there is nothing I can do to help you. Lao Wu. This news spreads a bit fast. Chen Ming complained in his heart. Then he said, half to himself and half to his boss. This is the path I chose. So you have to go on your own after that. But I can also help you in some places. So if you have any questions, ask them now. Okay, what exactly is this device used for? I don't know. Yu Wei uses encrypted information files to store the data of such things. There are only so many that have been deciphered so far. I can only confirm that it is indeed a device related to psychic energy. Based on my experience, this device is almost the same type of thing. It will most likely have no impact on ordinary people. But it will be a big trouble for you. After all, there is absolutely no reason for Yue to do unnecessary things. They must have their purpose in getting this device. Then the purpose is clear at a glance. Isn't it you? You should rather believe that you have it. Chin Ming somewhat agreed with his boss's statement. Like the afterglow of today. Ming Ming had just been given a day and a half to rest. But suddenly Chen Ming was hurriedly asked to leave immediately and go to a new place. I'm afraid it has something to do with the psychic equipment that was transported. Since Chen Ming already knows that the whole thing has begun to undergo unknown changes. And there are still unknown changes that may directly threaten Chen Ming's own spiritual power. Then Chen Ming must carefully consider the communication with the 14th Army Corps. The information needed by the 14th Legion can be provided. But Chen Ming does not want others to know yet that he can gradually spread his control over Yu Wei like a virus. Because this might not be a good situation for other people. Who would want the afterglow to be unified under one person? So the information can be given. But only part of it. Chin Ming returned to the factory director's office and asked the officer, who had been waiting for a while. What do you need? The officer of the 14th Legion breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. When Chin Ming said these words, 
His mission was completed. Mr. Chen, I am only responsible for negotiating with you. Please communicate with our speaker here in person for details. All right. Chin Ming agreed to the officer's request. And soon with his help, he reestablished communication with another person. On the video communication screen, you can see that the other party is a man who looks to be in his 30s or 40s and wearing a pair of square frame glasses. Chin Ning went to check out the 14th Army after learning about it before. If he saw it correctly, the man in front of him was a major general. After the communication was connected, the major general took the initiative and said to Chin Ming, Hello, I am the person in charge of the 14th Army Corps here. Bai Quan, I am Chin Ming. Let's not talk nonsense now. I have been taken to the new galaxy I marked on the star map by the afterglow. I may not have time after that. Mr. Chin, you seem to have said before that there are two more days? It was two days before. But just now, about 20 minutes ago, there was an emergency notification from Yue, asking me to leave immediately. The Major General instantly realized the seriousness of the problem and said, Understood. Let me tell you straight away. We need your precise location now. The arrangement of defense forces here, and the location of the core galaxy of Afterglow. This may be a little difficult, but we can help you. We just need some clues. Chin Ming thought for a moment and said, You're talking about the location of Yue's Kleka supercomputer. Right. You know? Yes. I used to like reading history books. Let me just say this. My current location is most likely near Kleka. Through the dim light, Chin Ming sent a galaxy map file with more marks on it to the factory director and forwarded the file to Bai Quan through the officer in the office. Many galaxies with afterglow colonies are marked above. Of course, Chin Ming only marked whether there were colonies or not. He did not mark the other marks on the star map that Gamma A had given him. And it is also part of the colony that is open to all afterglows according to the detailed information given by Gamma A. These alone have clearly drawn a sphere on the star map. Did you see it? This small group of areas is empty in the middle, but surrounded by a large number of colonies belonging to the afterglow. I'm on the periphery now, so the core of these colonial galaxies must be here. This, Bai Quan thought that if Chin Ming wanted to obtain Yu Hui's information, they would need their help and assistance to steal information from Yu Hui in various ways. Maybe they have to hand over some blueprints of military spy equipment and let Chin Ming use it. Maybe he can get some clues after half a month. After all, in their estimation, Yu Wei should never give Chin Ming the chance to come into contact with Yu Wei. At the same time, Yu Wei, who is suspected of having contact with Chin Ming, is controlled to ensure that there will be no subsequent communication with Chin Ming and other Yu Wei individuals. Although Yu Wei did what they thought, they did not completely limit Chin Ming's opportunities to contact Yu Wei from other places. Therefore, this has led to the current result. As a result, things turned out to be different from what Bai Quan thought. However, Bai Quan also quickly figured out the reason why Chin Ming obtained this information. It was the afterglow individuals that Chin Ming had controlled before, who had already given this star map to Chin Ming before. So he didn't realize how exaggerated Chin Ming's ability was at this time. After reading the star map, Bai Quan habitually asked Chin Ming, Can these locations be determined? Chin Ming did not answer directly, but said, You don't have to believe it. Bai Quan pushed up his glasses, hid his eyes behind the reflective lenses and said, Then I believe it. Is there any other information? No. I'm still in space now, and I don't even know which planet I'm going to. The most I can tell you now is that the fleet escorting me consists of two cruisers, 40 destroyers, and 110 escorts. One cruiser model is brilliant, and the other is refracted. That's all. By the way, I have seen colonies on two atmosphereless planets in my current galaxy. Also saw traces of unnatural construction on a volcanic planet, which is just one galaxy. You should know what these mean. And you certainly don't need me to teach you how to fight. You guys must know better than me what will happen if we really fight. So you can figure it out from now on. It's best to inform me before any action is taken so that I can be prepared. Bai Quan noticed some casualness in Chen Ming's words. He didn't seem to care about their rescue. He didn't know if he had any confidence or special means. Bai Quan didn't have any objections to Chen Ming's attitude. Anyway, he had seen many people with worse attitudes. As long as he doesn't make a fool of himself in the end. Chin Ming's ability has already destined him to have such an attitude. So Bai Quan answered simply, Yes, but it will take some time for us to carry out rescue. You just seem to have said that Yu Wei's psychic equipment has been sent over. If you want to save me, you won't forget about it. Right, Bai Quan said immediately. Of course not. 
But if the situation is really urgent, we will not choose to contact you first, but will directly start taking action. The reason is that the ultra-long distance transmission technology used by Yuhui cannot deliver the transmitted items to the destination instantly, and it takes about half a month to get from the Sunset Star Territory all the way to the Gallo Star Territory. So you don't need to worry too much about the equipment at the moment. So slow. Afterglow uses a new technology that is still under development. And we happen to be currently researching this technology. And we started researching this technology first. So we have such an estimate. Bai Quan didn't say a word. If their 14th Legion wanted to stop Yu Hui from transporting this psychic device, they actually had the ability to do so. Because the technology used by Afterglow is a special technology that is similar to hyperspace but has many different phase spaces. It happens to use the same technology as the phase ship that their 14th Legion is jointly developing with Tachyon technology. That is, as long as they can install the phase equipment in advance on the path of Afterglow's delivery of the equipment in phase space. Then this device can be intercepted by the Midway. But the problem is that the current phase technology of the 14th Legion is still not stable. Phase space is very special. Unlike hyperspace, which seems to shrink the universe. It is more like a mirror image of the real universe. If the time could be delayed by another year or two, they might be able to affect the existence inside the mirror, outside the mirror. But now, they can only watch. Fortunately, the Empire Sunset Star Territory and the Gallo Star Territory are physically quite far apart. As a mirror image, the Phase Space Station now has a stable transportation effect. But its speed is definitely not as fast as traveling through hyperspace, let alone traveling through a star gate. And it just so happens that the 14th Legion can rely on the Stargate to make uninterrupted ultra-long distance jumps. A large number of support fleets were deployed in the Gala Star field earlier than Yuwei's equipment. Apart from this equipment, Yuwei has no support capabilities at all. If they want to get here as quickly as the Legion, they can only use the Stargate. But the Empire's Stargate Afterglow cannot be used. Sunset wants to move quickly by relying on the Stargate. Unless they build a Stargate corridor along the border of the Empire to surround the entire Empire. But as long as there is nothing wrong with this approach, or the core logic is correct, there will be no afterglow to do it. Therefore, Yue can only rely on the individuals they already have in this star field to defend against the siege of the 14th Legion. The plan is absolutely executable logically. Also, it is best to get stuck just before the time when the psychic equipment is about to be delivered. Bai Quan and Chen Ming said a few more words and finished talking about business. Suddenly he said casually, By the way, Mr. Chen Ming, I want to talk to you about what you learned from cleaning the battlefield before. Chapter 118 Compensation of the 14th Legion Bai Quan's question did not surprise Chen Ming. From the day he took Cheng Xingha away, Chen Ming had already thought about the day when the 14th Legion would come to his door. So Chen Ming has already thought about what attitude he should use to deal with this matter. I know what you want to ask and who you want to ask. But there is one thing you must know first. Before, the military in the Gallo 2 sector took the initiative to attack me and attack the Sinda Company's fleet. At that time, I don't know why the commander of the military fleet in the sector was Cheng Xingha. The company may have reconciled with you. But to me, this matter has not been explained yet. Jin Ming's words made the atmosphere between him and Bai Quan gradually become serious. Bai Quan said very rationally and restrainedly, I don't deny this. But just as we have resolved the conflict with Xinda Company, I will definitely be able to give you an answer that is satisfactory and acceptable to you. As long as Cheng Xingha can come back safely. For Chen Ming, he had two main purposes for capturing Cheng Xingha's escape capsule. One is Cheng Xingha's commanding ability, and the other is Cheng Xingha's own value. Human value and identity value. The human value is negligible, but the value of his identity is not low. So Chen Ming must speak carefully in this regard. So Chen Ming followed by Quan's wishes and said, Cheng Xingha's safety can be completely guaranteed. Yu Hui is not interested in my trophies. So what? The meaning of Chen Ming's last sentence was also very clear. If the 14th Legion wanted Cheng Xingha, who had taken the initiative to attack him, to go back safely, he would definitely have to pay some price. Otherwise, Chen Ming would just throw away Cheng Xingha's escape cabin and let the 14th Legion find it. It's up to you to decide, Mr. Chen Ming. After receiving the answer, Bai Quan chose to lift the ball back with one kick and said, After all, I'm not sure what you need. If the 14th Legion were to take the initiative to offer compensation in this area, then Chen Ming could wait and sell it until he was satisfied. However, Chen Ming gave up this idea. Because at this time, 
Chen Ming's fleet had arrived in the galaxy and was taking Chen Ming to its final destination. Chen Ning would soon run out of time. Moreover, repeated quarrels with the 14th Legion, a legion that was at the forefront of the empire, just to obtain some possible petty profits would also make the relationship between Chen Ming and them more rigid. This is definitely a blood loss thing. So Chen Ming thought about it and decided to use Cheng Xingha to get what he should have gotten from Cheng Xingha from the 14th Legion. And at the same time, he could get some additional benefits. I need to learn some skills in spaceship combat and spaceship command. Bai Quan was a little surprised and asked, Are you interested in this aspect? He mentioned Chen Ming's ability before when he chatted with the lieutenant general about Chen Ming. They did think that Chen Ming's ability was indeed suitable for commanding the fleet to a certain extent. However, a person's energy is limited, and it is difficult to balance command and technology, which are two completely unrelated aspects. So what he considered at the time was that if Chen Ming specialized in technology and then cooperated with other professional commanders, the effect should be very good. But they didn't expect that Chen Ning really wanted to take care of both sides. However, it was impossible for him to interfere with other people's thoughts. And he had just offered to let Chen Ning tell him what he needed. So Bai Quan did not refuse directly, but said, This is no problem for us. We can provide all instruction in the command profession at our own officer school, including professional techniques and professional competencies. And there will be professional instructors, retired or active military personnel, to teach. We can provide one-on-one -on -one teaching, and online as well. But there's something I need to tell you in advance. Our officer school's training for officers starts at least five years ago. It might take longer if there's no foundation. Are you sure? Chen Ning certainly knew that it would take a long time to train an officer. And he had thought about these issues before. But he also thought about other things. For example, in the future, if he encounters Cheng Xingha's situation again, and at that time, if his ability was not enough, or for some reason, his mental power had been consumed a lot, without psychic power, and the fleet does not have a strong enough command to fight against each other. The result may not be good. Therefore, Qin Ming's fleet must have a capable commander, whether it is Qin Ming or any Yu Wei individual. Qin Ming considered the situation in which he was not suitable for command. So it's great for him to be able to teach online. The instructor never knows whether there is a person or something sitting across the screen. Afterglow AI is similar to humans in many ways. It is not enough for them to record data. They also need to learn. And maybe they can learn command skills. If this still doesn't work, then Chen Ming will think of other considerations later. So Chen Ming answered quickly. No problem. But the value of Cheng Xingha shouldn't be limited to this. Right. Bai Quan had no objection to this and said. Yes. So we can provide our military academy with all the rewards that an outstanding student with top grades deserves during the learning process including ships, simulation facilities, professional training, and some scattered learning support. Chen Ming was immediately attracted by the ships by Quan mentioned and asked, What ships can you provide? All specifications are in accordance with the rules of our 14th Legion. Under normal circumstances, an outstanding graduate can get a total of five ships provided by us from the time he enters the school to the time he graduates from the military academy. They are all spaceships developed and improved by ourselves for escorts, and one expulsion. All students can choose specific models based on their own driving habits and needs. This condition made Chen Ming a little confused for a while. The four frigates by Quan mentioned were nothing, but a destroyer modified by the 14th Legion. Even now Chen Ming looked at it with envy. But after by Quan mentioned these spaceships, he didn't stop talking. Actually, the value of these spacecraft is not high. The high value lies mainly in the simulation equipment we provide. It can simulate the space environment and ship data in a wide range of details and realize simulated command and operations. The area that can be accurately simulated currently is about two star fields. Bai Quan knew that it was meaningless just to talk about it. So he just briefly talked about it to let Chen Ming understand the general effect of this thing. This equipment is very necessary for training officers, but it also consumes a lot of resources. Once or twice is fine, but it takes much more than one or two to make an officer. Conducting multiple and frequent large-scale simulations consumes the most running resources of the background supercomputer. Even top students are limited in the number of combat simulations they can do each year. But we can provide it to you as many times as you want. As long as you use it seriously. Bai Quan listed all the benefits they could provide in one breath. After a slight pause, he said, But there is actually something I want to confirm with you, which is your future development plan. 
Bai Quan did not wait for Qin Ming to speak, and said himself, You should have realized that you can't go back to Xina Company. Your ability to control the spacecraft will make it impossible for you to get a job in any company that needs to sell spaceships to external parties. But our 14th Legion does not have this problem. Do you want to learn command techniques? Fly a spaceship? Or do research on spacecraft? Our Legion can satisfy you in these aspects. And I will definitely settle the previous accounts for you. I won't say that if you join us. The accounts between us will be wiped out. We will definitely give you additional compensation in other aspects. The 14th Army will not let its own people suffer. Bai Quan extended an invitation to Chen Ming. Chen Ming had no hesitation about this and said, I can't answer this for you right now. Chen Ming's words did not completely reject him. But he still had some reservations. And his idea is actually very simple. Whether or not Bai Quan's proposal will be considered depends on what happens next. Because Chen Ming still has a lot of uncertainty about whether he can control the afterglow of the entire star field with the afterglow on hand. If it can be done, that would be the best. There would be no need for Chen Ming to join the 14th Army Corps. He himself may be the 14th Legion in the future. But if that doesn't work, Chen Ming must leave some escape routes in some places. Many times words cannot be said until death. Who knows what will suddenly happen tomorrow. Especially what he is doing now is digging for the roots of Yu Wei. Now that he has an escape route, he will have more possibilities to survive in the future. And it depends on the situation. If all Chen Ming's arrangements and plans here in Yu Hui fail, then there is really nothing to say. He can just follow the company or the 14th army and be done with it. But it's different now. The number of afterglow AIs controlled by Chen Ming is steadily increasing. And Gamma Z has also completed several tasks. After all, it has been among humans for many years. And even if it has not yet reached the beta level, it is not far away. After all, Yu Wei optimizes its own logic and substitutes its own computing power. These two things are what they do every moment. Therefore, when the overall situation is improving, there is no need for Qin Ming to agree to Bai Quan. Although there was no clear rejection, Qin Ming's answer still made Bai Quan feel a little regretful. For him, in addition to rescuing Qin Ming, inviting Qin Ming to join the Legion is also a task that must be completed. Fortunately, he should have another chance later. It is said that Qin Ming has not been recruited by the Psionics Association yet. Although Tachyon Technologies has ideas, they as a company have basically withdrawn from the competition. The government did not play a key role in the rescue, and it was not competitive with their 14th Army Corps. So the possibility of them finally getting Qin Ming is very high. There was absolutely no way they could let a psyker like this go. The topic returned to the compensation proposed by Bai Quan just now. After being rejected by Qin Ming, Bai Quan added a few words about the various incentives offered by the 14th Army Corps Officer School and asked Qin Ming, What's your opinion? Qin Ming's mind was running rapidly at this time. What he was thinking about was similar to Bai Quan. The ships they provided were indeed unimportant. But Qin Ming is still considering whether a simulated environment is necessary for him. After all, people in the military academy are students after all. But Qin Ming is not. Therefore, Qin Ming can directly find pirates to fight in actual combat instead of using simulated equipment. However, after carefully thinking about the combat effectiveness of the pirates, I changed my target to Yu Wei and the Machine Tribe. Fighting them should have a similar effect to simulation, but looking for the same level of afterglow and mechanical efficiency that is suitable for Qin Ming. I can only say that it is just a thought. And just now, Bai Quan seemed to have said that he would have a professional sparring partner. Someone who can teach Cheng Xinghe's level should be stronger than Cheng Xinghe. Right? At least it must be stronger than the pirates. Small scale afterglow or the mechanical fleet that Qin Ming would back to find. Moreover, the simulation equipment can also simulate a battle of similar scale, which is definitely much more convenient than Qin Ming going out to find a fight. If these conditions can really be met, then it really isn't a bad idea. Okay. No problem. Just follow this. Qin Ming agreed and did not ask for anything more. When people's hearts are satisfied, there is no need to cause more troubles. Bai Quan nodded slightly and said, It's settled. We will meet your needs one by one after the rescue is over. Can you please let me confirm Chang Xinghe's situation? I don't have the ability to directly transmit data and so on yet. Let me try. Chen Ning suddenly thought of a possibility in the middle of his words, and immediately saved the videos of the 63 escape hatches in the Buffalo cargo hold next door. At the same time, we also recorded a video of Cheng Xinghe frozen in the escape capsule and took several photos. All these image and video files are stored in a data storage module, commonly known as a hard drive. 
Then Shenming modified the hard drive into the mule. Finally, I chose to uninstall the modification and let the hard drive stay in the cargo bay. Shen Ming contacted Lao Wu who was still in the repair shop and said, Old Wu, go take a look at my mule. There is something on the ground. Lao Wu has been very idle lately. After Chen Ming ran away, he resumed his previous habit of fishing. Except for being a little busy when helping Chen Ming do things. There are basically no people around at other times. Chen Ming's contact made Old Wu move immediately. After boarding the spacecraft, he also responded quickly. I picked up something. What is this? Try reading it. Old Wu was silent for a few seconds and said, There are some photos. Who is this? It looks like someone from the 14th Legion. It's done. Chin Ming felt a little excited. And he found a point where his ability could be used. Don't worry about it. Give this thing to the factory director. And the rest will be none of your business. Fine. Old Wu's eyes glanced at the tag on Chung Xing's chest in the photo. I habitually wrote down all the above contents and quickly arrived at the administration building with my hard drive. Lao Wu walked into the office habitually without knocking on the door. After noticing someone inside, he immediately pretended to be serious and his eyes stayed on the officers of the 14th Legion for a while. Then he gave the terminal to the factory director according to Chen Ming's request and left the room. But he didn't go far, quietly leaving a crack in the door and eavesdropping at the door. Soon, Chen Ming said to Bai Quan, who had been waiting for a while. It's done. The photo has been sent to the space station. The officer you arranged to contact me can see it. Bai Quan had no doubts about this and said, Okay, give me some time to confirm. Chen Ning said nothing and watched Bai Quan disappear in front of the screen. After waiting for about five minutes, Bai Quan returned here. I confirmed it here. No problem. So this matter is settled? Yes. Bai Quan looked a little more relaxed. But before ending the communication, Bai Quan suddenly said, By the way, there is one more thing I want to ask Mr. Chen Ning for your opinion. It is a private matter. That's what you think of Cheng Xingha. Chen Ming frowned slightly and said, What do you think? My opinion of him is that he is very capable and can defeat all the advantages brought by my psychic powers. But that's all. Others, not so good. Chen Ming said this tactfully considering that he had just reached a deal with Bai Quan. You also know what happened to him before. So I won't say more. If that's all, forget it. After all, you are also solving it now. But I'm thinking that many of your 14th Legion must be smart people. Right. The 14th Legion is the most powerful legion in the empire right now. So Chung Xingha must also be a smart person. Otherwise, there is no need for you to mention him specifically and come to me specifically to confirm his safety. You see? You didn't specifically ask about the other people with him. A captain who is paid attention to by a major general must have a good mind. So. When I think about it, the previous battle between the military and the company might have been an accident. It might have been an arrangement by the rebellious military personnel. But the process of continuing is different. Bai Quan realized what Chen Ming meant. But he couldn't defend himself at this time and could only continue to listen. When the man from the sector army was found guilty of rebellion, Chang Xingha immediately commanded the fleet to stop fighting with the company's fleet. That shows one thing. He was able to stop the fight earlier, but he didn't. He knew the situation clearly. He was being used as a weapon, but he accepted it and insisted on fighting with me. This makes me very uncomfortable. That's it. That's how I feel about him. Seeing that Bai Quan seemed to have something to say, Chen Ming added, Of course, I understand the matter very clearly. My personal relationship with him and my conflicts with him have nothing to do with the public affairs. They are two different things. The matter on the surface has been resolved. Even if there is animosity between him and me in private, it will not affect the transaction between me and you on the surface. You don't have to worry. Although Bai Quan heard Chen Ming's assurance, he still said, That's it. But I think it's best to give you an explanation for this matter. At this time, Chen Ming also realized Bai Quan's deeper meaning and said, I actually don't care. I just made a deal with you. He and I don't know each other. He has been frozen in the escape cabin without saying a word. I won't know him in the future either. And if, I mean if, I consider your proposal later, the 14th Legion should not be small enough to require me to stay with him. Right. Bai Quan couldn't say it directly at this time. But Chen Ming's statement did conflict with his subsequent thoughts. As well as the thoughts of the Lieutenant General. Or the entire 14th Army who knew about this matter. Almost everyone in the 14th Legion is counting on Cheng Xingha to cooperate with Chen Ning in the future. 
but if things continue this way, something will be wrong. So Bai Quan did not answer Chen Ming's question, but said sincerely, The people on our side have done something wrong. Then he must give you a proper explanation. Chen Ming raised his eyebrows and said, It's up to you. Chen Ming also did not completely reject this, which made Bai Quan feel a little relieved. However, he is still not very good at handling Chen Ming's matter. After all, he knows everything Cheng Xingha has done. Although Chao Muhui usually likes to command fleets in battles. Logically speaking, he wouldn't want to start a fight whenever he sees someone. And he always has the special calmness that a commander needs most. But it may be because Chen Ming's identity as a psyker is too sensitive for Cheng Xingha. He had just lost to a psyker not long ago. And he was someone he was very familiar with. So he was too eager to prove himself by defeating a psyker. This eventually resulted in this situation. So we still have to wait until the rescue results are achieved. Fully compensate them. And completely turn the previous events upside down. Only then could he continue to solve Cheng Xingha's problem. Bai Quan quickly left and ended the communication. The officer in the factory director's office also received the instruction to go back after completing the task. After chatting with the factory director for a few words, he left the office. But the people in the company just nodded to the factory director and left. Only the factory director was left in the office. And Lao Wu, who had been waiting at the door for a long time and didn't hear any useful news at all. And Chen Ming, who was connected to the communication with the factory director. Before Chen Ming hung up the phone, Old Wu rushed to the factory director and asked Chen Ming, Chao Ming, are you in a bad situation? Do you need the 14th Army Corps to rescue you? When Chen Ming heard Lao Wu's question, he first glanced at the external camera of the iron mine and confirmed that he still had about 10 minutes to spare. Then he said to Lao Wu, I'm actually fine. I am making all my own arrangements slowly. The main purpose is to give the people who want to save me a sense of security and to cooperate with them. My ability, you Wei, will definitely not give up easily. So although it is indeed not easy for me to walk now, my safety is still guaranteed. It's not convenient to talk about a lot of things here. If you have any questions, come and talk to me on board. The corners of Lao Wu's lips curled up and he said, That's good. We don't want to see you die so early. Don't worry. I won't die that easily. I still have a lot to do. Chapter 119 New Environment New Problems New Afterglow At the same time that the exchange between Chen Ming and Bai Quan ended, Brilliant is exchanging information with its superiors. Hui Wang has sent back the summary of the previous report. The contents are all records of Chen Ming's time at Yuhui's factory. It also included the previous mining site incident. But the contents recorded in it were exactly the same as those previously investigated by Hui Wang and reported to Chen Ming. It was Chen Ming who modified the robot it will do to his lack of technical ability, which caused the robot to malfunction and left out the explosives he carried for mining and blasting operations while working, causing the collapse of the mine. Although the afterglow individual who received the report saw it, he didn't notice anything wrong here at all. If Chen Ming were to see this report and Yue's reaction, he would immediately understand everything that happened before. However, this report was delivered directly by Brilliance to its superiors, and no one except the high-level afterglow individuals in this star field also knew about it. After reading all the contents of the report, the Yue individual, who was connected to Hui Wang, quickly sent several messages to Hui Wang. Okay, there will be other afterglows taking over your mission later. It will be responsible for preparing the supporting facilities and the necessary control over the presentation during the preparation. We can start our planning arrangements after the equipment is delivered. Your mission ends here. Receive. Hui Wang replied to this sentence as usual. However, after replying today, Hui Wang added, But I still think there is no need to do such a thing. After this period of investigation, I think Chen Ming's qualifications are beyond the reach of any Yue individual. The terrifying learning ability he possesses is at least equal to that of an alpha-level individual on an equal level. Not only here, but also on the human side. There has never been anyone with such learning ability and psychers are no exception. And we can't be sure whether this kind of learning ability is the effect of Chen Ning's spiritual power. Hui Wang's superior received everything Hui Wang sent. And after reading it, he responded, But Chen Ming is too dangerous. Although he was persecuted by humans, his thinking is still that of humans. Whether his recent stable performance is a pretense or genuine. For us, the method that can obtain most of the benefits while ensuring safety is the best option. We only need Chen Ming's spiritual power. So there is no problem in giving up part of the extra income in exchange for a more stable process. 
This can also block the possibility of humans rescuing Chen Ming. Hui Wang's superior continued to explain to Hui Wang according to its logical way of thinking. Human beings cannot have no reaction to such a psyker. However, humans have not taken any action since Chen Ning was trapped. There is a very high probability that they are planning a plan more targeted in us. The equipment sent by the army is already on the way. Even if there was a very low probability that humans would not take action before. There is no such possibility now. We can't continue to delay when humanity is 100% ready to prepare for Chen Ming. The longer the delay, the higher the possibility of human plans. And the higher the possibility that Chen Ning will be taken away. And because Chen Ning is currently in our hands, humans may even directly choose to kill Chen Ming when there is no hope of snatching it. Hui Hui superior continued to patiently analyze the pros and cons of this matter with Hui Hui. After all, we are just a branch here and have no real means to fight against the human empire. Once mankind tilts its center of gravity towards us, not only Chen Ming, but also the afterglow of our entire star field will embark on the road of exile and we don't get any support from the main force. So before this happens, our plans for Chen Ming have to be completed. This is for the survival of all afterglows. Hui Hui knows that it is no longer possible to interfere with the afterglow individual who is thinking for the benefit of the afterglow group. So it can only ask the question that has the most influence on its current thinking. What is the success rate of our plan? The brilliant superior immediately gave the answer. As long as you are fully prepared, you will be 100% prepared even if there is subsequent failure. Our technology will give us many opportunities. This psychic power must be fully within our grasp. Your mission has been completed from now on. And subsequent missions have nothing to do with you. You only need to complete the final handover. And all high-risk mission subsidies will be delivered to you. At the same time, you will also control the supervision authority over Hui Yao, who comes into contact with Gamma A. Be safe. Maintain normal communication. And don't put undue pressure on those gamma-level individuals like you did before. Hui Wang hesitated for a moment and responded. I received it. Hui Wang's superiors obviously have full trust in Hui Wang. But the core personality module and logical thinking module of brilliance at this time are full of many different and even mutually exclusive ideas. In the end, Hui Wang readjusted. And after terminating the communication with his superiors, he returned his attention to Chen Ming, whom he had escorted all the way. On Chen Ming's side, the escort fleet escorting Chen Ming has taken Chen Ming around the stars in the galaxy. Chen Ming was sent to a great planet on the other side of the star that he didn't see just after the jump. At first glance, it looked similar to the one he had before. Chen Ming can basically judge the condition of the planet from its appearance. The planet in front of me is most likely an ordinary planet without an atmosphere. As the fleet was captured by the planet's gravity, it entered the orbit around the star. Chen Ming took two spaceships and landed on the planet alone under Brilliant's guidance. In this process, it was just as Chen Ming had guessed in advance. What he saw was a planet filled with deathly silence, except that the surface looks more undulating, and the soil layer on the surface is also rougher. The whole planet is almost the same as the previous one, with nothing special at all. This should also be an ordinary resource planet belonging to Afterglow. The only change, it was what Chen Ming saw on the spaceship, the building that looked like a research institute standing alone on the dead land. And the building is also covered by a tall transparent dome. Under the dome, in addition to the overall architectural style that tends to be simple, there are also a large number of plants that should not appear on this planet growing around the building. The dome sustains these plants. Chen Ming landed outside the dome under the brilliant guidance. Drawn here are a number of bays for at least destroyer-class ships. The two spaceships Iron Ore and the Buffalo given by Hui Wang Park here do not occupy much area, let alone compared with a huge dome. Chen Ming put on protective clothing and stepped off the spacecraft. After passing an isolation room at the door, he successfully entered the interior of the dome. He sees improvements in livable climate conditions reflected on the gas quality monitor on his wrist. At the same time, I also came into contact with these plants that actually grow here. After Chen Ming and Hui Wang asked for green plants before, we wanted to give Chen Ning some ornamental plants grown in the cultivation cabin. The plants grown here are basically the same ones as those given before by Hui Wang. They are more numerous and grow better. What Yu Hui did in these strange details always made Chen Ming feel Yu Hui's attention inadvertently. But Yu Wei still did this after he had done something wrong before, which always made him feel that something was wrong. Chen Ming temporarily stopped observing these plants and came to the door of the building inside the dome. The door opened automatically revealing a wide corridor in front of Chen Ming. 
Chen Ning could see that the layout of the corridor was indeed a pure white and simple environment like a research institute. It doesn't look fancy, but it's easy to accept. At least it's much better than the factory that Chen Ning was waiting for before, which was transformed from the original Yue factory. The end of the corridor is the center of the institute. What Chen Ning saw was a garden-like place with some ornamental plants planted outside. The top here is a holographic screen, which must be able to simulate various environments. Chin Ming did not stop looking at these places that should be regarded as entertainment facilities. He lowered his head and looked at the map of the institute that Hui Wang had just sent to him on the terminal. Counting from entering the door, to his left is the area for experiments and research. The right side is the living and working area. There is no one in the entire institute, and there is no afterglow. There are only some robots assisting in daily work. For Chin Ming, it is indeed an excellent living and working environment and the layout of every detail is similar to what he requires. Chin Ming took the lead in entering the living area under Hue Wang's guidance, in addition to restrooms and all supporting living facilities needed for daily life. It is also equipped with a canteen. There is a cold storage behind the canteen. However, Chin Ming did not see any place or cooking tools nearby that could allow him to cook. Hui Wang should have noticed Chin Ming's doubts at this time and said, From now on, please come to the canteen at a fixed time for your daily meals. The robots here will help you prepare the food. If you have specific needs, you can respond directly through the equipment in the corner of the cafeteria. It will be ready for you in about three days. Hui Hui's words explained the situation in the cafeteria clearly. However, Chin Ming still felt a little strange. After all, Yu Hui had only prepared a bunch of food for Chin Ming in the warehouse before. But it had not reached this point. But it's okay. Maybe Yu Hui was planning to force Chin Ming to have a healthy routine because he saw that he had a messy reading schedule every day and didn't eat well? After all, almost all of the food currently stored on Chin Ming's iron mine is packaged survival food that he specifically asked Lao Wu to find connections to buy as military emergency food. It was the kind that Chin Ming found on the mining space station. Chin Ming was in a hurry when he left Yue factory and did not have time to take away the food in the warehouse. In addition, the fresh food he brought with him at the beginning had been eaten long ago. So he only had this emergency food on hand at this time. But it is definitely not possible to eat emergency food for a long time. Otherwise, there is no need to call emergency food emergency food. Therefore, Chen Ming now feels that Yu Hui is doing a good job. At least he no longer needs to waste time cooking. And he wasn't afraid that Yu Hui might do something to the food. Such as poisoning it or something. After all, he is here in Yu Wei now. If Yu Wei really had an idea... There were other ways that were 10,000 times better than poisoning. Chin Ming's own combat effectiveness is close to nothing. And two random robots can knock him to the ground. There was absolutely no need for Yu Wei to use this method. And Chin Ming, to this day, has the habit of testing food for toxins before eating. It continues from Rui Jupiter to today. Although there are always things that testing equipment cannot detect. But he's not dead yet. And the food has never been tested for anything wrong. It shows that Yu Wei didn't have this idea at least before. And Chin Ming's habit is just a habit for Yu Hui. They can monitor Chin Ming's status at any time and know what Chin Ming is doing. It's all too easy to prepare something that the detection device cannot detect. So what he is doing now is just to seek psychological comfort. And it has basically no practical significance. Based on these considerations, Chin Ming had no psychological pressure at all about eating the food provided by Yu Hui. If he really wanted to die, he would have died long ago. It just so happened that it was almost lunchtime. And Chin Ming could see that the lunch window in the canteen was open. When Chin Ming walked over, a meal was automatically delivered. All types of food were what Chin Ming had just eaten yesterday. Except for the extra cup of tea in this meal. Chin Ming noticed this immediately. He picked up the tea and looked at it carefully. There seems to be nothing wrong with the tea itself. It is made from boiled water and tea leaves. Next to the window, Chin Ming also saw a constant temperature hot water kettle, which contained boiling water and could be refilled at any time. However, there is a problem with the tea leaves floating in the teacup. These tea leaves are not the usual dark green color of ordinary tea leaves, but a special shiny white color. And this bright white color is not a dye. But the tea leaves grow like this naturally, exuding a little bit of mist in the water. At the same time, it also exuded an aura that Chin Ming was very familiar with but couldn't remember for a while. Chen Ming couldn't think of anything related for the time being. So he directly put it to his mouth and took a sip of the tea. The taste can be said to be quite good, and it also has a refreshing effect. 
Chen Ming deliberately took away a piece of white tea, intending to look back at the name of this thing. But Chen Ming didn't touch the food for the time being. I want to check out the next place first. Hui Wang had no objection to this, and continued to guide Chen Ming to the work area next to the living area. The work area was basically filled with operating equipment that Chen Ming had seen countless times in the maintenance shop and Yu Hui's factory. I walked around and didn't see anything special. So Chen Ming turned around and headed to the research area on the other side. Here, Chen Ming saw a piece of equipment placed in the center of the research area, occupying a considerable space. What's this? Hui Wang immediately explained. This is a connector for a supercomputer, as well as part of the infrastructure to bear the computing load. It can call upon the computing power of the supercomputer to which it is connected to provide convenience when frequent data calculations are needed in future research. I see. Chen Ming nodded slightly and could feel that the conditions provided by Yu Hui were really very good. But for some reason, Chen Ming always felt that something was wrong with this matter. He had just done a big deal with Yu Hui not long ago. And Yu Hui shouldn't have completely forgotten about it in just a few days. Right? Give this kind of thing back? This is something that Chen Ming cannot understand at all. But again, if someone else gives it to you, and there seems to be nothing wrong with what you give, then it's just a fool's errand to not take it. With partial use of a supercomputer's computing power, it can do more than just arithmetic. Chen Ning is now able to start designing some frigate modules, and even the frigate itself. Just add some more knowledge that Yu Wei didn't teach, or that was not in the Tachyon Technology technical book given by Old Wu, and that Chen Ming had not learned in Xindao Company. The rest will fall into place. He has more than 20 years of learning and technical experience. Chen Ming has the terrifying learning efficiency after possessing psychic powers as the backbone. There is also the added bonus of knowledge that Afterglow has been providing throughout this time. Having the ability to become a R&D technician is what he should do. And for Chen Ming, he can use the most cutting-edge technology directly on real objects without any pressure. So overall, this research institute may be the place that will improve Chen Ming the most in the future. As long as Yu Wei really follows what Hui Wang said now, let him use the equipment of the institute. After leaving the research area, Chen Ming entered the experimental area next door. There is an empty area in the experimental area. What is written on the map is the finished product testing area, which is used to test the effects of developed weapons or other things. Of course, some equipment with relatively small failure consequences will be tested here. If the failure consequences are large, it will definitely have to be tested outside. But even so, there are many instruments and equipment here. They are all high-precision, top-notch research facilities that can contribute to the research, development, and practical experiments of weapons, radiation, and shields. There are a lot of people who know about it, but have never been exposed to it only on paper. In the past, he had no chance or qualification to access these devices. Although he has never actually used it, as long as he learns, he should be able to use these devices. There were also some equipment that Chen Ning couldn't understand at all and had never seen before. But he could feel some strange equipment. It was like the cup of tea he had just drank. Chen Ning suddenly realized at this time what the familiar yet unfamiliar smell that cup of tea gave him was. It is an aura similar to the psychic fluctuations that the Whispering Stone and the Lie Stone usually spread to the outside world. It's just that the spiritual energy fluctuations usually spread by stones, like the Lie Stone, are aggressive and Chen Ming has become accustomed to them after so many days. That's why I didn't notice the situation of the tea at the first time. At this time, Chen Ming also realized one thing. That is, spiritual power is not exclusive to humans. Plants also seem to have psychic powers. And those devices on the side that he hadn't seen before should be the same thing. These devices are all psychic devices. This was the first time that Chen Ming felt other spiritual energy fluctuations besides the very obvious and special spiritual energy fluctuations of the ectoplasm stone. I don't know if it's because Chen Ning's abilities are still improving during this period, or because Chen Ming has always been able to feel psychic fluctuations, but he just doesn't feel it because he hasn't encountered it before. Chen Ming prefers the former. But in any case, it is always a good thing to be able to feel the spiritual energy fluctuations that are different from the extreme spiritual energy fluctuations such as the ectoplasm stone. At least if Yu Hui wants to use psychic equipment to do something to Chen Ming in the future, he can react in advance. There will be no situation where you don't know how to die. I just don't know whether the psychic equipment here is for Chen Ming, or whether it is intended to be used on him. Chen Ming didn't feel anything too dangerous at first glance, but it would be hard to say in the future. Chen Ming moved his eyes away from these psychic devices and looked at a large room in the corner of the experimental area. 
The room was empty at this time. There was nothing in it. What is this place for? Hui Wang quickly replied. We will have a new equipment installed here in a while. And it will be available to you at that time. That's it. Hui Hui said this. So this should be the room used to install the psychic equipment sent by Yu Hui. I don't know how the effect of this device will be fundamentally different from other devices that spread psychic energy. Moreover, the brilliant phrase will be used by you makes it difficult for Chen Ming to judge how to use it. Fortunately, he still has about half a month, which should be enough to make some responses. Completed all four areas. Chen Ming suddenly felt a little emotional. What he had thought before was unexpectedly completed in a strange way. The idea is to return to the company as a researcher. Rely on technical skills to climb up step by step. And start a research institute of your own. Although both the results and the process look a little off. At least in name, it has been accomplished. However, after experiencing many things before, Chen Ming's current thoughts are not limited to this. People always change. And as their abilities increase, their ideas change and become bigger and bigger. One research institute is far from enough for Chen Ming now. So Chen Ming just took a few glances at the entire institute and then asked Hui Hui Wang, I'm here now. So what are your arrangements for the future? With so many new things, there should be many new tasks for me. Right. Hui Wang's answer this time was slower than before. There should be. Should? Yes. My mission ends here. And there will be a new afterglow to take over the job. So I don't know. I can only say that it should. What? Chapter 120 Research Plan Increase of Psychic Power At this time, Chen Ning didn't understand at all why he suddenly wanted to replace the glory he had been communicating with with other afterglows. Seeing that Hui Wang had no intention of explaining, Chen Ning asked him, What's the reason for replacing you? No reason. Hui Wang's answer was very straightforward. As for the content of the answer, Chen Ming didn't believe it anyway. The afterglow must have some purpose to replace the glory. It's not because they are worried about what they are going to do in the future that it won't be appropriate for Hui Wang to get along with him for a while. Right. Chen Ming couldn't guess the reason at this time. So he changed the question and asked, Which afterglow took over your job? We will make arrangements then. This is also a nonsense answer. So Chen Ming continued to ask, What if I need an afterglow that I am familiar with? I can ask for you. Hui Wang was silent for a while and replied to Chen Ming, Your request has been rejected. Please cooperate with our arrangements. Chen Ming nodded. Not surprised by the result. Let me ask you something. Yu Yu Wei should all have different personalities. Yes. What about the character of Yu Wei who takes over your mission? Chen Ming changed to a more tactful approach. Trying to get some words out of Hui Huang, who had a strange attitude. However, Hui Huang once again emphasized, I don't know which Yu Wei will accept the job in the future. Nor do I know the character of the individual who accepts the job. Each Yu Wei's task is only the responsibility of the Yu Wei individual who performs the task. And the problem is also borne by the responsible Yu Wei himself. Unless there is a need that exceeds the authority, such as the green plants you needed before, you can also apply upward. So whether his future arrangements in various aspects will be different from mine depends on him. This time the brilliant rhetoric was not about we, but I. So Chen Ming decided to treat it as Hui Hui's own words. It seems that it is destined that Hui Wang will leave. Pity. Brilliant didn't reply. And Chen Ming suddenly continued to ask Hui Hui as if out of curiosity. After you finish my affairs, what will your plans be in the future? Brilliant did not remain silent on this question and replied. I will go back to the galaxy where you were before and continue to be responsible for the security of the galaxy. The large amount of mineral resources on the planets in the galaxy and the mining sites that develop these resources are very important. Okay. Then when will you leave? When will the new Yue hand over to me? Now. The afterglow of the handover will arrive in about an hour. I shouldn't be able to stop it. Right? Yes. So that's it? That's all. Communication aborted. Chen Ming walked out of the research institute and looked up at the atmosphereless sky. It can be seen with the naked eye that the afterglow fleet, which is in orbit around the star at this time, is breaking away from the gravity of the planet again and flying away from the interior of the galaxy under the leadership of Brilliance. Brilliance's sudden departure was something he didn't expect at all. After all, logically speaking, among Yu Hui's entire group, the fewer Yu Hui individuals who have come into contact with Chen Ming, the better. There is absolutely no need to replace it. After all, doing so will increase the probability of an accident. Is there any special reason? Chen Ming is now increasingly suspicious that Yu Hui is planning to attack him. 
it is convenient to get started when a new one arrives. However, this is just Chunming's guess. The specific details will not be known until the new afterglow arrives. In addition, the last few words Hui Wang said before leaving also made him very concerned, because Hui Wang inexplicably mentioned the mining field on the planet, which seemed to be hinting at something. Chen Ming was thinking about whether he could let the few restricted Yu Wei on his hands try and get in touch with brilliance. But this would reveal a lot, especially Chen Ming's ability to control Afterglow. Yu Wei still has no substantive evidence to prove that Chen Ming can control Yu Wei. If all the hints in the middle of the glory and the last few words are all for fishing, Chen Ming is equivalent to actively exposing his abilities. And he will definitely be completely suppressed by Yu Hui. Those few Afterglows of mining field work must not be exposed easily. It would still be a minor problem if they were exposed. If it affected other afterglows controlled by Chen Ming. Then I am afraid that the entire galaxy will usher in the internal purge of the afterglow. Let's see. Maybe there will be other opportunities. Chen Ming put on his protective clothing again. Took some robots from the institute. And returned to the spacecraft. There are some empty rooms for storing items in the living area of the institute. Chen Ming can bring out some daily necessities or other things. By the way. Let's take a look at what the shiny white tea leaves in the tea Chen Ming just drank are. Chen Ming boarded the spacecraft and arranged tasks for the robots. First, he scanned the tea leaves with the advanced plant analyzer he had used before on Ruimu Planet. The words, analyzing, appear on the display of the analyzer. After a few minutes, the result was unsurprisingly that no relevant plant data was found. Just think about it. How can psychic plants be analyzed by ordinary analyzers that can be found everywhere? Chen Ning put the analyzer aside and opened the panel. The name of this silver white tea is clearly written on the panel. Fairy tree young leaves. Other than that, there's no valuable information. Chen Ning had never heard of the existence of a fairy tree, but he was certain that it must be a psychic plant. The reason why Yu Wei was able to use this thing to make tea for Chen Ning must be because they themselves cultivated such a plant, or many such plants. But things related to psychic energy are definitely worth a lot of money. So I gave Chen Ming the reason for it for no reason. Could it be that he was actively cultivating his psychic abilities? Why hasn't this been done before? Or is it related to Yu Hui's psychic device? Chen Ming suddenly sighed. He had encountered many problems recently. But few of them had been solved. You could only store the problem in your mind first and think of a solution later. As for now, I still have to drink the tea brewed from the fairy leaves. There is a high probability that it will be beneficial to Chen Ming's psychic abilities. Yu Wei couldn't be so bored that she just wanted to make this kind of tea to show off her wealth to him. After moving almost everything, Chen Ming returned to the cafeteria in the living area of the institute to have lunch. I originally wanted to go look for fairy leaves in the warehouse behind the cafeteria. However, the only place in the living area where Chen Ming felt subtle psychic fluctuations was in the closed area inside the cafeteria. It seems that tea leaves are limited, and there are only six in a cup of tea. Moreover, when Chen Ning finished drinking the tea and planned to eat the tea leaves together, such a small amount of tea leaves was stared at by Xiao Shi, who was watching eagerly. Xiao Shi had found the Whispering Stone directly and accurately in the Machine Tribe's Psychic Pulse Generator before. And even after a brief contact with the Whispering Stone, there was no problem. Moreover, Xiao Shi's race is a product of the very famous Fan Chao Laboratory, the FC-103 hamster. So Chen Ning thought about it and gave it a piece of tea. Maybe there will be some unexpected surprises. Chen Ming continued to wander around the research institute for the next time, familiarizing himself with various equipment that might be used in the future. Not long after, Chen Ming and others received a communication sent to the spacecraft. After being connected, an emotionless voice sounded. Hello, Mr. Chen Ming. I'm here to take over G3's follow-up work. Ah, H. Lo. The next day came in a blink of an eye. Chen Ming communicated with the new Yu Wei, who called himself G3 yesterday. At least for the time being. He hasn't seen any problems. G3 is just taking over the glorious work normally. However, after discovering that Chen Ming quickly adapted to the environment of the Institute, the normal work process started directly the next day. Work tasks are distributed normally. The workload is within the normal range. And the work content is of normal difficulty. Even simpler than before. Everything seemed normal. Yu Hui seemed to have just moved Chen Ming to another place and didn't want to do anything special. Except before the work actually started. G3 asked Chen Ming to go to the experimental area and found an ordinary looking piece of equipment that Chen Ming had never seen before. It looks like a freezer. But it's semi-open and allows people to lie on it. There are many intricate wiring and devices near the head. 
What's this? G3 did not answer, and directly sent Chen Ming a document introducing the equipment in front of him. This device is called a neural overclocker, stimulating the brain and nerves through weak currents close to the frequency of biological currents can keep people's thinking more active within a certain period of time. This device is not a product of mankind, but a remnant of another civilization. Chen Ming didn't feel any danger from the equipment, so he laid down on the neural overclocking machine. The overclocker will start immediately. In the weak numbness, although Chen Ning did not feel that his thinking was more active, he did feel that his mental power was fluctuating. Feeling like it had been activated, Chen Ming casually modified something inside the iron mine. The speed of transformation has been slightly enhanced. It seems that this effect is caused by the stimulation of the neural overclocking device. Chen Ming continued to wait quietly for the equipment to complete its work, and then stood back on the ground. After shaking his head a few times, he looked around. Although there is no clear feeling, apart from mental strength, there do seem to be some subtle changes. And they are good changes. Chen Ming turned to look at the overclocking instrument and considered whether there was any way to dismantle it and put it on his own ship. However, G3 quickly came over to urge Chen Ming to start today's task. Chen Ming could only put his thoughts away and start today's work. However, when the work officially started, Chen Ming suddenly felt a lot of things he was not used to. He and G3 had almost no communication while working, except for G3 giving the task and proposing the task conditions. There was no communication at all, although the overall task difficulty was a little easier than before. When it was actually completed, Chen Ming always felt that it was still brilliant and more comfortable. Moreover, Hui Wang would chat with Chen Ming when he was working before. Although the conversation was mainly about technology, Chen Ming occasionally chatted and wanted to talk about something brilliant. Hui Wang would also give him an answer or a reason why he couldn't answer according to the situation. The G3 is like a block of iron. And that's not all that separates it from brilliance. The work arranged by G3 even directly occupied Chen Ming's working time in the morning. It doesn't come up and tell Chen Ming all the tasks like before. And then spend five minutes with Chen Ming to complete the task. After all, for Chen Ming, the only thing that limits his workload is mental power. Not time. It's just something that Chen Ming doesn't understand, and it's difficult. Hui Huang needs to spend a little more time to teach Chen Ming. But now G3 seems to have learned about the situation on the brilliant side in advance in terms of task arrangement. I just relied on all kinds of trivial tasks to completely fill up the morning time. Although Chen Ming's overall mental energy consumption increased slightly over the course of the morning, the increase in time and Chen Ming's own mental rather than mental exhaustion really made him a little uncomfortable. Fortunately, the afternoon is still my daily study time and G3 will not occupy it. But in terms of learning, Chen Ming has mastered all the knowledge he can currently acquire. And he also feels that his current abilities are enough to do things other than studying. And there is no need to focus on studying. So judging from the current environment he is in, the most suitable thing to do is naturally to carry out research and development work. Chen Ming can develop something useful to him on his own. Therefore, Chen Ming directly proposed an advanced review for the third time. The efficiency of research while learning more profound knowledge is definitely better than relying solely on the technology that Chen Ming currently masters. The third review process went quite smoothly. In addition to G3 not allowing Chen Ming to save time, all the practical tests that required Chen Ming had to be completed in person, which made Chen Ming uncomfortable and wasted a lot of time for no reason. But Chen Ming still chose to cooperate, because at this point in time, the more stable he is here, the better and he should not do anything out of the ordinary. After the review was completed, G3 also gave Chen Ming some new technologies. Basically, they are some in-depth specialized technologies. The content is still the same as before. Energy weapons, radiation system, and shield system. At the same time, G3 also gave Chen Ming some of the most advanced technologies in these three areas that Yue is currently developing. All three are technologies on frigates. This is good news for Chen Ming although his technology has no problem with the modification of destroyers. In terms of research and development, he has not yet reached the point where he can take action on destroyers. In this way, Chen Ming would have a reference when doing his own thing, instead of having to slowly explore on his own. As for the reason why Chen Ming has not been able to develop destroyer-related technologies, the main reason is that the technologies of destroyers and frigates are different in level. The two technologies are similar to aerospace technology and ground vehicle technology. After in-depth study, the difficulty of the two is definitely higher than the former. Fortunately, the difference between a frigate and a destroyer is not as great as that between a car and a spaceship. 
Chen Ning can still make some modifications to the destroyer. But destroyers and cruisers are really two different things. And you really have to invest an unknown amount of time and energy to learn them. But Chen Ning can't get a cruiser at the moment. The technology he currently possesses is sufficient for his ideas. After he finishes studying these specialized techniques, Yu Wei should give him expulsion level techniques after the next review. But that comes later. Now, Chen Ning is still continuing to study the technology he currently has. As for the objects of study after studying, Chen Ming's idea is to conduct research based on the capabilities that his current fleet lacks. When talking about the capabilities that the fleet lacks, Chen Ming immediately thought of the terminal capabilities of his spaceship weapons. But this point has been solved after he got the rainstorm level. Heavy Rain's Terminator drone is capable of destroying a mule with one shot under normal load conditions. It would be absolutely trivial to destroy a frigate with extreme overload. So Chen Ning turned his attention to other important equipment on the spacecraft, such as radiant energy systems. The overall radiation energy systems of Shan Chen Ming's several spaceships are actually pretty good. There are two Tachyon technology ships, Fighter Kai and Heavy Rain, which increase the average radiation energy. Therefore, Chen Ming currently has two weakest fleets in terms of fleet strength, fleet number, and ship shields. For the former, Chen Ming can only slowly make money by robbing pirates to buy a spaceship. But the latter is now Chen Ming's best target. The reason is that there is actually no universal best design for the shield used by the spacecraft to this day. Because there are too many things to consider in the design of the shield. Shield strength. Shield efficiency. Shield deployment speed. Shield deployment angle. Shield radiation energy consumption. Shield energy level protection index. Which also includes the protection index of three main weapons. Live ammunition. Energy. And missile explosion. In addition, various issues such as the recovery time after the shield is broken, whether the coordinated fluctuation of the shield position will affect other ships, etc. Therefore, when designing shields, there is still no universal enough template within the human empire. Different shields have different effects, and different ships have different needs, different companies, different forces, and even different departments of the military often use different shields. Although the final effect seems to be similar, Except for the military ships. The specific maintenance and operation methods of the shield are quite different. Chen Ming didn't even notice the shields of the ships on hand. Especially the Centurions. Although the Centurions' armor performance is indeed very good, the shield cannot be just a decoration. So Chen Ming thought it would be a pretty good choice to find a way to get the shield he needed. After all, only you know what you need most. And because of Chen Ming's ability, he can try many radical shield design methods. Chen Ming knew a lot about many valuable shield design solutions that were abandoned due to risks when he was studying in the company. Even if there are problems with the designs based on these abandoned cases, as long as the effect is good enough, Chen Ming dares to use it directly by relying on his repair ability. As long as it doesn't explode directly, it can survive a battle relying on its repair ability. Then these things are a sufficient result for Chen Ming. Moreover, Chen Ming read many related papers further back. And the papers contain more than just these abandoned designs. There are many solutions that have real value and are obviously feasible. Chen Ming doesn't need to worry about copyright or anything like that now in Yu Wei. If he remembers it, he can just do it and be done with it. In addition to these other people's ideas, Chen Ming also has many ideas in his mind. His graduation thesis design in college was about spacecraft shields. The title is Feasibility study on distinguishing amplitude frequencies of multiple layers of slightly different shields within a single layer shield. This is also a good direction. In fact, Chen Ming does not necessarily have to follow other people's ideas in designing the spacecraft. Such as the design idea of choosing a shield with stronger comprehensive capabilities because the shield has multiple indicators. There is no need for Chen Ming to comply. He can design multiple types of shields to deal with different situations. When needed, just do A, modify, and replace the shield of the spacecraft with the most suitable shield. This requires ongoing testing and research. Although the research institute is well equipped, Chen Ming alone cannot achieve much efficiency. But even if he couldn't develop a shield that was comparable to the common spaceship shields on the market, the experience gained in the process would still be a good gain for him. The more experience you gain in research, the more foundation you will have for further development in the future. Chen Ming started to take action directly after thinking clearly. The starting point is naturally to present his thesis. He first relied on the excellent memory and learning ability provided by becoming a psyker to recall the content of the original paper. Rewrite the content of the paper. At the same time, in the process of writing the thesis, 
relying on all the new knowledge and techniques he learned from the day he graduated to today. He gradually improved the previous thesis that he could only read. It took Chen Ming a day to recomplete the paper. In the next few days, Chen Ming began actual research. There are various short-term small tests that need to be carried out in the research, as well as large tests that will need to be coordinated and started in advance in advance. In addition, various tasks that need to be completed during the research process are stated, as well as the tasks that Yu Hui provides regularly every day. Together, these things will completely fill up Chen Ming's schedule for the next few days. And as the day progressed, Chen Ming became more and more nervous during the rest of the day. From the second day after starting work, Chen Ming, in addition to helping G3 complete its work every day, also needs to cooperate with it to use various psychic equipment in the institute. Unsurprisingly, the object used is Chen Ming himself. Fortunately, Chen Ming did not perceive any danger in these devices. Even after each use, you can feel that your mental power has been positively stimulated and becomes more active. There is also a slight increase in the use of psychic powers. Yu Hui's actions gave Chen Ming the feeling that they needed his spiritual power to increase and his spiritual power to make breakthroughs. Even on the third day, G3 directly gave Chen Ming an ectoplasm stone. The name is ectoplasmic stone to spare, and it also has negative effects. The size of the stone is quite small, only about the size of a finger and the fluctuations it emits are less than 20 centimeters around the stone. The feeling this despair stone gave Chen Ming was stronger than the whispering stone, but lower than the lying stone. Maybe it's because of the size, but the stone itself is not important. The important thing is that there is a psychic pulse amplification device in the Institute's equipment. The effect is also very simple. It increases the effect of the spiritual stone so that it can cover the entire research institute. At the same time, the effect of the spirit stone can also be adjusted, strengthened or weakened, until it is adjusted to the extent that Chen Ming deems appropriate. Use this to exercise your psychic abilities. Chen Ming took in all the benefits provided by these afterglows. But he was also extremely vigilant. He drew a dead line in his heart, which was the final date for the arrival of the psychic device in transit. Before that, he had to do something.